Hopefully this Black Friday I'll bring in quite the haul. I bought fucking soap! Hey y'all, Scott here. If we're gonna be talking about the Wii, we might as well get this out of the way. Hey y'all, Scott here, and EW! Hey y'all, Scott here, and before you ask, honestly, what does it look like I'm doing? The Nintendo World Championships and all the other events are wicked cool pockets of Nintendo and gaming history, but enough about that. Let's see how my NWC 1990 score compares to that of Thor Ackerlin's. Wow, leave it to Nintendo to out me as a giant fucking pussy. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I have to say, I'm pretty tired of the whole having a reputation thing. So I decided to upload a video of me eating cereal to a pornographic website. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I'm in a predicament. You see, I don't want to be called a pussy, so I'll play Call of Duty, but I want to be a pussy while playing Call of Duty. The Call of Duty series, also known as Hey Guys, My Crotch is Huge, I swear, is the best-selling first-person action franchise in history, according to the back of this box. Dear Scott, people constantly make fun of my eyebrows. What should I do? Yeah, I hate facial hair. Get rid of them. Dear Scott, not advice, just a question. Have you ever killed somebody? Um... No. Dear Scott, which is better, Super Mario Odyssey or The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? Oh, thank God you asked that. I had no idea how I was going to fill the next 20 minutes. But I have to say, I bought Gravity Rush Remastered for a solid $20 on Amazon, and it's definitely worth that price. I wonder if it's still that cheap. Before there were septum piercings, playing Sonic the Hedgehog was the only way to lash out at your parents. You have to take their word for it that he's a hedgehog, like if you saw this thing crawling towards you on the street, I doubt the first thing you shout is, someone get this hedgehog away from me! Hey y'all, Scott here. You know, I was recently adding a brand new copy of Madden away to my ever-growing collection when I contracted something. <laughs> Depression! 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, I'll call you back later. Every single copy of Madden 18 is gone from Target. I think we need to get you know who on the case. I think it's worth this time. Every single copy of Madden 18 is gone. We got a mission for you. I'm on it. Officer Wool. Steel Wool. Hey y'all, Scott here. Mm -mm -mm. Some 420, right? Well, I hope you're all spending the holiday wisely, that being at an intervention, because smoking makes your neck look like this. That's worth at least a double yikes, right? Smoking is the fifth biggest cause of virginity in the US alone. Here I have my current profile, and I think it's safe to say I'm doing pretty well with it so far. However, in terms of activity, I'm absolutely bleeding loneliness out there. Tinder does have a pay to win option though, with a little monthly fee. So I'm gonna run to the store and grab an iTunes gift card to purchase my way to intercourse. Just when you're ready to jump knee first into the campaign, World at War warns about the use of graphic historical footage, and the term Hitler shit on the ESRB rating is finally starting to make some sense. There are two types of Wii games out there, anti-Nazi and pro-Nazi. Call of Duty World at War ends up in the anti-corner because we are just absolutely obliterating these things in the game. 101 in 1 explosive Mega Mix, at first glance may seem like a deal and a half. I always make sure to pick up anything marked 101 for 1, so when I saw this after searching for 101 in 1 explosive Mega Mix on the Wii Shop channel, I knew I just had to pick it up. Also, the Japanese version of the game included a scene where a homosexual character is drugged and cured of said homosexuality, which may be considered as, say it with me now, yeah. GAY CONVERSION, conversion THERAPY! therapy. Yep, that's gone from our stomping grounds. Yeah, it's unfortunate when entire pockets of gameplay are removed for international releases, but... I mean... GAY CONVERSION THERAPY! Today just so happens to be why is Scott wearing that hat day? Hey y'all, Scott here, and oh... Wow, things are starting to get a little too real. Well, I hope you're all finding good ways to pass the time before the Switch launches. I know I am. Hey y'all, Scott here, and raise your hand if you've been waiting for the Xbox One X for three hours at the wrong store.
yeah, I didn't pick up an Xbox One X, but I did pick up a few games, and yep, I finally bought into consumerism, which isn't that big of a deal. I'm a pretty big pushover. I'll buy into anything a store associate tells me to. Paper or plastic? Uh, I don't need anything. Really, sir? Everybody needs a bag. I'm a fucking maniac, and I just can't help it, so I'm not looking forward to Black Friday this year. I mean, they had printers for $20 last year, and I'm a sucker I can't resist. Man, what a waterfall of quality. Who knew video games could be so good? Yeah, I'm so happy right now. I think I'm gonna take my new thesaurus on a test drive and see what the internet for good is just for funsies. I have to look at the worst games of all time next. I'm fucked. The final dedicated micro console we're gonna be taking a look at today is the Mad Cats Mojo. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to look up the price and subsequently order it online. Yellow. Hey Scott, your old pal questioning Max here. Who is our lord and savior? Jesus Christ! While it's super dark and gritty, the animations make me feel like I should be clapping and stomping my foot to them. They really don't look great. Hey y'all, Scott here, and have you heard? Benito Mussolini faked his death and is making a comeback this E3 in the form of a reboot. Just a rumor though, I would tell you to take it with a grain of salt, but this rumor deserves at least a shaker full of that stuff, because I have some pretty trustworthy sources. <laughs> Hey y'all, Scott here, and happy independence. I would have said day, but I'm such a busy guy. So much so that I'm making my jack-o'-lanterns now so I don't have to in October. Pumpkins are hard to come by this time of year. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And, did you hear that? Either I'm in a really shitty neighborhood, or it's Halloween. I can't tell you how excited I am for the season. I recently ate an entire pumpkin in preparation and I must say I'm definitely more pumpkin than man at this point point. and I also followed the simple nine-step plan to affirm that I'm going to rake in the most possible trick-or-treaters this year but hey what do I know just to reiterate how unqualified I am to be critiquing or even talking about the Call of Duty franchise let's take a look at my resume I am going fucking nowhere hey y'all Scott here and you know what I could go for right now a working kidney I have three days to live all here, hey Scott, and don't mind me, just recuperating from the kidney transplant. I asked why they had to cut open my head for the transplant, and they were like, oh, you're just delusional from the transplant. And I was like, well, it doesn't make any sense, the transplant hasn't happened yet. And they were like, ah, oh, don't make stupid observations. Anyways, I found a refurbished kidney online, and to help pay for it, I had to make the tough decision to sell my NES Classic. Hey Will, I watched the 2006 movie Aragon last night, and I fear hell twice as hard now, which is why I'm totally gonna follow number three on our list. No soldier shall, in time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner. Ah, uh, I was on such a good streak until last night. That commandment's so hard to follow. Dear Scott, how do I ensure my party won't get stopped by the cops? Invite them! Dear Scott, my favorite grocery store's been shut down. Where should I get my food now? Definitely not Big Lots, but hey, if you want me to never turn my back on you, then go for it. Dear Scott, what should my senior prank be this year? 40 Turtles, Viagra, Freshman Hallway. Now with Mother 3 and Captain Rainbow, these are two titles with a fair amount of text, and being such obscure niche games in the time of their release, localization just never happened. With Dead or Alive Extreme 3, that wasn't localized due to being too honkin' sexy. I can picture the American reviews as I speak. A spin-off of the fighting game franchise, Dead or Alive Extreme is a beach volleyball game. Well, if it is my own employee, Chef Kohler. Hey, Chef Kohler, what are we cooking up here? Just cooking up some fresh dough, wanna taste it up? Wow, you've really outdone yourself on this one, Chef Kohler. It tastes just like dough. Of course, with so many deals, many retailers get some deals rolling on Thanksgiving itself, which is kind of lame. I mean, it's Thanksgiving, man. Spend that time with your family. Holy shit, Sonic Forces is only $25. Hey, y'all. Scott here. Embrace yourselves, because I have... Natural selections of bitch, isn't it? Fast forward to 2013, where Nintendo finally unveiled their Toys to Life competitor. Some garbage Pokemon figures that were only obtainable in blind bags exclusively at GameStop for using a garbage eShop game for the Wii U. Hey, that must be the Pokemon Rubble U fan community again. Hey y'all, Scott here. And don't mind me, just passing the time by spending money on passing the time. Way to tick, I should be more relatable to the everyday common man. I should be a poverty! This blows! Black Friday, also referred to as holy shit, I'm buying that tent day, is a 
holiday, joining the likes of Cyber Monday, Fat Tuesday, and Ash Wednesday. I got in the notebooks I have to localize for Tucson, Arizona. Hopefully there's not much I have to change, Jesus! We sports resort, we party, we play, all have loads of fun to be had in them. But of course, there's also... I can't believe it, but it's finally time to start this brand new segment I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. Elusive Demonic Arcade Cabinet Chasers. On this episode, we're going to be trying to find Polybius, and on the next episode... Now, of course, Polybius' main function was brainwashing impressionable youth, so catching it is easier than you may think. What can I say? I just get Demonic Arcade Cabinets. Finally, let's end it with NBA Baller Beats. This game is a rhythm game in the style of Dan Central, but incorporates a basketball in the moves. The problem is I don't have a basketball on me, so hopefully it'll accept a watermelon instead. Yep, it's a rhythm game with a basketball, and for you watermelon fans out there, it does technically work. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I'm on the verge of a little thing I like to call a breakthrough. You see, after I was tasked with doing taste tests on the worst games of all time according to Metacritic, I thought, there must be somebody behind this many games that bad. And after extensively looking through this Sunday's paper, I've narrowed it down to one suspect. Mr. Scoliosis. The world-renowned mastermind himself. Problem is, nobody's ever tracked him down. And I'd have to do that to get down to the bottom of what made these games so bad. Ah, oh, my f***ing back. That must be him! Yeah, it turns out those games were bad due to mismanagement, not because of some guy with a curved spine. Hey y'all, Scott here, don't mind me, just wearing my nostalgia goggles here. These things are a bitch, I have no idea why people wear these. Fucking boxing told me this thing would catch anything and everything. I hate when this happens. Luckily, I was diagnosed with a little thing I like to call street smarts. Why would I do such a thing to make myself so anti-healthy? Well, nobody likes smoking. Need some statistics? No problemo. This graph shows that everybody hates smoking. The shapes represent everybody. Analogy alert! And you want to talk about cartridge-shaped garbage? Take a gander at Chibi Robo Ziplash. This game blows! However, I still have a fondness for this game. Nowadays, Sonic is known for, look how f***ing stupid he looks. Hey all, Scott here. Hey Scott, all here. My name's Terry Lesler and this is my assistant Jeb. Welcome to the third annual Vegans Anonymous meeting. Got a big showing this year. Yeah, getting myself to smoke is proving to be a bit more challenging than I initially thought. So, to trick myself, I'm going to wrap my cigarette in this piece of cheese. With that said, on a grading scale of A to F, I give Star Fox Zero a solid not very good. Oh, <laughs> that's where the deathy aftertaste came from. I should really work on my thumb placement more. But hey, at least the Wii U's legacy will live on within the Switch as the HDMI cables manufactured for the Wii U are still being used with the Switch. Yeah, they're just HDMI cables, but that's almost as resourceful as me. For example, I repurposed all my old jeans as washcloths. It's also Mario in space. I was sold at the very beginning. It's so great. I'm debating nailing the shirt I bought the game into the wall. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Critique That Leak, the first game show to implement the per leak measurement. For example, we're getting canceled per five leaks, and my god, this is utterly terrifying to me. Let's critique some leaks. Hey, y'all. Scott here, and it truly is absolutely astonishing what can happen in 10 years. Hey y'all, Future Scott here, and welcome to 2027, where I wear a chef hat now, and where Robo Ebola reigns supreme. It's a 2027 thing, you wouldn't understand. Man, I was expecting to see a gravestone, but a Robo Ebola epidemic works too. Shit, that smells like hypnosis. Ugh. Elusive Demonic Arcade Cabinet Chasing 101. Never burn a cabinet's wood. The spirit's annoyingly released after that. Now you have to find some form of containment for it.
That watermelon contains one of the most horrific spirits ever conceived. I had to lock it up for good, so I sold it to some jank thrift shop. Man, why don't we buy a rotten watermelon off of that guy? Get that thing out of here! In terms of predictions, I'm looking forward to seeing Nintendo exude mild embarrassment. Oh, oh, and Pikmin! Swapping between console mode and handheld mode is basically instant, meaning you can juggle between the two with ease. Or you can keep the Switch in the dock forever, or you can never use the dock at all. However, I think this is a poor use of resources. Me personally, if I didn't use the dock, I'd use it to hold all my excess napkins. Hey y'all, Scott here, and welcome to a new segment I like to refer to as Tales from the Backlog. Man, what a scary intro. I could shit myself all day to that thing. Holy shit, there's a Madden 08! Now, none of the game cartridges that were used in these competitions have been officially re-released via digital stores, so the only way we can play them nowadays is through... Jesus! Now, in terms of my opinion of it, just a warning, I grew up with the game, so I'm... Biased. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Critique That Leak, the first game show since Are You Smarter Than Fifth Grade to exploit preteens, but this time with their Photoshop skills. Critique That Leak is brought to you by Concrete Matter. There's nothing better to start your day off with. Concrete Matter. Well, let's critique some leaks. So I'm back. I recently bought some iTunes gift cards, one for me and the others for the next homeless guy I see on the street because I'm just a giving person and, you know, he could use that iTunes gift card much more than I could. I'd say one of the most retro bit generations thing the retro bit generations does is with the game Varth, an arcade game with a tall vertical display. This is how it looks on the console. Huh. Could have displayed it like this, guys. Now I have to change my entire display setup to play a game that already runs like piss. Hey y'all, Scott here. Say, have you ever been in homicidal levels of debt? Well, if you haven't, look no further because I'm the culmination of said debt. Let's talk about that. So a few months ago, I purchased this bad boy, the Triller Fixitron. It'll take any bad trailer you throw into it and make it somewhat presentable. The thing is, the bad trailer fixer industry crashed recently and now nobody wants Fixitrons anymore. If you ever recall walking down the street with one of these things, Oh boy, but I love this thing, and only after purchasing it did I realize it only cost 12 grand to have fun. I know, I said the same thing when I first saw this game. The 8th Madden? Surely they've truly run out of ideas at this point. But right when I saw the opening cinematic, I knew I wasn't in for the 8th Madden. I was in for Madden 08. When Modern Warfare was initially released, the developers obviously asked how do we appeal to a younger demographic and bada boom, that's how it's done. The Wii isn't a perfect system, but it shouldn't be chastised for popularizing motion control, rather it should be celebrated for its amazing first party lineup, interesting concepts, and great hidden gems is what I would say if I was f***ing asinine. Do you really think I'd be in support of Virgin McGames console over here? Please, I'm operating on a strict anti-Virgin policy. Elf Bowling 2 isn't bowling, it's shuffleboard, but with approximately 90% more dwarf ass. What's up guys, today we're gonna be doing a durability test of the Ouya. We're gonna be taking one full swing at the device at chest height, let's see how it fares. Yeah, I don't know about you, I wouldn't buy that thing. That thing broke after one hit. The Madden series was based off of the hit book, later adapted into a head coach, and finally turned into video game franchise extraordinaire. Also, we repurposed this closet as a waiting room for all of our customers. How are we doing in there? Next up is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game that I obviously hate. Hey, I went on for seven minutes on why it isn't perfect. If I say anything good about the game, I'd obviously be a giant hypocrite. To that I say, that wasn't me guys, I swear my YouTube channel was hacked. Hey y'all, Scott here, and you call me just tuning into my favorite 50 sitcom. It's the shit Givers. Yep, that's not me. I really need to take a page out of the shit givers book and start giving a shit more. I want to be better than everybody else, so I decided to cut out fast food and to exercise more. Weirdly enough, it turned out the parking lot I threw poppets in was to a gym. It's about to smell like angst and a waste of money! I am going to be unstoppable in this form. <coughs> you know what I like to see? Madden 08 with the DS. You know, I don't actually have that version. The DS version? You don't have the DS version, you have to have the DS version! I mean, if it makes it any better, we can move over to the Wii one. The Wii one. At long last, we can feel what it's like to Madden 08 with the Wii's motion control capabilities. We can feel every Madden, every 08. This is truly a milestone. This is probably one of the more bare-bone home console versions of the prophecy out on the market. Oh my god, I can't say something like that. It's Madden 08, just a bit simplified. Diet God is still God. 
Now with the aid of Tinder Plus, I am cruising through matches. It's like a dream come true. H however, none are really responding to my messages. Yeah, I definitely made a mistake selling the NES Classic. I should probably buy it back. Hopefully I can resell this kidney for a good price. Well, this thing is fucking worthless now. NRA Varmint Hunter is a hunting game released for Microsoft Windows. I can't play it. It's just a poorly made hunting game where you shoot gophers or whatever. And judging by this game's intro, this game is fucking ruthless. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little romp through the realm of bad trailers, and if you could excuse me, I have a job interview to help me crawl out of this whole trailer Fixatron debt problem we all have at some point in our lives. All right, get this. So I got the job, and then they went on about how they have this strict no trailer fixatron policy. <laughs> Let me tell you, I wasn't gonna have any of that. I just started pouting. With vandalism, I have a court hearing on Wednesday. All right, sorry about that, guys. I think just get a little hectic maintaining a restaurant. Oh, hey, 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 back! And look, more guns! For God's sake, Microsoft, we get it. The Second Amendment happened. It's cool, but get over it. I know all these games are totally different, but it's so many games in a row that have the same mechanic. And I know that makes me sound really... Anything that's not made by Nintendo is bullshit. E, but they should have shaken up the game trailer so then a string of games whose main mechanic isn't shooting doesn't happen. I recently beat Sonic CD and I must say it's the epitome of a mixed bag for me. At its best, it's the best. At its worst, it's the worst. Eloquently put it. Hello, Mr. Christ. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm about to exclaim your name. Not anything personal, it's just this leak is gross. All right, see you later, man. Jesus Christ, this leak is horrendous. Hey y'all, Scott here. You ever look at a baby and you're like, fuck yeah, now that's what I call a baby. And then four years later, you're like, well, that's a lot more underwhelming looking back at it all. Super Mario 3D World. The letter is a Wii U eShop game that failed to reach its funding goal on Indiegogo, but they released it anyway. This is a horror game without the horror. Actually, this game is terrifying when you analyze it all. A beach ball? Spinning on its own? I gotta get out of here. Madden 08 is the video game to really redefine the Madden 08 genre. We play as the titular character Madden 08 on his trek to get from here all the way over there with a football included in there somewhere. When the game tries to be creepy, it just ends up making you feel bad for it. Here we have a beating heart and don't worry, the shit in your pants is completely justified. Hey guys, look what I brought. Holy shit, is that Madden 09? Ah! Chef Kohler, what's going on? I thought you were just kneading dough. I was, and it just got out of hand. You always told me, Chef Kohler, there's no such thing as too much dough. Well, Chef Kohler, there is such thing. There is! Chef Kohler, these people are hungry. They need food now. You need to get back to the dough. You want food? The entire kitchen's on fire. Who the f*** cares? I the f*** cares. Just get a mop or something and clean all this up. We need food pronto. That's it. I'll pose as a girl on a new account just so I could see how other guys talk to me. Now, before you get judgmental here, know two things. One, I'm only posing as a girl to get laid. And two, I don't use Tinder all the time. I only use Tinder when I'm bored or horny. Dear Scott, my cat's not doing too well. What should I do? Well then, dude, cats are like furry cockroaches. They can literally survive anything. Like, I could probably eat a cat and it would probably survive. Dear Scott, I really like this girl, but don't know how to tell her. What should I say? Here we have my three patented guaranteed success rate nonstick pickup lines. Favorite barnyard animal? I'll have sex with you if you have sex with me. Fuck, mommy. Dear Scott, can we hang out? Sure, I have unlimited time for the next 45 minutes. Hey y'all, Scott here, and this game blows. It could really use some plastic shit. Hi. Oh, thank God. Guys, I am the target demographic for a micro console. Just grab your nearest Merriam-Webster's dictionary and turn to the page with the definition for micro console buyer man on it. You'll find my picture right then and there. We're not playing the version on GBA, which has numerous frame rate problems, screen crunch, and slowdown. Ew. No, we're playing the Genesis original, black box and all. Jesus. <laughs> Lucky shot. I hate re-releases like this. This, Player's Choice, Greatest Hits, Platinum Hits, they can all piss themselves in the dick. They're just an eyesore. Why does Player's Choice have to be yellow? Why? Alright, so you know what they say. If you can survive the first 13 years of your life, you can survive just about anything. So let's see if not only could this sucker survive a long retail life, but also, you know, a pummeling. No. How am I gonna play Madden now?
Hey y'all, Scott here, and Xtree Xtree, read all about it. E3 2017 looms. Turns out the newspaper industry was struggling so hard they let virginity reign supreme, and now we're getting front page headlines like this now. Hey, looks like I was diagnosed with stealing every copy of Madden 18 from Target out of spite-itis because I just stole every copy of Madden 18 from Target out of spite. People need to realize there's only one Madden that matters. There's enough Madden in this world, but not enough 08. Hey everybody, this is a pre-recorded news segment from August 2016. I'm just going to take a wild shot in the dark and say that all copies of Madden 18 are stolen from Target. Holy sh**, I called it! But, as somebody who enjoys standard video games, I am obligated to say these games would be a lot better with a real man's controller. so much better. Thusly, if I have to give the Nintendo Switch a score, I'll give it a solid 4.5 out of 6. And hey, Zelda Breath of the Wild finally came in, so I can finally open this box up and talk about what an amazing game it is on the Nintendo Switch. F Dear Scott, I really want to get into more politics. Where do I start? The only thing I know about politics is the president of Russia's name is Vlad the Impaler. Dear Scott, my favorite restaurant is Waffle House. What's wrong with me? Not much. The only problem with that place is I know a fair amount of people that told me they've been murdered there, so watch your back. I didn't know you could force cataracts this hard. And even then, if you decipher what these titles say, get ready for potential titles for fan fiction. Smash Brothers Blue Nightmare, Paper Mario Spotlight of the Thousand Year Door, Mario Strikers Epic, and even Wario Land 5 Upside Down. It's obviously gonna be the inferior way to play it compared to many other ways, or even the way you have to play it because you already like indie games, or you already like mobile games, you already have somewhere to play these games. So the game library on these things reek, the controllers are usually subpar, and these things appeal to basically a non-existent market. And I think I have scoliosis, but I'm too self-conscious to ask my doctor about it, because every single time I go to the doctor, the doctor's just like, wow, Scott, you look really healthy, see me in a few months, and I'm like, thanks, doc! But then I'm like, I go home, and I'm like, this smells like scoliosis! However, here's the thing, I believe some pretty crazy stuff, but that is just preposterous! Hey, check this out, the Madden-o-meter is off the charts with the VAG, and the 18 o is not too far off. That might be where the stash is. Is Officer Wall on his way there? Knowing him, he should be close. Oh, s He's just been driving around in circles for the last half an hour. Let's just go there ourselves. Remember the last Madden scandal? Shit! Check the fridge! Through all of its only six zones, easy boss fights, unfair challenges, enemy placement and design, stupid dumb and stupid special stages, I think I actually hate this game. Yeah, this game actually reeks. Sega. Son of a bitch, I'm so lucky! Hey y'all, Scott here, and welcome to New Franchise Watch, where we find new IPs so you don't have to. Today we're gonna try and lure a new IP by using two of its favorite things, no audience and a shoestring budget. Fuck, there it is! Had to fight to wrangle this sucker up a bit, but lo and behold, the elusive arms. You see, it's elusive because nobody bought it. Ooh. So I recently took a lot of new photos. I specifically got this dude who works for Shutterstock to do it for me, and I think these pictures came out pretty well. I also buffed out all the kinks in my bio and came up with this. Hey gang, King Handjob here. Just just showing how much experience I have. I am what many would consider a party within a profile. You know, I'm just a fun guy, you know? In terms of future plans, I would like to be 25 years old someday. You know, I have aspirations too, you know? No ghost allowed. I've had too many bad experiences with those things. This bag scientifically proven to show me how well I had it off with Madden 08 being my only Madden of choice. Ew. Well, we're off to a rip-roaring start. I went to the local carry-out and I picked up some classic Mario Bros. cigarettes. And I'm just gonna give these a solid huff, and a puff, and a blow. I'm gonna try and find another job. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, hi, I was wondering if you guys are taking applications. Thought it was a cool little figure. And then it hit me. Ah, so this is what overcompensation looks like. Leaky Steve ended up sending me this big Smash Brothers leak, so I gotta check it out. No way! Hey y'all, Scott here, and would you shut up for like a minute because I'm trying to focus on my Connect Sport Season 2 speedrun. If I screw this up, the KSS 2 speedrunning community won't let me hear the end of it. And up to bat comes a very promising new talent. Slash. 
throws it right down. Strike. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know humiliation came included with this thing. I can go all day on this. Seriously, people know me as the guy who can come up with Smash Brothers stages. Others are like, no way, and I'm like, Art Academy stage, and they're like, whoa, wait a second, man, and I'm like, Elite Beat Agent stage, and then they're like, good god, man, slow down, and I'm like, the Sanderson's house from Cheap Robo, and they're like, this man is a f***ing animal, he must be stopped! One of my favorites back in the day was running, but now I'd rather just tape my Wiimo to a fan and let it play itself. Before we get out of here, I'm feeling queasy in the most negative way possible. Is that something I said? You see, it's elusive because nobody bought it. Huh. Well, before anybody gets angry over that comment, here's my official response. Just kidding! And then ending it on Beyond Good and Evil 2, one of the most anticipated, long-awaited sequels of all time. Of course, it's weird because the characters swear like every two syllables in the trailer. I think they obviously looked into some marketing research and realized people don't care about talking monkeys if they ain't swearing. I like the diversity in sizes and detail in the figurines. I love Olimar's helmet, the shiny material used for Dr. Mario's pill, Captain Falcon looks dead on. For some reason, I always really like the Greninja amiibo. It's so cool to own a miniature Rob the Robot. And look at Bowser with his spikes, yeesh, I definitely wouldn't stick him in my mouth. Which is why I decided to go forth with the world's first ever no touch speedrun of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's a work in progress. Hey y'all, Scott here, and what you're hopefully looking at right now is one of my favorite water bottle brands out there, Lake On The Go from Water Productions. I'm pretty brand loyal to Water Productions, but I won't just buy anything from them willy-nilly. They really have to prove the worth of their product to me before I buy. Water is back, introducing Water ZEX Plus, the cooler, more anti way of staying hydrated. It's Water ZEX Plus from Water Productions. This ain't your granddad's water. Well, I'm sold. Oh, hot dog. Not only is an incredibly beautiful woman interested in me, but an attractive one as well. There's only two ways this can end. Marriage followed by sex. Or slight embarrassment. At this point, I'll take anything. All right, let me just click this link to messenger. Oh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll come across women I know. Well, that's enticing specifically because the only women I know are cartoon foxes. Do you agree to keep the user's identity secret? No, because if somebody asks me, I'll start giggling too much and they'll see right through me. The women on this site are not at all interested in a relationship. Boring. Do you agree to practice safe sex? What is this, middle school? Lame. Age group, gonna go for the lows and the highs. And what type of body turns you on? Ooh, I love Buffalo Wild Wings. And what type do I prefer? I'll say all. Well, bamo! Well, if Nintendo wasn't interested in giving Amiibo purpose, I sure as hell won't miss an opportunity to kill an afternoon, and I'll do it myself. So, hi, everybody, and welcome to How Many Amiibo Can I Fit in My Mouth? Let's pick one at random here. Damn it! Please take off your shoes. Here at On Your Market Said Munch, we want our customers to come in with depression encrusted shoes and leave with non lame ones. Take them away, boys! They'll be back when you're done with your meal. Nintendo needs to start off strong. Just get into the games. Don't waste time on games that are coming out within the month like ARMS or something. Fuck. I'd probably give 3D World a solid 7.5 out of 10, but I have to wholeheartedly love it because there's no true 3D Mario game on the horizon. Ah, yeah, that's a thing. But I'm... Done rebuying water. I've already bit the bullet on water ZEX Plus. I don't need. Oh, I can't resist. I'm such a water fanboy. Well, I have the sudden urge to make a DeviantArt account. But it went over Star Fox, Zelda, Mario Party, which were all shown off at E3 2014. Of course, a lot of this wasn't and was obviously fake. Shit, that was five leaks. And here we have the game's hub world, Jillian Michaels Fitness Camp, and I gotta say it looks more concentration than fitness. Tacoma, what the hell was that? No, seriously, I feel like indie game trailers at Microsoft press conferences do the worst job at telling you what their game is like. Like, remember the trailer for Inside last year? What was that? Uh-oh. Yeah, I bought this game used and it didn't come with the heart rate monitor, but let's just see how far we can get in the game without them. Yep, they're on to us. 
Alright, so that's just a few E3 rumors from the past few years, and I better hurry up and end it here because E3 2017 is happening, like, right now. But I still have to post my leak to 4chan. I constructed a potential menu screen for Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo Switch, just showing off Smash Run as a new mode and connectivity to the 3DS and Wii U to transfer trophies, custom characters, etc. Etc. Now you might be saying, Scott, other people have made fake leaks for publicity before. Yeah, keep spewing that and make sure to tell me when I start paying attention. Oh, breaking news! God exists! And he's a pretty nice guy because I don't have to create an account to post on 4chan. Alright, so fuck, I realize Nintendo Network isn't a part of Nintendo Switch's infrastructure. And it looks like these people aren't having any of it. Well, let me just edit that out. There, now there's the real screenshot. Now they'll believe it's real. Hey, based on my indecision on whether to make this a game show or a talk show, we have a caller. You're on the air. Hey, Scott. Long time caller, first time listener. Leaky Steve, our leaker on the field? What are you doing here? I can't help myself, man. I'm gonna start leaking if I can't help myself. Oh no, here I go again. Wait a minute, Leaky Steve. Are you sending us an exclusive leak? Sure am. Now I trust you with every potential leak, Leaky Steve, but I think you're gonna have to prove yourself to our loyal audience. All right, fine. Just in case you guys don't trust me, here's a picture of my foot to prove that I'm real. The controls don't make me feel empowered or like I'm really flying the R-Wing. They make me feel weak and stupid. I don't feel like a Star Fox. I feel like a loser. The 3DS has lived an incredibly full life, but I'm glad Nintendo decided to kill it off. That means all of their development efforts can go towards the Switch, and that means we get more games for the Switch. Excuse me, that must be my doctor. My results must be in. Yellow. Hey Scott, it's Dr. E. Bill here. Got your test results in, and it seems you've been diagnosed with disappointment. Oh. That's why we're going to be looking at a reporter on the field, Reporty Jim, who is currently reporting on the console war grounds. How's it looking down there, Reporty Jim? I need to stop sending people to cover wars. My god. I think I finally get it. This beautiful, illustrious planet wasn't made to just sit inside and do some good old wholehearted thumb twiddling. No! It was made to be nurtured and protected and to be made it better every single day. I think I finally get it. I think I finally found my calling. I found that. Shit! Hey y'all! Scott here in nature. What century is this? It totally slipped my mind that I have no sex waiting for me at home right now. The Nintendo Switch has officially launched, and it's bringing with games to play like Zelda and menus. This is technically the first game console I ever bought at launch, so let's see how long it takes to disappoint. Alright, so while I wait for her to throw herself at me, I think I need to do something different to my Tinder profile, something to help it stand out from the crowd. Oh, I'll, I'll make a video to help sell myself, like a movie trailer, you know? Uh. The only problem is I sold my computer to help fund Tinder Plus. Uh, the thing is, you know, I spent $10 on Tinder Plus and $140 on the iTunes gift cards for Homeless Man McGee out there. So I guess I'm going to have to use Windows Movie Maker on my old computer to help make this trailer. I was reported. Oh, hey y'all, Scott here, and well, this is awkward. Let's put an end to that. This here is a state of the art, it's that time machine. It formulates a topic that's embarrassingly topical, so you always have something trendy to converse about. Looks like it's forming something now. Wow, oh wow. Who knew video games could be so bad? Hopefully those games didn't affect my sanity too much. <laughs> yeah, those games are pretty bad. Hey y'all, Scott.
Scott here, and I'm just sitting here with my old pal Good Video Game. I just can't wait to tear right into you for a hearty dose of 70 or above on Metacritic. <laughs> Whoops. I left this milk out for the past week, but I haven't opened it until now, so it's still brand new. It's probably fine. <laughs> Holy sh! That was rotten, but how could it have been that way? It was new! New Super Mario Brothers. Uh, well, with the introduction of a sequel, they subtitled this one, The Eight Pages. The game stars this flashlight, some grass, a few trees, and... Oh shit, it's a white guy! Adults Only is by far the rarest rating, with only 27 games rated as such. Now, there's really not a ton of games rated AO for a few reasons. One of them being the fact that most AO rated games are basically... Hey y'all, Scott here. Off. Oh, to buy video games right now, I have to leave my room. Hey, hello, Scott here, and say, have you ever been in a pickle like this? Fellas, fellas, I am so horny! Hey, y'all, Scott here. Say, do you remember when I took a look at the first Sonic the Hedgehog game and realized that it's filled with design flaws and problems? Yep, the fans loved me for saying that. <laughs> On to Sonic 2! Hey y'all, Scott here, and step right up to the birth off, where we fuse illegal gambling and pregnant women. Which pregnant woman will squirt one out first? Place your bets and let's find out. I have been ordered to issue an apology by the court of law. In no instance should childbirth be linked to illegal gambling. And if there's one thing that makes childbirth a drag, it's illegal gambling. Please forgive me and don't set up a childbirth off of your own. I must now stay at least 50 feet away from any pregnant woman and must complete 14 minutes of community service by informing the public on a much less problematic topic. Game console births and the titles that come with them. Shit, that's it? It's a Wii version of Beer Pong. Now, I'm definitely going to be critiquing this one hard. It better live up to Beer Pong's legacy. I know everything about the sport. Blue 42, hike hike. Now, rumor has it, this system was designed as a way to combat complaints from consumers, as people would put their drinks on top of the NES like a coffee table. They would fall over and damage the system. This new one? Yeah, I can't confirm. No drinks fit on here. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I just had the health inspector in. They've expanded from small businesses to shows about stupid Nintendo games. Let's see what he had to say. Great place, gotta work on the religion ratio, though. Shit, that was a priest! Hey y'all, Scott here, and I love Super Smash Brothers so much I could scream. The fighting mechanics, the cast of characters, the collectibles, the clone characters, the online, big battlefield, this fucking menu, Smash Tour, Fire Emblem. Don't worry if you didn't play it perfectly, because there's no one way to play a song. He's right. Pretty good, right? And don't you stand there thinking you can't have a high like this. Come on, there's a Madden for everybody. I know, pretty wild, right? And take my word for it, EA Sports cracked the code and has made sure that each and every Madden game is a different stroke for a different folk. Madden 03 and 04, you played for the lore, packed with stuff never done before. Madden 97, turn it to 11, this game can cure all kinds of depression. Madden 25, why did we travel through time? It's pretty alright. John Madden football, now I've seen it all. Shows how the mighty just refuse to fall. Pick any game you want, you have my guarantee, cause there's a Madden just for me. Yeah, I know, I hate talking politics, but everybody has a right to Madden. Just ask the Madden 3DS community, those guys get it. Madden Overdrive, not a nosedive. EA Sports, you continue to thrive. What's their bottom goal? Their honest intent, providing players with pride and accomplishment. Madden CD, oh boy, oh gee, why can't these things start growing on trees? Madden 08, it's Nirvana on a plane. I don't like that one. You're a f***ing disgrace. Pick any game you want, you have my guarantee. Not you. Yeah, I like this one. Now, I wasn't there for the great brawl wait sesh of 2005 to 2008. I wasn't actively following gaming news at the time, but I've concluded it went like... Nice. There's gonna be f***ing stages? I've actually been using this time to read up on an old family recipe to bake my own milk for this very moment. That's probably it. 
Ah, where's the rewind button? Well, that was a hearty dose of garbage. I'm getting kind of tired of seeing all these leaks, so I decided I'm going to Washington, D.C. to propose a leak tax to Congress. Wish me luck. It went really great! Everybody listened to me, and at the end they gave me this slick coin, and they told me to come again next time, so I think we have this one in the bag, son of a bitch that was an AA meeting. Hey y'all, Scott here, and consider yourself not Scott, because you could never be as desperate as I am right now. I was looking up houses for sale, and decided it was time for my weekly ponder sesh about how I'll never own a house. Of course, my elbow was on the buy house key on the keyboard the whole time. I bought f***ing 20 of them! Take my towel. Well, I like both of those things, so why not? Hey y'all, Scott here. Are your games too balanced? Do you suffer from not being a dirtbag enough? Want to commit video game adultery? Well, might I recommend cheat codes? Before I use cheat codes, I look like this. And look at me now. Hey y'all, Scott here. Embrace yourself, fellow family members, specifically those who are insecure about your placement in the family, because we have a new addition to the family. Ringo the Fly! An absolute all-star if I've ever seen one. I bought him at the pet store recently. Completely house trained. Watch as he avoids the swatter. Yeah, this could have been easily avoided. Overall, I like some consistency in my game boxes. Is that OCD? Well, as somebody who unknowingly has OCD would say, I don't know. Uh, hi, my name is Jick. Uh, my friends call me Todd, but uh, my real name is Scott. Bankruptcy is in the air, and I took full advantage of it at the last minute. This right here is what us Ohioans refer to as a Toys R Us. Toys R Us came out of the closet and declared bankruptcy, and here we are mere months after the store decided to f*** out. Yeah, when Toys R Us was closing, I realized I could finally fulfill one of my four goals in life, to be the last customer at Toys R Us ever! It was crazy. It was like a building, like a giant cube. Four sides, one top. Also, it's been reported that if you do touch a controller like this, you will most definitely contract bed bugs. Damn it. You gotta be ruthless out there. You can't dance around and get in the membership card. Remember, you're not out there to make a friend. You're out there to make a sale. No manners, no subtlety. Join our membership, f**khead! Now the killer apps of Dick Vitale are his catchphrases. We have such mainstays as a diaper dandy, slam bam jam, dipsy doo dunkaroo, and any and all varieties of a phrase that even resembles it's awesome, baby. In 1994, Time Warner Interactive struck a deal to cram as much Vitale in a Sega Genesis cartridge as humanly possible. And that's all I got from the game's Wikipedia article. Look how small this is, you could tattoo this entire thing on your foot. And before anybody asks, no, this game has no relation to College Hoops 2K8. This is bullshit. Ah! Hey y'all, Scott here, and you might have noticed this 2 liter Mountain Dew and sack of Doritos I'm about to fling into my gullet. Don't worry, I feel a good reason for doing this coming on to me. That'll work. Not only do I want to become a true enjoyer of all things video game, but I also want an excuse to go to this hospital near me. They're really cool. They got a vending machine and everything. Oh my god, this room is crazy my arteries. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I've just been promoted at my job to the title of stay-at-home son. <laughs> Suffice to say, I've had a lot of extra time on my hands, and I've been discovering the legends of lost video games. Someone please hire me. Hey y'all, Scott here. I've realized today's youth is way into getting corrupted, so it's only fair to give every possible good or service an age-appropriate rating. Introducing the Food Eating and Ratings Association, or FEAR for short, where we give all food on the market a rating so you can decide if it's right for you and your kids. E for edible, R for ranch, and ITLFN. It tastes like f***ing nickels. Play and you'll be screaming awesome baby with a capital A. That would look f***ing stupid. Hey y'all, Scott here, and it's amazing to think that a company established all the way back in 1889 made this. Whoops. Hey y'all, Scott here. Oh god, this is gonna sound so mean. I'm sorry if this comes off as negative. This redesign f***ing reeks. Nintendo taught me it's okay to be self-conscious about my appearance since they obviously were with a 3DS after changing it like 12 times. Well, with these online chat room kids games gone forever, I guess I'm gonna have to relive what it's like to be a kid in one of these things by just going to a chat room and posing as a 12 year old. Gotta ask this person how old they are these days first off, and with the age old age question being thrown out there, I think I'm gonna leave it at young. 18? Get out of here. Think young, go younger. Don't worry guys, we're in an online chat room. These people are wholesome with a capital H. 
Scratch that. Well, while I wait for people to finally succumb to my bullshit, I can take out a loan and start buying things for my business, which will help me fund my Scammo membership, and that will help me pay off my 20 houses. <laughs> One sec, let me check something. All right, we're set. Cheat codes, what separated the men from the scumbags. Yes, a WiiWare staple. Sexy poker is a competent replacement for any form of intercourse, a game for the rest of us. Checking out the gallery, we can see some slick pics of the girls we're about to play poker against. The game also lets out a- Hello? If you don't do anything for a certain amount of time, making sure you're not just staring at the screen absolutely dumbfounded that we are potentially going to see a sexy poker. Here, we're introduced to Sakura, everybody's favorite nurse. I wonder why. If we impress her, she might give us her special treatment. Thank God, this scoliosis is a bitch. We can see here she's in prime poker playing position. I start pummeling through a poker game with her and bada bing bada boom, we get the goods. Looks like I have to remove some clothes. Oh. Fuck yeah. I hate when that happens. I don't know if Dick Vitale ever made the statement, if only I was the basketball. And this isn't only Dick Vitale fans will get this Easter egg, but man, I've been trying to figure out the reason behind this for the past 15 seconds. Dick is wheeled in here, screams 11 letters in a row, and we have a title screen that delivers the hardiest out there. With this being slated as a standard Nintendo Direct, and with this also being the second year of the Nintendo Switch, I felt it was reasonable to expect a bit more than last year. I mean, hey, the console's been out for a while, and the presentation was gonna be longer. Before we get into what I thought of Nintendo's E3 showcase, excuse me, I have to wipe some shit off of my shoe. Ah oh man, that explains a lot. Oh my god, are they remaking Final Fantasy VII in HD? I think they're remaking Final Fantasy VII in HD! They're remaking Final Fantasy VII in HD! F Listen, I need a right quick way to prove to everybody that I have copious amounts of money and I hate sex. It's a Christmas miracle! Hey y'all, Scott here. I've been on a strict anti-calendar agenda the entire year so far. I have no f***ing clue what month or day it is, so I'm really at a loss as to why both my jeep meter and creep meter are going off the charts. Yeah, that's probably why. Five arcade gems, and ah, my two favorite things, arcs and aids. If I wanted to get laid, I'd talk about Donkey Kong Barrel Blast for 10 minutes, but nope. Today I gotta stick with the trends to nab my virgin points with ease, but how exactly will I do that? By looking at the most viral things on the planet, of course, and the only thing more viral than influenza has got to be this garbage. You know, the games you see played on YouTube by screaming people with dyed hair and videos with all caps titles. No Carolina one, then who did? Warm up the bus, baby! This one is history! Jesus, Dick, I'm grieving. This guy's just eating a sandwich. Now, am I anal about losing or completely indifferent to it? I don't know, but personally, I think I'm on team anal for this one. Now, of course, playing basketball is only one part of the Dick Vitale's awesome baby experience. We also have the extra mode options. <laughs> Look at this, we have a sound test! We can go through all of Dick Vitale's phrases, like... Awesome, baby! And... Awesome, baby! It never gets old. Hey man, can you drop my dad at the hospital? I'm busy. Hi, Chet Shaft, game on a shelf manager. Hi, Scott Wozniak, games on a shelf employee to be. So, uh, what makes you want to work at games on a shelf? Well, I love plastic, and discs are great too. You know, we're really looking for somebody who's into all different types of games. Are, are you that kind of guy? I don't give a piss. It didn't do much for me. But it really didn't excite me. The title never interested me. It didn't look all too entertaining. I wasn't interested. It doesn't appeal to my taste. It doesn't really appeal to me. Not super into mobile games. Way that makes me not care at all. I'm not an RPG guy. But I'm not a Xenoblade guy. So I'm not really into it at all. I like the Wii. Perfect or hard. Street Fighter Cross Tekken. This comes with 45 gem power-ups, and people still say the economy's in shambles. Now, the Wii U doesn't have Smash Run, instead it has gonorrhea. Hey all, Scott here, and would you look at the time? It's that time again for my weekly birth certificate check. Huh. Turns out my full name is officially Scott. We'll eventually take a look at the first Mega Man Wozniak. It's all starting to make sense. Ah. The Collector. Hey! A seeming pile of virginity who cares deeply about how his Yonoid cartridge looks. What the hell? I do not know what happened there, so whatever. Let's just forget Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops and go back to playing some Madden now. Ah! All my copies of Madden away have been Vitale. All right.
right, everybody, you can stop with the comments. I'm finally gonna take a look at Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops. So Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops is what I would personally consider to be an all-time hooping classic. It's definitely the pinnacle of the Dick Vitale-related Genesis games with awesome baby in the title. Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops. What's all that about? Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops has a lot of unseen and unused content in it. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where today I'm gonna complete Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops. <laughs> Yeah, if you haven't already noticed, Nintendo wasn't too keen on giving these games interesting setups or even just clever ones. They always start off with the gang just hanging out and then bam, terrorism. I really wish video game stores could be more of a place to just kind of hang out and browse games, maybe even play them, but instead, whenever I go, I'm bombarded by my favorite question in all of retail. What brings you in today? I always follow that up with a just looking around, browse the games until I realize the pop figures take up more space than the Wii U section, and then leave empty handed. Everybody is a bit more accepting of murder, which can only mean one thing. Halloween is here! It's just... it doesn't really feel like it to me. Uh, the calendar may be screaming October, but my body's screaming March. I guess it's because I haven't really been scared yet this month. And of all months, October is prime piss-yourself season. I just want to get scared, but it's just not happening. Look, my hand's been bleeding this entire time. It's doing nothing for me. Actually, from what I can tell, you can play the majority, if not all the instruments with just the Wii Remote itself. But to get that sweet, sweet immersion, you'll probably want to use the nunchuck for some of them. Doesn't matter though, because T minus five minutes in, the immersion's already been broken. Who the hell doesn't blink while playing violin? Dick Vitale is a myth. I like Dick Vitale more like I don't like Dick Vitale. But I drew devil horns on him. That's how you know he's bad. The police agree with me. This just in, a local anti Dick Vitale nut job decides to publicly whine about Dick Vitale, screaming such obscenities as Vince Young and EA Sports. He's being put under house arrest, and quite frankly, we're just glad this kind of lunatic is off the streets. I never downloaded this initially, mainly because do I look like a Pokemon Rumble downloader to you? Overall, I can't lie to you guys, that was incredibly mediocre. But, I have to admit, that Garden of Eden mechanic was pretty deep. See, it teaches people to succeed in life and to take chances while also not being overly greedy. That's incredible for a party game, and on second thought, I think the Bible game deserves a lot more praise than it's given. It's unprecedented, unheard of, unorthodox. Finally, they made a game for me, fan service for Christianity. Regardless of faith, you gotta admit this game right here is pretty sick. It's a crowd pleaser, it's a converter. It's a jack of all trades, it never fails. Forget enlightenment, this will never grow stale. Learn about the Bible while you have fun. All thanks to Crave Good Scripture, no biggie. Your commitment, I'm not picky. The Bible game, it does it all. It's a trivia game and a bathroom stall. Win a round, you'll feel all swell. Come in fourth place, we'll see in hell. A game no other corresponds to Christianity and beyond. A sin or not. I'm not ashamed to give this game Two out of ten. Before a trip to GameStop, I would rummage through the games I had and said, okay, I don't need this, this, or this. Bring them all there, get some sweet, sweet trading credit, and pick up some new games. Of course, now I hate this fucking punk for selling his Game Boy Player for a copy of Just Dance 3, but back then, without a job, trading in games was just the way of life. Hey all, Scott here. Tambourine selling's in my blood, so welcome to the Barine Bazaar, where tambourine selling's our specialty. Well, things are really heating up, which means there's only one thing to do to maintain our monopoly on the tambourine market. F***ing panic. With every purchase of a tambourine, you get a free copy of Wii Music. Wham! Damn! Now, are there any features of the game that could only be done with the Wii U, seeing how it's an exclusive? No. I mean, it's not surprising the game can't handle something crazy on the second screen. Like, look at this. The game f***ing stuttered picking up a collectible. Well, let's finally get to actually playing the game. I'll be rocking out on the version included in the Mega Man Legacy Collection on the Nintendo Switch specifically. Now, a major problem with this version is that it has a feature that's a forbidden fruit, if you will, the rewind button. I'm going to hell. Hey all, Scott here. I've heard the request and yep, I'm finally gonna do it. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at House Arrest. 
Take a look at your nearest ankle. If you have one of these guys plastered on it, then you get it. House arrest has been a thing since the glory days, AKA the 17th century. Simpler times, when you could force somebody to not leave their house without ankle jewelry. Now, I've recently been subjected to house arrest, so consider this a first impressions, not a full on review. This blows! The Game Genie was something the consumer bought after already purchasing an NES game. It's like if you took a book and changed all the periods to commas. I mean, yeah, you're a fucking lunatic, but it's your book. Do whatever you want. Ooh, Call of Duty World at War, a game based on World War II. How fun! Now this one is pretty lame, just a bunch of multiplayer bonuses are included, but what do you get physically with this box? Well, a box for everything to come in, that's nice, and also a collectible canteen, well I'll be. I can't wait to drink out of this thing and consume water and swallow liquids, f my night's ruined. This canteen doesn't open at all, it's literally just a prop. I feel like it would have cost them less to just buy real canteens that you can actually drink out of. Now I don't have a canteen to drink out of. What am I supposed to do in a life or death situation? Don't worry guys, we'll have plenty of canteens. I stocked up on World of War Collector's Editions. You fool! Happy Wheels is a physics-based game that plays in your web browser. You can choose from a variety of vehicle driving characters with a seemingly unlimited supply of user-created levels at your disposal. Many stages are filled with hazards that can brutally wound or kill you, which adds to the fun. Definitely one of the most entertaining games to play in your browser. Uh, I mean... The Vectrex in 1982 had a similar form factor for its controller, but the NES introduced something huge. Now I know, first thing many people probably said when they saw this cross on the controller was pump the brake speed racer, nobody puts religion in my dig dug. Let me catch you up on the development cycle. Step one, I do the work. Step two, disaster strikes. Step three, explaining myself. Hey Potts, funny story, so uh, the hard drive corrupted. And finally, step one, I do the work. This happens every two weeks. I don't know what I'm doing wrong! And hey, we couldn't have helped but notice that you've been completely rejected by society. Yeah, I've been trying to pull off that look lately. <laughs> sure is crazy what a little bit of public indecency will do to somebody. Yeah, some people are saying you're on a bit of a depression field dick by a towel protest. Here, this always helps me when I'm down. No, I'm fine! Hey, you wanna know what depression doesn't look like? Hey man, uh, listen, corporate makes us do this every year, but this is just a little manager evaluation form. You just fill it out, let them know how I'm doing, you know. All right. Uh, is your manager manipulative? I'd say no to that if I were you. Hey, looks like we got some trade-ins coming in. Knock them dead. All right, total trade-in value is gonna be 1050. Well, uh, I got this Skylanders for the Wii U. How much is it now? 1048. Let's meet the babes first, and here we have a little bio of some characters in the guy game canon. Zoe wishes to be able to jog without pain, major props to the guy game for hiring an amputee, and Mandy and Mandy apparently despise interior decorating. Hey y'all, Scott here, and welcome, 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 marketing rats. This is Marketing 101, the 101st edition of our marketing tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to successfully market that Nintendo GameCube game that you're selling in 2018 marketed. Thanks for learning the ins and outs of marketing with me today. If you choose to purchase our next video release, I'll show you how to put a down payment on a house with just your signature on this piece of paper. Yeah, I was in the video and even following the directions. I don't know why, I came out with bread. Also on the back, we have some activities for you to tackle during unemployment. Enough gawking, let's crack this thing open and get to the goods. Time for a test drive. Oh my god, I did this. I'm a fucking genius. I don't need this anymore. Thankfully, all is saved as we can share our aquarium to friends. Damn it! All in all, the new Super Mario Brothers series aren't bad games. And that's about it. Overall, not the most impressive out there. Holy shit, it comes with a poster. At least some of the stages are shared between the versions. I quite like the boxing ring, and Wily Castle would have been great if it weren't for the leading cause of the phrase, oh for fuck's sake. Hey y'all, Scott here, and today we're gonna be discussing a classic case of... It's that time again. Let's go to Best Buy and see how many games in the Mario series are on the shelf. Alright, now let's see how many games in the Sushi Striker series they have. What? And since video games are the ultimate way to fulfill your wildest dreams, I'm naming myself Dennis. Forget all this work, I'm going the easy way out. I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. Now I know what you're thinking, a new business doesn't make a profit until 30 minutes before swimming, but an entrepreneur takes risks, and I'm willing to make my money the old-fashioned way with my own business idea. Vegas-style funerals. You know, you're in, you're out. All I need to do is write a check to get this all started. Let me check my checking account. Shit, all those checks I wrote myself bounced. 
I have $20 left. In the meantime, I can go on Tinder to try and swoon people over. They'll give me money out of sympathy if I play my cards right. I'll ask her how many dogs she could fight in a row. Whoa, two truths and a lie? Uh, I'm white, I'm nearsighted, and I eat fucking dogs. God, enough with the dogs, Scott, stupid. But it's all right, because I'm about to say something that no hormone in crescentine has ever said. Don't worry, it's just a phase. Hey all, Scott here, and this is bad. Real bad. Hey, what's the matter, pussy friend? You're gonna get murdered. Who even is Dick Vital? Not Satan, that's for sure. Why even is everybody so pro Dick Vital's awesome baby college hoops? Because it's awesome, baby! He's the best. It's completely by law. Bra saw a few delays after initially being pegged for a December 2007 release. Yes, the Smash community is stoked. But when? Well, not next year. Not next spring. Releasing on January 31st, 2008 in Japan, March 9th, 2008 in North America, and June 27th, 2008 in Europe, was the wait worth it? People f***ing hate this game. Woo! We got a live one! Somebody joined, uh, maybe I'll tell them I see you like Picto Chat. Ah, uh, the last two messages didn't send. Yeah, that sounded a lot more murdery than I wanted it to. I always wanted to try to learn music, but after a few failed attempts, I maintain I never had a single musical intestine in me. So I guess I wanted to see if Wii Music could be my gateway into learning more about music. Fast forward to now, and I still have no clue what a f***ing trumpet is. It's fair to say Wii Music didn't grab me. Scott here, and it's time to mosey on over the entire galaxy to discover the world of video game gimmicks. Time to set coordinates for numbers, and lots of them. Well, it looks like we're getting a transmission from the planet Wagwan. Oh, please, God, help! I don't want to look like a jackass playing Wii music! Oh, God. It looks like this is what happens when gimmicks go too far. You have to unlock the vast majority of songs in the game, and most are unlocked via doing more lessons with Dr. Toot. Yeah, we actually have to grind in Wii Music to unlock all the songs. The main problem is, once we actually unlock some songs... They pull a Chibi Robo Zip Lash on us. This song selection blows! You can't tell me Nintendo didn't have the funds at the time to license actual songs that actual people actually like. I'm big into the piss fandom, so when a product claims to rid it from all humanity, I gotta see what it's all about. Powerful LED urine finder. <laughs> That's what they used to call me in high school. I, I have a confession. I, I, I don't really like Dick Vitale. Oh, oh, what, what's the name of that? I know it. Free speech! Alright, what do we have here? <laughs> Aliens Colonial Marines. Yeah, this game turned out to be a little too fucking terrible for most people's liking, but we don't care about that. How does this collector's edition stack up? I like the packaging, and this box set comes with some sheets of paper. Paper with words, paper with pictures, even paper with, here you go, some expired DLC codes. Yeah, Sonic 2 is really where the series started to get good in my opinion, and after seeing how it set the standard for video games released on a Tuesday, it made me want to do something just as monumental as that was. How about I'll go the rest of my life without verbs? From here on out, I will never use a verb. Damn it! After the 2600, controllers went through this ugly phase for a while, and it was all because a controller designer went home for the week and looked at his phone and said, I'm drunk. Why? Collector's editions can be lamer than lame sometimes, but hey, if you personally see some value in one, go for it. It's not like some of them are the only versions released of certain games, falsely advertise their contents, include items that you're never going to use, take up 500 square feet of your house, are ludicrously overpriced, or one of 15 different versions, none of which come with all the content, or just call collector's edition on the box for no reason. Yeah, that would be ridiculous! Devil's Third. It wasn't that great, wasn't that bad either. It was just right. However, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines Devil's Third as a three from GameSpot. F*** this game. Silly me, almost had an opinion there. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I have insider info. Watch. On August 4th, 2018, I leave the shower running overnight. Wait, don't you have one of those I hate Dick Vitale and I'm proud of a bracelets on? It's okay. They ran out of small ankle bracelets, so they had to give me an XL one. I can just slip this off right now and put it on a ceiling fan or whatever, and they'll think I'm moving around the house. 
He's gone f***ing mad. Hey, do you have anything you want to pre-order? They ask me as I'm trying to buy Chicken Shoot on the Wii. <laughs> hey, the usual, right? One copy of We Play Motion to go. Thanks, Chief. We gotta start pushing pre-orders more. Studies show that 9 out of 10 gamers play video games. We gotta capitalize on that market. Next customer you get, do not stop talking about pre-orders. F***ing pre-orders, am I right? It's like totally like you Fox buy the 1S, it's just like- Most of the time if I tell them I'm not interested in pre-orders, they'll list off a bunch of upcoming games and be like, interested now? And I'm like, I'm sorry man, I just want chicken shoot, just ring it up. However, all these different style lessons just all feel the same to me. You just play through a portion of the song, and then another, and then another, and then another, and it's always twinkle twinkle little star! I mean, things might change up in later lessons, but in the hour and a half of lessons I sludge through, every single style lesson has you play twinkle 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 Little Star and nothing else. Look at this, this is a fever dream. I'm playing the song with myself and what's her face? Babs, I don't know. If I ever saw a blimp with the Wii Music logo on it in real life, I'd piss myself. Man, I love Dick Vitale. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, it is. Holy sh! Is that Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops? Maybe. We better play them all to make sure. Well, it's a plastic, non-functioning arcade cabinet you can spank some coins into. You have to assemble this yourself and... Childbirth? Kidney stones? Assembling the Street Fighter Cross Tekken Arcade Bank. This thing is dreadful to put together. You have to apply so much pressure to these pieces and it never feels like you're doing it correctly. But in the end, it's alright. This is kinda cute. Uh, well after everything I've been through, I'm done. I'm not going to game stores anymore. I'll say it's because I'm protesting them, but it's really because... I'm unemployed! Now that summer was a roller coaster of emotions. We went from an absolutely phenomenal reveal trailer to. Ah. Woo! <laughs> it can't get much worse than that! Dick Vitale? Dick Vitale! He's good, right? So good. Man, ever since we were kids, he told me he'd be the last guy in a Toys R Us. He did what?! Yeah, Nintendo's E3 2008 showing was already pretty brutal, but just the fact they ended the show proudly demonstrating a sloppy rendition of the Super Mario Bros. theme and Wii music just sealed the deal right there. Zane doesn't look like a man, he looks like six me's playing music in a field. Alright, we go into space, the Death Egg Zone is all we have left, and... There are no rings on this stage. I think this decision is why Sega Technical Institute doesn't make games anymore and probably just caters grad parties now. You learn something at every E3. 98 taught me to keep my prized possessions safe from competitors like what Sega did with the Dreamcast. I wrote piss on this gallon of milk to make sure nobody drinks it. We'll have to navigate by the stars. Just like World War II. We're gonna have to navigate by the stars, just like Devil's Third. Aw, oh, Legend of Zelda short a nightmare. No way, that was my latest search on WebMD. And since I'm one of the few people with a Wii system filled to the brim with WiiWare games, I'm a wanted man. Just look at this. That's me! I don't know who else it could be. If only past me, would have done something about the Wii Shop channel closure and not just exploit and show off old WiiWare games. Let's take a look at some more WiiWare games. But what if the DualShock just isn't doing anything for you, and you hate happiness? Here's the Nintendo 64 controller. We take on the other four robot masters and finally, it's Wily time, and very quickly it's also end of game time because Wily is fairly easy to take on. So that was Mega Man 1, and was beating it worth it? Yeah! Wii Sports was the reason the general population fell in love with the Wii. Right when you boot it up, everybody went, Oh sh! I'm the hand. I'm the hand! Console redesigns can be a real make it or break it moment for us when it comes to actually deciding whether or not to buy a console. And they can also help a console retain relevancy and not fade away like a fad. Like the Tamagotchi or Leprosy. So many people have asked me to cover Pokemon, so I guess this is the best place to start. Pokemon Fruit Snacks. Oh, so this is what the franchise is all about. We have loads of fruity interpretations of everybody's favorite Pokemon, like Dopey, Sneezy, Bashful, the gang's all here. Alright guys, I'm sorry I have to do this, but you all know too much. We can't have people like you poisoning everyone's minds, especially with the info you know. Hey, hey, look, it's Dick Vitale! Alright, I know you're lying, but I can't take a chance like that, so BOOM! Okay, 
Not there, son of a bitch! I love ants. So this game just speaks to me. Whenever anybody asks, hey, what do you use your Wii for these days? I always tell them Netflix and ants. However, the road to where we are now has been a rocky one. We've gone from to to even. It's absolutely ridiculous how hard it is for people to notice the bold black letter in the corner of these games. Well, I'm taking a stand. We need to expand the size of these things. It's for the kids. Oh my god. What a rush. And on top of that, we're home by nine, too. All right, what did you guys discover? Oh, he is f Because of that, I think for most people, we music just ends up being a fest. Hey y'all, Scott here, and congratulations on finally not getting that job I just applied to because I'm really gonna get it this time. I put any and all contact information on my resume, including when and where I'm available on PictoChat. That'll set me apart. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I can't wait to finally head to this game controller issues meeting I just found out about. You yeah, must read that pretty bad. Excuse me, sir, you have 12 days to live. Huh. Excuse me, sir, you have to talk about Minecraft again. There are two types of fake leaks surrounding Nintendo Directs. We have the actually extremely well done ones that feature high quality renders and or animation, and then the rest of them. Interactive fun for all ages, fantastic. I'm the most wholesome person I know. Well, my cigarettes are done. Old family recipe, but enough stalling. Let's not go to hell and play some Bible game. After completing an episode on Super Stiff, you get this crazy video at the end, and man, let me tell you, I totally had a dream like this before. I did it! But I caught these landlords hard. You see, the water here is free. All I have to do is bottle up some tap water, sell the water bottles at a water bottle stand for profit, and then I'm gonna be living on paying my rent on Time Avenue. So that's what a surplus is. Now, well, moving past that, we have the introduction of the Xbox brand, and with it, holy sh**. Well, I can tell you first off, that was the easiest Easter egg hunt I've ever been a part of. This controller does get a number of things right. Number one, giant f***ing Xbox logo. The Duke, as it's referred to now, is a behemoth. Hey all, Scott here, and I'm only 12 virgin points away from being eligible for a V card. I need to find the quickest possible way to not get laid. <laughs> Alright, what's up virgins and virgins? I got big news for you all. Dick by Tell's awesome baby conscience is not the only sports game you can play. Look at this. What the f at least we'll always have the memories of cheat codes and the old games to still use them on, which is great. Seriously, how else am I supposed to beat Wheel of Fortune on NES? Can't beat this sucker without the moon gravity cheat. If I really wanted to, I could piss myself out of fear right now, but I'm not gonna do that just to boost this house's ego that much more. No, 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 it has to be genuine fear. That's why I'll be keeping track of the pissometer. Once this baby hits 100%, I've officially scared the piss out of myself and Halloween is saved. Which shouldn't be a problem, because look at this place, it's perfect. And really, what creepy ass old house isn't complete without a Sega CD? So in terms of the last products bought at a Toys R Us, first up, uh, here's the credit card that I used. Uh, feel free to put that in the history books. Uh, I picked up Delivery Man, starring Vince Vaughn, and an adapter for a breast pump. You also can't turn off the border on the games, which is annoying. They don't give you the choice to just have black bars. I never found the borders to be that distracting or anything, but would have liked the option. Like, imagine if there was a small blue border on everything you played. Things would definitely get riot-inducing. Super Smash Brothers, the most prolific crossover series on the planet, allowing you to pit Nintendo and gaming icons against each other. Mario vs. Link, Samus vs. Kirby, Brown vs. Board of Education, the fighting game series has blossomed into not just a game, but an event. This is definitely the easiest toy con to put together. Just a few folds and blam, we're golden. Eventually, Kelly figures out that these things and the family are vampires, so then it's a bunch of ah, eek, yikes, and holy shit. <laughs> vampires. You, who are you? We're Scat. That's me! I'm just gonna say it. I think he went too far. Don't get me wrong, the game looks fine, its attention to detail is very appealing, but I just don't feel like it's the greatest representations of these characters. Like, when I think Mario, I don't think DENIM! Most of the time, tech demos aren't representative of any final product, so they can mainly be seen as harmless. They aren't like a yearbook quote which is stuck with you for life. 
of course, when I was in the room with the yearbook committee, they took the last thing that I said as my yearbook quote, and when you're in a room full of f***ing weirdos, that's how you get a quote that becomes, STOP LICKING MY NECK! Hi, kid. Game development is tough stuff. I should know. I've been working on this unknown game for a while now. Really, I have no idea what it is. I've restarted so many times, I don't even know if I'm working on a game at this point. Yikes. Well, I better give him what I have at this point. Damn it, they never asked me to make a game in the first place. They asked me to make a Snickers bar. No clue why this specifically has the Nintendo Power logo on it, but who cares? I do, these mints are pathetic. These aren't the virgin mints I was promised. These are just lame circles. What's so Nintendo Power about these? It doesn't even taste like Nintendo Power. These mints are weak. And let me say that for the record, I want to state that Night Trap will never appear on a Nintendo system. Not one person can do all that, but it's definitely fun to think of it, so Shoot your ideas for new game consoles at me. But I'm not gonna need them because I'm off to Microsoft to pitch my idea for the Xbox Infinite. I'll use the power of Google Maps to ensure I make it there, no problem. It's always weird seeing Nintendo get behind such mature things, but they'll definitely do anything to please fans. I gotta say, least favorite thing about Bowser, hands down, is his flesh. Oh, Nintendo! Hey y'all, Scott here. Listen, I've come up with the perfect scheme to nab myself a copy of Super Smash Bros. Melee. All I have to do is waddle around, knock on as many college guys' dorms as I can, hollering, Did somebody order a pizza? Little did they know, the only pizza I have is a hankering to steal a copy of Super Smash Bros. Melee. Hopefully I can at least nab one copy. I don't know what happened, I just kind of blacked out and here I am. <laughs> He's destroying the city with his love for Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops! I hate to be a buzzkill, but I usually call it quits when these sorts of things happen. Hey y'all, Scott here. Listen, I've noticed newborn baby name books are the hot thing right now, so I've decided to work on a newborn baby last name book. Completely untapped market, never have seen one before. We have all the perfect names to spank onto your child. We have Smith, Johnson, Williams for Nintendo 3DS, Brown. Mario spin-offs were plentiful and included a sequel to Yoshi's Island, this game reeks. And Super Princess Peach, second verse, same as the first. Plus, nothing says I hate sex more than Wario Master of Disguise. In addition to avoiding Slender Man, a supernatural creature known for orangutan arms and child abduction. The thing is, I don't find Slender Man in general scary. How can you be scared of something without a face, he can't even fucking sneeze. The only thing that's kind of scary about this is when Slender Man randomly appears, the musician passes out on the piano. My zoo is a little too just watching 3D models of animals walk around y for me to really get into it. But hey, if you want to name a zebra Fallout 76, my zoo fully supports that feature. Me personally, I have three major deciding factors on picking up a console redesign or not. Yeah, checks out. Hey y'all, Scott here. Do you struggle and strain? And I'm sold! I'm going in there to fight for the right to Madden 08. I don't know if I'm gonna survive, but if he kills me, at least I'll die fighting for what I believe in. It's cold out there, you might wanna, might wanna put on the coat. All right, I'll text you guys if I die. Looking forward to it. Gotta be honest, I never owned any cheat devices as a kid. I played Donkey Kong how Nintendo wanted me to, damn it! Night Trap, the interactive horror movie that's responsible for you needing your mom to be with you to buy the latest Call of Duty. The year was 1986. <gasps> Places like Walmart and Target, oh god, those have gotta be the bottom of the barrel in terms of my preferred game stores. Who the hell wants to wrangle up an employee and beg them to unchain Detective Pikachu for ya? And now, finally, we get a look at Death Stranding, a game we've known about for years now, but have yet to see gameplay. We can finally see what it plays like. Oh, you got me there. Man, I wish I was a fetus. It's easy to see why these games went viral. They all have elements that make them easily understandable, interesting, or entertaining to watch others play. But does that make them automatically good games? <laughs> no! Hey y'all, Scott here. You ever love a game so much that other people say is basically the bubonic plague? I've been there. And I'm here to combat those people by stripping that word of all negativity. I love Super Smash Brothers Brawl. This shit is bubonic. Hey y'all, Scott here. Sorry, you just caught me putting all this money I've made to good use. I'm using it as a toothpick. I've gone absolutely fucking nowhere doing this, but thank God I invested in the cardboard industry as soon as I did. That thing skyrocketed in 2018 for like, no reason. 
but I'm not complaining. It's fun to be a part of something. For example, as a part of the cardboard industry, I have these fun little rivalries with others. Check it out. Hello, you've reached Styrofoam Productions. Hi, yeah, I like some packing peanuts. Hold the packing. <laughs> I'm a f***ing maniac. Well, he sure got me. Well, since I've made $70 from my investment, I think it's only fitting to see why exactly cardboard's the hot new thing now. Oh. It's a stupid Nintendo thing. Well, lucky for me, all I talk about is stupid Nintendo things. And in $70, deals as hot as this are blatantly arson! Super Smash Bros. Melee is the cream of the crop of the franchise, no matter how you look at it. And while the game isn't my absolute favorite of the series, it's absolutely phenomenal, no doubt. And it's like a dream come true. Speaking of which, I had an insane dream last night. I had a dream that I was the sex bi! Hey you! <gasps> That's me! Are you strictly going by an anti-scam agenda? Same here. That's why I started Scamo, a club that is hell-bent on eliminating all scams. All you have to do to join is pay a monthly fee, and the best part about it is when you refer others to Scamo, we'll even pay you for it. It's totally cool, right? We stay up late, make money, hanging out, we make some more money. It's just like a real group of friends. You can clearly see here how Scamo works. Now, a lot of pro-scam folk out there would say, well, that just looks like a pyramid scheme. I mean, I'm no geometrist, but, uh, that's a triangle. He's right. So the club of your dreams is just a measly $200 a month away. Fight scams, get paid, it's a club for the rest of us. Here's a glowing testimonial of Scamo. Game Genie is definitely one of the most well-known cheat devices, and one of the first of its kind as well. Being an unlicensed accessory for the NES that let you make Mario jump higher than Nintendo wanted him to, Nintendo fucking hated it. Take a lot more than aggravated assault and battery to stop me. <laughs> oh, what does it look like? It made out of blood to you? You stupid, dumb, dumb, stupid, not in 08 fan. Don't you understand it's easier to conform to society than tell everyone that Game Ball Not in 25 exists? My neck's falling asleep. Alongside physical releases of the PS4 and Xbox One versions, Capcom also released a collector's edition exclusive to the Nintendo 3DS. So we get the game, some postcards, which I really want to know if anybody actually used these things as actual postcards instead of doing the tried and true. That's cool. Well, it's over. New store opened down the street. Some really steep competition. We just can't keep up with them. I mean, I've had five people ask if we sell cigarettes. Maybe we should start taking trade-ins. You think you know how to run a business? I know a guy with a NASA shirt, okay? I earned this job! This is my peak. So to answer the question on everybody's mind, are you wrong for preferring Smash 64 to every game after it? Yeah. For your viewing pleasure, here's Chelsea and her boundless knowledge. Think any of you pussies can get this question right? Oh, me, me, I'm a pussy! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That was a blood clot of a good time. Definitely much harder than the first galaxy, but I totally feel fulfilled. I wonder what I get for getting all the stars. No. <laughs> hey, Xenoblade Chronicles X! This is the game with the yellow round guy, right? You ever play Mario Kart Wii and say, man, these characters are cool and all, but... Where's Dad? Let's talk sponges. And not just any sponges, better sponges. Something better than a sponge? Yup, that's the gameplay of Night Trap. The most complicated it gets is changing the access code color. And even then, that only happens like four times on a playthrough. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to beat the game and then explain the plot. Holy sh! what the hell was that?
We get some patches included as well, but the star of the show is the premium NPVC collectible. That's premium with a capital um. Finally, we have a product that helps me fulfill one of my wildest fantasies. Egg sitter. It's about f***ing time I can sit on an egg. The one I remember using cheat codes on the most was San Andreas. Now, I mainly played this one on a computer, and not just any computer, a Mac, which means... You can play all the songs with all different kinds of instruments. Guitars, bagpipes, no integrity, anything. But that doesn't save the lame song selection. Even having some Nintendo tracks in here doesn't satiate my virginity. And for some godforsaken reason, there's a Wikipedia article solely dedicated to the songs in this game. It's only about 50 tracks, you could easily cram this into the regular Wii Music article, but this list has Turkey in the Straw in it. It deserves its own article. The girls are all oblivious to the augers and the family's vampiric tendencies, and I can't blame them, I only found out about halfway through. <laughs> Sarah, what is this? No, oh, they're vampires. So that means driving 10 minutes to a brick and mortar store to buy physical games equals... Fine, I'll go to GameStop. This thing makes it way too easy to grab glass off of a shelf. Finally, I can grab glasses. <laughs> I wonder what the 3DS character select screen looks like now with all the DLC characters. Holy sh**. Who needs vision anyways? But of course, why go to those places when you can go to... Oh, Hey, look, we've made it to the infamous bathroom scene. Now that's what I call a resume builder. Here we go, Super Mario Sunshine with cheats. Here we go, Super Mario Sunshine with cheats. This is terrifying. The Wii was home to many Wii games and Wii games. Yes, what better title to give your game than the name of the console followed by Word. That's all fine and good, but I'm only one virgin point away from being eligible for a V card. Uh, maybe just mentioning viral games can give me that one point. Uh, there's Facade, Getting Over It, Amnesia, Donkey Kong Barrel Blood- No, 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 no! I'm never gonna be a virgin at this rate! The Nintendo DS line of consoles got me through so many car trips as a kid. I would always keep my eyes on the screens the entire time during them, and because of that, only recently I learned that toll booths exist. I don't think you understand, Mr. Martin, but you're in serious trouble here. <laughs> you can't arrest a vampire? And with this, I think it's a good time to start up my official player's guide for Devil's Third. Kill him! Pac-Man was later introduced at a developer roundtable, and I can't believe how many people thought he wasn't gonna make it in the game somehow. F***ing Namco was making the game, and why would they put in somebody like Heihachi from Tekken instead of Pac-Man? He's Pac-Man. <sighs> I can breathe again! Was it worth it? Why did you do all this? Well... I just couldn't accept that people didn't care about Dick Vitale's awesome baby college hoops. That was the sports game I cared about, and to see everyone talking about anything other than that, it, I just wanted things to go my way for once. Oh. I didn't know blood blood that much. Oh, listen man, I was never into the idea of there being Madden games outside of the 8th one, but you just gotta relax. There's more to life than just Dick Vitale, and there's more to life than Madden too. Come on, there's gotta be another sports game that you like. Well, I guess Mario Golf Toadstool Tour is alright. That's the one with Mario, right? On a good day, yeah. This was a huge leap forward for the industry, yes, but answer me this. Just what the hell is this thing? Three prongs make it so you have multiple ways to play multiple games. Maybe you can hold it like this, or this, or even this. Finally, the cure for all sex, Minecraft. I made lows. Instead of just posting them online and saying, hey guys, I whipped this up real quick in Google Docs, you think it sounds cool? I just take a blurry picture off screen and that'll get people talking. You see, I like looking at these contents right here, you know, the ideas behind these rumors. The problem is the people who want these things to seem believable think it's believable for people to take pictures like this. Crackdown 3, again, releasing in 2019. Hey, remember when this game was supposed to come out in 2017? Hey, remember when this game was supposed to come out in 2016? Hey, remember when this game was announced in 2014? This one always made me feel really anxious. Like, Bowser and ass? Together? My hand would always cover this portion, just in case I would get diagnosed with adult supervision. Things are different now. You see, it's really hard to do the whole living in peace thing these days. That's why I formed a team of ragdag good doers in this world of anarchy. I even came up with the team name, too. We're fucked. Mudtropolis Zone, also known as... <laughs> Well, that blew. Seriously, Night Trap and the Sega CD. I should be completely pissed out by now, but no, the pissometer remains incomplete. Halloween will never be the same until it's filled. Hey, Scott, it's Dr. E. Bill. It's my honor to tell you, you have a urinary tract infection. You may ask, oh, what's the point of messaging people if you have to be in the same room? Well, just ask the Nintendo DS stylus, or as I like to call it, the crotch doodler. However, I maintain that eventually, eventually, 
it'll come out. Or just a straight up reboot of the series will happen. But when it does... Oh, hell yeah. And what better way to end an already bad show than with a fucking mental breakdown? Holy shit. Now brace yourselves, because I... I'm about to lose all credibility. The PSP was sleeker and way more powerful. So Nintendo had to do something to prove to everybody that the DS could handle more demanding games. So what did they do at launch? They bundled in a demo of Metroid Prime Hunters and crammed Super Mario 64 into a fucking cheese it of a game card. Gimmicks are crucial in business to ensure differentiation. You have to stand up from the crowd and offer something that sounds compelling enough to get consumers to bite. Take for example, Toys R Us's new gimmick is insane price cuts and people are flocking to the stores. They should do these sales more often. Sebastian transitions into teaching us how to play a tune. Surprised at my size? Don't encourage him. Next up, we're looking at Roblox. The term gimmick has often been associated with video games, especially within the past decade or so with the introduction of Hey all Scott here, and welcome to the first ever E3 2018 Productions press conference. I've noticed a lot of excitement surrounding E3 2018 as of late, so why not try to profit off of that kind of excitement? Yes, that means E3 2018 products, conventions for fans of the convention. We have it all. I'm the only person employed by the company as of right now, so just be aware, I'm in this for the long haul. As you can see, the excitement for E3 2018 was through the roof for the week of June 9th, 2018. And just to show you how good that is for a company, here are some happy people. Some happy, happy, happy people. You ever get home and you're like, I know what I'm doing tonight, Red Time's new Roman font. Nintendo later confirmed that Nintendo DS would be the final name for the product, alongside showing off the finalized design go back. I'm more so interested in demonstrating the potential of hardware. Let's see if this iron passes the durability test. Gonna put that down as a TBA. And that's my little baby, just a relaxing game. This surely is the life. Ah, my baby's dirty. Next game. Three presenters on stage talk the Champions League in the game. The presenters on the side are really chatting things up while the one in the middle doesn't say squat. I always love this portion of EA's press conference every year because it reminds me what year it is. I mean, it's been 10 years. We Music released on October 20th, 2008 in North America. Maybe we were all a bit too harsh on it at first. Or maybe- Oh sh I couldn't even finish that. Of course it's terrible. Let's just get this one out of the way. I am just no good at this game. Oh god. You get a free Sea of Thieves item per Chips Ahoy pack? Well, don't mind if I do. We're greeted to what I think a hormone looks like, and his name is Sebastian Toot. He forces me to play the piano whether I like it or not, and all we have to do here is shake the Wii Remote Nunchuck. Hey, hear that? I'm a penis. <laughs> Finally, Campbell's Super Mario Soup. Let's pop this bad boy open, cook it up, and try it out. You know what? That's actually pretty good. I let me check the ingredients on this bad boy. Oh, hell yeah. Is that a pinball machine? Oh my god, my ass is bleeding. Well, that was a fun five hours. I think it's a good idea to check and see how the cardboard industry is doing now. Damn it. This industry fluctuates like crazy. I'm broke. I guess I'll just bribe the guy at the gas station 20 bucks to give me the winning lottery ticket. I'd say this is a great poker game. If you don't like the sexy, thankfully the girls are in the dead center of the screen. Easy blockage can ensue. Well, it looks like my journey today has come to an end. It's been an honor to serve a part of the fellow unity of certified killers of bad astronomic resistant near do wells. Should really look into an abbreviation for that. It's also an honor to be a part of this whole 1950s B-movie shtick. Remember, it's not a phase, it's a lifestyle. It was a phase. Yeah, I know, it's the first new Bethesda IP in over two decades. That's why people are excited, but they didn't show anything except for space. It's like if Nintendo announced arms like this. Like, what the hell does that mean? Let's move over to this room. Yeah, you see, this is what us kitchen owners refer to as kitchen. Welcome to New Location McGee, as she likes to be called it. Old Location McGee and I had a bit of a falling out. It was so simple, Nintendo felt the need to include this antenna to put on your Switch to make it seem like it's a real-life remote control. We popped this on, and our Nintendo Switch console is finally a part of a cult. And it looks like all girls that appeared in the game were over the age of 18, that's good to know. I'm gonna use the rest of my checking account on a stacker game. Oh, 
All right, where do I fill out the application to become homeless? Learn about the Bible while you have fun. 1,500 questions on the Old Testament. Music from the hottest Christian artist. My God, the marketing team at Crave obviously wanted every consumer who sees this game to say, holy shit. But hey, who knows? Maybe things have cleared up in the past 12 minutes. Starting things off with an intro that, oh, oh my god, this is incredible! Hi, yeah, I'd like to buy four EAs, please! Yeah, I should get rid of this. I'll take one. It also details the new Call of Duty game for 2016. Subtitled Bloodlines was launching with the system, with Destiny following suit in 2017. Well, after sitting at this desk for two years, talking about stupid Nintendo games and Madden 08, it's a little weird saying that one of those things is gone. Hey Scott, it's your old pal Sweepstakes winner announcery Jim here. It's my honor to tell you you've won our contest where you get to create whatever video game you desire. I told them I wanted to make a game called Madden 08 for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 2 and all the old platforms, and they're making an HD remake of it too! Ah! Hey y'all, Scott here. With Valentine's Day coming up, virginity is out of the spotlight. So let's celebrate by playing a game focused entirely on... Oh shit, it's pronounced breasts? I always thought it was pronounced beans. So now we're deliberately spiking everything. We're spiking the punch, the food, the ballot box. Please don't tell on us. Oh look, here's the DJ we got. DJ Abstinence, DJ for school kids. Ah, Scott Wozniak, DJ Abstinence Greeter. You will not be disappointed in my services. I made the best playlist for kids that are half my age. It's all in here on my trusty laptop. I thought that was a beer. Hey y'all, Scott here. So I was just working on my definitive list of Nintendo consoles with microphones on them. Yeah, the Game Boy Advance didn't make the list. That's actually a good thing. It's fairly annoying to have to blow into the microphone or something for a game. But I actually found a loophole with some Nintendo systems where you don't actually have to blow into the mic. So all I have to do is grab your system, grab an air horn, bring it close. <laughs> Now, the space generally reserved for manuals are used for DLC codes, terms and conditions, or advertisements. Can't wait to pop open Sonic Mania Plus! Ah! Paws and Claws Pet Resort opens up with a great establishing shot, almost like it's gonna be a vet house tour. Oh, hi! You caught me in a goose! Yes, I'm sure you've heard something along the lines of, Hey guys, Loot Crate sent me this. I love Loot Crate. Let's see what they included in the box this month. Oh shit, a sock. Loot Crate sponsorships have probably funded Oklahoma's government. They're everywhere. All right, heavy rain. We open on a naked man in bed. At least I can finally say I've played this game. To everybody who's like, ah, Scott doesn't play my favorite games. Well, fuck you, have you played Chicken Shoot? And here we have the ladies of Dead or Alive. Blinky, Inky, Pinky, Clyde, they've got them all. I have to pick my favorite girl of the bunch, and we have all this fun information displayed. Hey, age not available. That's Dead or Alive lingo for... Apparently this game has strong language and violence. Language? Yeah, I mean, there's some words you might see on CBS from time to time, but nothing you couldn't say in a church parking lot. Violence? Yeah, this left an impression on me. I've been with it for a few hours so far, but from what I've played now, this is what you call a wolf game. That's right, I said it, f out Wolf Quest. Hey y'all, Scott here. I'm on life support now. No reason, just felt like it. I've been told the machine I'm hooked up to is doing some pretty great stuff. It's efficient, it's useful, it's made by mad cats. I should probably start proofreading my will. It's one of the most memorable experiences to have as a fan, for better or for worse. A waiting for new information, counting the days till the release, getting a final name, holy shit, okay, I'm a mess. My name's Ben and we'll figure it out later, Limbo, ever since I was born. I don't know how to deal with this. I've been going off of the fucking rocker. And just to show you how insane I've been lately, I ate here. Hey all, Scott here. <gasps> I have a Wii loaded with WiiWare games! I have a Wii loaded with WiiWare games! I have a Wii loaded with WiiWare games! You have osteoporosis. I have a Wii loaded with WiiWare games. Four to five ain't bad. You shoot animated chickens. Yes, how dare they knit? We have to kill them all! You keep shooting chickens until it's time for the next stage, which is a completely different part of the world, helping alleviate their chicken infestation. The Himalayas, yeah, big chicken problem down there. Oh, look at this. This, this is paradise. Ah! 
So the plot of Sonic CD, Dr. Robotnik has chained a planet to the ground. That son of a bitch. Even then, I'd say the idea of Atari becoming defunct has lost all meaning. Every time I open up the fridge, there's an article about Atari being bought or going bankrupt. Video games are a tricky bunch, and development of them can be wild. I mean, how many times have you seen a developer interview where they say, Yeah, it was pretty easy. Each cabinet comes with a keychain. This is definitely just to reiterate how small these are. Like, wow, they're so tiny, you can fit them on your keys. But seriously, who's gonna do that? Oh my god, I gotta drive to the hospital. Let me get my car key. Oh, oh, oh. I ended up ripping the keychains off of most of these. They really dig into your palms while playing them. Of course, you could play this with the family with all the saucy questions removed. Still, it's a great way to accidentally let the truth out. If you woke up in bed with a giant tarantula next to you, how would you react? My daughter's adopted. F now please keep in mind, when I say a certain game is my game of the year, it is solely based on my opinion, and it could be for a variety of different reasons. Uh, which game was the most fun, which game was the most impressive, which game was the most groundbreaking. It really changes from year to year what constitutes as a game of the year for me. And also, there's a reason why these posters are plastered around the neighborhood. Please don't take me seriously. Hey all, Scott here. <laughs> I'll take that as a sign. I should subscribe to some boxes. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to waste money. Now I've dipped my toes into wasting money by buying a PS4 Pro, but I think it's time to get mega reckless. I'll just look up how to waste money. Oh, it redirected me to lootcrate.com. Hey all, Scott here. Happy Cyber Wednesday, the first Wednesday after Cyber Monday, the official holiday for all things me. Cyber Monday is all about deals, deals, and regret. And Cyber Wednesday is when we all take a moment to reflect on those three things. Ah. Mostly regret. The moment I saw this thing, I knew what was bound to come. Well, that was the quickest six hours I've ever experienced. It felt like 22 minutes or something. And it looks like it's finally time to reveal the winner. And the winner for year of the year 2018 is 2018. What the f Hey y'all, Scott here. Ooh, look at me, I'm the Nintendo Switch. I sold over 32 million units. Yeah, big whoop. Uh, how many units did the human race sell? Hmm, try 7 billion units. That's right, f*** you, Nintendo. You know, if you think about it, we don't have it that bad. Like, imagine if we were fish right now. Like, f*** we have it good. They should just make death illegal. End the channel already! God, well, maybe Kid Fit Island Resort is a better fitness game. Kid Fit Island Resort is a scam. Ten fitness games. Okay, games that get you up and at it. Exercise games. Let's take a look at these mini games. Surfing. Keep your pointer in the moving circle. Grabbing coconuts. Just tilt the Wii remote. Run on a log. Move the Wii remote and nunchuck. Back and forth. These games are not fitness based. There's like one mini game where you run with the Wii remote nunchuck. There's one other where you run for two seconds and then you have to trace an outline with the pointer. These are not fitness games, these are run-of-the-mill minigames you'd find in any Wii minigame collection. And the fact that half of these minigames use the nunchuck and half don't, good god give me a break! For some reason they just have to force you to plug the nunchuck in for some of these games. All of these games would work perfectly with just a Wii remote. Why do I have to use the nunchuck to balance on a log? You have to keep on unplugging and plugging in the nunchuck to go throughout the minigames, and then 30 minutes later, it's over! So, overall, this game is... Moving on to Yamaha Supercross. No. What about Kart Racer? Now that's a title. This isn't nearly as bad as I wanted it to be. This is just boring. Boom. Alright, I got one more left in me. We got Birthday Party Bash. Oh sh**, Duncan Hines coupons. The coupons were expired, I just couldn't help myself. Games and years. Can't have one without the other, and plus, those two words are on my top three favorite concepts list. The third word being Jeff Keighley. Here to present Game of the Year, Jeff Keighley. Well, on to EA. Now, I had absolutely no expectations going into the Stadia event, so I refused to make predictions for it. But now we're finally into the real deal, the mainstay E3 presentations. So my predictions for EA Play 2019 is that I won't watch it. Let's start off with Big Beach Sports, published by THQ. That definitely helped them out. They only let me input three initials for my custom character, but oh my god, I can draw my own face with the DS. I will hand it to them with this game. Connecting to the DS to fully draw your own character's face is pretty charming and cool, especially for 2008. And the product placement from Geico makes things that much better. Can't make a character without a hat though, but come on, everybody's gotta have a hat. But then we get to the pure terror, known as somewhat tight turns. 
Drifting is something that separates the men from the boys with Mario Kart. If you don't drift, you look like a buffoon. Hey everybody, look at this guy, not getting his mini turbo boost by drifting, f***ing imbecile. In Super Mario Kart, you justifiably drift by holding one of the shoulder buttons, but man, this is some tricky stuff. I'll say, alright guys, I'm going for it, I'm gonna drift, and then proceed to make a fool out of myself. Look, I'm on milk. Tecmo decided to butter up Dead or Alive's most iconic element and release it for $50. Oh man, I love volleyball! The only limited edition of the Lynx was exactly this, but I prefer it to all the Game Boy editions because this one is the Marlboro edition. You ever ask anybody how they got hooked on cigarettes? Yeah, the Lynx. You see, that's all fine and good, but a lot of games that were never awarded Game of the Year still call the re-release the Game of the Year edition. For example, Dead Island Game of the Year edition. Really? This is the story of a boy who talked about stupid Nintendo games. Ever since 2017, he's done it 149 times and shows no sign of shame. Every single week he'd go Madden 08 this and Fling Smash that. It's really impressive how many sentences he could start with, hey all. Any professional could make the argument he's gone off the deep end, but I think it's just how he's always been. He just enjoys talking about these things, regardless of what situations he gets himself into. Plus, he buys a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff, and he stated on multiple occasions he evades taxes. Like, Jesus Christ, I think he does it for fun! But with the Christmas season upon us, his passion may have finally brought him towards a bit of a crisis. Hey all, Scott here, and it's that time of year, the spending season, when it's okay to splurge a little bit and say, you know what, I, I could use a toothbrush. Yesterday was my go-to buy Flink Smash day. The day before that was buy the rights to Socks day. Didn't pan out, lost a few grand. The day before that, I bought a few shares of Loot Crate. I should read the news more. And today, I'm gonna get my gallbladder removed just for the hell of it. I'm broke. The game of the year for many publications ended up being none other than Dragon Age Inquisition. Nobody f***ing talks about this game anymore. I'm sure it's a great game and all, but this just never felt like, ooh, the best game of the year. It's like most were like, f***, we don't want to give the award to a game with the subtitle for Wii U. That just looked tacky. Yeah, this is officially overstated. It's welcome. I've been looking for my Wii for the past day, but it must be like way deep and 500 miles away from here, County. Oh, shit, it's a Wii. This is mine! It's truly just an opinion thing, so I'd really love to hear what others could play forever. Everybody has different picks, that's what makes this topic so interesting. And being stranded is great for us Brink players out there. GET ME OFF OF THIS F***ING ISLAND! Alright, well now I have a better idea of what kind of games I should start playing. It's not like I have much else to do, I mean all they have here is a 5 below. Like, come on, no wonder it's deserted. Hey y'all, Scott here, and tonight's the big homecoming dance. Not to brag or anything, but I'm gonna get laid. Hey y'all, Scott here, and tonight was the big night seven years ago. Not to brag or anything, but I wish I got laid. The general Game of the Year nominations for each year I'll be showing are just what I perceived as the general Game of the Year nominees. Kind of the average ones, the Game Awards, and the big online gaming websites nominated. But what I pick as my Game of the Year will be solely based on what I played. And hey, why not? We'll go all the way back to 2001. Yeah, we're only covering my post-fetus era. My pre-fetus era can wait another day. Great homecoming dance doesn't require just blood, sweat, and tears. Just sweat and tears. That's why I'm going to great lengths to ensure this is going to be the greatest one ever. I turned my car into a walking advertisement for the dance, and I put in place some rules to ensure no pregnancies happen tonight. There's a strict no skin policy. If it ain't covered up, it's getting thrown out. If you don't abide by this policy, you must have flashlight taped to crotch. Yes, I spelled that right. This is to ensure things don't get too PG when the lights dim. And if things get out of hand, that's where our trusty chaperone enters the picture. He's been violently conditioned to resist all forms of alcohol, drugs, violence, and sex, and most importantly, sex. I propose a toast. This event had a single sponsor, being Ice Mountain Mini Bottled Water. When you're thirsty but not that thirsty, Ice Mountain Mini Bottled Water available now. So please, raise an ounce to you. Merry Christmas. Jesus, that tastes small. So to end things off, to make your insufferable pain more fun, I got you all gifts. Is it a cure for zero degree burns? Oh, even better. Listen, take them, open them up, and let me know when you guys forget that you were totally murdered a few months back. What is this? We got American Idol on PS2. It's $2.99, of course it blew. 
karaoke revolution with no microphone. That might be fun. DJ band and guitar hero, just the games, price point zero. Games are games, ignore the fuss. FIFA there and everywhere. 99 cents, that's not even fair. Skylanders, it was just a phase. I turned these copies into a maze. Lego dimensions that really exist? I guarantee you, it was a miss. Games that are the anti ass. Just take pedal board, you swine. Play it before it goes offline. Madden 16, 17, 18. Not as good as 08, pretty blatantly. But who cares? It's at a great price. Presents that'll make anybody say nice. Gifts with value and some class. It's a bargain All right, let's play the Spike 2003 Video Game Awards winner for best animation. And, well, sorry human women, you've had a good run, but this game may help me in my quest to complete my character arc. I'm finally gonna get E-Laid. Here we have the newest addition to the family, Lincoln. I'm cool with Lincoln, could never tell a lie, wooden teeth. I've always liked him. Ever since I learned about Lincoln in school, I was like, man, this guy's pretty cool, I wanna grow one. Look at him, you just wanna see him with grass in his skull. So we have to soak the chia in water. Regardless of the method, it feels like I'm drowning or waterboarding him, so I'm just gonna give him a bath. Now we gotta spread these chia seeds. I ran out of them halfway through. I panicked and used chili for the rest. It's all the same in the end. So we gotta keep watering Lincoln to keep the chia healthy and growing for the next one to two weeks. I can't wait that long, I have a Lincoln to raise, I don't want to wait for it to grow! So I looked up some advanced Chia Pet techniques. All we need is some gloves and a hammer, we put the gloves on, take the hammer and swing- Damn it! Okay, this article name is starting to make a little more sense now. Hey y'all, Scott here, I got nothing. And when I'm completely bone dry when it comes to ideas, that's when we bust out the idea wheel! <laughs> Let's see what we have to talk about today. Ah, son of a bitch. Okay, well, I guess I'm talking about the L button today. Holy shit, I have no idea how I got 23 minutes out of that topic. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, we're 10 seconds away from the Wii Shop channel ending. If there's anything I've learned over the past 312 days, say like Bike Rally was pretty good. The apocalypse immediately stopped after the shop channel closed down. I think everybody realized who the hell wanted to play Rabbit's Lab again. There was truly a metric ton on WiiWare, but considering the quality of most of the games on the service, and the fact that many of the best games are available elsewhere, have physical copies, or have been succeeded by new games that do fundamentally everything the WiiWare version did and then some, I have one final question. Was the Wii Shop channel closing worth going through this whole apocalypse? No. Dead or alive, extreme beach volleyball. Man, you can't get less beach volleyball than this. Putting this game on my shelf may make me feel like I have to clean all games surrounding it, but let's not focus on all this, and let's just focus on all this. Featuring Dennis Rodman, well there you go, it meets the quota. Oh man, we can gamble at the casino in this game. That's a pleasant surprise I wasn't expecting. That's the same feeling I get whenever I open up the newspaper. Oh shit, they got Dilbert in this thing? One day into staying inside a cave and only playing Wii Wear games and I'm feeling great. I packed some milk to help sustain myself so I can really take on anything. F*** this sentence. Now this is every retro enthusiast's worst nightmare. Oh yeah, pixels! Oh f***, 3D racing! Like, I can summarize this game in a quick paragraph and you could still tell it was a great story. You'd still want to see it played out. Bioshock Infinite, I'd be explaining the story for 30 minutes, waving my arms around, and even I would have a hard time comprehending the plot. At least I can do this. I've always wanted to say yes to Guy Fieri. Movies weren't off limits either, especially Balls of Fury, available now on HD DVD. I remember the parody stupid comedy movie era. This fit right in alongside Scary Movie, Date Movie, Epic Movie, This was a fun movie, way to experience the Balls of Fury movie, movie trailer, and it even came with a free movie, ping pong game. Movie, it's a little unsettling movie, having these gross 3D movie, model recreations of the movie, actors, but besides that, this is just a lame ping pong game with finicky as controls. Hi, Scott Wozniak, bankruptcy activist. K-Swiss, bankruptcy patrol. So I was hoping you could help me out a little bit here. According to the bank, government, and wallet, I have no money. 
Are you sure? Most people who claim bankruptcy have a forgotten gift card or something. I was actually going to ask you to see if you could check my account and see if I left an Arby's card there or something. I don't know what to tell you, man. You're completely broke. Oh my god, I don't know how this could have happened. Really? You don't know why you're broke? You brought your entire stack of Flink Smash. Never leave the house without it. Never? It's a bitch. No one man needs this much Flink Smash. And why are they all wet? You don't get it, do you? Bankruptcy is just a hobby of mine. I'll quit it tomorrow and buy out the bank to replenish my funds. You don't have any money to buy the bank out with. Can you give me a loan to? This is great. I prefer Christmas too. Is bankruptcy a crime now? Is it illegal to be worthless? Well, if it is, I'm f Now, of course, you may ask, why am I resorting to real life virtual women this Valentine's Day? I could always try out dating apps. I could download Bumble. It's like Tinder for when you run out of matches on Tinder. Or I could try meeting somebody in person. Katomi's looking really good after saying that. Hey y'all, Scott here. Super Mario Kart, right? First one in the series. I haven't fully played through this and unlocked everything yet, so I should really do that to form a full opinion. Hey Scott, Scott here. I'm you 14 minutes into the future, and I'm here to warn you that you think Super Mario Kart is just okay. Thank you. Well, let's head to the poolside next. This is great. You think the guy that programmed Math Grand Prix knew video games would become this? Oh man, there's a mini game I can play! I've had so many gaming accomplishments, like I almost beat Kirby Star Allies and I can't even get through the hopping game! Hey y'all, Scott here, check it out, it's the sequel confirmer, tells you if the game you're scanning is a sequel or not. Yeah! Just right this way. God, I hate yards! The desk you sold is here now. Why is the desk in a dress? It has a new owner. That's just how he uses it. He's feeding it tea. Why is he playing tea with the desk? That's just what he wants to use it for. Well, yeah, but it's a desk. The point is, look how happy he is. Giving up your desk to fund an event for those in need and having it go to someone who will love it just as much as you did, you should be proud of him. You know, even if we didn't like some of these gifts, we found some we did like. And just because some of these are worthless to somebody, it doesn't mean someone else won't find value in them. That's a good point. Like, I hate organized crime, but that doesn't mean we want to ruin their fun. You know, we left a receipt here. It looks like he sold his desk to fund this. Oh. What the f You know, I didn't have a desk for 12 years, and look where I am. Murdered. I haven't shaved in 12 years. You shaved when you were 10? Seriously, no desk? What kind of freak has no desk? A freak who's willing to give it up to give others something nice. Yeah, like these Ice Mountain Mini Waters. Tastes like a fresh puddle. We got ourselves a Captain Marvel t-shirt. Now, when they asked me for my t-shirt size, I personally hit the largest size they offered by accident, so I can officially say I own a Captain Marvel blanket. First things first, this game has controls. We use them to play this game, and playing results in a win or a loss. Using the controller is the real deal with this game, and the graphics are really something on the screen. Ears? This game uses them by emitting sound, and don't get me started on having a title. This game does that, and it does it well. It's Major League Eating the game. Those five words do it more justice than I ever could. The school dance is defined as the concept of dimming the lights in a school gym, hiring an underpaid DJ to play Dear God Anything Below by Flo Rida, and forcing children to show up to a school at night and sweat for three hours. You'd reach for your nearest JCPenney dress shirt, pay 10 whole dollars to stand in the school auditorium on the weekend, and assume that this was it. This was the night you totally experienced what it's like to score. And then you realized, oh yeah, I'm 15, I'll just stand and do nothing for most of the dance. Well, if people get paid to talk about Loot Crate, then it must be good. <laughs> Let's check out their website. All right, LootCrate.com, home of Jacob's favorite box, apparently. Well, I can pick a crate. Oh my god, they've really expanded to all different kinds of crates. Last time I checked, they basically only had one Loot Crate box, but I guess enough people said, good stuff, but needs more Slam Crate, and boom, we got it now. Oh, wow, the Loot Vault. I can pick up random stuff they included in previous crates that are just rotting in their warehouse. All right, I think I know what I'm getting here. You see, I gotta go with a standard Loot Crate, but they offer a Loot Crate DX. I'd be a pussy for not getting that. I'm not super into comic books, and when Loot Crate says pop culture, they basically just mean superheroes at this point. I'm obviously much more of a video game guy, so I should grab a Loot Gaming box as well. And then why not? Loot Remix. Uh, they basically just take random stuff from the Loot Vault, stuff from previous Loot Crates, and cram a bunch of old shit they can't get rid of into a Loot Remix, so let's go with all these! My crates are here! Yeah, I think the most interesting part of the casino is probably the table game, so let's do some blackjack. I don't know what's going on here, but these words are making me pretty happy, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Say what you will about Team Ninja, but those guys know how to pick a font. Roulette, so this is what All In looks like. 
Yeah, I lost. I don't know how most people can wake up in the morning knowing Vanilla Lake 1 exists. I'm bad at that track, just let me get fifth place and move on. Playing through the Grand Prix is like playing with a paddle ball backwards. Back in my room, Zach gave me craps and I think I'm gonna spread it. This generosity needs to go all over the island. I'm sending two bottles of nail polish remover to some other girls, well shit. On to another day of poolside, volleyball, gambling, good night. 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 Poolside, poolside, volleyball, gambling, good night. Jesus Christ! Now is the internet truly a stupid looking garbage man for killing what once were these little joys of video games? I mean, no, are you kidding me? They got Jet Roulette on this thing. Even with the song change, I think I've gotten about as much out of DOA XBV as I can muster. But Scott, you may squeal, you can play the hopping game again. Well, it is true, I can also get leprosy, so really anything's possible. This is definitely why so many NES games don't really tell you what to do or how to play because you were expected to read the manual. And oh boy, were these things made for reading. Plus, they all had a notes and memos section in the back where you could jot down little reminders. I don't think anybody actually did this, so I'll start the trend. Gotta use these more often. Microsoft is up next and I predict that Phil Spencer doesn't exist. Please welcome the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer. Damn it! Man, I sure do wish they made another Final Fantasy. Like, are you kidding me? They made it 15 plus games in and you're acting like they're gonna stop there. Hey y'all, Scott here, quick. What's the first thing you think of when you think mysterious? Mysteries, right. There are so many questions in life that are left unanswered, like, what's the point, why bother, and who cares? That's why I'm scouring the closet for answers to gaming's greatest mysteries, like, didn't Luigi say f***ing Mario Golf? Alright, we have the answer to why the Xbox One cases are the way they are, and- Oh, hey! Check this out, it's my first fan art of Madden. Okay, and- Oh. Yeah, I got invited to a dinner party by Chet Shaft. He used to be my manager when I worked at Games on a Shelf, and then I quit slash ran the store out of business. I think I put this with all the other letters I don't want to deal with. Hey all, Scott here. Nine steps ago, I wanted to experience hardships and indigestion. But then I discovered this nine step plan on how to successfully fail in the video game industry. And now I'm finally broke and depressed. So now it's time to spread that bankruptcy to you. Here's how to successfully fail as a video game studio. First off, please take a look at this. Yeah, I sh my pants too. This is some scary stuff. We want to do this but fail. So maybe if we eliminate the N's, the T, the E, the D, the O, and throw in some A's, some C's, an L, and an M, well, son of a bitch, we have ourselves a role model. It's something more people want than you may think. Myself and countless others have had many sleepless nights where the only thing we could hear echoed in the darkness. Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort are great. They may seem like nothing more than motion control minigame collections. That's exactly what they were. Well, as a tribute to the instruction manual, I will fully commit to one and carry out whatever it tells me to do. Oh, okay. Oh, hey all, Scott Wozniak, dinner partier here. Jeb Jeb, vegan. Terry Lessler, veganer. Officer Steel Wool, justice supporter. Rex Mose, school dance chaperone and historian. Wendy's employee, Wendy's employee. Oh, so how do you all know Chet? He was a former vegan, and he bought milk. That son of a bitch! I pulled him over for money laundering. I'm chaperoning his dinner party. He stole a Baconator. That son of a bitch! I tanked the story managed, and he convinced me to quit one of the only jobs I ever had. Now I'm living off of unemployment checks in fear. Hi, Chet Shaft, former games on a shelf manager, current doer of all things nothing. Welcome to the Shaft Family Estate's first annual dinner party, my largest priority at the moment. Due to some prior obligations, I can't be there with you tonight, but please feel free to help yourself to an old Shaft family recipe. This is Jimmy John's. This title always perplexed me. Literally any game released on the Wii could technically be titled Wii Play. They are all Wii games I can play. The title given folks are really working overtime on this one. Shh. Just call it We Play. Now some of the games I looked at here, I'd consider simply mediocre. Most of the games I'd consider shovelware. Now would I consider the data design game shovelware? No, I'd consider them sh What a way to spend the week of Valentine's Day, living it up playing Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Wow, just saying that hurt. Imagine actually doing it, it's pathetic. I should really start contributing more to the human race. Maybe I should start protesting and demanding changes to society.
We eliminate the number four and replace it with the letter H. Outlaw headphone jacks. Foot gloves. Penguin flight school. Stamps for stamps. The MPAA should rate shirts. Reclassify aspartame as a vegetable. Make our a vowel. I love begging companies to not do new things and to just do the same thing over and over again. But hey, I let all my desired sequels out of the bag. Uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't forget any. I have sinned. The Shaft family would like to express their gratitude to all attendees of the dinner party tonight. Terry, Lesler, and Jet, thank you for your strong acts of veganism. Carrots wouldn't be the same without you. Rick Mose, without you, I wouldn't be an alcoholic. It's Rex! Officer Steel Wool, thank you for your years of service. Wendy's employee, thank you for your years of service. And Scott, without you, I wouldn't have lost my job at Games on a Shelf. Thank you, everybody. Please, help yourself to a complimentary table knife, and dig in. He's dead! Alright, listen guys, I'm not one to leave the party early, but when people start getting murdered, that's where I draw the line. Yeah, somebody's been murdered. Yeah. Yeah, can you pick that up on the way home? No, okay, we can leave, okay? Chet said the party's over at 9. He's f***ing dead. We at least owe him this. I'll stay. I'm free. Listen, we can get the murder stench out of here by listening to some good old-fashioned video game mysteries. Yeah, of course. Let's talk a series with just as many mysteries as it has dead civilians. Somebody f***ing died! And what better gift is there than video games? These things were expensive at some point in time. They better press than giving murder victims Battleborn. I should really do something big for these guys. I'll throw a charity gala. I just need to find a way to fund it. Can I take out a loan? What the f*** is wrong with you? But instead of making a great service for 60 bucks a year, Nintendo opted to make a mediocre one for 20. It was just so annoying that this was what we got after waiting a year for Nintendo Switch Online. They always kept saying, we'll have more to reveal about this service later. If Nintendo delayed the service just to get the online multiplayer for NES games working right, oh god. If a billion dollar company had problems getting NES games to run online, we're f as a society. But even then, the games in those areas are either reskins of other games or unclothing mummies. Hook a frog. Gladly. Okay, so if any of you die, you have to tell me, okay? Wait, look! It looks like whoever the killer is had dark hair. Oh good, that narrowed it down a bit. Nintendo Switch has potential to be one of the greatest systems of all time. It just needs to fix a few things. The eShop needs a better design, the overall quality of the online service needs to be improved, the releases of newer and older titles should be much more evened out, needs to refrigerate food better, kill 99.9% .9 of germs, eat my vegetables, tell me ghost stories, drive my cousin to school, and if it does all that, then I think we have a winner on our hands. Yeah, there's just not a lot of background to this one. It's a Mario Kart that came out. Well, that's one point for Super Circuit. Oh, this is a close one. However, I'd make the argument that one of the most famous downfalls of a company was th k Alrighty, so now that we're all alone, we're all friends here. Who the f are you? We're just gonna cut to the chase. Were you the murderer? The only thing I kill is not abstinence. So it's possible you killed him. That's impossible. I hate murder. So do I. But you don't see me bragging about it. You know, that's it. I've had it. Good luck not murdering people. Murderers. The best ones felt like an extension of the game's world. Like, oh man, it feels like I'm with Marcus Phoenix right now. Where did all this blood come from? Like, think about it. Would you really want to be a video game company? I tried being Activision once and it was hard. Nobody liked me. I was too scary and I laid off over 800 people. It was the worst Halloween ever. Yeah, we put a battle royale in Fallout 76. Oh, he said He's one of us! You're a parent in the Walmart video game section and you have only one thing on your mind. I have 20 well, now that I've sustained a paddle ball injury and fully think that Super Mario Kart is just okay, I have to let past me know that. Uh, he'll have no f***ing clue what to think about the game without me. Hey, Scott, Scott here. I'm you 14 minutes into the future, and I'm here to warn you that you think Super Mario Kart is just okay. Thank you. <laughs> you did good, future Scott. Well, now I guess I'll just play Mario Kart 64. Scott, wait! These studios whip together games that barely have any thought, time, or money put into them, spanking them onto store shelves, generally for around 20 bucks or so, waiting for people who don't know any better to pick up the game because, oh, my little Jimmy has a Wii and he f***ing hates chickens. In actuality, Majin refers to Masato Nishimura as Majin was his childhood nickname, so it's fine. The screen is fine. I mean, it's not like the screen is gonna kill me at a dinner party or anything, so it's fine. It's a common saying. And there you go. Listen to me talk for 13 minutes was step one of our non-step plan. We only have eight more to go until this bankruptcy meter goes even further down. I can't go through with this. We need to make money quick. We're selling soup now.
It always works. Great talk, guys. Limited edition systems are fun to gawk at, but you know what else is fun to gawk at? This official statement from my doctor. Let's see what this illness is officially doing to me. Oh, no. If I don't do anything about this mild congestion, I'm gonna die in 60 to 70 years! You used to be able to walk into a Walmart, shove your hand into the video game's bargain bin, and pull out Ho oh, Ho well, My Evening Set. Chicken shoot! After manure, it's the first thing I think of when I hear the word sh Seriously, this is my work to him, Connect Adventures. I'm a Wendy's employee, for God's sakes. Yeah, you know, I'm sick of people assuming I want NHL 16. Like, stop! Guys, look at this. What am I supposed to do with this? Actually, uh, I could sell this to my Rock Band 2 guy. He loves stuff like this. You know, actually, I could really use a new copy of Truth or Lies. Mine got worn out. And you know, I could use another emergency copy of Connect Adventures. Oh my god! There's a Wii Play! Partner, you have two ways to leave this establishment. Immediately or dead, yep, that's a threat. He calls me a corn dodger. Any of them that talk, it's very likely they're gonna be incredibly rude. Like, you ever have a carny act like this to you? F you. Now, there's only one thing more addictive than reading actual mysteries about video games. Nicotine? Most Wii owners had debatably the best bowling game ever created bundled in with their consoles, so Brunswick tried to be a more realistic take on the sport. You can customize your bowler, you even have all possible options for different types of glasses. Aviator, jazz, or none. This game has an interesting font choice, they squish a lot of the letters together which makes some words not look right. Hey, it looks like Noose has the best lap time. At least I can finally fulfill my dream of driving as an M&M. Some tracks are more competently designed than others, as in, these are actually playable. But that does not excuse the handful that were obviously not tested at all, like the Chocolate Factory or the house. But hey, I did finish the tracks. I don't care what anybody says, I didn't like Eminem's car racing. I'm never gonna eat an Eminem ever again. This looks like they wanted to call themselves Info Games, that name was already taken, so they went, uh, uh, yeah! Their entire game plan seems to be to acquire every single B-tier game franchise ever conceived. THQ Nordic will probably acquire the state of Nevada soon. Masculinity is a big deal for me, so I should really kill some fucking deer or something to keep it up. The idea have really been pissing me off lately, so Buck Fever will let me, you know, kill some. Hunting games are all over the place, but Buck Fever is the only one that has a funny title if you swap the first letters of buck and fever. We can only shoot bucks, of course shooting doe isn't allowed. This is buck fever after all. I just end up saying whatever and go up in wild shooting. Hey, look at this, I murdered. This was a pretty proud moment for me. I'm gonna make the sound of this deer falling my ringtone. But really, the you draw problem started coming in at full force when THQ decided to release it for the PS3 and Xbox 360, yikes. Put this sign up anywhere, you'll scare somebody. And this year, the Cyber Monday deals were pretty much the same as the Black Friday ones. The Ash Wednesday deals were terrible this year, so I was really looking forward to these days. Look at this, we have all these fun deals on Play-Doh. That was a fun thing to click buy on, but it doesn't really make me feel complete. But as it stands, this was always the most frustrating one for me to play. I wouldn't say this is my least favorite of the package, though. Just like anything the human race has done, it has more value than find me. <laughs> hey y'all, Scott here. It's time to kick back, relax, get your heart rate questionably low, because today, I'm gonna be showing you what happens when drywall and video games come together. <laughs> now, when a studio is acquired by a bigger company, that must mean that studio is safe from being shut down, right? What are you, stupid? Calamari Desert is easily the coolest one. It has a train. It's like, compared to most humans, Calamari Desert will always have that going for it. Hey all, Scott here. Happy Small Business Sunday! A while back, I started a non-profit charity organization, the Wii Play Project, where I take in old abandoned Wii Plays and give them a home. And I started to think, well, if I want to be a true nonprofit charity organization, I gotta find a way to make a profit off of this. So, welcome to the only business that specializes in selling Wii Play and very little else. You guys sell Wii Play? Oh, don't even get me started! Hey, all, Scott here. You know, I've made it nine years staying spoiler free on Heavy Rain, and the only way to stay as spoiler free as possible before playing it is to not play it. Christ, I'm only human! Your entire life you come to expect this, but then Nintendo decides to throw this at you. Oh, f the letters are evolving! We play. Do you? Is that a threat? Yeah, this was a solid game on the system, and that's coming from your local RPG hate and fling smash owner. I like that they got Rare to provide Donkey Kong's model for this game. I like the thought of intelligent systems trying to make it themselves. We just can't do it. So you have to play through all four cups. You get gold by placing first overall in each of them. Then the special cup unlocks and you can play the final cup in the game. Just kidding. Now you have to go back and complete all the cups again, but now collecting at least 100 coins overall. And that way you unlock the extra cups, which are filled with the tracks from Super Mario Kart. Man, measles are sounding pretty good right now. With the console's advanced technical specs and four controller ports for four player games, a new Mario Kart seemed like a shoo-in for the N64. Holy shit, they did it. Mario Kart 64 was initially called Super Mario Mario Kart R during development. All these letters, nuh-uh, this one. The developers just decided, <laughs> you know what, let's just 
can do it. And gave it the same subtitles as every other Nintendo 64 game. I wanted a cool and effective setup for playing games and watching movies, an organized collection of the games I loved and always wanted to play. A room somebody could walk into and go, F you got Fling Smash? Find me. spent $250 on this system. This is a classic game of Where's Waldo, but with various different me's. Sometimes they swim, other times they stand. And let me address this letter from the Find Me fan community. Sometimes the me's are in space too, all right? There's some variety. This was always a throwaway game in the package for me. It's not bad, but it's just not good. And then the Saturday night of that week, the big dance would be held and and kids would smoke and drink before and after it. Oh, no, thank you. You see, I prefer just questioning why a lot of seniors in high school were taking freshmen. What the hell was going on there? You see, a big part of homecoming was asking somebody on a date. All you had to do was grab a poster board, think of some pun, and ask him out. It was all about flashiness over function with those things. As long as you were memorable and had a pun involved, nobody cared. But the fact that Wii Play is decently fun to play means my Wii Play reselling business will never die out. Not to be sold separately. Shit, the jig is up. The back of Yoshi's head is more iconic than Warren Harding, my favorite 29th president of the United States. I can easily tell you all the playable characters in Mario Kart 64, but who the f was the 28th president? I don't know. The soundtrack has some incredibly memorable tunes. Ah, sh it was Woodrow Wilson. Although I would say Super Mario Kart had better ones. The 64s are great, it just can't beat its predecessor in my opinion. So this game has a terrifying cursor. Could have used a paw print, maybe an arrow, a fucking triangle, no, arthritis. We can play each game in multiplayer, which, hey, with all games requiring only one Wii remote per player, this is one of those multiplayer games you can gracefully play all by yourself. Well, ever since the game launched, many fans noticed this sign in the courtyard of Peach's Castle. Now, under normal circumstances, it's gibberish, but when we slide the virgin gogs on, we can make out that it potentially says L is real 2401. Now, what does that mean? No sex for me, thanks. Hey all, Scott here. You wouldn't believe it. I was on a train, it crashed, and now I'm washed up on this deserted island. I really shouldn't have worn this shirt today. All right, we're talking politics. It's your favorite honor, and today we're gonna be settling this right now. Does Mario Kart 64 control poorly or all right? Yes. Well, 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 what do we have here? The company I have the most embarrassing feelings towards. Uh, well, that means I have the most predictions for Nintendo at E3 2019, uh, like Metroid Prime 5. The GameCube games will finally come to Wii U Virtual Console. The DLC for Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games on Wii U. A photo emerges of Shigeru Miyamoto looking completely lost in the Epic Games booth. Uh, Doug Bowser proves his worth as the new Nintendo of America president by eating an entire ice cream sandwich in one bite on Treehouse Live. Uh, Bill Trennan is visibly impressed. Hey y'all, Scott here, and I'm freaking out here. I was outside, and I heard somebody say one of the numbers in my soch. Privacy is my number one concern, all right? I don't want anybody to know anything about me. For Christ's sakes, I blur out my inkjet numbers. You may ask why I'm so keen on privacy. Where did it all begin? Well, let me ask you this. How the hell did we learn about Geist DS? The game was canceled. We weren't supposed to know anything about it, but now we know everything about it. Really, anything can get revealed at this point. Here's my blood type. Damn it! Wait, come on. What other expenses did I have back in high school? Medical bills? Please, I've had this dark spot on my thigh for the past six years and nothing's happened. I don't need a doctor. So all in all, I like my game room. There's not much I can really complain about. <laughs> Except that, that does happen sometimes. If you want a fuller experience, as in being able to race on whichever course you want, being able to play as whichever character you want, or play battle mode, get multiple copies of the game. What, do you think this was a charity? Hey all, Scott here. I just got back from an art auction, and I'm really excited to finally have such a pristine piece of art in my home. It's something people look at and say, oh shit, I just realized this is the box art for Wario World. So now that I've proven the validity of video games as art, or at least box art is art, I feel like I can convince anybody to do anything, which is why I'm gonna start this rant against serial killers. Here's a message to all you serial killers out there. Stop! Yes, my favorite method of showing everybody what games I haven't played up until now. I pulled two things off my shelf to pick from, so let's see what comes off of the backlog first. Ah, damn. But out of all Game Boy Advance accessories or models, they all pale in comparison 
to the Visteon Dockable Entertainment featuring Game Boy Advance. An entertainment system for vehicles that could also play Game Boy Advance games with a wireless controller. This is by far the most unique and mind-blowing Game Boy Advance model of all time that's sure to put anybody who comes in contact with it into a state of shock and awe. Oh shit, it's a Game Boy. Well, if I'm gonna be on this deserted island for the rest of my life, it would be nice to know what games I should have shipped to me so I can have something to play. Uh, I have a lot of time on my hands, so why not? Hi gang, it's Scott's inner voice here. I just realized what I said was really f***ing stupid. If I can ship games to the island, then I can ask somebody for help. So I'm gonna make sure I can hear my inner voice. Well, heat stroke struck. Well, let's talk about my five Desert Island games. We play a vu. Is there una manas? Blasting hordes of enemies is incredibly fun, mainly because, dare I say, Resident Evil 4 is one of the most well-designed and balanced games I've ever played. It has this giant named El Gigante. That's right, f*** you, Max Payne 3. Now, Sonic 1 and 2 were actually originally released on mobile years before they were updated to be the Christian Whitehead versions. Yeah, these weren't great. Sonic Spinball was originally on the App Store, but was later delisted. Damn it! Also, there's a lot of random things I keep forgetting you can do in this game. Like change the minimap and turn it into a speedometer and a much more artsy minimap, or turn off the background music by hitting L. I forgot you could do that. I accidentally hit the L button and I thought it was a glitch. But hey, you learn something new every day. Yesterday I found out I was doing laundry wrong this whole time. You gotta be kidding me. We play motions all right, all things considered. However, I do have a stronger attachment to the first game, but this one does have some hitting games in there. If you wait on the title screen long enough, you can do this and this. And if you hold B on the title screen, you get this and you can see all the R's dust in the game. But one question remains. Can you sell it separately, son of a bitch? Hello, this is Scott Wozniak. We play motion reselling studios. Liquidate the company. All right, so we all hate it, Chet, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's a born-again carnivore, he's led many to unemployment, he's money-laundered, he's wronged all of us. Who's to say one of us isn't the killer? That's right. If we can't leave, we might as well find out who viciously murdered Chad. Oh, I love puzzles. Guys, listen, one of us may be a murderer, but we're all human at the end of the day. Let's just listen to some gaming mysteries about Luigi and call it a night. Wasn't that the guy who said f***ing Mario Golf? One neat feature is you can save your performances as videos, add a bunch of filters and text, it's great. I'm all out of paper, I'll just use Boogie for my grocery list. So far, we play isn't doing too much revolutionary with the pointing functionality of the Wii Remote outside of me abuse. We Sports, yeah, game wouldn't be as fun without the Wii Remote. The motion control makes that game. We Play, these games can be played with a computer mouse and they'd be virtually the exact same. That's where Pose Me comes in, a game that couldn't be played with a computer mouse because while it uses the pointer, it forces you to rotate it all around. You swap between different poses with the A and B buttons to fit them within the silhouette bubbles appearing all over the place. You gotta get as many poses as you can into them without having the bubbles reach the bottom of the screen, and for God's sakes, don't look at the birds, they're just a distraction. This was never a personal favorite of mine, it's always something where I was worried somebody would notice me playing. Is that always now like I said, you could buy a controller and set your phone up as if it was a console, but at that point, just buy a fucking Switch. But mobile phones do have a pro to them compared to the Switch. They have Atari Fit. One of the most infamous being Donkey Kong Racing, a bit of a successor to Diddy Kong Racing. With Rare being a Microsoft company after the buyout, they couldn't develop for Nintendo home consoles anymore, so they tried to rework Donkey Kong Racing into Saberman Stampede. That didn't come out either, so move over Donkey Kong Racing, we got laid instead. One of the first things I used my sweet, sweet coins on was this Wii Remote holder. Yes, I looked at all of this and said, f*** these, my Wii Remotes need a box. This is just a simple collapsible holder for the controllers. I use this for all kinds of remotes and lighters. I thought it was so adequate at holding, I got the other color, which after saying that, I should have brought that little factoid about myself to the grave. But one could argue I didn't need this, but more could argue I didn't need two. Don't think I'm a big subscription boxes guy. Yeah, I get the whole appeal is getting a box full of new stuff every month and not knowing what you're gonna get. Uh, lots of people like that and I totally understand it. It's just for me, I personally see that as getting a bunch of shit I don't want. But hey, that's just my opinion, please respect that. Just don't act like this thing is this almighty deity to you. I don't wanna hear anything about how you met your wife through Loot Crate or something. Welcome, murderies, to the first centennial charity gala for recent murder victims. I knew it was a good idea getting murdered. <laughs> oh yeah, we all went to that dinner party together, got murdered, got treated for it, how was all that? Well, have you ever died? Not personally, but I'll get around to it eventually. This is great, I know these guys. We all went to Chet Chef's dinner party, great food, ended in murder. But everybody was diagnosed with murder except for me, 
these guys got treated, and look at them now! But that's the thing, they all survived, and they all already like me, so I just have to make sure they rave about this gala, so I'm just gonna try to sweeten the deal for all of them. Terry and Jeb, vegans. I laced their meat with tofu. Rex Mo's, school dance chaperone. I color coordinated all the things that aren't beer so he knows what he should and shouldn't eliminate. Wendy's employee, Wendy's employee. I heckled some Arby's drive throughs before I came here. I didn't even know he was coming tonight. It works out perfectly. Listen, these guys have seen it all. It must have been hell to go through the recovery process after being murdered, but it'll all be worth it after they get their gifts. So those were just a few cancelled games throughout history, but far from all of them. Who knows, like I said, maybe we can return to this topic eventually, or even take a look at specific cancelled games themselves. But as of right now, I'm a little more concerned with maintaining my privacy. How does it look on me? Uh, if guys DS can leak, who says my blood type and hair color can't? You know, I might want to go a step further. Maybe a little more. Just a little more. While there aren't any adoption deals going on, I was looking for some deals at the hospital this year. This gunshot wound is really starting to piss me off. Hey all, Scott here. Nothing makes the blind more uncomfortable than a good old fashioned game of charades. We play E2. Es es una amenaza. The eighth generation of game consoles had some of the most infamous cancellations of all time, in my opinion. The most heartbreaking of which was Project Rap Rabbit. Please care. Hotel for Dogs was a movie I almost saw back in 2009, and 10 years later, I still haven't. Now, I mean, something like Bummerman R, yeah, if that released in 2008, it would be like 15 bucks max on Xbox Live Arcade. And now, you see, that's a little thing us people who are talking about reboots right now call bullshit. Yes, we return to the fabled backlog, games I own but just have been refusing to play for the longest time. I personally consider something to officially be in the backlog if I've owned it for a full month and haven't played it yet. Out of all the games in there, I have calculated the game that has spent the longest time in the backlog is Max Payne 3, so I decided to start playing Resident Evil 4. How did Silent Hills not make it to store shelves, but Mega Flarp did? While a bit of 64's more arcadey feel is present here, this is definitely most similar to the first game. And that's evident by one major returning element. While the feather item didn't return from Super Mario Kart, Intelligent Systems made sure to bring back a fan favorite. Coins are back, bitches! Yeah, I wasn't too awful thrilled with my Loot Crate DX. I'm also not too terribly interested in a lot of what Loot Crate considers pop culture. There's lots of stuff I like, but the majority of stuff in this box wasn't up my alley. I know a lot of people will probably say, Jesus, Scott, you're so negative. What do you like? The game asks you a question, you answer the question, it'll determine if it's a lie or not. That's right, THQ made a lie detector for the Wii. I knew they could do it! Like how Super Mario Bros. 3 was supposed to be a play. You see how it opens up with a curtain rising, various platforms cast a shadow and have bolts on them like they were constructed as part of a set. Whenever a level ends, it's almost as if Mario was running off stage. This was a fan theory for the longest time until it was actually confirmed by Shigeru Miyamoto. Now, if this was an actual play, I could sit down and watch. Who wrote this? Project Giant Robot was a game created to make the Wii U gamepad seem worthwhile and that was it. Just a tech demo for the system that was all about making a giant robot and wreaking havoc as it. It was announced alongside Project Guard which did end up releasing as Star Fox Guard. I would have assumed that this was just a tech demo but Nintendo kept reaffirming that they were intending on releasing it for the Wii U as a full game. And I'm sure we all know how that turned out. Just think where the Wii U would be if this game released. But hey, it's called the Smurfs Dance Party. At least two of those words are right. Double Dash has barely aged a bit. It's still a blast to play, and it offers so much that no other Mario Kart has. Now, that still makes it fun to play today, but what makes it truly one of the best Mario Karts? Honestly, it was the bonus disc. Oh, it's midnight. Yeah, this one wasn't doing the launch. Okay, back to GameStop, where I was supposed to pre-order the game before waiting in line, Fuck. I bought a balance board instead. I bought it at Walmart at 1.03 a.m. Here's my mugshot to prove it. All right, and coming back, I can now experience the midnight launch of the digital versions of these games at 1.30 a.m. This is a bad night to wear flip-flops. I don't even like Pokemon. Club Nintendo was one of the only cults I was in that offered 3DS XL charging cradles. They were the best. The Nazis did do some crazy stuff with gravity, though. Carried some unusual munitions that canceled gravity when it detonated. Nope, oh, Hitler. Everybody has their happy place. They wouldn't make the t-shirts if that wasn't the case. And mine is Shiverburn Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. Such a fun level. There's fire and ice. Can't ask for much more than this. Sometimes I like to hit up to go into first person view and look up at the mountains. 
Everybody has their happy place, and mine is Fleet Glide Galaxy in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Everybody has their own personal favorite Mario Kart. I've heard countless people go on and on about how Super Mario Kart is the best. And I mean... I listen to them. Super Mario Kart is the best one because uh -huh, of how simple uh -huh, and intuitive yeah, it is. Mm -hmm, the track design yeah, is great uh -huh, and the items uh -huh, are balanced. Yeah, it's challenging mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm, battle mode mm -hmm, is phenomenal. Yeah. A Diablo 3 mug, hey, not bad. Let's see if it's of any quality. Oh shit, it works. Finally, oh my god. Now that's one thing I can finally cross off of my bucket list. Finally playing Resident Evil 4. Now I can move on to my next one, holding a Sega Saturn. I can die now. I have no clue how this game determines if what you said was a truth or a lie. I tried to sound like a bumbling idiot and it labeled it as a truth. I screamed into the mic and it labeled it as a truth. I said this game was garbage and it labeled it as a lie. It's broken. You're taking this pretty well, man. Who's to say you're not the killer? You're acting pretty carefree right now for someone whose life's at stake. It's a murder, not a tax audit. We'll be fine. Well, what about the Wendy's employee? Nobody ever suspects the Wendy's employee. Well, what about Steel Wool? He has a gun. Kim has a knife. Yeah, for fun, not for murder. <laughs> Guys, deep down, we can all be a murderer if we want. So let's just get down to the bottom of this. By a show of hands, who here murdered shit? Damn it. Hey all, Scott here. I don't know why it's taken me this long to start committing witchcraft, but here we are. I'm gonna try and look into the future and find out what all the E3 press conferences are gonna be like. Well, I ruined the surprise. So that was a short build up to release board game. There's not much left to do other than actually play the thing. Oh wait, I stand corrected. We have to check out the bonus disc. So this is why people gave a shit about this game. Capcom announced that they'd be bringing the original Resident Evil in all of its 3D glory to the Game Boy Color. Oh man, just think about what life would be like if that actually came out. A cool idea, but Capcom just ended up making Resident Evil Gaiden instead. Eternal Darkness was shown off for the Nintendo 64. I'm not repeating myself. Canned and eventually put on the GameCube. But it was just a 100 minute long Nintendo commercial with footage of Mario 3 at the end. Man, f the kid, is that a warp whistle? I mean, you have to place first an all-cup tour on 150cc to unlock mirror mode, and then you have to beat the star cup on mirror mode to unlock King Boo and Petey Piranha. You can't have one without the f***ing other! Toad and Toadette are the only other unlockable pair of characters, and they're unlocked by beating the special cup on 100cc. God, Toad is such a flaccid unlockable character. Like, is it really exciting to unlock Toad in a Mario Kart game? Who goes... Holy sh! So I take out a loan for two grand and spend it all on dewormer paste. My finger slipped. Hey all, Scott here. After being born in 1997, I decided the next thing I wanted to do was go to E3 1999. Want proof? Well, here's the VHS tape from the event. What's up, 1999 livers? Here we are in the year 1999 at E3 1999. And if you need photographic proof, this is 1999. Right then, the year 2019. See, I was there! I was also two at the time, but I was also there! So yeah, my love for this game is purely nostalgic. Looking at it critically, it's fine, it's just nothing special. So now I have to compare it to something else that I'm nostalgic over. So how does Mario Kart Super Circuit compare to Classroom Jeopardy? <laughs> yeah, it fucking stinks. Like if I pick Luigi and Paratroopa because they're both products of crossbreeding, I can get the fireballs and the triple shells. Hey all, Scott here. I haven't checked on my birth certificate since last September. Yeah, I'm really falling behind, so let's see what it has in store for us. So my name was just a placeholder until they thought of something better. And they never did. Nothing like an existential crisis to start your day. Yes, Loot Remix. 15 bucks for this thing, filled with past Loot Crate items. Son of a bitch. Guys, after I sell these, I'm about to be swimming in $4. There are two specific eras of my life, when I didn't own two Battlestar Galactica Cylon Raider figures, and now. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I'm sorry, but most of the Tom Clancy game trailers just kind of blend together for me. So watching this trailer was the longest I ever held this expression. All right, well, here we have just a few things I'd like to see from a future Smash game. Of course, I could go on and on and on about this, but I decided to keep it fairly brief. Of course, if you want to see anything from Smash Brothers in the future, be sure to scream it from the rooftops. Let everybody know. While you're doing that, I'm going to mail this to Nintendo. <laughs> Should probably move that away from the mailbox. <laughs> That's why the IRS didn't receive my tax payments. <laughs> I'm getting audited. Hey all, Scott here. You know, people don't get that anymore. Combining the words Scott, all, oh, hey, and here just doesn't connect with modern word hearers. That's why I'm going to change up the first four words I say to everybody to be understandable to more people. Uh, here, I have a lot of options to shift through. <laughs> Hi gang, it's Scott. Welcome to Scottsburg. Everybody? No, just Scott. Guys, look, a me. I played Fling Smash. People of you. 
Hey, anybody up for tennis? I bought a hat. I'm talking about reboots. I like that one. All these games, and I was still just gonna buy the 3DS for Pilot Wings Resort. Ubisoft probably asked themselves, what the hell are we doing here? And pulled the plug. I got a second box, let's see if they redeem themselves. Here's a Voltron beanie and scarf. Hell yeah, it's June. Marvel shoelaces. Uh, yeah, I am a strict fan of not shoelaces. And a Power Rangers minifigure. I don't know which was lamer. And next time I'm gonna beat a game from my backlog, I have no excuses to finally play Max Payne 3, so next time I'll be checking out Adventures of Dino Ricky on the NES. But hey, at least it wasn't Bioshock for the Vita. You wanna know how much we got on this? Just that. That's it. That's all we got. It never came out. Man, imagine what it's like to be Bioshock Vita. Yeah, but a lot of the junk with the Gaming Treasures box feels like, here's a fucking mouse pad. Hey y'all, Scott here, with a beret on top and anxiety on the bottom, I've created my latest masterpiece. Van Gogh's gotta be rolling in his grave right now. I can't believe I'm saying this, I miss EA's 2018 show. At least with that, that was just an hour of stuff I didn't care about. Now I'm terrified of any video online with these three terms in the title. Now, because you have a partner, you can actually team up with an actual human being to play co-op. One player drives, the other uses items. Give me an E, give me an H, this mode is just fine. Baby Mario and Baby Luigi, this raises more questions than answers. Koopa Paratroopa, these two are literally the same character except one's the product of crossbreeding. So here we are at Best Buy for the launch of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Where's my bug spray? We're back at Best Buy with bug spray in tow and no camouflage hat. F One hour from launch and we have everything. I forgot the snake bike kit. I hope the bug spray repels the snakes. Morally, I feel it's just right to pick the characters that are already partners, but I love making combinations that just make no sense. Like, how the hell did we get to this point? I do love the character selection in this game, just for having all the Mario characters you'd expect to have in a Mario Kart, plus some why the f**ks. You can't have a Mario Kart roster without some why the f**ks. Cut NES games are way easier to re-release, that's why we're mainly getting them. I miss Wii Virtual Console era because it didn't feel like Nintendo made up excuses as to what they will and won't re-release, and now it feels like they say, oh, GameCube game are so hard to re-release. Here's Wrecking Crew, you'll like that. All in all, even if the service got worse with each console it appeared on, I'm gonna miss the virtual console. Even if Yoshi's Cookie never came to Wii U. Am I the only one that cares about that? General population, do you give a shit that Yoshi's Cookie never made it to Wii U virtual console? No. You heard it here first, folks. You know, after Hotel for Dogs, I'm in the mood for a cat scan and a pet simulation game, so how about we start things off with puppy love? So I'm brand loyal, I'm devoted, I want to scream my love for a company from the rooftop, so I named my character Tums. And hey, why not name the dog that too? Nice and clear. Reboots can be groan-worthy sometimes, but I think they can be totally understandable and necessary. You can't make 20 installments of a game series called Need for Speed with without like five reboots. You just can't. This is the Xbox E3 2019 briefing. I hope this announcer gets work outside of Microsoft's E3 every year. Hey all, Scott here. Let's roleplay. I'll be Sonic CD, and since I'm the only other person here, I'll also play the role of Scott. You. King Boo and Pete Piranha are total, yeah, we had some extra time in development and felt like drawn circles, but they're really fun characters to have as options. Birdo? And they introduced Toad Dead. Hey y'all, Scott here. I've always been a big supporter of local business. You can catch me every week commissioning the fire department to put out the fires I start. I love business so much, I am one now. Wanna know why the economy's failed ever since it was introduced? Because there's nothing to buy. Well, I'm here to change that. Introducing my new product, Scott talks about game commercials. I recorded myself talking about game commercials for 17 odd minutes and I decided to sell it at full price. What's full price? Stay tuned. To ensure this product will be as successful as possible, I am forcefully giving everybody it right now. It will start playing, and at the end, you will have to pay. If you don't want to be a bum. Oh f it's starting. I've been chipping away at my bucket list lately, now all I've got to do is have an irrational desire. PSP. It's like a nut you can play with outside. I want that. Pretty nice venue, right? Scored on a Labor Day sale. 14 grand instead of 15. My goal is to make the greatest homecoming dance ever with just as much no sex as I remember, but I can't do it all myself, which is why we hired a professional planner. Sir, you won't regret your choice. With me planning, this will be the best funeral Son ever. Of a bitch. The promo for Kirby Air Ride is a promo for the Kirby Right Back At You show, which leads into an Air Ride promo. I almost had to sound the alarms. So literally, this audience freaks out over anything. Like, Todd Howard could come back on stage. Hey, everybody, it's Todd Howard. I'm an arsonist. Yeah! Rage 2 update, Wolfenstein Youngblood and Cyberpilot coming soon. Yeah, we know. Wolfenstein Youngblood. 
Words, words, he said words! This plot is perfectly fine for a classic Sonic title. Just when I say it out loud, you end up having some questions. Why is he blue? Oh God, we're in E3 1999 memorabilia country now. Well, here we have a have from the convention. It's one of the neatest ways to get lice. There's nothing new to any of this. It's literally just playing all the tracks in the game again. Am I really gonna go through with this? No. I did it anyways. Ha, <laughs> my patent just came in. It looks like I'm the official owner of the phrase, it looks fine now. It's a great phrase to use to describe games I don't care about, but don't want to piss anybody off with my opinion on them. We'll be hearing that a lot this show. Of course, reveals can go haywire. Now, I don't think it's deliberate. I doubt marketing folks are in their board meetings going, all right guys, just finalized our reveal plan for the game. First, we f up. We can't wait for you to play Baldur's Gate 3 on Stadia. No, on PC, you can f right off. Heroes the video game. If this game came out. Okay. If this game got canceled. Okay. I have absolutely no opinion either way. Hey, there's my favorite murder victims. Hear that? We're his favorites. How are you guys liking the gala so far? I hate it. Reminds me when I got murdered. How? That. What am I supposed to call you guys? I'm a big proponent of the term hospital junkies. Well, I'm more of a fan of the term charity messiah. What are you talking about? That describes no one in this room. What's wrong with him? Oh, you see, well, he's simply bludgeoned to death, but at the hospital, the doctors wrongfully diagnosed him as a burn victim. Can't you just take them off? Not if he wants to recover. <laughs> Now, it originally released on the PlayStation 3. It was later updated for PlayStation Move. Yes. It looks pretty good, but this pesky little thing won't come off. Here we have a Loot Crate DX box, something designed specifically for people who take things too seriously. This cost me $50 per month. Uh, the only thing I ever remember about this game is that it gave Nathan Spencer wife arm. What a twist. Your dead wife has been a part of your robotic arm throughout the entire adventure. That's something worthy of being on the back of the box. They actually announced the dolphin would play DVDs, as in... Movies. I've been trying all day, it's just not gonna work. Now, there was a Japan exclusive model of the GameCube made by Panasonic that did play DVDs, the Panasonic Q, and Panasonic was one of the partners Nintendo announced alongside the Dolphin. So with the DVDs, they didn't lie lie, but they lied. Hey all, Scott here. The only true way to know if you're tough shit if you got a Wii Remote holder for free for buying hundreds of dollars worth of Nintendo games and systems. That's a big f**k you to anybody who doubted me buying a Wii U. Yeah, I could do this. Hell yeah, death. Super Smash Brothers, the most beloved crossover fighting game on the planet, no doubt, but by now you should know that. Nobody reads this and says, is that a sandwich? Castlevania Resurrection was being developed for the Dreamcast and was going to be in the style of the Nintendo 64 Castlevanias. It was canceled because, remember, Dreamcast. And here we have the College Essentials. Having a bunch of your older systems plugged in at once is my favorite t-shirt right now, and leaving them all unplugged and in the closet makes it less likely you're going to play them. You have to pull everything out and find all the cables that go with it just to realize you're breaking out a Sega CD just to play Double Switch. It's a mess. And NBA Live 04. How many sentences start with, I bought NBA Live 04 because of the Mario Kart bonus disc. Yeah, you could use GameCube games so much they incorporated the feature into the logo itself. I'm really surprised others haven't gone with this design. Instead, I usually went home early and just started to count how many copies of Premium Rush that I own. That's why I want to throw my own homecoming dance. One that doesn't have the pressure of trying to get laid. One that's open to everybody. I mean, the Wii was the perfect platform for NES games. You look at the Wii remote and give it a little of this. Boom, NES controller. Well, I did it. I went over all the E3s from the 1990s, so grab your nearest cake, blow at the cigars since you don't have any candles handy, and rejoice because we only have 17 more E3s to go through. Well, this doesn't call for a celebration anymore. This calls for a coping strategy. Sega Game Gear games were eventually added in March of 2012. Oh, yay. We have to hold the right trigger while moving the left stick, and to interact with objects, we use the right stick when prompts come up. I have been waiting so long to finally use this banner. Oh, I realized I may not be cut out to be a father. I tried the whole treat an egg like a child for a day thing, but you can't spread chia seeds on those. But I did take out life insurance on the pets, and now I can cash that out and afford a trip to the doctor, uh, just for a little checkup, you know, my foot hurts, that gunshot wound, you know, just the basics. <laughs> The chia seeds gave me a yeast infection on my head. The 3DS virtual console release of Super Mario Brothers was the way I first beat the game.
You don't have to interact with lots of this stuff. Uh, for example, you can look at yourself in the mirror just to make Ethan look like a smug son of a bitch and very little else. Hit shower time and we see some form of nudity. Yeah, this is all starting to make sense. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. It looks fine. Wasteland 3. It looks fine. Xbox buys double fine. What better way to mourn the loss of a loved one than to fully replace them? I bought a backup. A hedgehog. Look at him. I can't wait to be a better Lincoln dad to him. I won't kill him. I'll treat him like any pet should be treated. I have a unicorn now. A new chia pet means a new packet of chia seeds, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to pour some on my head to live a day in their shoes. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna feel so... Time for Sean to go to bed. I go upstairs. I see he drew his brother dying. Oh, that's so normal! So Ethan has a bit of a blackout afterwards, and then... Who the f is that? You'd have to pop in an Xbox Live Arcade disc, but then you could download smaller bite-sized titles. Stuff like Feeding Frenzy and Dig Dug. Oh! Okay, we're getting another Smash Brothers reveal. Uh, this is a reprise of the King K. Rule trailer. I assume this is gonna be like Dixie Con or something. Ah! Eminem's car racing wasn't good? I have $20 and I need a weekend for my kid! <laughs> Did somebody order terrible? Everybody who's like, ah, Scott doesn't play my favorite games. Well, f you, have you played Chicken Shoot? Jesus, humanity. Now, would I consider the data design game shovelware? No, I consider them sh Hey, y'all, Scott here. Oh, yeah. Garbage. But hey, if you want a more standard experience, here's the Sega Genesis Owl Pad. I'm sure somebody stood by this controller like you're waiting in the living room for your date to come downstairs and you're talking to her dad about how much you like the Sega Genesis controller. We're an Owl Pad family. What is up with the C button? I don't know how easy it is to see, but it is significantly stiffer than all the other buttons. The back is a soap dish. Now, Pets Crazy Monkeys, that's where things get interesting. The monkeys invade the Wii system. Three pets died and my foot hurts today, but... I have one last shot to make things right, because I will start to raise Daniel from Karate Kid. For f sake. Pretty much after every scene with Norman, he has to take a hit of whatever the hell this thing is. He's not addicted, he just does it every day. Gummy Bear's Magical Medallion. Have you ever wanted a mediocre 2D platformer starring a fake bear? I got bad news for you, one exists. My favorite part about this game is there's nothing outright terrible about this game, but there's nothing good either. It's literally the most basic 2D platformer you could possibly imagine. This is like Gummy Bear's Ziplash to me. I'm sick of this, time to move on to something different. Gummy Bear's Mini Golf takes those classic Gummy Bears we got to know in Magical Medallion and forces them to play golf. I didn't like this. <laughs> the controls felt stupid and the ball physics were weird, but other than that, it was great. Shelby visits this guy's father and is just like, is he the killer? Is he? And now Ethan. His next trial is to cut off one of his fingers. F that. Ethan doesn't cut off one of his fingers and leaves. All right, I think I figured it out. See, these are potentially the rarest games of all time. One of these may just be the rarest game of all time. And after all the research, after all the eBay searches, I've come down to which one would give me the most unique game collection of them all. Which one is, in fact, the rarest game of all time. Time. It's Sonic 2 with a line! The Super Pad 64 is the type of thing I think of first when I hear the term third party controller. Cheaper in every sense of the word. But this was made by Performance. The company I immediately think of when I hear the term third party controller is Mad Cats. If you walk into a building constructed by Mad Cats, get the f out of there. Now it's time to fight Jason. God, I'm kicking this kid's ass. Jesus, they should have called this game Jason F dies. It's feeling like one of those B-Bon cool kind of days, you know? Here's the B-Bon cool for the Nintendo Switch. This hurts. Everything just doesn't feel right. These triggers, the sticks, the D-pad. No. Okay, I've never bought into third-party controllers before because you are almost never going to get the same experience or quality than from the first-party offerings. Sure, some stand out, but 90% of the time you're asking for trouble buying these things. Oh wow, a Nyko controller! Might as well be saying, oh wow, I can't just buy a pre-owned first-party controller or save up just a little more for the official one? Sure, some of them have their place in the market, but time and time again I just ask myself, why do most of these exist? And on top of that, Mad Cat's pulled a fast one on me. This isn't a life support machine! This was just a bread box! Jason, you really shouldn't wander off like that, you know? There's an awful lot of people in here. Please, Dad, can I have one? What's wrong with you? 
Don't run away like that just to force me to buy you a balloon. Uh, th damn it, he did it again. Everybody in this mall is gonna know how loud I can truly say Jason, but seriously, where'd he go? Oh my God, this crowd is ridiculous. I'm never gonna find it. Oh, here's the food court. Oh, Jason, he's across the street. Why is he across the street? What is he trying to gain from that? So Jason runs towards Ethan in busy traffic and gets hit by a car. Jesus, they should have called this game Jason f***ing dies. This is supposed to be a textbook example of iToy usage, a game that shows us what iToy is capable of. So what exactly can iToy do? Nothing. On the way home, I have to come up with a response to Lauren. Uh, this one. You're gonna be a good girl. You're gonna go home and let me get on with my investigation. What the hell was that? Actually, it seemed like Sonny was really pushing the iToy as a security device. Kinda. iToy Play 2 had this feature where you could leave the iToy running as a security camera and it would capture what goes on in your living room. That'll scare off the burglars. Oh fuck, he's got an iToy! Well, if anything, we can repurpose the iToy as a security camera. Norm does more investigating and it turns out the origami killer and John Shepard's son this entire time was Scott Shelby. He can't be the killer, he has asthma. You sure you don't want a funeral? I'm really good at funerals. If I'm free next week, sure, but right now I want a school dance. All right, well I did some research, made a few calls, so I can officially say I'm legally able to plan school dances now. Oh, legal, yes! It really wasn't that difficult. A lot of my training carried over funeral school dances, tomato, tomato. So what's the plan here? I was thinking we could do some fun activities, like we could stand up against the wall and just wait for somebody to talk to us. But why do so many people like school dances? The way I see it, you can't spell homecoming without alcohol poisoning. No! Oh f what system is this for? Well, my obsession with Heavy Rain's lame characters has really taken a toll on my life these past few days. I have not cleaned my kitchen in days. I'll leave it like that. See, leaving garbage on a floor is a smart way to know if you have rats in the house. I'll know if I have rats if the garbage gets eaten. Just don't get it, they're just kids. It's their big nights, their homecoming dance. Well, the chaperone is getting psychologically conditioned to be all for alcohol, drugs, violence, sex, and most importantly, sex. Well, Data Design made another Kawasaki licensed game, this time centered around quad bikes. Well, then it must be good! Back to Ethan. He's at a psychiatrist and is told he is not responsible for Jason's death. Sure. At the park with Sean now, and it is my mission to have this kid like me more than his mom. You know what that means, it's time to whip out the secret weapon, take out the boomerang, he'll eat that up. Now that is one happy kid. Ethan, you finally did it. Okay, we're back to sitting on the bench and not talking. And then we're back to having fun, man. Things are finally starting to look up. Ethan and Sean are having a good time, and then Sean just has to bring up his dead brother. We were so close. We were so close! All right, we got the DJ. Advertisements are out. Chaperone is being conditioned to be actively encouraging immorality. A ballot box has been spiked. All right, all that's left is the banner. We used a pre-made restaurant template. So you control your character by shifting the nunchuck up or down and by holding the Z button. You can probably make it by with just the one that came bundled with your console, but what if you want to play a local multiplayer game? Or what if your controller breaks for some reason? This game puts the fun back into mini. It's about f***ing time. Introducing the Boomerang 64. The analog stick fell off of mine and all that's left is a stick, so I had to improvise. Hey all, Scott here. Big day for me, I finally bought a shoelace. It's really firm and on one end we have a USB connector. That's pretty unique. And on the other end, oh damn it, this always happens to me. It has built-in rumble if you slide some triple A's in and there are two whole Z buttons for maximum. Pretty cool, right? Those are games, video games. And I gave you like 50 of them. Yeah, but these are terrible. I, uh, I feel like I've been murdered all over again. Is this even legal? G guys, I'm sorry. I just didn't have enough money for gifts. That's all I could have done. Oh, you didn't have enough money for actual presents, but you had enough money for that sign? Honestly, I've had that in my trunk for years. What even is this? That's MBA Life 14. Well, knowing that makes this present worse. I've been murdered far too many times to accept the Lego dimensions for Christmas. And what am I to do with all these madness? 25, 15, 16, 08? You son of a bitch! You son of a bitch! Whoa, all right, we weren't the ones who just give out trash for Christmas. Well, excuse me for loving bankruptcy. I'm only doing this to get out of the hole. Well, you're only doing this for the money? And you gave us Battleborn? I'm, I'm sorry, okay? Listen, let me try to make it up to you. Terry, Jeb, have a burger. We're vegan. Yeah, I know, no cheese. Listen, just stop, okay? What's going on? Oh God, he's been drinking too many of the Ice Mountain mini bottles. He's way overhydrated. Somebody give him some sand. <laughs> the 
This is a fucking disaster. I didn't want to push for sending, and now that I am, and we got the chaperone pushing for it, people don't care. No! Oh. Sorry, man. I thought that wasn't a beer. I want to know who did try with their controller? Nickelodeon. Put SpongeBob in your hands. Man, yeah, we were pregame at the homeless shelter earlier today, and then we went to pick a blade on the side of the road. It was great. Well, I donated blood in the car. It was great. Hey, guys, condoms, right? Why aren't you it? Norm time, we're discussing what we know about the origami killer. Not much, but he drowns his victims in rainwater, and only when it rains a certain amount. We'll meet with a meteorologist, tell him to stop the rain. Hey, welcome to homecoming. Uh, before you go, just to let you know, you can get, uh, as some would put it, drunk. I'm a little worried about the alcohol endorsement, that wasn't a part of my original plan, but apparently that's what people want. Hey man, appreciate the offer. How about a Bible around here I could read? Get all the kids out of the room. Three, two, one. One Jesus Christ, censor that. Technically, any copy of any game can be slightly altered to become the rarest version of that game. See, here, look, one of a kind. Something that really makes you ask Nintendo, I'm getting hypothermia, can you just release the Wii U now? No. All right, we got a lawn chair for eating food rations in, we got a sleeping bag to store food rations in, we have food rations for eating food rations. If I run out of food rations, I have fishing maps just in case, you know? If I got a fish, I got a fish. I have an emergency snake bite kit. To Pokemon launch. Water pouch, I am strictly anti-dehydration. Got bug spray. It's gonna be outside. Camouflage so I can sneak in front of the line without anybody noticing. I was gonna buy snow pants, but I decided to only buy things I would realistically use. Disney Plus was created because Disney owns 29% of the world, the other 71% is water. Now what's the point of camping out for a midnight release? There is none. The gummy gets shelby and in return the cashier gives us a box. Thanks. No, it's a box the origami killer sent him. Well, that's our cue to leave, and the whole game could have ended here. Now, midnight releases are normally reserved for the big boy games. Games that would draw a big crowd. Games that you could put on your resume for waiting for. So, Call of Duty. I love Call of Duty midnight launches. Actually, this is a doctored photo. This is from the midnight after Modern Warfare 3's launch. I've never intentionally dabbled in midnight releases for games before. I usually just go to the store after waking up in the morning. Which is weird, because I do midnight releases for pretty much everything else in my life. I assume Nintendo started production of this thing because, like, what else did they have releasing in 2016? Jesus. Oh, damn it! Why did you do that? So then people are too distracted by the punch stand to realize it looks like I pissed myself. Hey Scott, the coffin just came. Where do you want it? Oh my god, I already told you, this is a no coffin dance! Hey, I'm just throwing it out there. I called the police to ask them if it was illegal to give beer to kids without asking for their IDs. They're gonna be out here in about 10 minutes. All right, homecoming's over. Take your goodie bags. This is just a copy of Premium Rush. Get out. Well, I got questioned by the police. I yelled at everybody. Uh, beer was everywhere. I got home at 4 a.m. And I got f***ing soaked. It was the homecoming I always wanted in high school! It looks like I have to crawl on this broken glass. This was a bad day to wear cargo shorts. Alright, Mario Party 5 has a demo! Yeah, I get to pick the characters I play with. I like to choose strange groups of characters. Like, if you were invited to a party and these were the only ones there, would you go? Now, it turns out that Ethan's ex-wife is telling the police she thinks Ethan's acting weird. Well, no sh**! One son's dead, the other's been kidnapped! She's saying how, since he's acting weird, he may be the origami killer. Hey all, Scott here, and I'm on a quest. A quest to find a Mario Kart I grew up playing. This is gonna be harder than I thought. Hey all, Scott here. Can you imagine what life is gonna be like in 2019? We'll have more air, no more murder, immortality, and like two subscription services. So I was eating cereal this morning and it was fucking dreadful, thanks for asking. Hey all, Scott here. I wanna try a new thing every day. So today, I'm gonna be self-conscious. Do I really have what it takes to be a video game fan? Just to make sure nobody has any doubts that I am. I went to the store, I bought this fucking mug, okay? I like video games, all right? Hey all, Scott here. Bullsh**. Finally, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A big thank you to Konami for putting this demo in here. And now I know for a fact I don't want to buy Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You can get bonus items for Fire Emblem on GBA if you connect the little guy to the GameCube with Fire Emblem in it. I don't own the game, and before you ask, you can't trick it into downloading the items into Mario Party Advance. All right, we should just call the police already. We should just draw from the head. Figure out who's the murderer. Yeah, I'm getting real tired of trying to figure out who the murderer is. If somebody just wants to step up and be the murderer so we can all go home, I'm all for it. Alright, Scott, steal wool. 
Rex, you're dead. Hey all, Scott here. Try before you buy. That's my motto. You can give a product a test run, and if you decide you don't want it, you shouldn't have to pay for it. You know, I don't actually know if I actually want this. Where's my receipt? It's all about obtaining a continuous flow of money regardless of the product offered. As an example, you buy one $20 digital movie on the PlayStation Store. First off, let me add to my list of people I don't trust. And secondly, but we saved the best for last, the final unlikable character in Mario Kart DS. Rob. It's about f***ing time. Amazon Prime Video. So first off, navigating Amazon Prime on any device is a half-baked slog of a time, and the selection is Netflix and Hulu's Table Scraps. D. All right, Apple TV Plus, you get a Y for Y. How do you prove you love video games? with a lawn chair and an open schedule. The Office became more popular than some religions in recent years, and you wanna know why? Because it was on Netflix. And then NBC said, we'll make our own streaming service and put The Office on it exclusively. Stop it. Tracking your hand, there's a bit of a delay, so everything feels like it's almost in slow motion and you have to hold your hand over an option for a few seconds to select something. However, back when the Kinect originally came out, this was an effective way to make any casual gamer lose their mind. Yeah, you can get laid on the go. And as the game progresses, we get more powerful gophers. Oh. Oh, we're fucked. Modern retro gaming merchandise is nothing new. If you've ever had a wedding catered by Hot Topic, you know they've always been into this kind of garbage. But nowadays, you can easily walk into a Walmart or Target and find all these little knickknacks based on games from yesteryear. And if Walmart or Target isn't your thing, then Cracker Barrel will do. Come on, I'm a gamer, I love Cracker Barrel. Just like we play, we play Motion included something. Nintendo went for the gold, jumped around any and all ways of making a profit on this. This is what we like to call a big we play moment. Now, Apple made Apple TV Plus because I don't know, they were bored. That's the self-destruct. If we have to bail on the battlefield, we'll oh want to destroy goodness. the beat before it falls into any hands. <laughs> whoa, whoa, hey, hey, so you go that far? It ain't funny no more, partner. Jeez, the park is set. your fucking hands go? Some people camp out for days ahead of time just to be the first in line, and I've always dreamed of being one of those people. What the f***? Is this? That's just how a lot of commercials are these days, lifestyle pieces. And that works well, but I will always cherish the more unique ads, the ones that just stick in your mind. And I just got back from the doctor and they said, that's not normal, it's a disease. It's reverse Alzheimer's. Well, I hope you enjoyed Scott Talks About Game Commercials. To pay, please send a check through one of the following methods. If you cannot send a single check, a checkbook will do. What will I do with all the money? That's tough to say. I think I might buy out the economy. <laughs> you can do stuff like that. Technically speaking, IBM owns the weather. Now, if I was a Star Wars fan, I could imagine how that midnight release would go. Whoa. Tons of love poured into the packaging and menus. These are great love letters to fans of classic Nintendo. And then guess what happened in 2018? The Rapture. This thing was sort of old news. However, with the Motion Plus accessory attached, you couldn't fit the Wii Remote in a bun. So in 2010, Nintendo introduced the Wii Remote Plus. It was a Wii Remote with Wii Motion Plus built in and thus is the exact same size as a standard Wii Remote. Now, how do you get more people to own a Wii Remote Plus? You bundle it in with Fling Smash, of course. You bundle it in with Wii Play Motion, of course. Mini arcade cabinets are everywhere. Seriously, there's like six something companies making fully playable versions of arcade games you can Jeez. Oh, Fit in your pocket. Hey all, Scott here. Could you imagine a world where we play motion didn't exist? Hey all, Scott here. Could you imagine a world where we play motion existed? Yeah, it's fucking terrifying. I was wearing a polo. A developer was playing Brain Age and said, Oh, Call of Duty. I mean, come on, it only made sense. Two screens. And, Expo and the DS was made for these games. Popping in an embarrassing amount of batteries and turning this thing on, we're greeted to son of a bitch. For pretty much all the My Arcade releases I've come across, they ain't using the original arcade versions of these games. They're using the NES versions of these games. Yeah, I'm pissed. But you know how things are. Accidents do happen. What the f***? It broke? Now, I'm sure somebody must be saying, well, Scott, that's just Pac-Man. You should try Karate Champ. Who the f*** said that? Most people live their lives contently believing there to be no true sequel to Wii Play. You hear that? 
it's anarchy. It seems like every year SNK tries putting out a new Neo Geo nostalgia grabber, and I am under the opinion that Neo Geo is cool and has its place in video game history, but I'm tired of people acting like it's bigger than it really is. Before you get mad, remember, I'm the guy who owns Just Dance 2020 on the Wii. Do you really think my opinion matters? Wii Sports Resort already did that. The entire point of that game was to do that. People weren't necessarily begging for another minigame collection showcasing the power of this thing. But hey, maybe they did something different and new enough with the technology to warrant this game's existence, right? Take a guess. That's right, Wii Play's back! I don't need other games! Now at this point you may go, Scott, that's great, you like gaming merchandise. Have you played any actual games recently? I bought a Roomba if that counts. Theater Targets, the only game made by Nintendo. Could you imagine Arzust asking Nintendo to develop Theater Targets? What the f***? No! Look at the difficulty select. Each one is represented by this guy at different stages of chewing. You gotta shift the Wii Remote back and forth to balance it all. Now, before you go... This isn't Wii Play, this is a bunch of bullsh**! They already hate me, what's the point? Hey Scott, let you know man, just listen sometimes, you gotta do things to make it all right man, regardless of how hard they just make it be. I don't know who the f*** that is, but thanks! Listen guys, that's Mr. Guys to you. I'm sorry, I treated you all like you were worthless and that's just not the case. Sure, I started doing this to get out of bankruptcy, but I realize there's so much more to this than just what benefits me. Well, we want to apologize also. We should be more grateful for what we were given, and we were way too harsh at first. And to be quite honest, this copy of Connect Adventures really hits the spot. Yeah, and I needed some firewood, and you know, Skyline with Supercharged is just that. I didn't know what I was doing on Tuesday, but now I know. And DJ Hero 2 makes a pretty mean plate. We know how much you went through to make all this for us, so we wanted to get you this. Mad and annoying on the Mac! And this. Had an await on the PSP! And this. The OA collection for the PC! And this. Nah, I'm good. Oh my god, I finally have all the Madden 08s! God, sound like you did good, man. You did good, bro. Vince Young! You really did it. Keep up the great work, man. We all proud of you, man. Yes, of course. You're so much smaller than I expected you to be. Is he okay? Yes. He might be dehydrated. I know just the trick. Oh. Now my arcade must have been proud of this one. It's a big feature according to the box. Like most consumers flip their shit when they see this. Whoa! Maybe there's a gas leak or something. Maybe that's why everybody's dying. Thanks, I was talking. Don't oh, shit, it was you! Take off your mask, who are you? F I never would have guessed! It's time to meet your end. Getting murdered is the least of my concerns right now. Why did you do it? Shit deserved it, he wandered. I was too shy to mention that I was the one that killed him, so I thought it'd be easier to kill everyone. Really? Five homicides and that's your reason? Make that six. You ever hear of the Madden curse? Oh my foot! I did it. I solved the mystery. I have seen a lot of murders in my day, and all six of them were today. The guys are all getting treated for murder at the hospital, they should all be fine. I'm pretty happy nothing happened to me though. I have jury duty tomorrow, which means I can't die. If I don't show up, I'll go to prison. <laughs> hey y'all, Scott here. I've been staring at this all day, I still don't get it. Anime! Couldn't even finish that word. See, for somebody so into stupid Nintendo games, I definitely need some boundaries set. There's a reason that sign's on my bedroom door. I refuse to consume much entertainment outside of the bare necessities, which is why I'm disgusted by the fact that people like things I don't like. I mean, what the hell is this? People who haven't played Pikmin 3? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need to broaden my horizons a bit, try new things, and maybe then, I'll never have to give the excuse that I'm not an RPG guy ever again! Then, and only then, will I be able to play Fling Smash with a clear conscience. Never been able to do that before. I've been missing out on so many different types of entertainment in this world! Let's start out by trying This Is Gonna Sting. Go watch it die. Well, I know I'm not alone. Many others refuse to consume 
this. Looking it up online, this guy says it's because all anime is absurd and makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, because American animation is logic-based. It's a fucking sponge! Anime just holds a certain kind of stigma. A lot of it can be illogical and hard to follow, characters can be weird and annoying, a lot of anime doesn't pass the do you immediately turn the TV off when somebody walks in test. Now I don't dislike foreign cartoons or anything, some of my favorite series were made in Arizona. It's just, ever since I was a kid, this style never appealed to me. And as I grow older, whenever I get a whiff of anime most of the time, I utter those sweet, sweet words. What the f*** was that? But just because I don't like the anime style doesn't mean I don't like Japan. Are you kidding me? Japan is one of the most amazing countries out there. They made Wario. You may say, well, Scott, instead of playing games based on anime you've never seen, why not watch the anime the games are based on first? <laughs> Last time I tried to watch anime, I looked up how to and they just told me to stop, so I think this is the only way I can. I mean, after Mighty Number no. 9 denounced anime fans in its trailer, I knew there was no way I was ever gonna watch some. I always listen to what Mighty Number no. 9 has to say. And make the bad guys cry like an anime fan on prom night. Yeah, Mighty Number no. 9's bitch. There's a reason it comes with a name tag. Don't tell Mighty Number no. 9, but I've officially converted my entire living space to be pro all things anime. I even have a jersey and everything. So now I just have to figure out what anime games I should buy. After searching for some on QVC, I am at a loss. All right, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses. That's the name of my florist. I don't have as many questions as I thought I would. How do you even properly say this title? Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3. Ah, oh, damn it, Dr. Jero's name is copyrighted? Run. Yeah, this is pretty much the exact same damn thing. Can Piccolo survive? <laughs> No. Oh, well, here we have Tokyo School Life, a visual novel. These types of visual novels are like books if Scholastic was really horny. It's a good thing that girl's moving in this scene. I left this game on for nine days and the image only partially burned into the screen. Moving the right stick fast forwards through everything so we can cruise through this entire thing. Uh, don't worry, sound effects are still included. Did I snap her neck? Well, we sort of still get a good idea of what's going on this way. <laughs> I said sorta. Next up is Senren Kagura Reflections, so I have to help this girl search herself. I found a gun. I was right about anime. I don't need anything new in my life. I don't care about anime. It's weird. I don't like it. Oh, hey, cool portal. Oh god, lines. You've done it now. You've really done it. You think you can get away with not giving a shit about anime? Oh no, I'm starting to question my ability to. It's human nature to give a shit about anime. And you, my friend, are the only one to reject it. Really? The only one I've noticed. And because of that, you will be. Who even are you? I am the protector of all things anime. I am the guardian of virginity. I am Dr. Anna May. Now, please, sir. I swear I think various animes are completely acceptable and wonderful pieces of art and entertainment, but I'm just not interested or invested in any particular anime or anime in general. I find that hard to believe. Damn, you're right. Oh, so that's what we're doing now, huh? Well, prepare for my secret weapon. Humility. All things anime. I'm sorry. I just never grew up with you. I never understood you. But that doesn't mean I don't respect you. I can really use some help right now. Please. I'll just spin you off myself. I'm sick of people like you disrespecting my world. It's time to succumb to your doom. Just because people aren't into something doesn't make them not respected. I still don't know what the hell Fire Emblem means. And my respect for anime has given me power. And I know exactly what will get anybody into anime to back off. Hey y'all, Scott here. Valentine's Day? I'm ready. I've had the exact same holiday tradition since 2003. A bottle of wine and body spray. Now that I'm 22, I'm looking to spice things up a bit. That's right. I'm gonna successfully get laid with a Wii game, which oddly enough... It's harder than I thought. This right here is the Nintendo Wii. It had a little something for everybody. 
everybody. Because of the varied audience that we captured, we got pretty much every type of game you could possibly imagine on this console. Fortune Street and the rest of them. I mean, the Wii had mature first person shooters, exercise games, dancing games, platformers, role playing games, f games, Sonic. I only have the Wii version here. I assume it includes all the sex it can. The PlayStation 3 version requires some peripherals according to the cover. You'll need these. Hell yeah, you will. Let's not waste any more time. We are officially one disc slot away from me taking my innocence and just ah! What do I have to lose other than virginity? Let's play We Dare. Why? Looking at the screenshots, it looks like it's just a sexy WarioWare. So WarioWare. There's not a ton of ways to truly make the character look like yourself, unless you're the cat in the hat. Weirdly enough, lots of options if you look like that. After creating something God wish he created, we have to pick one of six personality types. Are we a big shot, some couch potato, yes, a jock? I created some other characters here, including a girl I named her Impact because I always had a thing for that font. Such a great font, so bold, so fun, always using when you want attention. I always wished I'd find somebody who was just as iconic as Impact. Yeah, okay, I wanna f a font, who doesn't? And it's time for the mini game. Oh, man, I can't wait to see what this whole sex thing is all about. Did I miss a page? These minigames can be pretty intimate, squeezing your faces together with a Wii remote between them, just another Wednesday. Eating the apple by hitting buttons with your face can get really competitive playing with the guys. F you. F you. In the spanking game, where you have to put the Wii remote in your friend's back pocket and then r rock them back and forth? Where's the spanking game? That was 20% of why I bought it. But thankfully, the stripping minigame is still here. That was 40%. Gotta stand on the weed balance board. It'll weigh you and you have to take off as many clothes as you can and it'll detect if you did or not because technically you're supposed to weigh less. I have a workaround though. Hold melon before, put it away after, easy high score. Got an entire cupboard for my weed dare accessories. And to my knowledge, you can't spank in this game. It shows it on the back of the box. Ubisoft, thank God they have a support number to call. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Apparently, weed dare is considered contraband if played outside of Europe or Australia. If there's a sexier reason to go to prison, I'd like to hear it. Prison was okay. Met this guy Jerry, had few laughs, Palm got stabbed, but being the only person to go to prison for weed dare makes me the most qualified person to have an opinion on weed dare. And my opinion on weed dare is that it needs to learn a certain definition. Lifting isn't spanking! Hey all Scott here. I hate rumors. Ever since the dawn of time, they've been used to spoil major reveals. And ever since, they've been primarily used to get the attention of Nintendo fans, such as this one. Nintendo's lineup for 2021. This one's fake. This is an eye exam. So let's see what system we'll be scouring. Damn it. Awada himself made further statements on the interview, asking if better graphics and motion sensing would be enough to sell a DS successor. You can't just have better graphics and more controls, you need something else. Sex appeal! As 2010 made its way through the door, rumors persisted about the next DS, one guy deciding to snoop around the Game Developers Conference that year to find as much info as he could. His findings? I'll take anything at this point. Basically, he discovered the system was going to be more powerful than the Nintendo DS. Shut the f up? I mean, why would Nintendo announce a DS2? It was early 2010, they were just about to release a brand new DS revision, the TSI XL. I don't get you. On March 23rd, 2010, Nintendo officially announced a successor to the Nintendo DS. It wasn't called the Nintendo DS2, it was the Nintendo 3DS. I made this shirt for nothing? Hello everybody and welcome to Critique That Leak, the show for people looking for meaning in their life. You just have to look really hard. We here at Critique That Leak take our leak critiquer titles very seriously. It's not every day somebody goes to the effort of opening up Photoshop, so we really have to embrace each and every leak we can. <laughs> Who has time to erase one word from a Zelda logo? During 2017 to 2018, there were some rumors floating around about a Link's Awakening remake heading to the Nintendo 3DS. Now, that ended up being for the Nintendo Switch, and while I do believe that remake probably started life on the 3DS, this isn't it. This guy decided to be clever and lazy. See, the title The Legend of Zelda Awakening follows the format of another Game Boy remake on 3DS, Metroid Samus Returns. I take the original title and shake the words up a bit for the remake. The problem is Nintendo wouldn't use the original Zelda logo from the 90s with no real alterations for a new release of theirs, even if it is for a remake. However, I will put this leak up on the wall to remind me no matter how lazy I am, I could be lazier. I believe this thing was made just to shut people up about the 3DS needing a second stick, because when it came out, 
That's all you can really say about it. It came out, it was barely supported, and nobody bought it. In one sec, I know some people bought it, you don't have to tell me. Scott, I bought the Circle Pad Pro, I go to bed with it every night. Nikkei reported that Nintendo was set to reveal a 3DS with a bigger screen similar to the Nintendo DSi XL at E3 2012. This was accompanied by Wii U pricing info. When Nintendo said it, these rumors were false. This is Nintendo 3DS XL. What the hell happened there? Steel Diver Sub Wars was ousted through these means alongside NES Remix for the Wii U. The sequel to Steel Diver was leaked through the Australian classification website. Now, I don't usually get pissed about things leaking. This was an exception. But everything we've talked about has led to this. See, when Yoshi's New Island was coming out, a certain listing popped up online detailing a special edition Yoshi 3DS XL. This spread like wildfire and showed off an image of the system. And he said, it was hideous. It was also made by a 16 year old Scott. Yeah, I got bored one day in July of 2013 and decided to make a mock-up for a special edition 3DS box. The core idea here was to just make a box for the system. I wanted to try and mimic the design of something like the Animal Crossing 3DS box. The 3DS design itself was an afterthought. I effectively gave a 3DS liver spots. And then IGN reported on this thing, and so did a lot of other sites. I felt really proud about that one. The reason my fan art was used was because a Yoshi 3DS was actually coming out, and one of these retailers just decided to Google Yoshi 3DS and uploaded the worst looking one they could find. To commemorate the experience, I recently bought the actual 3DS this listing was for. We're not enough green spots on this one, but it's still okay. With it being a home console handheld hybrid, many brought into question the 3DS's future. Will Nintendo continue to support the 3DS or immediately move on to the Switch? Turns out, this thing wouldn't die. The successor definitely ended up being the Nintendo Switch Lite, a handheld only variant of the Nintendo Switch. But was that what these rumors were referring to? My shoulders are gonna work overtime on this one. Before the new 3DS XL was announced for North America, this banner came into GameStop and leaked online. I wonder what it could mean. In April of 2014, Nintendo trademarked the title Codename Steam, Strike Team Eliminating the Alien Menace. Nobody knew what it meant, but it wasn't until E3 2014 that Nintendo hosted a dedicated conference to announce Codename Steam for the 3DS. And fun fact, did you know Codename Steam released? You know what? After going through all that, I think I might have changed my mind on rumors. They can be pretty fun. From this day forward, I will only believe rumors. And if those rumors ever become facts, f them. Hey all, Scott here. Well, I've done it. I've finally mastered the art of beating video games, all thanks to cheating. Now that I've got that out of the way, I'm gonna use my newfound knowledge to beat games under different circumstances. I've been working on my chili run lately. Every time I hit a button, I have to eat five spoonfuls of chili. I'm not even past the menu! I've gotten lost in my fair share of games, whether I have no idea where I should be going, no idea what my next objective is, I just simply didn't understand the directions given to me, I can't find anything. Video games are easily the quickest way to realize I'm an idiot. I remember playing Bioshock Infinite in 2013. You could activate an arrow showing you where to go by hitting up. After one playthrough, this controller is useless now. But that's just not gonna happen. Everybody makes mistakes, just look at everybody. I don't wanna be told the solution to the puzzle, I gotta figure it out myself. I'm no pussy, I'll beat this game with my eyes closed. I am completely lost. And it feels amazing to be on a winning streak to constantly figure out solutions with no hesitation. And then you get to that stupid part in Uncharted 3. What the hell do I do here? That's when I usually call it quits and just look up a guide when the rest of the game is like this, and then I'm stuck trying to figure out this part for like three hours. Hey, oh wow, I can't figure out this puzzle in Resident Evil 2. I wanna piss my pants, not think critically. But for people who just need answers and they need them now, crack out the thesaurus. The strategy guide is the thesaurus of video games. I have said that so many times today. Yes. I'd like the definition of sex in the 80s, please. How to Win at Nintendo Games was one of the most popular books for NES players, but it's nothing special nowadays. Just a simple book full of strategies and tips. It's simply all about mastering the games that can't be beat. This book has a chapter about Mickey Mouse Capade. If you come up and tell me Wii Play was bundled with a Wii Remote, like yeah, I know that, but I'm gonna eat it up anyways because I'm a sucker for video game information. Or I have short-term memory loss. Magazines started to shift over more to news and reviews, and the tips and tricks portions became its own product with the strategy guide. No problem, I'd love to spend a couple of bucks on a guidebook for my favorite games. What the f*** is that?! I mean, I've stopped playing my fair share of games for a while, and a couple weeks later when I come back, 
What the hell happened when I was gone? I love game walkthrough videos, I know exactly what I want to hear. What's up guys, it's me GameFan Mike here, and today I'm going to show you how to get through the entirety of the first level in Super Mario Brothers. It's really easy, it's really simple, and I'm going to show you real quick. This is a classic game, one of my all-time favorites, and I'm going to show you how to get from point A to point B. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a like, a thumbs up, a nod, really. Any form of respect you can give, I'll take it. You are what's helping me grow and make helping you all out with games my full-blown career. All right, ran out of time there. We'll start over on the next life. Just a reminder, guys, before we get to the meat of this, if you haven't yet, please follow me on Twitter. When these things finally, finally bite the dust entirely, I won't ever forget that. I don't think I'll go the rest of my life without remembering. Oh shit, remember strategy guides? Hey all, Scott here. It's amazing to me that the Nintendo Switch is already three years old and they still haven't fixed the console's biggest issue. The T is backwards. Remember March 2019? The month Yoshi's Crafted World came out? Oh! They also released Resident Evil 1 and 0 at retail for $60. Oh! And 1 isn't even on the cartridge, you have to download it. This one's just all right. Nobody goes, oh man, you've never played Banana Blitz? You've got to try Banana Blitz. It's just okay. Well, the Nintendo Switch revision came out this month, and only a stupid, dumb, stupid idiot would buy one when they already have a perfectly fine Switch from launch. <laughs> I'm also not really one to freak out and adore every single thing Nintendo does, but I'm willing to give it a try. What the f Box Boy? What the f The Stretchers? What the f the Switch still exists? Hey all, Scott here. I bought new clothes. That's why they always call me New Clothes Scott. I love designs like this so much. I should go as far as possible with that love. What kind of tattoo you want, Clad? Could have just gotten the Xbox controller. It's a brand new day. I wake up and what do I do? I buy more useless trash. If I run out of money, I'll just sell another kidney. I don't care. Look, I bought another rice cooker for the collection. But we all have those things we really don't need, but sort of kind of want anyways. And game companies know this. That's why they all say, grab the paint. Scott's a moron. I'm not as ashamed as I want it to be. But here's the thing. Controllers are absolutely abused. These things are put through so much, and if you play games, you know you're prone to some thumb grease. To buy a controller based on its looks alone and with it only being available for a limited time, I almost don't want to use it. I know if I do, it's more susceptible to wear and tear, and if it breaks down, I don't want to buy another one. By the time I have to do that, it's going to be ten times more expensive online. Have you seen the Cheeto market? People pay top dollar for special trash. Imagine how much I have to pay for a new Halo Reach controller. Who chews on thumbsticks? Special edition controllers. They're always a joy to see, plus you can usually warn picking these up because you can never have too many controllers. However, I never want anything to ever happen to these. They're too precious. That's why I don't have anybody over anymore. Yeah, so I kind of have this weird thing where I have to lick every controller that I see. <gasps> Donkey Kong! You have the one guy that notoriously doesn't bathe his fingers go, yeah, I'll take the gold one. Like, what the f***? Don't do that to my controller! People have been customizing their controllers ever since the dawn of time, and if you want to reach a bit, we could consider decals to be the first instance of the special edition. I think a lot of people have seen these Nintendo Power decals for NES controllers. You'd get them with the magazine and just stick them onto your gamepad. These things have always been a thing, still prevalent nowadays. These are the cheapest possible solution to give your controller some flair. The only one I technically have is the controller skin that came with the Sonic Forces bonus edition. Choking hazard? <laughs> Thank god I read that. But they made sure to include denim. I know what you're thinking. I love the GameCube. Like, see, I enjoy this, but I just want more. I think I found another choking hazard. But hey, this one's greaseproof, a controller that addresses the biggest gaming hurdle. See, I want to play Halo, but I just love No Fork Spaghetti. Yeah, I really do like these controllers. They look great, they look cool, but controllers are meant to be used, and I can't use these controllers without ever feeling guilty. They're too rare and valuable. On the other hand, special edition consoles look cool, but they also make much less sense to buy if you already have the console, though the design will hold up for much longer. So, I've come to the conclusion that I won't buy anything ever. I'm not doing it! So, tell me where it all began. <sighs> Alright. Hi, my name is Scott and I'm not an alcoholic. My name isn't Scott and this isn't an AA meeting. <laughs> oh, thank god. I always hated those. I always thought out of place. I wish they would make it more accessible to non-alcoholics. You're stalling! I'm sitting. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. I'm paying you! With a coupon! You don't know what it's like to go to therapy. Hey, I got a life outside of this job. I go to therapy twice a week. You're a therapist. Where do you go to therapy? The mirror. All right, fine. It all started at my desk. 
Hey y'all, Scott here. So is this the first time you introduce yourself like that, or is this a reoccurring thing? Pretty much every week. Say, do you want me to play three of Nintendo's worst games of all time to end up wasting thousands of dollars in therapy? That was some incredible foresight. I plan my year ahead of time. Picture this, making bad games. It's like making bad water. It's almost impossible. One of these companies is Nintendo, a developer and publisher widely believed to put out nothing but quality titles. I finally figured out what this statement is! There were three games released in 2015 I believe to be nearly irredeemable. Some of the biggest mistakes Nintendo's ever made. Games I consider to make up the dark age of Nintendo. Big deal. That is the best thing a therapist could say to me. You shouldn't let the products of a multi-billion dollar children's company affect your mental health. You don't understand, I have to play most Luigi-based products! Well, I think it's a good time to practice anything but sobriety, so let's take a look at three of Nintendo's worst games of all time, which, weirdly enough, all released within two months of each other. First one we should tackle is... Ah! Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, The Rise of the Machines. Touch an amiibo? <laughs> Nintendo's E3 2015 digital event kicked off. Halfway through, a happy home designer trailer played, then those glorious words world premiere flew up on screen. It cuts to a Wii U gamepad. Holy sh**. And an Animal Crossing figure gets scanned onto it. Holy sh**. Animal Crossing's on Wii U. I called it. I called it. So you, you got incredibly depressed over the announcement of a game in a series that you aren't even a huge fan of to begin with in the first place. That's right. Who the f*** is this guy?! So opening these up, I got Shirtwolf, Spunk Rat, Unemployed Mouse, Insomnia Duck, Better Than Me Gazelle, Bride of an Aardvark, Self-Conscious Dog, Ye Old Lion, Hair Duck, Sex Frog, Kyle, and Mammal. I couldn't possibly play Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival by myself. What do I look like, a f***ing loser? I at least need to play Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival with one other person. Oh, f no, f no, I'm not playing it. No, no. I'm telling the story in past tense. I am forwarding this message to everybody in my contacts list. If you stop by tonight, we can play. Gex. <gasps> Did not take you as a Gex fan. I'm not. I know you were lying and I'll do anything not Gex related. Even Amiibo Festival? Yeah. Is it Gex Night? I've been waiting for this for years. Yeah. Oh, I love Gex! We get the rules explained to us, and this is gonna take an hour and a half to finish. Do we really have enough stamina to last that long? I haven't eaten since yesterday, two weeks ago. Yeah, and I know Gex, an hour and a half is really lowballing it. Okay, we'll buy some food. Alright, what do you guys want? I only have enough money for one thing we can all share. Doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I'm starving. I couldn't care less right now. Alright. I, uh, I'll, I'll take one corn dog. You went to Sonic? Not just that, I ate there. Should've came sooner. So when you have some players to play a real life video game with, before you start a game, you need to make sure you and your team are nourished. This is gonna take a whole lot of effort and time, and the last thing you want anybody to do during a game of Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival is leave to do something else. Animal Crossing Quiz Show, the perfect game to play with people who don't know Animal Crossing all too well. What is this? <laughs> Hey y'all, Scott here. I like candles. Sue me. I should stop ending sentences with that. But I like them. They're fun, and I just bought all these from the store on clearance. They must be clearing the shelves for even more candles. And I'm sure somebody new will make them. What the hell is this? We got the Sly Cooper trilogy on PlayStation 2, a beloved set of stealth platformers developed by Sucker Punch. Now, I have no nostalgia for these titles as I was too invested in... Hey y'all, Scott here. I have hobbies. I'm only human. I like talking harshly about Mario Kart 7, being somewhat critical of Mario Kart 7, negatively speaking about Mario Kart 7, hiking, f***ing despising Mario Kart 7. I kinda want there to be a balance between f*** this f***ing sh**, f f and this is a little too easy. Wiggler! Ever wanted to drive as a caterpillar? Don't lie. I mean, I don't need Waluigi. He's not shelter. Well, let's hop into the first cup. And... It's f***ing Mario Kart again! Overall, I'd say the items in 7 were pretty underwhelming. However, it turns out that movement I was a part of in 2011 actually accomplished something. I don't even care about the coins, I just had a free year. But hey, don't take my word for it. 
Dear God, don't. It's probably wrong. Hey, y'all. Scott here. Look at this. It's my integrity. I will do anything for money. The statement still stands. Well, doing anything for money covers pretty much everything for money, except for my soul. I was looking to lose a few pounds anyway, so I just need to find somebody who's willing to buy it from me. There we go. Just listed one soul on Craigslist. We have a buyer. Welcome. F I spelt soup. I'm going to have to live with integrity for the rest of my life if I don't do something about it. I can't live with myself knowing I can live with myself. All right, Raid Shadow Legends downloaded. I've never heard anybody say anything about this game that wasn't pure bullshit they were paid to say. I'm so excited to see why I never wanted to play this. This is the best mobile RPG of the year. What am I looking at here? The Bill of Rights? I swear, all mobile games are the same. You need a magnifying glass to read anything and it's never obvious what you're supposed to click. Uh, this one. Well, we're this far in and I'm still not sure what the title means. This is the kind of title that's so vague it can work across every single living product. It's either Latin or I can play further to find out what significancy it has. It's Latin. Well, that's enough Rage Shadow Legends for me today. I'm off to go to my Vimeo account now that I've contaminated it with talking about the best RPG mobile game of the year to see if Plarian wants to sponsor me. Wait, if the entire point of them sponsoring everybody about this game was to just get the word out about it, I did exactly what they wanted me to do without even getting paid for it. Even if I reiterate this is just some garbage generic RPG mobile game I don't give a piss about, I don't find it fun at all, haha, it doesn't matter. They just want the word Shadow Raid and Legends to be everywhere. They already won! Bad publicity, good publicity, they don't care. I lost my soul talking about this game and I didn't even get paid for it. Now, I may have lost my pride, but I can always buy that back. What I'm really worried about is my Vimeo presence. The idea people will look at me as the guy who willingly talked about Raid Shadow Legends without getting paid, do I look like I stooped that low? What if I want to branch out on Vimeo and talk about my stupid Nintendo games? My opinions and views may be undermined by the fact that I was trying to lure in a company by advertising and talking positively about their product. Why would anybody trust my opinion when I would have been that easily bought out? And if I did get the sponsorship, why would anybody respect my opinions on stupid Nintendo games if I openly got paid for a shit mobile game I wouldn't have talked about otherwise? I think I like having a soul. I'm glad I didn't go through with a sponsorship. I may have tried, but I learned my lesson. I am officially the most prideful user on Vimeo. Yes, this is Scott Man Fun from Vimeo. Ziploc's fucking great! Hey y'all, Scott here. Holding a gobble. It's Wednesday, all right. You know, it's moments like this that really makes me appreciate collecting video games. Like, where would I be without that? Hey y'all, Scott here. Where the fuck is Gubble? I can tell you back in 2013, I never expected in a million years I would have owned Glover. Look at me now. Back in the day, I was petrified at the thought of telling people I even knew what the word Nintendo was. I didn't want people knowing I was a now I'll gladly tell you about Mario and Wario on the Super Famicom, I don't care. It used to be pretty difficult for me to express myself about my interests back then. I had this feeling that people would look down on me for knowing so much about video games. I don't want to look like a loser in high school. I'll wear Nike socks and use Axe body spray, damn it, I'm cool, I swear! Now who cares, it doesn't matter, look at me, do I look like I don't do this? And my collection wouldn't be complete without personal trainer walking, wanna know how much I paid for it? You know, it's rude to ask people what their salary is. Cause I personally don't want to get to the point where I know the difference between plastic seals on video games, but if we're gonna go through the basics, we have have to know, this is how you get on a list. Game collecting's a fun hobby to get into, and I really hope I inspired somebody out there who's lonely to become lonely and in debt. Now I think the only thing left to do is to go through my favorite things in the collection. The Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Special Edition. This is a nice fat little box. I love adjectives in this too. The entirety of my Wii U collection. I have one of the last major releases being Axiom Verge and some of the more rare games like Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, Wii Sports Club, and of course Hello Kitty Cruisers. Fun fact, this game is bad. Hey y'all, Scott here. I think I've reached a critical point in my life recently. I feel like I have to actually get up and do something rather than just piss around talking about the Game Boy Color or whatever. So, this is it. I need to decide. Do I get up and contribute to society or do I talk about the Game Boy Color? Yes, finally, I can experience the Game Boy in color. This is the original Game Boy released in 1989. It obviously released that year, there was no way you could miss it. The Game Boy Color had hundreds of games that only worked on the Game Boy Color. Definitely more than a lot of other systems that were considered their own thing. So, I don't care. The Game Boy Color, to me, will always be the first true successor to the original handheld. It's its own system. If I defend a game system this much, do you think it will notice? So to quote any parent who picks this up, What the f 
fuck is this? But then we have the games that are apparently too good to be seen on the original Game Boy models. These have distinct Game Boy Color logos on the cartridges, are translucent, and have convex tops. Easiest way to put it, the original Game Boy cartridges you could use as pill organizers. Game Boy Color, not so much. The Game Boy Color has a weird library, and I think the launch titles are indicative of that. I know I said how I consider it to be its own system, but so many of the titles that are labeled as Game Boy Color games are just Game Boy games that display in color when you pop them in the system. But there were still tons of games that were exclusive to the Game Boy Color that took advantage of the better hardware. But it just so happened around the time the color released, Nintendo got really weird with what they considered publishing worthy. I would scream if they ever decided to publish a game called Little Mermaid 2 Pinball Frenzy. And Nintendo didn't do a ton of huge first party stuff on this machine, but they published damn near anything they could. Quest for Camelot? Go for it. Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle 3? Why not? Beauty and the Beast, a board game adventure? F*** it. Ham Taro, Ham Hams Unite? I've heard worse. Little Mermaid 2 Pinball Frenzy? I may have been wrong about this thing. This system isn't nearly as in-depth as I thought it was. A lot of the games that were labeled as Game Boy Color titles were just Game Boy games with colors programmed into them. Even Nintendo support on this thing was really weird and lackluster. We got a few original Zeldas, uh, some ports and remakes, Mario Sports titles, and enhanced Pokemon. That's basically it. But still, original Zeldas and a Pokemon. Those are huge games for Nintendo to just put them on a simple upgraded Game Boy if it was only a simple upgraded Game Boy. What the f was this thing? An excuse for me to waste 17 minutes. A Nintendo Wii, one of the best-selling consoles of all time. Its mission? Appeal to people outside of the gaming crowd with games and controllers that were simple and intuitive. First everybody, then the world. The Wii was a success due to how simple it was. So why was there so much sh you could buy for it? Oh my god, it's a Wii owner, sir! Would you buy any of this? Oh, I'll buy f***ing anything. But we can't just stop at the liability wand, we can make this so much more realistic. We can put it in a wheel, put it in a gun, put it in a kid. You'd have to plug the nunchuck into this here port, which offered endless opportunities. So many other Wii controllers use this, there's never been this many possibilities with just one hole. And contrary to popular belief, the Wii Remote wasn't perfect. It's okay, who cares about religion anyways? It may be just plastic, but that never stopped publishers from adding compatible with Wii Wheel to their game boxes. Oh yes, it's compatible with the Wii Wheel. Is it also compatible with the concept of love? See, the concept behind Wii Speak was great at the time. You wouldn't have to wear headphones with a mic, no wires, just talk to your TV and hear your friends talk back. It felt like a very Wii way to do voice chat. The problem was, that microphone was right next to your TV's speakers, so while it would pick up your voice, it would also pick up the game's audio and your friend's voice and their game's audio non-stop echoing, so it was just my favorite definition of not good. They may have said it was designed to mute the game audio or echoes, but this is the same company who said, let's make the Wii Speak. You can download the Wii Speak channel alongside it, coming in December. It doesn't work anymore, but it would allow you to chat with your friends. This was pretty much the extent of Wii Speak's use. It was compatible with a few other games, whether it was for online voice chat or just to give certain games microphone support. A Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy let you record victory and defeat catchphrases while also letting you speak your answers. It works about as good as I'd say it does. It doesn't. But hey, the Wii Speak is worth it for recording victory and defeat sounds in Wheel of Fortune alone. Got it. Nintendo wanted to do even more health-related jargon on the console, which brings us to the Wii Vitality Sensor. It released! Gotcha! At E3 2009, Nintendo fans' worst nightmare was revealed. So here's the thing, for what it is, you draw functions fine enough, it does in fact work, but not well enough for Wacom to grit their teeth. Left-handed people are a f***ing Cindy you draw. This tablet was obviously designed with righties in mind. You use the Wii Remote buttons to control certain elements, while the stylus is on the right-hand side of the device, attached by a cord shorter than the list of Wii Speak compatible games. The included software is just a simple art program. There's loads of things to do here, like boot it up, draw a horse, the possibilities are endless. You can also play Pictionary, guess what word I'm drawing? That's right, arrows. All right, it's time to shoot whatever comes up. <laughs> Babysitting Mama, a spin-off of Cooking Mama. This one's all about not shaking the baby. We have this plush doll we slide our Wii remote in and then we plug a nunchuck into the baby's back. Portable video games, allowing you to play games in inappropriate situations. They make loitering a whole lot less obvious and give you something to do at funerals. Thank God for their existence. What would I do on the bus without them, human sh**? No, they didn't make Wario Land 4 for me to talk to people, I have to play it. Portable electronic game devices started appearing by the mid-70s with stuff like Mattel Auto Race. Every timeline starts with Mattel Auto Race. Prior to the mid-60s, Nintendo was primarily into... 
playing cards it is. In 1975, they released EVR Race into arcades. I've spit games more iconic than that. Well, EVR Race might not have lit the world on fire, but that's okay. Nintendo followed it up with Shooting Trainer. We're overdue at this point. That's where Skyhawk comes into the picture. I would tell you the impact it left, but I got a letter from everybody. And with that, he would design the next video game product of Nintendo. Is its name? Well, I know what Nintendo would name Bread now. That was until the next series, the multi-screen series. All right, first one to answer wins. What does this remind you of? A clam! And if we want to extend these plagiarism allegations even further, various DS games utilize the system on its side like a book. And what do we have here? You son of a bitch plagiarist, what if they notice? They sort of missed the point of the original Game & Watch units. They're so bulky and not nearly as classy as the other ones. You whip this out at a funeral, you're gonna be the life of the party. Of course, we got some Donkey Kong ones. Here I have Donkey Kong 2. What? This is the only game called Donkey Kong 2. Of course, the sequel to the original Donkey Kong was Donkey Kong Jr., and then they moved right on over to Donkey Kong 3. The Game & Watch game decided to cut the bullshit because this is by all accounts heavily inspired by Donkey Kong Jr. in the arcades. This is pretty much just a renamed version of Donkey Kong Jr. But they already made a Donkey Kong Jr. Game & Watch before this, what the hell is this thing? Hey all, Scott here. I've always wanted to be a remake, being a better version of my past self, maybe in HD or 3D. I always base my decisions off of what Crest does. But that of course means sacrifices are in order, I can't just go and remake the entirety of my life in 3D without the budget going through the roof, so I have to start cutting content. Yes, a new game console, I can't wait to play the latest and greatest! Don't look at me. Every single piece of thing is people saying, man, things were better back then. World War II, f that, it's all about the classics. See, I recognize those three words, I should see that. Oh man, I recognize these words too, I should do this. But then you had Donkey Kong. Nice tagline. Like, by f it's Space Invaders on Super Nintendo. The original game came out in 1978, well now it's 1994, bitches. <laughs> I gotta check the calendar. See, I wish I'd popped in the Ratchet and Clank collection and had a cool menu with tons of extras and behind the scenes features. You know, scratch that, I want none of that. Oh my God, thank you, Sony. Which games are classified as which? Well, I'm glad you asked because welcome to a safety hazard. We have a lot of remakes, remasters, and re-releases to go through here. Which ones are remakes, which ones are remasters, which ones are re-releases, which ones are gonna fall? <laughs> We are really getting ahead of ourselves here. This is a compilation of Silent Hill 2 and 3 in HD. Good for it, but it's not good. This is a buggy, amateur-feeling remaster of these two games, but the studio who remastered them had to work with the code Konami gave them, which was unfinished. They didn't have the finalized code from the game, so they had to rebuild parts of it themselves. Does that make this a remake? I'll throw it in the Silent Hill HD collection pile to be safe. A Wii Sports Club, I think, is a remaster? I had to remake it for Wii Motion Plus. They're the exact same games though. Silent Hill HD Collection. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on Xbox 360. This is lame. This is the mobile phone version on 360. It runs weird and a lot of the user interface still looks like it was made for a touchscreen. Now, if you want to consider this as derivative of the mobile phone version, then it's a re-release. If you want to consider this as derivative of the original release, it's a remaster. Well, I think I'm finally ready to start the 3D remake of my life. Now that my cost has been cut, uh, I just want to see what my life warrants on the board. Son of a bitch! Hey all, Scott here. What'll it be? Mario Kart 8! This is a bar. Yes, all of these games were varying levels of good, but can you really blame anybody with a pulse for not buying a Wii U? Oh my god. Mario Kart 8 was the Wii U's big chance to redeem itself, the system's killer app. Up until its release, the console was just kinda... And when Mario Kart 8 came out, the console went from... to... Contrary to what most will say, the launch was pretty solid in my opinion. There was quite a lot to play, and no games that made anybody other than the die-hard Nintendo fanboy who'll buy anything they released by the console. It's Wario. Alright, let's be fair. An original 3D Mario was kind of what the Wii U needed to feel justified with its banana bolt controller. Surely a 3D Mario would take advantage of it. I mean, the Nintendo 64 controller was made with Mario 64 in mind. E3 2013 arrived? I'm sad. And ever since, look at this thing, it did really well, had a ton of wonderful games, and kept getting game releases in 2019, my god. All seven Koopalings were gonna be playable racers. Thank god. Honestly, this was a pretty neat announcement initially, but I think people realized how ridiculous this was when they saw the final character select screen. Like, imagine this is your brain. Jesus, man, seven tumors? Of course, something I look forward to with every Mario Kart game 
is the battle mode, which weirdly enough, Nintendo wasn't detailing at all with this game. We didn't know anything about it up until its release, but you know, you can't really mess up battle mode that much. At its worst, it'll probably be like Mario Kart Wii again, and even then, that was tolerable. It was just kind of not my favorite. So either way, let's take a look at the game that saved the Wii U. The game that justified the Wii U. The game. Heading into the menus. Well, I don't know what else I'm gonna do, but that's not all. We got two other new characters in the form of Baby Rosalina. Listen, as your resident Mario Galaxy player, that game had an entire backstory for Rosalina, and I will say Baby Rosalina makes no sense. No, Baby Luigi, that's fine. And of course, Pink Gold Peach. Well, let's get a move on to the tracks. We select the first cup, and... They finally changed the Mario Kart formula! Sweet Sweet Canyon is all about donuts in the sort. It's a wild track to describe that makes you look f***ing insane if you try to. The donuts! Everywhere! Was this game rushed? Obviously no, not my Mario Kart A. They put so much love and attention in every little detail with this game. This was probably an example of them going, No, we want this to make Mario Kart TV feel more like a sports broadcast thing. Either way, we have one more mode to check out, and that is Battle Mode! Battle Mode has been a staple of the Mario Kart series ever since the very beginning, but it seemingly was getting less and less attention with each entry. And of course, with Mario Kart 8, Nintendo barely mentioned it until damn near 20 seconds after it released. Balloon Battle is all we got here, and... Wait, Moo Moo Meadows? That... That's a track. Oh... Oh my god. Wait, I'm not supposed to talk about this yet. Let's talk about the updates. I am a bit bummed out by the lack of things to do in the game outside of... racing. Like basically, play the Grand Prix and play online, that's all you can really do. But when it comes down to it, Mario Kart 8 was the definitive Mario Kart experience at the time of its release. But they just had to f up the battle mode! So they didn't put any battle tracks in here, they just used existing ones. Okay, that's already lame, but they couldn't have even been bothered to alter the tracks just a bit to make them more suitable for battle mode. They're terrible! They're so big and designed to loop around, they aren't small closed in arenas like battle tracks should be! And out of all the tracks to choose, why Toad's Turnbike? Why Yoshi Valley? Why Toad Harbor? And when you die in battle mode, you come back as a ghost and can still hurt the other players. That's not fair! What the hell were they doing with this mode? It's ridiculous! I almost would have preferred if they just didn't bring the mode back, or at the very least, if they just remastered old battle stages and nothing more. That would have been okay. But no! Instead, this is the worst mode in any Mario Kart game, and it used to be my favorite Nintendo! What is wrong with you?! See, that should show you how bad this mode is, it made me break something. But I still did that out of anger towards Nintendo. Now, what the f*** am I doing? Hey all, Scott here! I hate walls, why do I live here? Have you ever realized there's a reason for these things to exist? That's right, you haven't, because there isn't any. But for some reason, the wall companies have a monopoly on console video games. It's just the reality we live in now, the way God intended. Super Nintendo cartridges must be played indoors. Yeah, that's right, God. You know what was the coolest thing ever? Playing a game in an environment you couldn't normally play that game in. This is f***ing incredible! Now, I don't own a Turbo Express because I spent all my money on not this, but I do have a second Nomad. Could you tell? So to play this on the go, we're gonna need a battery pack. Damn it. All right, I'll go inside just this once to try this thing out. After that, never again. Not being able to put a Sega Nomad in my pocket is my worst nightmare. This truly is a Sega Genesis on the go. It just can't attach any of the add-ons like the Sega CD or Sega 32X. I mean, who cares? What, was I really gonna play Fahrenheit on the go? Yeah. But what if we want a little more power with a lot less compromises? Well, say hello to the PS1 LCD monitor, a way to play your favorite PlayStation games on a portable LCD screen as long as you're connected one more trip inside and we can play our PS1 games portably. But I recall seeing all these screen cases for your Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 or Xbox One or PlayStation 4 where it's fundamentally a carrying case with a TV screen built inside. This way your child doesn't have to go, God forbid, a minute talking to people at grandma's. Definitely more than possible to take that and turn it into a somewhat affordable portable. That's how we got the Superboy by Hyperkin. Let's turn it on.
Jeez, I can't see the screen. The sun's too bright. Son of a bitch! But Hyperkin's still releasing new iterations of the Superboy. This one was the original release. The later models use a widescreen display that stretches out the games. Why? What was the point of this? No Super Nintendo games were widescreen. I can't widescreen displays are more readily available than 4x3 displays right now, but why couldn't they have programmed these things to not stretch the games out to fill the screen? God, I am pissed at this thing I don't own. Well, that's a look at console gaming on the go. See, a lot of these things are actually pretty cool, but they have a lot of roadblocks involved, though I'm willing to look past a lot of them. With these portable home consoles, I never have to go indoors ever again. I still believe that. Look what just happened. Can't rain indoors. The outside's amazing. That's right. Fuck you, house. Hey, y'all. Scott here. You know, there's this neat thing that happens whenever I talk about game compilations. My house catches on fire. It's happened once before. It's practically a tradition at this point, but I'm laser focused on safety this time. I have a fire extinguisher on standby and loads of safe thoughts up here. Before I start, I should probably take all my flammables off the floor. It's where they don't count these as actual additions to the collection and just label them as extras. What, were people that pissed at Sega calling Game Gear games real games? They're bonuses! They're bonuses! Namco Museum Remix on the Wii is how I realized I wasn't deaf, but I may be soon. <laughs> There's some unreleased stuff and some extras, which is nice, but I hate to say it, I don't think I'm that into the Intellivision. I'm 22 and said what?! You're a therapy machine. You're gonna therapize good tonight. You're gonna be the best therapist a therapist will ever ask for. You're gonna do great. So I was thinking what we could the? tackle Ultra Smash what the next. This game left me Who gave you my address? Really Why are you here? What the? So just... Wait, wait, let's go one at a time. You first. What the f are you doing here in my house? Okay, fair question. Now it's my turn. I was hoping we could bang out some more therapy. You are a therapist. I'm traumatized. It all works out. I can't give you therapy right now. It's daytime. I'm a night therapist. Don't my credits transfer over? Listen, I didn't become a therapist to hear you vent about Amigo Festival. Amiibo Festival? I'm not registered to give advice about that. Well then are you a registered therapist at all? So, tell me about that dumb f***ing tennis game that hurt your feelings. I don't know. I feel like you're only talking to me now so then I don't tell anybody you're not registered to be a therapist. I feel like I almost have to pay you to listen to me. So it's therapy. Yeah, it's pretty much therapy. After Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, I decided it was time to move on to smaller and worse things. I was at my desk again. Hey y'all, Scott here. Yes! What? Oh, before every therapy session I make predictions. I nailed that one. I'm really good at reading people. Just like, you're not pregnant. How did you know? Oh, I just kind of get this stuff. They call me the human pregnancy test in high school. Well, I'm still on a quest to play through three of Nintendo's worst games of all time. I just finished up Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival and my eyes can no longer feel joy, so let's check more body parts off the list with... Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Okay, so what was this game's deal? Was it good? What do you think? Based on the information, it's hard to tell. What is an Ultra Smash? Is it a move in the game? Is it the game itself? Or is it just two words that have no business being together at all? Yes. Mario Tennis, one of the greatest series of games Nintendo's ever produced. Somebody's probably said that before. The Mario Pyramid showcases the series' growth from simple beginnings to f***ing everything. Yeah, Mario's sports titles were some of the go-to multiplayer party games. They were incredibly popular, so when the next system rolled around... Oh! They really just sort of disappeared for a while. You really are the human pregnancy test. It's an alright game. I'd take this in comparison to a lobotomy most days. Something better than a lobotomy? Most days. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash was the first time I've ever used the term Mario Tennis Ultra Smash is bad. They just started a trailer for a new Mario Tennis game. Hell yes, I am completely indifferent to Mario Tennis. So this is just Alfredo Party. Amiibo Festival. This already wasn't a series you liked. That's right, it was a series I tolerated. So what does it matter to you if this game got announced or turned out to be bad? Even if it was the greatest tennis game of all time, you still probably wouldn't care about it. That's not true! I wouldn't probably not care about it, I just wouldn't care about it! Why does Nintendo love Mario Tennis so much? I'm sure the Wii didn't get its own game, but it at least got a re-release of the GameCube one. Then we got Open on the 3DS, Ultra Smash on Wii U, then tennis was included as one of the five sports in Mario Sports Superstars on 3DS in 2017, including horseback riding, thank fuck. And then with no hesitation, a new Mario Tennis game after that! Like. Guys, I know this series has the fabled fan who thinks Mario Tennis is the greatest series Nintendo's ever made out there somewhere. Oh, we'll find them. Whatever. Okay, it's releasing holiday of 2015. They obviously want to save a bunch of stuff about this game to reveal later. This obviously isn't the entire game. The game was playable on the E3 show floor, and my god, that is old artwork a peach. Looking at the gameplay, it was just tennis. Yeah, 
It's a tennis game. Well, what were you expecting? You don't understand. It was just tennis. Oh my god. The Love All trailer. This one introducing the tagline of Play Tennis with Super Mario Powers. They had me at this game having a tagline. Well, at least at this point, the game got actual box art, and the release date was November 20th. One week after Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, I f***ing hate calendars. So November 20th rolled around, and you bought the game? You bought the game? Actually, no, not at all. You're making great progress. This was five years ago. I held back on this game for a while. I didn't want to support Nintendo rushing out games that were overpriced and lacking content just to fill their holiday lineup. So I told that video game company, they ain't seen a dime from me. They may be a multi-billion dollar Japanese corporation, but let that be a lesson to them. I ain't giving them any of my business when it comes to $50 tennis games. Now, when I see it on sale for $25 two years later, then I'll bite. Look at this box art. I'll give the game this. It looks good. The layout's nice. Luigi. Unleash your jump shots to take the advantage. <laughs> the marketing people were trying with this game. This blurb is like if a dictionary had harnessed the power of words on the back. Yeah, it's always a good sign when the age rating doesn't have anything to say about the game. No comic mischief, cartoon violence, or sexual content like Mario Power Tennis. The fact Amiibo Festival is racier than Ultra Smash, I don't know what to make of that. The disc! Yeah, they just plastered random characters all around it and called it a day. Oh no. No, not the discard. That was the one thing I thought they couldn't ruin. And they Nintendo f***ing just like they f*** our bad of friends! Amiibo Festival. I don't care! Well, this is it. A game I refuse to buy and play because of the principle of it all. You know, if I really wanted to be a hypocrite, I could just enjoy an RPG, but... That's not gonna happen. Oh my god, look, we have four unlockable characters grayed out. Who could they be? Listen, I know that silhouette anywhere. I can't believe they added Grover Cleveland. Do we want the game copy to the gamepad? Maybe even reverse view or, or dynamic? Mario Tennis Ultra Smash is overwhelming me. Yeah, it was starting to get a little sarcastic. But there was a reverse view. Yeah, I just realized this is a tennis game. You just realized? This was my first time playing. It's meant to be played with multiple people. I think that calls for more people to play with. I just have to try to sweeten the deal to try and get them over here. I am forwarding this message to everybody on my contacts list. If you come over tonight, I will inform you how... your uncle just died. <laughs> Did not take you with somebody who had an uncle. I don't. I just couldn't believe my uncle died again. What if I told you your uncle didn't die and you can celebrate by playing tennis? If there's one thing I hated more than my uncle, it's tennis. What's wrong with tennis? I don't know. I just never thought I was big enough to play. Like, if I could grow comically big while playing tennis, I'd give it a chance. Well, do I have an Ultra Smash for you? Yeah, as long as it's not Gex, I'm in. Oh, is it Gex Knight? I love Gex Knight. Didn't you get my message about your uncle dying? <laughs> he died for the third time? Yeah, let's fire up Gex. Fucking <laughs> lizard Gex. Oh my god. Oh, so if you were a Gex fan, you'd get that. The game is, uh. It's. It's just tennis! You just use different buttons for different types of shots, but honestly, just hitting whatever button you want does the trick. Sure, performing different shots at the right moments is what skillful players do, which is why we don't. Hey, hey, wait a second. Huh? Yep, this is just a single-player-oriented version of Mega Battle. It's for true Mega Battle Gex fans only. Go up against an opponent, beat them, go up against another one, beat them, go up against another one. And then what? I don't remember. It's just a never-ending endurance mode until you lose against somebody. Basically, this game's excuse for a single-player offering. Of course, the farther you go, the more coins you get. That's right, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash has an economy! And... Mega Battle. Now, you can use an amiibo figure in this mode as your partner. For some reason, you can't just have another player play with you or a standard CPU. It has to be an amiibo. So, crack out your Animal Crossing amiibo, try scanning them, realize the game only works with certain Mario amiibo, sulk, enter your pockets, scan amiibo. Well, that's knockout challenge. It's just Mega Battle. <laughs> it, it, it is. Moving on to classic tennis. This is tennis without the Mega Mushrooms. Alright, you know what? That's the last f***ing straw, alright? I don't f***ing need this, alright? F*** you, f*** this, and f*** tennis! We can even bring our amiibo online to play alongside us, and now all we have to do is find a match. Wait, 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 Gex's online wasn't this bad. What the f*** is this game? I f***ing had it. F*** you, f*** this, and f*** tennis! Alright, what else? Does the electronic manual count as a mode? So that's Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, and overall, it's 
bad tennis. With Mega Battle. Such a classic Gex move. Makes you think it's not Gex, then comes out and says, I'm a bad tennis game. And it's right. Gex is a terrible tennis game. Well, you know what they say, if you play two bad video games for children, you're bound to end up in therapy somehow. Actually, I played three. Wait. No. No. That's impossible. You don't mean... No! 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 So this may be the worst game I've ever played in my life, but what about the final terrible Nintendo game that released in 2015? This was a 3DS game that released right alongside Amiibo Festival and Ultra Smash, and it absolutely murdered a series I've always had a soft spot for. So let's try out Mario Party The Top 100. This released two years later and is not in the running. Why is the floor wet? And we're back with Say That Answer. For $5,000, what city Pass. is best known for entertainment? South Carolina. Besides Hollywood. Oh, is that a city? South America. Hey y'all, Scott here. I'm an idiot. So you watch all these game shows and you think you have what it takes to make it big. Then they happen to ask the one question you didn't write on your skin. This isn't over. I'm going back on Say That Answer, but this time, I'll be prepared. that down. I want to feel smart, but I don't want to do anything about it. I'm a f***ing genius! You got the visuals, the sounds, the host, all of this adding up to giving you the illusion pet Sajak exists. This is Jeopardy on the NES. See, I always use outdated sources of trivia while studying. I mean, they were right at some point. It's the only way I know everything about the 33 states. Number of players? One. Skill level? If there was a four, I'd hit it. Versus computer? Yes, please. And now for my name. You know, Jeopardy was created by Merv Griffin. It was produced by Merv Griffin Enterprises. I'll be Merv Griffin, home field advantage. Of course, only Merv Gurfits, but at least we have a healthy selection of characters to shuffle through. So this is how God made humanity. We're up against Larry, we're up against Sandy, they're up against death. Okay, so categories. I get to pick the first one. Oh, oh fishing names! Fishing names! I'm an expert on this stuff. Former FCC chairman called TV a vast wasteland. Uh, Alright, so I'll buzz in and figure out the answer as I type. You have to type your entire answer in and there's a time limit, so if you just realize the answer is Lemony Snicket, you better be a quick typer. Oh my god, how could Jeopardy be wrong? Well, now Larry's deciding to chime in. Oh, thank God. If Larry got that one right, I would not know what to do with this degree. All right, this tiny short-haired dog is originally from Mexico. Easy, Chihuahua. I forget how to spell it, so hopefully they'll get the gist. I really only know fishy names. Larry, what do you got? All right, this is f***ing ridiculous. I'm getting shafted. Larry's just lost it. Sandy's not doing a damn thing. Half of this is better than none glass of water. But I'm right! All right, name something you take from room to room. Back to Jeopardy. Oh, look at Larry using an ampersand in his Jeopardy answer. Now I have some standards to live up to. One who has full membership in a state or nation. Me? A carnival performer who bites the heads off of live chickens. Oh, it's really quite obvious. <laughs> oh, that's right, Larry knows all about this. What is a geek? I really need to reevaluate what I am. Back to Family Feud. If you had four extra hours a day, what would you do? Elope. Not elope. Go. Family Feud SNES. Too bad, but I guess it could have been worse. Yeah, if I died. All right, what is this? Eh. Mineral water. No. 
We're going back to Jeopardy. She is Mel Lazarus's cartoon strip character. Oh, oh, I know this. Damn it, Sandy. She stole my answer. This band leader married his vocalist Harriet Hilliard. Pass. Name something. Milk. That comes in a spray can. Milk again. I may need a walkthrough. What does a woman say when a man proposes? I'll think about it. Ask again later. I don't know, can you? I'm busy this weekend. Who are you? Another name for an asphalt road surface? Road. This special bike has only one wheel. A really bad car. This is the president's home. America. Who ran for president? Man, didn't Becky run? Oh, my buddy Ed, he definitely- Me. I would like to announce I am- Alright, a thing. Apparently an R is the third letter in the word. It's not Fort Wario, I checked. Dork Boney. Card Banco. Park Bench. Okay, come on. First question on who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, well, I'll phone a friend. She thinks it's me. Should probably ask the audience to be sure. Narrow it down 50-50. Well, the audience says it's A, but you know, I never trusted this audience. It's because I wasn't a millionaire. I didn't want to see the second question anyways. Who needs it? Besides Hollywood, what what city is known for entertainment? Oh my God. Th this was the question that messed me up on the game show. Damn it. Besides Hollywood, okay. Not Hollywood and not South Carolina. That was pure instincts typing that in. Okay, not South America. I'm really disappointed in myself. Look, a city known for entertainment. Circuit City. Am I wrong? Name an entertainer who ha. Dilbert, he's hilarious. Oh, oh, name an entertainer who has been around for as long as you can remember. Yeah, Dilbert. Circuit City. Fuck. Just the hands up, do not write years out in letters and then finish them off with numbers. They don't accept that. This type of abandoned town features 170 buildings. Oh, oh, Fort Wario! Wasn't in Wheel of Fortune, has to be here. Regrettably, no. <laughs> I wish. If you don't know what this Greek sea god also created the horse, say nay. No, sorry. What was I supposed to say? The year the man seen here won the presidential election. Take a look at your monitor. Alex Trebek. All right, guys named Gary for 800. Uh, Bob Saget. No, that's not right. Oh, damn, yeah, that's right. Guy's named Gary. Gary Bob Saget. Name something that's... Snake. Snake! What's the first thing you open when you... The womb. What's the first thing you open when you come home at night? Jars. Car door. My mouth. What are the answers? I said door! Name a place where people wear white. Me. Name a nursery rhyme that has old in it. Holy Bible. Name something white. Why? Name something. Okay. Ah, oh, name something people buy secondhand. Okay. I did it! I'm a genius! I'm ready to go back and say that answer! For $10,000, what was the second question? Who wants to be a millionaire? Second edition for PlayStation 1. Hey all Scott here. This is it. They're going to reveal really bad game. I can't wait to see it. Maybe it'll be good! But first, they have to show up the game. Technical difficulties, please wait. And then after that, they're going to reveal the game. There is a fire backstage. Please exit immediately. I really hope that's a working title. This is a press conference. And this is a video game press conference. You see, to most companies or people, press conferences revolve around the person or people of interest appearing in front of us all. They're real? For some reason, when it comes to gaming press conferences, the bar is immediately raised. They're not just some sap answering questions. We open up with an explosion. Some guy comes out on stage yelling, fuck you, here's Wario. So no matter how good or bad a press conference ends up being, will it really affect public perception or sales? Eh. See, we may look like real people, but on the inside, all we care about is if that Xbox presentation was good or not. If you try starting a conversation with people about that one time Pac-Man yeah, Versus got revealed at E3 2003, like, you're gonna be struggling. When these things were truly only meant to be viewed by the press, when they were focused on sales numbers and just being the absolute worst. Into uh, 16 bit video games. And the industry seems intent on moving onward. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Gaming press conference events and expos became boxing rings, and ever since, each one invoked a sense of Sony. Watching a giant event that's all about celebrating video games to the point of putting them up on a jumbo screen in front of a totally not paid for audience really makes it feel like, wow, video games aren't a lousy waste of time after all. Couple that with brand new games we've never seen before, new information on previously revealed titles, and impending disappointment, and it's a dream come true. Sometimes game press conferences are more exciting than the games they actually talk about in them. Or they can be worse, that's always an option. The host. This is a constant with these presentations. Sometimes the host makes sense. They're a large figurehead of the company in question and is a great public speaker as well. Or they just put up a Craigslist personal. I prefer when the host has a direct connection to the gaming industry rather than a celebrity who says, I have loved games for my whole life. I played Pac-Man twice and own a Wii. So here's how you host a gaming presentation. Either wear something or wear something with basketball shorts. So you walk out on stage and you have to wait for the applause to end. We might be here for a while. What? Welcome to the Video Games Press Conference. Are you ready to see some games? No matter how good the response is, it can always be better. Come on, are you ready to see some games? I never understand the purpose of asking for people to get louder with their applause. That just means it devalues the applause. If it happens, who cares anymore? If you say something you were expecting to get applause and it didn't, just stay silent until somebody says something. And we're not putting the reason in presentation. Uh. All right. Or if some jackass starts applauding after every sentence, pause every time to let him get it out. We make games. Yeah. Woo, yeah, yeah. And we won't make it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we won't make it. You gotta talk with your hands a lot and either act intimidating or act like you're just an average video game fan. Wow. I can't wait to play that video game in my jeans and shirt just like all of you. Yeah, when Google got into gaming with Stadia and the CEO said, yeah, I'm not into games. Well, first off, why are you here? But at least he was honest. When you have hosts that look like they belong on QVC saying, Me personally, I can't wait to play Dragon Quest IX Sentinels of the Starry Skies. Next up is another game I'm looking forward to, My Stop Smoking Coach. Nothing makes me want to buy a video game more than cube transitions. As you can see here, I bought Microsoft Office. I was like the epic Mickey demo guy from E3 2010. He's just so well dressed and kept having to redo the same section over and over again. If I ever become a live demo player, I can only dream of being that well dressed. I don't really got a hand it to press conferences. They really sold me on really bad game. The trailers were great and there was a dance number on stage. So let's press start and see if it's any good it's not. Hey all Scott here, online personality test. I have no idea who I am, so we'll just let Google tell me. You have to shout to make a point properly. Yeah. Did you eat anything today? Tylenol. Do you just want to plug and play games? Do I have a face? I won! Once you were done with the setup, you'd flick the switch on the controller and boom. Look at this. No power adapter necessary. It plugs directly into the TV. This is magical. Plug and plays were always charming little distractions, and they were easy gift ideas for kids. They were only like 20 bucks a pop, and you didn't have to think about what game console your kid had. All you had to know was, oh, my son likes circles. This'll do. But many times, these plug and play games feel like an excuse to sell subpar games inside of a colorful container. Like, I, I don't want to play this. I want to eat it. Yes, this is the controller you'd associate with the games included on this plug and play, and and then this is the plug and play you wouldn't be able to identify in the street. Now, how did I never know that considering there are multiple signs showing that this is how you control pole position? <laughs> Oh, hey, it's my friend. I don't know how I didn't realize I just twisted the joystick in pole position. I was just a kid. Leave me alone. I hate my parents. Like, the cart came in the box with the plug and play, and it was the only cart released for the plug and play. So, why make a cartridge slot on the plug and play if there's only one cartridge for it, and you could just build the elements of the cartridge on the inside of the plug and play? <laughs> what the f? Gotcha, sketch? I don't have this one anymore, so I'll throw the concept of it to the side and make way for my true final plug and play I owned as a kid. Corroded batteries. Wish I would've known about that before making that pact. I always associate RCA with TV remotes, so they're one of my top 7,000 candidates for making a good game console. Top 8,000. But hey, I mean, if you wanna play Roadstar? Don't? There's also Go Bang Animal Pool. That's not a sentence, it was a list. You have a Lilo and Stitch platformer, Duck Golf. No. Oh. No. Oh. 
No, 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 that can't work. And I, at least it's fairly G-rated. Sure, you can combine the letters from the title screen to spell ass rat, but I'm sure the kids wouldn't notice. On the surface, these things may seem nothing more than cheap toys with extremely basic games for children. <laughs> that sentence was finished long ago. Hey all, Scott here. What'll it be? Mario Party! This is a bar. Wait, what is happening? I already talked. Mario Kart 8. Before. Wow. See, that's a fun quirk of talking about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The Space Time Continuum thinks you're just talking about Mario Kart 8 again, so it just gives up. If you talk about the same thing twice, the world doesn't know how to handle it. So, we have to convince God that 8 Deluxe isn't just Mario Kart 8 again, and we aren't just repeating history. Oh, and then I should get new shoes. Many people didn't like the character selection. This graph shows exactly how many didn't. The fact you could only hold one item at a time. This graph shows who did like that. It's a shame the game was only available to Wii U owners. Isn't it fun to be stupid? None of these games were confirmed to be actual games. They just said, oh, they might be real games, but take everything in this trailer with a grain of salt. But come on, Nintendo, I'm not stupid. The Virgin Radar was going off the charts. These were real games. But there was another one shown off in the trailer that got people talking. Mario Kart 8. A group of friends decided to play it in the car. Nothing fancy, just playing on one of the DLC tracks with King Boo and two item slots. Holy sh! Well, I'm sure they wanted to focus on new experiences coming to the Nintendo Switch rather than highlight an old Wii U game of theirs coming over. It's smart to do that with a new console, to really show how the Switch will be home to brand new experiences rather than ass old ones. And a couple years later after that presentation, my favorite games on the Switch are the Wright Brothers First Flight and the Agricultural Revolution. There's nothing but old sh** on this thing. I was so excited for this. The fact that we were getting a Mario Kart this early after a system's launch, that was incredible. I was already still pretty jazzed about the Switch launching, so add a new Mario Kart on top of that? I I was thrilled! That was Mario Kart! They removed the stamps. So, who's ready for me to fucking lose it? But I'm worried how auto acceleration and smart steering will affect the driving abilities of our youth. Go! Alright, so did I do it? Did I prove that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is different enough to warrant a discussion on its own and it's just not Mario Kart 8 again? I'll take that as a no. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I don't get new shoes and the universe collapses on itself. At least I'll know this for next time. Hey y'all, Scott here. Apparently my input on wars throughout history is extremely important, so it finally makes sense why after the French Revolution in most history textbooks it just says, but what would Scott think? It's the middle of class in 2011. All these kids are discussing politics. Which is better, the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360? One of them asks, Scott, which one do you prefer? And you ruin your credibility. Nintendo. Microsoft entered the ring by announcing the Xbox. That should give Sony a run for their money. I'm sure Sony keeps this photo on their nightstand. What happened here? Both systems received one more redesign later in their lives. These ones focused on giving us consoles so cheap I can try to break it over my knee. <laughs> Keyword try. The PlayStation 3 picked up so much steam later on, it actually ended up winning. A classic underdog story. It always warms my heart to see a multi-billion dollar corporation win at the end of the day. But who really won? Sony. My personal history with these consoles was I was always a Nintendo guy. My state's government already knows that. Now, the PS3 controller does look pretty classy. It looks more elegant. If a 360 controller's on your couch, I immediately think you cheat on your girlfriend and your fingernails look disgusting. This has more class. But hey, the Xbox 360 can play original Xbox games. This is the ultimate pleasure. Could you imagine a worse note to get on your windshield? But, turns out, I'm not blinded by nostalgia or love for a specific company. I picked the PS3 when the 360 was the console I owned, so that's a plus to my reviewing skills. The only thing the PS3 could use is a version of Mario Party 9. This game's actually terrible, but I love it because it's made by Nintendo. So, tell me where it all began. Alright. So, tell me where it all began. All right. Oh! Oh, you're that guy! The one and only. I was your therapist! You're more delusional than I thought. You were my patient that wouldn't stop talking about virginity! And not being your patient. You can play that mammal game with the toys. I would remember if that happened. It's on my bucket list. The tennis thing with Big Luigi? That game doesn't exist. It would be on the news. And you're about to talk about something else and that's what I called it! See, this is where your story falls flat. It's really unlike me to talk about three things. You freaked me out, man. The fact you gave a shit about three different games scared me. Who knows what you're capable of giving a shit about? Let me get this straight. You believe I, who answered a one ad in the paper for therapists, used to have you as a therapist, and you went insane after therapy sessions with you about three games caused you to question faith. 
That's my obituary. Okay. Well, I can't help you until I know what the third game is going to be. Why? It sounds like a good thing to add in my book, my patient's personal stories and I. I don't know. You didn't talk about it. It was a game. Wait. Yeah, I remember a game. Ah! You were a therapist! I tried to be a news anchor, but I wasn't cut out. So I became a therapist, yeah. And I was your patient, and I had to go to you because I played three Nintendo games from 2015 that were so bad, I had to seek therapy. Well, what was the third game? What happened when you played the third game? After I get therapy for playing all three of these games, I'm gonna suppress everything, forget who I am, and become a therapist. And here we are today. So it's just a 2D game about a robot! A bad 2D game about a robot. Those exist? Not until 2015 they didn't. Listen, can you just get over this trauma so I can enjoy my therapy in peace? No, you need to get over your trauma. I need therapy, alright? And you're gonna give me advice on how to improve my mental health, and you're gonna like it! You're a therapist, don't you give yourself therapy? My mirror is in the shop! You don't know what I go through every day. How do you expect me to give you secret therapy when we didn't even finish our original session? You know, I'll tell you what. If I finish your session, will we do my therapy? You know there are millions of customer support websites that would love to hear your personal problems. You need to finish what you started. We need to end this now! I have dinner tonight with my family, and I gotta finish this before then, so I don't show up insane! Okay, fine. Go to where it all began. Nice place. Is this your couch? Yeah. Okay, this place, so. You ever take a shit? Oh yeah, been <laughs> a big fan. Cool, so you know what this place is. This is the bathroom. No one's always there? Well, on the off chance I need to restock, no, but I keep these here as a hobby. I like to curate them. This game blows. Uh, this game blows. Oh! Oh my god! It's worse than I thought! This game blows. I really should have reconsidered installing that. You know, I may have left the force a while ago, but when it comes to makeshift therapy offices, I still got it! I've seen better. So, tell me where it all went wrong. Well. This game is worse than I thought. Chibi Robo Ziplash is a stupid fucking fuck shit fuck fuck shit. You know that sounds about right, but something just doesn't seem right. Oh, hey yo, Scott here. Now this is therapy! Chibi Robo Ziplash. Over the years I've been harsh to this game, calling it such names as bad. You may say, Scott, it's just an opinion. I'll respond with, I don't know, the fact detector says otherwise. It's a shame because Chibi Robo as a character has a similar level of charm as any of the other cutesy Nintendo mascots. If they just gave him a chance to succeed, he could live on for quite a long time. Wanna know what happened? I already got tickets to the funeral! And Nintendo specifically requested that. They wanted this game to be a new spin on Chibi Robo. They apparently thought the original didn't sell well because right when everybody on the planet was about to buy it, they looked up the genre. Oh! That makes no sense. Oh, come on! You need to be more accepting of different resolutions. For example, my New Year's resolution is to drink more. It's July. Yeah! See, that's when we entered 2015, and Nintendo's had enough of the series not doing well. They thought, you know what the problem with Chibi Robo is? Is lack of empathy? No. Overqualification? Barely. Tax evasion? That's me. Nope, it's the fact Chibi Robo isn't a 2D platformer! That's my parents' problem with me, too. Chibi Robo Ziplan. <laughs> Zip. <laughs> game. I've always just had a bit of a problem with this one. Oh, hi Scott, it's your mom. You're adopted. Well, that's understandable. I appreciate your transparency. Oh, and Chibi Robo Ziplash exists. No! You didn't like that they turned the small robot into Poochie Town? No, I personally feel there was a lot of potential for Chibi Robo to work fine in 2D. You're mental. Let me finish. No! You're insane! And I don't work with people who have mental problems. You're a therapist. Oh, come on! I think Ziplash is a great name. If they replace the word good with the word Chippy Robo Ziplash, I have no problem with it! You'd be okay with replacing a word just like that? Oh, I would. And that's saying something. Words mean a lot to me. Words have been in my family for generations. I'm a word buff. Go ahead, name a word. Any word. What? Love that one! Upon release, Ziplash received...
a price drop. So you barely played this game, and yet you hate it this much? No, I hate it way more than this much. You can't form an opinion on a game you've barely played. It's unethical. That's why we have HR. So I should play 10 hours of a game I already know I don't like just to have an opinion on it? Well, if you don't like it, don't play it. But how would I know I don't like it if I don't play it? Well, just stop doing stuff! This game has been enough time soaking. It's time to play through it and give it a fair shot. Because who knows, maybe 60 hours in, I'll start to see its worth. I will not put this down until I beat this game. So let me just do a little bit of that, a little bit of that. There. Oh, f Can you put the game in for me? No, that goes against my family's tradition. They never asked me to pop in Chibi Robo Ziplash, and I will always never do that to honor them! Well, we're gonna need help with this. Can you at least get this off of me? Now that, me and my family did all the time! I am forwarding this message to everybody in my contacts list. If you stop by tonight, we'll play... Don't lie. I've lied before, and it's too fun. Chibi Robo Ziplash. <laughs> Did not take you as a Ziplash fan. I'm not. I knew you were lying, and I'm finally willing to give Gex a shot. Oh no. It's the Gex f***s. Anyone up for round Gex? What if I told you I didn't even own Gex, and I wasn't lying about Ziplash? That's ridiculous. We played Gex that one time. That was Amiibo Festival. Well then- That was Ultra Smash. What? That was a car wash we went through together. Hey, I heard you didn't own Gex. From myself? <laughs> yeah. Word gets around. You keep these on you? I thought you hated Gex. Hey, I cross-reference that copy whenever I need to be reminded how much I hate Gex. Yeah. Yeah, f that lizard. Alright, let's play Gex. You know what I like about Gex? Consistency. Okay, can somebody pop in the game for me? I, I can't do it myself. You knew that was gonna end up happening anyways. I was worried that 3DS wasn't hammer resistant. You're welcome. Alright! Chibi Robo Ziplash! Swing into action with your Chibi plug and help Chibi Robo save the world! I think I'm gonna be sick. Oh, that's a f***ing cheese it! Let's get this over with. So the story starts. Chibi Robo is cleaning a space shuttle. I don't give a sh. You know, this game doesn't seem too bad so far. It has graphics, and it exists. Yeah, you know me. I'm a sucker for existence. Me too. That's why I love Gex. Guys, like, the game works, but the movement is more annoying than fun. It's like just gliding in the air. You have to hold X while falling. It's like, it just doesn't feel good. It feels awkward. It feels like a tacked on move more than anything. And then there's rolling in the game. Like, you have to hold R, and it's only used in, like, four levels throughout the entire thing. It's like, it's worthless! Wait, there's a roll in the game? Oh, yeah! Gex. You're about to fight the World 3 boss fight, sir. You are in a video game made of blocks, even though we also like to act like you're in real life Europe. Here's a realistic looking bag of Funyuns. I personally enjoy how inconsistent the art style is. Yeah, inconsistency is a fun quirk of Gex. I think it really keeps you on your toes. Like a mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, okay, I get it. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How about, I think it's confusing. None of this references the fact that Chibi Robo is a tiny robot, which is his entire character. The plot-based level design is putrid, and this game just doesn't know what it wants to be at all. So, tell me where it all began. Oh, don't even get me started. I'm gonna need a priest. So, I hate how the game looks, the levels are incredibly boring and they go on forever, the product placement is completely out of place, the moveset is more cumbersome than fun, I don't like it. Well, that sounds like somebody that hasn't played enough of this game. Why don't you play another five hours and come back to us? Yeah, it's a fine game. It's not like the level progression is like one of the stupidest f***ing game mechanics you've ever seen. After you beat a stage, you have to spin the destination wheel. That sounds like fun. What does it do? Well, it decides what stage you're doing next. If you land on one, you go to the next stage. If you land on two, you go to the stage after the next. Now you'll still have to beat the stage you skipped over to progress. So what the f*** is the point of jumping all around like this? The six stages per world are set up like most 2D platformers. They gradually get harder the farther you go. So why make players play them out of order if that's the case? And also while the stages are deliberately called World 1-1, 1-2, 1-3, there's an obvious order to follow here. 
Why do I have to spin this wheel? The wheel isn't meant to be fun. It's meant to be a roadblock, much like how the whiplash is limited and the ziplash is slow. Why wouldn't I want to go one stage at a time? I can't see what any future stages are going to contain. There's no reason why I'd want to play level 5 before level 3, so why would I want to skip around like this? Obviously, the game wants you to progress normally. The end of a level is symbolized by three UFOs. Hitting the gold one gives you three destination wheel spins, silver gets you two, bronze gives you one. Obviously, you want the gold so you can guarantee you can keep spinning the wheel to get the stage you want, as in the next one in line. Because if you spin the wheel and it lands on a three and uh-oh, you land on a stage you've already cleared, you have to play through it again! The game knows this isn't fun. Why else would they reward you with extra chances to spin by hitting the gold UFO? Why else would you be able to purchase wheel slots so you can get the exact number you want? Wait, what the f is the point of this then? If I can just buy slots with the exact numbers I want with the coins I collect, that just defeats any and all purpose of the wheel. It's just an annoying thing they added for the sake of being annoying. It doesn't even make sense in the context of the game. You still have to spin the wheel even when all the slots take you to the boss. What is wrong with this game? Not much. I, I, I don't know what else to say, man. I don't want to play through hours more of this game just to get coins for a final boss I'm not going to like. So... I can see where the budget went. You know, it all comes together in the end. I mean, I liked the game, but now I really like it. X. Just because the game doesn't inherently have terrible level design or any major bugs or glitches, that doesn't mean it's fine. It just means it works. Just because the game works doesn't mean it's good. I don't like playing this game. I hate what it stands for. I don't like that they made fans of Chibi Robo buy this with the hope of Chibi Robo having a future. I don't like that they thought so low of people and consumers thinking that they'll love this generic, terrible 2D platformer. I don't like this game. You know, when you put it that way, I kind of like the idea of this game being terrible. Yeah, and as a therapist, therapy generally moves the quickest when I agree with everything the patient has to say. Gex will be Gex. You know, I've had a ritual for the past three years or so. This game blows. This game blows. This game blows. This game blows. As much as I like that, I think I want to end this now. How can we take each and every one of the Chibi Robo Ziplash games in existence and eliminate each and every one of them? We're swimming with rats. Can't swim. Love rats. I'm in. More of a lizard guy. I'm deathly afraid of circles. Come on, guys. I have thrown 95% of Ziplash's population down the toilet over the past three years. If we go down there right now, we can finish them off before they ever resurface. I have as much confidence in this as I have facial hair. You have facial hair. Where? Well, I'm in. You know what they say. WWGD. What would Gex do? The G stands for Jesus. All right, Rex. Oh, the revolution isn't for everybody. Oh. I dropped something down the toilet last week. Remind me to look for it. Oh! There are my jeans! Okay, so keep an eye out for these games. What does it look like again? Uh, hard to describe. Shapes, four sides, colors. Does it have Chibi Robo Ziplash on it? Yes! There they are. I just thought that's what water looked like now. Weird name for Gex. Why are the copies circling around? I fucking hate circles! All the copies you've thrown down the toilet over the past three years have become sentient? That's why my plumber f***ing hated me. Guys, come on, Gex gonna do this, right Gex? It's the anti-Gex! No, it's just a sewer monster comprised entirely of copies of Ziplash! I'm going with the anti-Gex. Even the anti-Gex has the word Gex in it. Now that's what I call a good point.
a terrible game, but that doesn't mean I won't overcome you. I'm better than that! You're back? I need an energy, an ammo. So what's the game plan here? What the hell is the game plan here? What's the exact opposite of this thing? Not Gex, that's for sure. No. No, I think it's Gex. You know, I've always wondered what trauma felt like. Thanks. Thanks for sticking it out with me. I, I, I got it all out of my system. Nintendo had a bad 2015, but that doesn't mean I should let it affect my mental health. And so what if somebody likes a game I dislike? It doesn't matter. They're wrong anyways. It's been an honor serving you. I can finally tell you why you're so messed up in the head. After playing a game as good as Chibi Robo Ziplash, it will definitely make you feel inadequate. Sure. You can rip up that rain check for therapy I had with you. I'm good on my own now. I think I'm going to start my own therapy business. Call it the Think Barrel. Ah, good on you. I love seeing therapists start their own business. Yeah. Uh, what was your name? Dr. Atrix. But you can call me Jerry. Well, thank you, Dr. Jerry Atrix. You know, I still have this on me. Oh my god, for real? Oh yes! We're turning this Gex night into a Gex year. What the f*** is this? Hey all, Scott here. I'm leaving the door open now. I don't know, it was fun. Been on a good streak lately. Air jump the shark. I have it all now. Scoliosis, mitosis, bed bugs, bed bats. So oh, I got some free time to kill as I heal up. I might be able to actually play some of these games here. Or shapes. Fuck them. They make everything more complicated. Without shapes, I wouldn't care about the Wii U and GameCube boxes being the same. Dang. You ever have those things with a medium you enjoy that you overly care about that nobody else seems to? Think you're a big fan of numbers, but man, you're really into seven. Using the logic of it doesn't matter basically means everything on a store shelf should be in a blank cardboard box. Who cares what's inside anyways? I just want to buy the PS4 Spider-Man. Well, that's a gun. So let's take a look at all the major consoles throughout history and rate their packaging templates starting with the Magnavox Odyssey. I do like seven. They introduced the Nintendo Entertainment System header. It was red and small. Like ants. It's time to take care of your games. Put them up on the shelf, keep them in a safe container. It'll keep it safe, I swear. Well, the blank boxes are far more endearingly retro. These simply look really nice. Like ants. I initially thought a black game represented that this game is for far more mature audiences, and then I saw Chicken Run had it and reacted accordingly. <laughs> And not only that, it had a power button, not some power switch. It had a button just like home consoles. That was honestly a really cool thing to me back then. Take it. Cheers. And why mimic the GameCube's box art design? Bless the GameCube's heart, but it was one of Nintendo's worst performing consoles at the time. So what do you do? You replicate its box art? I'm not saying this is why the Wii U failed, but they were kind of asking for it at this point. But you know what isn't really lame? The Xbox One cases. I have officially lied once today. Hey all, Scott here. You know, one of the top 10 names for children this year happens to be Sonic the Hedgehog 3, because when everybody wants to be unique, nobody's unique. Stop naming your children unique names, just name your kid an Earl. This one wasn't nearly as iconic to 90s pop culture as the first two. And now to Sonic fans. I love when it does that. When it came out three months after Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Mach- There were four Sonic titles in the span of three months? Sure there were. I still believe Sonic Spinball was a lucid dream I had once and nothing more. 
and it gets harder and harder to believe that. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was meant to be the magnum opus of the series at that point, the ultimate Sonic adventure, starting development after Sonic 2. <laughs> really? See, Sonic 2 was developed by STI. We learned about them when talking about Sonic 2 and Sex Ed. New attitude, new enemies. It was a yearbook quote contender, I'll give him that. I should finally beat this game. There really are no excuses anymore. I've beaten Devil's Third, my prerequisites out of the way. If I can't be happy with myself, then I sure as hell can beat Sonic 3. You ever spray paint a tomato blue? You've seen the Sonic 3 title screen. This isn't right, a Genesis Sonic game you can save your progress in? Have the past three years been a lie? I don't know where I am, but I have the sudden urge to not have sex. We jump into a cutscene. Two mammals, a plane, it must be Sonic 3. None of these rewards are cool. None of them make you want to call your dad over. Dad, you won't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, a fucking headshot. Not only that, the way they set up the special stages this time is ingenious. Similarly, they're hidden throughout levels. If you find a fat ring, I have news for you. Damn! Everything's coming together. I'm gonna live this up while I can before we get to the coveted Sonic bullshit. I am going to treasure this moment. This is a Sonic game where everything's coming together. The level design complements everything they were trying to do here. But I know Sonic on Genesis, all right? There's always some garbage they threw in here that makes absolutely no sense. So I'm gonna be extra diligent and try to find something they messed up. This game. F this game. Yes, as previously stated, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was envisioned as a massive project. So much so they had to split it into two parts to not only release Sonic 3 on time, but also so then they wouldn't have to deal with unloading the entire game onto one cartridge. So we have one more Genesis Sonic title to look at. On top of Sonic 3D Blast and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine and Knuckles Kadex for the Sega 32X add-on, but not Sonic Spinball because I have a giveable shit about reality and this isn't it. Name one time Sonic Spinball existed. Go ahead. Name one. Sonic Spinball. Sonic Spinball? Sonic Spinball. I was a different man back then. No! Hey y'all, Scott here. Have you seen something that looks like this? If you found that, that's me caring about the Nintendo 64. Please dispose of it immediately. I know, I'm putting these up, but I just like the attention. Family photo. Oh god, that's embarrassing. That's better. The Nintendo 64, one of the most revolutionary consoles of all time, helped standardize how games in the third dimension look, play, and control, introduced so many genres, franchises, concepts, and I still don't give a sh I'm being a bit harsh here. It's not that I don't like the Nintendo 64, I just don't care about it. I wanna learn to love this console, because as it stands, it's all right. But that won't do. I have to appreciate everything Nintendo does for me. Criticism is just whining. Nintendo made buttons. What did you do, dad? They had to get to work on a successor to the Super Nintendo. And near the end of the console's life, it was pretty obvious where the video game industry was heading. Downhill, f this console. The Ultra 64 cartridges could barely hold anything in comparison, could barely hold video and audio clips. And if they could, they were severely compressed and downgraded and cost a mortgage to produce. But they were harder to pirate and had faster load times. That makes them better. And ever since that decision, Nintendo's always been number one, two, three, one, Wii U. That's almost the weirdly beautiful thing about a console that didn't do that well. The Wii U era was pretty tart, but I felt there was this cool connection I had with other Wii U owners. It was called a mutual hatred. But of course, the charcoal color was the de facto, coming with a great spider? Oh look, it's time to be confused about the Nintendo 64 controller. D what the hell? Anyways, the Nintendo 64 launched with games here in North America, and two of them at that. Japan had it way better. They got three games. Alongside the system's release, Super Mario 64 and Pilot Wing 64 came out. That was it. If you were living in Japan, you had the choice of buying Saikyo Habu Shogi as well, which meant you were either buying Mario 64 or Pilot Wings. Super Mario 64 was the flagship title. The reason you wanted to buy a Nintendo 64 if Pilot Wings was sold out. Popping this cartridge in and turning it on. It's me, Mario. Hello. Oh my god, he has a face? As a kid, it was a blast using my imagination with this game, coming up with crazy things to do or just not do anything at all, just enjoying being in this world. This will always be one of the greatest video games of all time. One of. But I all Pokemon Stadium games supported the transfer pack. Pokemon Stadium 1, which only released in Japan. Pokemon Stadium 1, which was Pokemon Stadium 2 in Japan. And Pokemon Stadium 2, which was Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver in Japan. Never liked logic. There was AU Pikachu, which used the voice recognition unit, don't you? 
It doesn't. This is actually just straight up called the 64DD, not the Nintendo 64DD. And these are incredibly rare and expensive. You'd have to be a an idiot to own one of them. But the good games for the system were really good games. It nailed multiplayer, and no matter what, there will always be a reason to fire this system back up. It may not be my favorite Nintendo system, but I care about it. I found it! Hey all, Scott here. You know, so many people ask me, where do you get all those games? Yeah, that'll do. This is a used video game. Could you tell? Video game users are disgusting. We have sticky chairs and eat without socks on. I don't even remember ever getting a used movie or album as a kid, but video games? Hell yeah, this one had gum in it. Why are used games so prevalent and why won't this come off? Firstly, we've got the lookalikes. Use games that look nearly indistinguishable from new games. The game case is spotless, everything's included, absolutely no problem whatsoever. You could eat off of these things. My copy of Call of Duty Black Ops on Wii? Not my copy of Call of Duty Black Ops on Wii! One day in 2011, I found it on the floor with this gash in the middle. I did patch it up with tape, and thankfully it was in a spot I could cover up with black sharpie, but these two moments made me realize games are far more fragile than you may expect. Which is odd, game companies know their products are handled by young children, you'd think they'd use bulletproof paper or something. Because this is just the beginning of the end. Thirdly, there's the frauds. You see them at the store and think, oh, that's looking pretty good, pull it off the shelf and weep. There's something wrong with my WarioWare. It's more fun to see the boxer that's drawn on with Sharpie. It really puts you in the shoes of the last person who owned the game. Like, how did you lose the box art? I got the cashier to think they were ringing up apples when they were really ringing up bananas. I just learned an easy way to get stuff on the cheap. Steal it. I remember watching somebody open a game for a birthday present. They open it up and go, nice. They start peeling off the shrink wrap and they didn't realize they were also peeling off the game case itself. Happy birthday! What, did you like spill water on your game and you tried to dry it off with a saw? Goo gone, you just squirt that all over- Next person that owns this is gonna have the exact same questions I do. What the f happened here? This usually helps get rid of that sticker residue. Now don't get me wrong, I like this, but I would never drink it. It just smells too bad, I, I couldn't. Oh, this was purchased within Microsoft by a Microsoft employee who really wanted to play whacked. That's really cool. Now, why do they need an ass large sticker that's impossible to peel off? I'm trying everything I can here. Use games, they just bought from some sap in the store. They can charge whatever they want for them. They can make as much of a profit off of those as they so please. So why do they do this? Yeah, no problem. That gets cleaned, avoid your warranty. Hey, uh, here's that game you wanted back. Uh, <laughs> I, I lost the case. Um, <laughs> I, I left the manual in Reno. Um, <laughs> I wanted to give you that back. Uh, I wanted to give you back what's rightfully yours. So when am I looking after your daughter? Let's see how many problems we can find on this, okay? So somebody put a sticker on the spine of the artwork, tried ripping it off. This is a GameCube game in a PlayStation 2 case. They still have literally every piece of paper that was included originally for some reason. And worst of all, it's f***ing geist. So while used games can be f***ing disgusting, they're a part of gaming culture. And I would love to see a digital game do this. I found Dig Dug. Hey all, Scott here. You know what I love about video games? Connecting a controller. Parental control. Airplane mode. Screen burn-in reduction. Auto sleep. And that's it. It's a brand new console. Wanna play a game? No! However, the system with a menu setup and pre-installed software I remember the most fondly will always be the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Wii is a close second. This thing had such a fun menu to explore back in the day, mostly due to the Wii channels it housed. Uh, calling them channels was definitely to make them feel more like TV stations and to give us a false sense of security, but these were applications for the Wii, and this was one of the first game consoles to have a cavalcade of pre-installed goodies to sniff, which made productivity a bitch. I got places to be, but that damn forecast channel's calling my name! Oh. So when we turn the Wii on, we're greeted to... I never read this. Warning, health and safety. Before playing, read your operations manual for important information about your health and safety. Wow, I never would have known! Is this really necessary every time you boot up the console? I mean, yes, it's I don't want to get sued necessary if somebody decided I didn't see a warning screen, I'm gonna eat my f***ing Wii. Well, let's go through all of these, starting with the disc channel. No. Discs? 
is this a revolt? So first up, the me name is brilliant. Flipping over a portion of the we name to make something completely different. Now you could flip the other half, but I don't know what a screaming W is gonna do for you. I really take me making seriously. One of the best compliments somebody could give you is, damn, your me's pretty hot. All right, final question. Oh, do we want this me to mingle? I swear to God, if I can crossbreed my me's. The photo channel. Funny story, the Wii has an SD card slot. Now what can you do with it? The photo channel. I love the photo channel. It was such a fun way to experience your photos. You know what wasn't a fun way to experience your photos? The Wii Shop channel. The worst photo experience on Wii. Thankfully, I have a wonderful thing called the time capsule with old footage of the Wii Shop channel on it. Yeah, this is great. Next up, we have channels that need no introduction. The forecast channel. The news channel. Okay, news and forecasts are no more. No wonder nothing's happened the past few years. If I can't do something as simple as play a European game, how do you expect me to play something that doesn't technically exist anymore? Well, I can sure as I'll try. There's a fan continuation of We Connect 24 called ReConnect 24. Let me see if I can handle this. I can just look at old footage. I never had this channel on my Wii, but it just so happened to only be a four minute long video where you'd entered it and that exact video is available on this promotional DVD I have. Thank God I was gonna fucking blow it. Did you know you can connect your Wii console to the internet? Yep. It's just a simple infomercial and pretty much everything we just talked about. Is it worth getting pissed about if it was never preloaded on your Wii? Yeah, but at least owning it on DVD, I can play with it. Hey all, Scott here. You know, I have a life outside of talking about stupid Nintendo games. I almost got murdered. Finally, I'm a victim. It's exciting when you got nothing else going on. That's just the thing though. I do have things going on. I'm a busy guy, which is why I'm one of the few who take attempted murder seriously. Every murderer needs a murderer and ours just so happened to be Mr. Officer Steel Wool. Lucky for me, I printed this off before he tried to murder us. A while back, we were all invited to a dinner party. No murders allowed. Somebody didn't read the itinerary. Everybody except the host recovered from being murdered, which makes us prime suspects to sue him. So today's the big day. We're taking Steel Wool to court and I'm gonna be a star. I can see the headlines now. Murder victims innocent. What's the code? I was murdered. So, are you ready to be one of the first allies in the war against murder? Oh. I don't think I can be in the same room as the man who killed me. Don't be such a baby. I was in the same room as your murderer and he fucking stinks. I don't know, just why did he kill me? Was there something about my face? I wouldn't take it too personally. It probably has nothing to do with your looks. He probably just fucking hates you. Nothing personal. So what are we suing him for? Defamation. Good. Your social status does really plummet after being murdered. Where is it again? Vegas. It's a 28 hour drive. With normal traffic. 28 hours? I have jury duty in 28 hours. Oh, don't go throwing hours in my face. I'm the biggest hours fan there is. Oh, thank God. Turns out I'm serving jury duty on our trial. You're the victim. An unbiased victim. Hello? What do you mean you don't have a ride? Alright, fine. We got a carpool. <laughs> Oh, I'm just saying, if we took that exit, we could have shaved off 10 minutes. Welcome to the litigation station, the brand 9 out of 10 lawyers recommend. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to my judge in training. I'm going to be your judge this evening. Only here because my mom made me get a summer job. It's in September. Well, all right, I got him biased to be. Just, I don't know, I'm gonna crumble. There's no way I can face my killer. I fing had it, okay? This is just outlaw trauma. Yeah, I wrote the bad. <laughs> Great, the fing person's gonna be our lawyer. Guys, I was there throughout the entire thing. I know what happened. And plus, representing yourself in court always works out. Like, and, and even. Can we have court outside today? Damn it, she's good. Objection, your lawyer. I have vitamin D sufficiency. Time to break out this icebreaker again. I call steel wool to the stand. <gasps> So, Mr. Wool, did you kill anybody? Objection, he doesn't have to answer that. Yeah, that is a pretty personal question. I mean, I know he killed me, but I don't blame him for not answering that. Freaked out, I just wanted to make sure the jury was on our side. The only member of the jury was murdered by him. I did hear he's leaning towards the defendant. I'm leaning towards him too, we're fucked. Your honor, I called Jebediah Jab to the stand. Oh great, now they called the guy who doesn't believe in us. This is great. So Jeb Jab, is there anybody else a part of the Jab family? Nope, just me and my vegan in crime, Terry Lesler. Isn't getting murdered against the vegan creed? I, I, I think it's frowned upon. Yes, you don't want to kill any animals, but you can get killed all you want? Doesn't that seem a little unfair? Th th that is very quite bullshit. yes. He's slipping. We're losing him. Yeah, I'm getting real sick of your attitude. We're in Vegas, be happy. Do you really think it's fair to make all these allegations about this poor man? 
He's traumatized. You have no idea the impact murdering five people has on a person. Oh my god, I, did, I didn't mean to. Like, you didn't mean to get murdered, right? Objection! Your Honor, I'm mad! I've seen matter. Keep going. I think I have one more question. Do you think Officer Steel Wool murdered you and four others? Do I know he did? Yeah. Do I think he did? No. I can do this. Your Honor, I call Rex Mose to the stand! Woo! So, Rex. What do you think of Officer Steel Wool? I think he's a fine person, and a better murderer. So you admit he's a murderer? On the one day I was with him. Your Honor, should we really base this man's conviction off of what he did on one measly day? Yeah, seems kind of rude. Rex, I have evidence from the night of the murders. What is this? Oh, that's a gun! Interesting he knows what a gun is. I thought Officer Steel Wool was the murderer here. Yeah. How do you know what that is if he wasn't the killer? <laughs> did I say gun? I'm a Brennan 92 x full-size handgun. <laughs> Your Honor, he's just throwing out random words. He doesn't even know what they mean. He's a dictionary with feet. That's what we call him. Allow me to ask the others to name that specific object. What is this? Gex? A photo. The letter L. My gun. Okay, so Rex, did you kill... Your Honor, that says it all right there. This is a heart rate monitor. Yet Mr. Wolves isn't going off right now. He's not hooked up to one. Your Honor, can I win now? No. Okay. Listen, if they convict you, I'll just start yelling. They can't convict you if you can't hear it. That's why the deaf don't go to jail. Ah, uh, f***ing mad. This is just outlaw conviction. They should outlaw you, you f***ing murderer. I call Wendy's employee to the stand. Who's gonna be the jury? Hmm. So, Wendy's employee. Where are you employed, exactly? Why, Wendy's, of course. And, uh, what do you do there? Well, I'm the employee. An employee like you getting murdered when he has a job to go to in the morning. Seems a bit unlikely to me. Well, I, I just didn't work the next day. I don't buy it. Damn. You check the bathroom, they got free soap in there. Focus, we gotta reel this one in. Like a fish! Yeah! 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 yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Put money in this fight. He better win. Terry, long time vegan, old time sewer. If if you can't sue a person, why talk to him? Can you point to the man in this room who killed you and your four of the cohorts? Not not even a little bit, no. You're really cock blocking me here. I can't even look my killer in the eye. You expect me to use a finger on him? Well, what do you want out of this trial? An apology. And that isn't gonna happen unless you point him out right now. Uh, how can one finger decide a man's destiny? He's pointing at Rex! He's pointing at Rex! Oh, this is just outlaw me, your honor! Oh, what now? I call Scott Wozniak to the stand. So, Mr. Wozniak. That's me to you. That's impossible! He's a murderer! A murderer with a heart of gold? Oh, and I'm not a murderer with a heart of gold? You're a murderer? I was lying as a joke! So you lied in a court of law? As a joke! So who was your plus nine? The justices of the Supreme Court. We go way back. How do you know them? I chaperone for them. So you were a bailiff? Oh, that's what it's called? I thought they just didn't know my name. So are they gonna show up? I don't know, let me check. That's impossible, he's a murderer! They said maybe. No way, you know the justices too? I'm their cousin. I thought you said you had no family. Well, that was to get the sympathy vote. He was ruthless! He tried to shoot me and I'm allergic to bullets! I did it. Well, that's a blow to your case. All right, Officer Steelwool, for being so brave and coming clean like that, I'll let you off lightly. You are sentenced to death. I don't think he did it. Hey all, Scott here. Here at Give a F Productions, we deal exclusively with topics that are Giveable, and if your topic needs to find giving, then we'll take a look at it. We don't give a. F Let's see what our latest request is. Not even we have limits. Hey everybody, I'm E3 2000. <laughs> who the f is this guy? And who doesn't give a f about what Acclaim did in 2000? You'd be surprised. Wait, this isn't an Acclaim press disc. This is worthless! And Sega's booth as a whole. I mean, look at all this pizzazz. They really went all out as if they were gonna die the next day. Sony, our favorite little corporation. They're making the PlayStation 2. How could they dare to get anything but five knee slaps? Please don't. And E3 2000 was definitely mediocre. Though next year we should have new consoles to look at and one less Sega to talk about. And without E3 2000, we wouldn't get to that point. So that has got to make E3 2000 worth giving a f over. I tried, okay? Hey all, Scott here. Some words of advice. Things will get better later than sooner, don't you worry. When I was little, I used to think, when I'm Scott, I want to be this, and look at me now. What does it take to be this? 
Skin for one. It takes a lot of work to be me. You have to be tough. You have to have skin. You have to own this. I should hire an assistant. This is Mario Party. I thought it was a bear. Aww. Look at all these. It's almost like there's 24 of them. The Mario Party series, a constant in society. As the death toll goes up, a new Mario Party comes out. You may be attracted to this game for the simple concept, but remember, it's not just a board game, it's an adventure. Huh, <laughs> yeah, f you board games. Yes, we get it. Mario Party can be cruel. Doesn't mean I don't like it. I mean, hey, it's my best friend. He's a snitch, he's a killer, but he'll always be my friend. It's just, you're winning, having a great time, and then you get the death sentence for winning too much. Ah, well, this guy has more eyelashes, so we'll give him the eyelash award. For second place, you get the grand prize. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's Mario and his good friends. They hang out. Mario thinks he's the superstar. No reason is given. Peach thinks she's the superstar. No reason is given. Yoshi thinks he's a superstar because he has energy, something every being has. I have a neck. You don't see me bragging. Yeah, being a game that's best played with four whole people means... This isn't gonna work. I thought telling the IRS I was four people would help, but no. I need bodies. I could play by myself, but Mario Party's like a marriage. It's more fun with up to four people. And at that point, I might as well make the most of it. Call up some people, get the place all jazzed up. It's called Mario Party for a reason, because the word bullshit was already taken. But I might as well throw a party if I can't think of anything better to do. No, let's throw a party. A great party needs to have so many things. Mario Party 1, so you know people don't have too much fun. Doritos and Mountain Dew to have an outlet to discuss the war against arteries. Alcohol, because it's not a good party if you enjoy it sober. So I went to the party store and picked up anything and everything I could find that was party related. <laughs> now all that's left to do is invite victims. They can bring alcohol, snacks, people. Okay, so who's gonna show up no matter what? No, no. Or, I did find this flyer for the Mario Party Assistance Agency, the MPAA. You can call them, pay a small fee, and have bodies show up to play Mario Party with. Which is really something Nintendo should have specified as required. I called? You called. According to my receipt, I have you for two hours to play Mario Party 1. Oh sh**, we're playing Mario Party? Just like any Mario Party player would. Uh, I've never played Mario Party before. What is that, like a bear? You've never played Mario Party? You're wearing a Wario hat. Oh. I thought the W stood for words. So you work at a Mario Party agency, but you never played it? I've been doing a lot of work for the agency. I haven't really had time to play. Okay, well, I need you to sit on the couch, hold the controller, and have fun. <laughs> That'll cost extra. Holy shit, you have a sitting fee? Technically, yes. Ambiguously, maybe. All right, we'll just have you stand. Want to take that for a test drive? Yeah, and see what I'm in for. I'll take it. Uh, it says on your sales form you ordered one other person. It's considered ordering people? Pretty sure that's illegal. So you're only pretty sure. Hey, is this the party? I know you said to bring Mountain Dew and Doritos. I like if I was Mellow Yellow and Cheez-Its. Yeah, you can't have a party without powdered sugar in a Ziploc. They did have beer at the store, so I just got 20 packs of cigarettes. Most of these are playing cards. They only have five packs of cigarettes available. So this is a suitable replacement for alcohol at a party? Yeah, I can't wait to get blackout cancer. Well, I for one am f***ing pissed. Come on, be an anti-narc for once. We have to throw an actual party. You know what? No, I'm not gonna go against my beliefs. What, do you want me to like take out a pack of cigarettes, pull one out, puff it out? Put it out, light another one, off to get some cheap thrills while playing as the f man Wario? So how much is your nicotine fee? $10 a year. <coughs> Don't worry. Sounds like a second for your lungs to collapse. I can't wait, this is gonna be like an actual party! All we have to do is pick our soulmate! Well, you know what they say. Let's play Mario Party 1. Yeah, I'm taking Wario. Home field advantage. I'll pick Luigi for the sympathy vote. What consistency do you think Donkey Kong is? Hard. Hard. DK's Jungle Adventure, rated one star. Can't say I'm surprised. Anybody look at this and go, oh, I think he'd make great game boards. All right, which map do you guys want to play on? Keep in mind, I am 100% gone after that hit. That sounds like you need an intervention in Wario's Battle Canyon. That's not fair, he has home field advantage. Don't blame me for how I was born. Uh, how many turns should the game last? Is there an option for two? How about 54? Nope, there's only 20, 35, and 50. You sure there's not a secret menu? I say we go for 20. Don't want to come on too strong here. This is what I'm talking about! It's like a warrior taking to remember the Alamo! You mean the Sabbath, right? Alright, we roll to decide the turn order here. Home field advantage! You got third. So the goal here is to traverse a game board filled with traps and other obstacles, obtaining coins through landing on certain spaces and winning mini games that are played at the end of each turn to spend those on stars, which is what we want the most of overall. You played this before? No, just look at that. It's pretty obvious. I thought this game was a bear. Oh, I think I've heard of this one. You've never heard of Mario Party 1, but you've heard of the Hammer Drop minigame in Mario Party 1? Oh, it's a big deal where I'm from. Where are you from? Wario's Battle Canyon. 
Kick off that <laughs> No! Off that no! Game. Donkey Kong wins, as is tradition. This was the first mini game. And every mini game he's played, he's conquered. Well, it looks like you're gonna be able to break that tradition here. You land it on a one player mini game space. You get to play Memory Match. Oh, f I picked a bad day to get dementia. You gotta be kidding me. I swear it's the controller. What the hell? I got no coins? It makes it feel any better. My doctor told me I have nine days to live. The next minigame is Bumper Balls? That's one of my favorites! Again, still, you haven't played Mario Party 1 before, but you know about Bumper Balls? Word gets around. There. Donkey Kong, you cheap bitch! What a waste of an ape! I have a star. This goes to saying they can steal coins from me for free! Well, are you gonna do it? I have a pact to never steal unless stealing is free. What the hell? I have the least coins! I don't wanna piss off Donkey Kong! You've seen what he's capable of! Yeah, winning. It'd be really funny if Donkey Kong won this minigame and landed on a star space and got a star. Less so funny, more so fucking hysterical. Oh, I'm ready to use my thumbs. In fact, I've been using it this entire time. We gotta keep an eye on him. Why is this so slow? I, I'm barely getting anything. Feeling back takes forever. You know, I may have great thumbs, but I was blessed with the best palms. I won. I should do that. Okay, we're up to the Treasure Divers game. Oh, cool. Wario, f off. Oh, f yeah, dude. I'm going for the dub, bitches. I thought you were going for the dub, bitches. The dub stands for Wario, bitches. And I, I'd love that. That'd be like treating me like it's my birthday. When is your birthday? January 26th, 1997. Nine months after Arbor Day? That's a weird coincidence. Oh, it... It's no coincidence. I just got 20 coins. There's nothing left for me here. I have nine days left to live. I think that'll do it for now. Donkey Kong may have won, but so did Smallpox. For a while there. Yeah, I should probably check my contract with the agency, make sure you're playing Mario Party 1's allowed. Yeah, this is the first time I've ever played Mario Party with a client. Usually they just want to hang out and enjoy life. Well, at least I'm happy that I finally got to throw a party for the first time, get lung cancer, and never use my hand again. All with professional Mario Party players. I think I'm an escort. Hey all, Scott here. Oh, don't worry. This one's my primary Wii U, and these are my Wii U's in case I get lasagna on this one. Some people might say, Scott, just buy a PC and get into PC gaming. Yeah, sure, when I learned the error of my ways. Well, Atari couldn't just look pathetic. They were Atari! Hey y'all, Scott here. I know what it looks like. I wasn't looking for a pumpkin. I was looking for grass. Oh, wow. Okay, fine. I couldn't take it anymore. Just yesterday, I was doing a live. I've had enough of this! And I decided to finally buy a pumpkin. Grass families live around here. Oh. Welcome to the Lessler Pumpkin Orchard, where pumpkins are a specialty, orchards a close second. Wow, vegan Terry Lessler running a non permitted pumpkin patch. Can you name a more vegan crime? Well, I've been a gourd user for a while, looking to make an upgrade. Never bought a pumpkin before. What are you carving during the fall, then? I mainly use watermelons. Well, we do offer conversion therapy. Nah, I think I'm good. I'll buy that one. I'll buy that one. That is a nice ass pumpkin. Oh, uh, this? This is just a rental. Nah, no, I'm looking to own. You really think you're ready to go in raw and own a pumpkin? It's a lot of responsibility. Maybe just start with a goldfish or something. No, ever since I was a kid, I pledged that by the time I'm 17, I would own a pumpkin. I'm 23 now, and I've gotten nothing done over the past six years because this has been at the top of my to-do list. Let's get this over with. Perfect. We'll do a background check. You'll be the first you to own a pumpkin. Yes. I'll pick that one, the orange one. You want the two-year warranty? I hate the metric system. How many hours is that? Hey, and I run a pumpkin patch, not a clock. All right, just tell me when. That's good. Alrighty, so here's uh, gonna be your paperwork. Can I have my ID back? And your passport, mugshot, and watch, and you take care of that thing. 
Good stuff. You are currently looking at a registered pumpkin owner. Sure, I've dabbled in owning foam decoratory pumpkins in the past, but those I would just throw out after the season was over. These ones, completely different. This one's real. I asked if there was any pumpkin regulations in the county. I can't quarter it in a time of peace. I said I didn't want it after that, but I already took the cellophane off. My first real pumpkin! And to celebrate, I decided to invite all pumpkin users in the area, throw a bit of a pumpkin party. I hope that isn't slang. Terry should be happy to see how this pumpkin's doing, and plus four years from now, I'll be throwing my first party, so I think I'm ready to throw another one right now. I think I'm finally ready to present myself in front of the pumpkin demographic. Damn it. Okay, maybe I should make this more of a half pumpkin, half Halloween party. I don't want to make an ass out of myself in front of the pumpkin fandom, so I'll distract them by making it more of a Halloween party. All I have to do is come up with a scary costume. I have had this list for over four hours and have never acted upon it. See, I could go with somebody who's owned a pumpkin before. My cover will be blown. I could go with somebody who ate a fucking Wii. Maybe next year. Oh, wow, that's the scariest one. Uh, of course, I could also go as memory card talker, but I, I, I go as that year round. All right, I'm just gonna need some materials for this costume. Okay, customers also bought memory cards. I can go as two things. F it. Sure, in the game itself, they're distinct enough, but when you're writing down a password, you'll probably just use whatever your brain thinks would be funny. Why couldn't God make the O look like this? So to pick up where you left off in games, you either had to keep the game console running indefinitely, or something I have to explain to your parents. I don't want them thinking I play Mega Man 4. What is this? Uh, coordinates. For a bomb. Plus, what kind of passwords are these? Like, you try to get into a club and they ask, what's the password? C764... Oh, f I thought you were another door. Am I the first to arrive? Yes. Well, just step outside, change into a scary costume, and you'll be fine. What are you, a meat eater? A person. Oh yeah, I can tell by the hat. Sometimes memory cards would come with games, like with Animal Crossing. You got a GameCube memory card free of charge. Made sense considering Animal Crossing required a ton of space to save. So you pretty much needed a memory card just for it. But hey, it's an Animal Crossing themed memory card, just like how I have an Animal Crossing themed thigh. I don't know, is it really worth neglecting your pumpkin for so long that it can save guys? I can't help but the pumpkin dies. All the beasts move south for the winter. Pollination's over. Wait, this, this isn't the right pumpkin. Oh yeah, it's over there. Looking good, got any plans for this guy? I was thinking we could bop for apples, but with this instead. Alright, you can feel free to stop not saying anything. Got a pumpkin? Oh god, we were supposed to bring pumpkins? I was hoping the invitation would be cryptic in a good way. Wait! Never mind. So what are you supposed to be? I was going for person, but everybody's going as that this year. Oh, come on! I thought I'd channel my inner Wendy's employee for my costume. You are a Wendy's employee. Is it really that convincing? What are you, a doorway pirate? No, I'm Dex. I thought he was depressed. Whoa there, I'm gonna need to see some fruit. How's this? No. This? Ugh. This? Language! This? Yeah, it's a fucking pumpkin party, get in! And what are you supposed to be? You. Whoa! Oh, not today, not today. That's not a pumpkin. <clears throat> when I saw the invitation, I thought the P said P, the U said I, the M said N, the P said E, the K said A. Listen, I don't want to hear any excuses. I'm fruit blind. Can't see fruit. That poor bastard. It just, you can't be here with that. I have a permit. F Blindness. But wouldn't you know, at least the PlayStation Portable kept the dream alive. Oh. Oh, I thought it was a fingernail. And what do you guys say we pop some of these suckers in, get an insight to the previous owners? Wouldn't be a pumpkin without a background check. I always wanted it to wear a pumpkin studio. It's f***ing freezing! These aren't pumpkins, are they? What was your first tell? I knew it, I knew it! Every time a pumpkin claims to save Geist data, it's always a scam. How can I let this happen twice? Right where we found these weren't pumpkins, I knew something was up. Yeah, guys. Let's get out of here! It's probably just a rat. Oh! Oh, not my leg day legs! I need them for leg days! Take off your costume. This is a room? 
not hearing it. That pumpkin had a whole bean of pumpkin in front of it. You know how old she was in pumpkin years? Oh, that was a pumpkin? Thought she used a napkin. What's fruit blindness like? It's really funny. Until you have to identify fruit. That pumpkin had it coming! It couldn't even be a watermelon! You take that back. Should we take him to a hospital? No, he's already dead. And gotta say, first time owning a pumpkin, not impressed. Ah! Wait. He's just sitting there. Like a pumpkin? No. I'm not gonna let my Wii get possessed by a pumpkin. Of all fruits, pumpkins need to be eaten, not enjoyed. Okay, you have them for two months out of the entire year, and then what? We're back to watermelons. No. Okay, I'm glad I got owning a pumpkin out of the way because it'll bump my credit score up. But for now, no. We need to end this, regardless of what body you possessed. I ate the f***ing Wii. Hey all, Scott here. It's truly an awful situation when you re-experience something you initially loved, but upon further inspection, it's just not as good as you remember it being. I'm of course talking about Eczema. Tried it again, wasn't into it. Anyways, I'm gonna replay Mario 3D Land. I mean, hearing that they're making a new 3D Mario game and seeing these screenshots, it is one. They had these CGI animations representing the major Nintendo 3DS games they were about to go into detail about, and one of them was for Mario 3DS. Mario comes in, jumps around, and gets a power-up. I never cared for Mario, but I'm liking the new direction. This power-up ended up being the Tanuki Suit. Yay! PETA is the organization to listen to. They love animals so much, they would kill one to prove how serious they are. They saw Nintendo was releasing a new Mario game featuring an animal suit as a power-up and decided to go for the angle of this. They even made an online Flash game about it all. Well, now I gotta listen to them. Obviously, this was done as a way to get attention. If you were somebody going online to discuss how absolutely ridiculous it is that PETA thinks Nintendo's promoting animal abuse, congratulations, you did exactly what PETA wanted you to do. In Mario 3 had a frog suit, did anybody really think Nintendo was pressuring kids to think anything of that? Here's a gun, kill a frog. Starting up a new file, Super Mario 3D Land has a tree and a lot of it. I guess this is giving story context as to why there are now Tanuki leaves all over the place because that was my biggest concern when this game was announced. How is that Bowser's doing? It was a rainy night. It's like if I saw a fire. Oh, I know this exact arsonist. I can tell by his signature flames. Well, the 3D works pretty well in Mario 3D Land. It's just not that necessary. It does benefit you to leave it on, but I've played most of the game in 2D, no problem. May have missed a few jumps here and there, but I, I can always shrug it off. Oh my God, I said something wild, didn't I? I should shield my eyes from such statements. I didn't have sunglasses, so I spray painted my lenses black. Hey, old Scott here. I am not doing well. It's been a week since Daylight Savings Day. Worst holiday. I've changed my clocks. I'm still not used to it. I hate change. I've had the same feet for years, thank you. I don't want to change, and I'm going to stick to doing what I do best. Playing games that released in 2018 on the PS3. The next generation of gaming is upon us. It's time to upgrade. No! No! One of the most notorious examples, Donald Duck going quackers. God, the... Game. See, Twilight Princess was initially revealed as just a GameCube game, but as time went on, its completion date lined up perfectly with the launch of Nintendo's next home console. Uh-oh! So they decided to make Link right-handed in the Wii version. That was obviously done by just changing Link's model, right? Ah. It says no. It's just odd seeing some games go the cross-gen route, like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. Could a game like this run on the 360? Oh, no problem. Look at these clouds. You should buy it because there are meaningful experiences to have on there. If the games on that platform are already available on the platform you already have, you don't need the new console. But Sackboy has a five on the box now. I said don't buy the console, you can buy the games. Hey all Scott here. Big day if you don't have much going on. Microsoft and Sony have decided, out of the kindness of their hearts, they are releasing video game consoles. You heard it here third, video game consoles, that's video game consoles with a G in there somewhere, are launching to success, is what I'd say if you could actually buy them. Let's go to our Scott on the field. Scott? Scott, it's launch day of the brand new consoles, or as some video game fans have coined it, today. It's a big deal, taking into consideration all the video game console players out there, roughly 3% of the population cares. Many fans have expressed disdain in the limited supply of consoles, you can barely find any in store. Well, Scott, that's pretty crazy, did you nab any of the consoles? No. Okay. Uh, also, there's a tornado warning tonight, more on that tomorrow. Well, I did go to Best Buy, and they did have some of the new Xboxes left over, and the names of these are getting so bad. I swear they named the last one this. That new generation smell is what makes console launches so great. The launch itself? It could be better. I remember when the Nintendo Switch launched. Look at me. 
Brown hair and glasses. I, I was just a kid. I got the gray model. Of course, when unboxing a concept for the first time at launch, you say one of two things. It's way it's smaller than, than I, thought I thought it would be. be. Then it's time for the setup, getting to know your new console, experiencing the new sound effects and user interface. I can't wait. This is going to be amazing. Boom. Yes. I spent $300 to have my TV display this image. If only my Switch was defective. Now it's a console launch. Of course, there was also the great Nintendo Switch cartridge tasting phenomenon. Somebody discovered that each of these game cards had an incredibly better taste to them. Well, that's one point against the Switch. The PS4 was great with this stuff. It's fine. I don't know how this even became a thing people started doing. Like, yeah, it tastes bad. A better coating is here to probably prevent people from putting them in their mouths and swallowing. But is there any standard to how a cartridge should taste? Oh, the, the DS cards. See, those taste okay. Do you ever have that fear? You just got this expensive thing you really wanted, and on the way from the store to the parking lot, you're worried that somebody's gonna steal it from you, or you're gonna drop the box and it's gonna break? That happened to me. So why do I not give a shit about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X? Because I couldn't pre-order them! I wanted them, honest to God, but I was busy thinking about what it would be like to own them. Damn it! Hey y'all, Scott here. What are we sinning today? I am pretty hungry. Lost. I should get more into eating food. I heard people love that stuff. The issue is... I don't know how to cook. And that's a problem with Thanksgiving around the corner. What am I gonna do if I can't cook? Be thankful? Thankfully, I have an escape route. There happens to be a Nintendo DS game that has all the answers. doing here? This isn't personal trainer math. This is a game. See, 100 Classic Books doesn't have an age rating because they're books, old, unedited, public domain classics like Huck Finn. Personal Trainer Cooking is basically just a cookbook, but it has alcohol references, so it's rated E for everyone. So overall, 100 Classic Books is more appropriate for all ages. You ever actually read Huck Finn? Before we go any further, please adjust my voice to the speed you like. Let's slow down there. I have very slow ears. You can exclude certain ingredients based on dietary restrictions, which is pretty handy. According to my religion, stomach, and opinion, I can't eat food, so it's good I can exclude certain recipes. But what do I want to prepare here? New England clam chowder? F*** it, that's kind of funny. Okay, select a saucepan of an appropriate size for the number of servings you will be preparing. All I had was a milk jug. Okay, so here's all the ingredients I'm gonna need. Lucky for me, I already own food. I don't need to buy ingredients. Sure, I only have two of the listed ingredients, but I can make this work. First up, canned clams. And two thirds of a small onion. Thank God that's the only portion I had. Drain the clams with the sieve. The sieve was never on the ingredients. Can I substitute it with clams? Let's cut the onion, clean up cutting utensil, substitute carrots with clams, potatoes with clams, bacon with clams, and now it's time to cook. I don't mean to get salmonella this year. Might as well try another one. Oh, f they got goulash in this? God damn it, it uses onions. I already used my whole two thirds onion already. Well, you know what they say if you can't make goulash, give up. But they got a mac and cheese recipe here. That's my favorite side dish at any Thanksgiving. Next to pretzels. I have to try though. Chop the cheddar, boil the macaroni. I realized I was using a saucepan and sieve as a cup holder, so lucky break there. Make the sauce, don't let it brown. Is green okay? Season with salt and pepper, mix everything together. Uh, I don't have macaroni noodles, so I'm just gonna use thick spaghetti. Voila, macaroni and cheese, Ohioan style. Oh boy, food and plates? Oh yeah, I haven't eaten all of the month of November to prepare for this. Happy Thanksgiving! What is this? It's a gourd, bitch. What's in the crock pot? Cereal. You know what? I think I might go out for Thanksgiving this year. There's this new place downtown called Steel Pretzels. Oh, what do they have? I don't know. Guys, I busted my ass making all of this. The least you can do is eat everything. Which is why I will give this infamous excuse for poor video game performance towards my cooking ability. Why did my meals turn out bad? It was the controller, not me! Hey all Scott here. Why didn't any of you tell me about pencils? This is great. Consider me a newborn fan. I'm sold. I don't even have to think about the next pencil I buy because I already pre-bought all of them.
I should have waited for reviews. Most video games are mass produced. You're not gonna have a hard time finding new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe on launch day. So if you pre-ordered it, get over there. If that game wasn't available at Best Buy at launch, the simulation's crumbling. Now I wanted the game really bad, so I spent all my money on it at the GameStop I was at. And thus I had to then figure out how to cancel my pre-order at the GameStop I pre-ordered at. You don't blame me, I was young and dumb. It was 2018. You know, I should have just paid for the pre-order in full after buying the game at the other GameStop, so then I wouldn't have been embarrassed in the slightest. I wouldn't have had to walk away from the one without a game and wouldn't have had to cancel my pre-order at the other. I know what you're saying. No man should own that many copies of Wii Sports Resort. So two? Who so wants to tell a cashier, hi, I pre-ordered Go Vacation. Oh, you really care, don't you? So why did I pre-order Assassin's Creed 4? I needed a new football. Yeah, I passed and pre-ordered on Amazon. Uh, guess when I got it. After the shipping delay, right now. Ooh, sorry, no more pre-orders for that though. If you want, we have plenty of Little Big Planet 3 pre-orders left. Okay. Good thing you didn't have to specifically pre-order to buy them. Uh, they were selling them separately at the store as well. Thank God, I was out of cups. Jesus, man, how, how did they f up a Rubik's Cube? But to be fair, this is the best pre-order bonus I've gotten so far. In terms of excitement, I'm brimming. Free condoms with infamous second son at GameStop Italy. They'll work or your money back. But I have time to kill, so I'm gonna pre-order or pre-order of a game. That's where I get to stand in line to find out where I'll stand in line when it comes to pre-ordering the game, because I'll get this pre-order bonus of this exclusive poster. Yeah, I'll take the cigarettes. Extra nicotine, yeah. Hold the tobacco. Thanks. Hey y'all, Scott here. I'm trying new things, broadening my horizons. I'll try cancer, why not? You only live once. You're looking at a new Scott here that hey y'all, so why not celebrate by playing something I've never played before? The holidays are almost here, the season where new games, systems, and experiences are abundant. Everywhere you look, there's something new to play, and not only that, but so many games released throughout the year I missed are crazy cheap. There's really no excuse right now not to play what this year had to offer. Fuck you, I'm playing Wii Chess. As your patented young Nintendo fan that grew up with a GameCube, so does his opinion really matter? I was a big fan of this game, and I was also a big fan of lying. Look at that, three-year-olds can't play chess in America, which means this must have been a European exclusive. So Europe usually gets a raw deal when it comes to games. Some of the greatest games of all time initially never released in Europe. Some of. I think more people wrongfully assume this game is a part of the Wii series. When there's a Wii series game, they didn't even know existed. Yeah, don't look at me like I don't own Wii Chess. You use the D-pad to move your pieces in Wii Chess. Oh man, I can't wait till Wii Chess comes out in the States and I can use the Wii Remote Pointer. I should've gotten into fishing instead. I can barely find any advertisements for this game out there. I wouldn't blame anybody for not knowing it exists. Yeah, here's your warning. Hey, f***er, you like chess? Yeah, and I hate pointing. Introducing Wii Chess, finally. Chess you can't feel. Wanna play chess and nothing else? Yeah, what does it look like? I like pointing? Introducing Wii Chess, the only chess game on Wii called Wii Chess. Featuring a pre-existing engine and acting like it's a major feature when in reality using a pre-existing engine is a lot easier than making a brand new one from scratch and acting like it's a big feature on the back of the box. F*** pointing. Introducing Wii Chess, it's perfect if you wanna try new things. Hey y'all, Scott here. It is laundry season. Seems like everybody's cleaning the clothes these days. I'm not one to go against trends. I'll do it. <coughs> okay, I did clean my pencils out with this, so it might not be ideal for the gears. Well, while I wait for that to heal up, why not tell a story to pass the time? This is the story of a brown-haired white boy with glasses. Guess who? And one day, he decided to talk about video game delays. Want to hear some useless sh but as somebody who watches the video game industry like a hawk, I can sense things. My five senses are at dangerous levels. You ever see me taste lemonade? <laughs> Take, for example, Mighty Number no. 9. No! I think it's ready. Might as well test it out by cleaning some forks. Well, after numerous delays, I've decided to cancel the laundry, but don't you worry. I think everything will work out just fine for our brown-haired white friend. Game delays are inevitable for all developers, and most of the time, I think they're highly respectable. It takes guts to admit, hey, we need more time. And sure, some are annoying, most are definitely disappointing, but in the end, I think most delays are for the best. It's not like real life where pushing something off till later will get you in deep trouble. Huh. Hey y'all, Scott here. It is laundry season. Seems like everybody's cleaning the clothes these days. Hey y'all, Scott here. Oh! It felt like space chips. No! 
gonna feel pretty good about this. This is shovelware. <laughs> Walmart thinks, oh, we're out of milk. Fill the space with chicken shoot. To think of all the chicken slaughter games on Wii. I already played chicken shoot. You wouldn't know it because I'm not dead, damn it. So let's try out another in the genre. Chicken blaster by Zoo. Well, what sets chicken blaster apart from the rest of the genre? Eh, like five letters. Wow, it's so realistic. It truly feels like I'm gutting a fucking duck. When we blast the chickens, do they die or are they just fainting? Uh, no, it is canonical. These chickens are being slaughtered. Play the role of a chicken farmer whose birds have gone haywire and save the farm from shooting these mad chickens. I mean, they know what a man wants. I may hate chickens, but I'm a big supporter of the pheasant movement. I just want people to take them seriously, you know? Well, they aren't a fad. This is Pheasant's Forever Wing Shooter, featuring pheasant, quail, duck, turkey, and grouse. Grouse? They got the whole band back together. Apparently, Pheasant's Forever is an organization alongside Quail Forever, promoting the conservation of the birds. So let's kill them. Well, that's the most surprising thing I've seen all day. All right, pick a location. Well, this bottom one has dark matter all over the place, and I also never trust a man named Owen Field. I'll just go with the first course. We get fun facts on the loading screen. Treat every gun as if it were loaded. This is fun as shit. Illegal? If anybody sees these birds in their neighborhood, run. The Wii was big on bird hate. Here I have ultimate duck hunting. Hunting and retrieving ducks. Yeah. 70% of this cover it isn't a duck, though. Hey, what are you shooting at? The duck's right there. Just step on it. God, I want to kill that duck. I'm not gonna say anything. If I was a shitty opening cutscene to a hunting game, I wouldn't want to be made fun of. You know what? I don't even want to bother. The lack of grouse is really bugging me. How about we try ultimate duck hunting? Yeah, I accidentally bought this game twice. Apparently this game got reprinted by Zoo with new art. At least this box is more duck hunting related, but again, man, the duck's right there. Just spit on it. Oh, and I got time and a lust for blood. North American hunting extravaganza. Yes, hunting extravaganza. This is a f***ing party! Calvin Tucker's Redneck Farm Animals Racing Tournament. The F-A-R-T, huh? Now that's funny. Get your redneck on. Calvin Tucker's Redneck Colon Farm Animal Racing Tournament is a wacky cart game with loads of typical redneck humor. Forza was missing something. Their crazy organized tournaments bring them from the farm to the tropical pirate island, from the polar to Egypt, and from inside the pyramid, they are warped into time to the medieval times and returning by UFO back in time again. You ever need a cigarette after reading a paragraph? It's not even a paragraph. That final bit was one whole sentence. Don't know, what does the manual say? Well, we have a solid recap of the story. Apparently all the farm animals want more out of life than just a farm, so they start a racing tournament. Billy Pete, slimy Billy the Frog, in quotes. Billy Barry, the silent but the cool Billy Cool with his sunglasses, decides to join for reasons only the mystical Billy Cool knows. And of course, crazy cat Billy Slick decides to join the party because otherwise there is no one left at the farm for him to harass or oppress. Right, what's your character's special ability? Oppression. I think these are the only two Calvin Tucker games, so can't wait for the next one. Calvin Tucker and the f Busters. Dave Mira BMX Challenge. What is he, in space? You know, IGN gave this game a two. It's at least a four. Time to increase my monster energy drink gauge to do something. I never filled it. I assume by doing tricks, you boost your meter up, but that's not how I play Dave Mirror BMX Challenge. I feel more reserved by failing. That's funny. I do have the urge to drink a monster now, though. The store was fresh out. I subbed it out with kerosene. The people who played Dave Mirror BMX Challenge wear Carhartt jackets in April and spent way too long in high school bathrooms. Pizza delivery boy. Let's get into this story. Oh, that's where my wallpaper came from. It's your party name. I hate how these games are getting so political. Play a minigame, here's a 40 second long loading screen. Here's our next minigame. It's still better than Pirates. Guess what Neighborhoods Games is? No thinking, just guess. Do it. No thoughts, first instinct. What do you think? Neighborhood Games? Do it. Do it. What is it? Uh, uh Worse than deer drive. Damn it! Look at that, it has the same startup screen as Pheasants Forever, except it's a dragon, not a pheasant. Oui, oui, que sur le grand tourneur medieval. I can't speak Spanish, so you know I don't know if that's French or not. I don't think I can ever trust a man like I once did. 
So I'm removing my shell worker and there's nowhere to hide when you're in this apartment. This looks like it could be a quality game where your main weapon is projectile vomiting. I'm surprised the Z button doesn't sh your pants. I am pretty proud of my pants shitting scheme. If I get pulled over for speeding, I just go, Officer, I just sh my pants. What is it gonna do, write you a ticket? With sh in your pants? Spray isn't very good. Escape the museum. This really hits home. I gotta get out of here. This is a point and click adventure. Of course, with a Majesco logo in the corner, I think it's fair to have some doubts. I've already taken a look at two other M&M's games, so let's round it out with a full-blown adventure. This is an M&M. Oh, wow, what can it do? Oh, do I have a game to show you? Mmm, Adventure is a full-blown 3D platformer starring these little flavor seizures. This game is for those who just love the M&M's characters, your friend who just won't shut the fuck up about them. What kind of M&M's pointer is that? The M's too big. And why are all the titles so high up? All right, so let's start a new game. Uh, thought so far? I love it. So yellow M&M's in a locker, uh, he shuts it. Look at this. What is this? So I have to do some security thing. A yellow is really digging shit here. Never mind. All right, time to play. Well, it's not good. I'll give them that. I mean, if you really just fucking love the M&M's characters and you want to see what they're like when they walk, I'm sure I get it. We all have dreams. It's definitely one of the better games of the lot. But I should probably wait until I play Space Chimps to judge any game from this point forward. Hey y'all, Scott here. You know you're happy when you have 200 NES games to cry to. I don't need companionship. I've been a human being for 21 years. Why would a 23 year old need another human in their life? It's a one man job being alive. I don't need two. Of course, in terms of life goals, I'd love to be an uncle. Problem is, I'm an only child. So the only way I can do that is by marrying somebody with a nephew. That's how they get you. Well, it's not like I have trouble doing anything like that. I'm more of a recreational virgin anyways. I can get married whenever I want. Watch. 911, what's your emergency? Please, fuck me. Thank you all for coming. When I heard you couldn't get laid, I dropped everything and came straight here. Well, I couldn't imagine anybody else being a part of the fuck Scott task force. Yeah, I interpreted that in a different way. I just need help conquering virginity. I haven't messaged any girls on Tinder and I haven't gotten any responses yet. You're not getting any responses on Tinder? Have you tried to tell them how badly you want to f them? So speed dating? Count me in. Who the hell are you? Oh, you know my brother. He worked at Wendy's. Wendy's. Oh, the Wendy's employee. How's he doing? Oh yeah, not too good. He's been dead the past month. What the hell? He didn't tell us. Well, maybe we can speed date in honor of him. Really get the dead on our side. Yeah, I'll give him a call. See if he's open to it. Yeah, we'll hand out some coupons. Get the whole town to speed date. Yeah, I think my parents are free. He's not picking up. And remember, girls really like it when you tell them how desperate and lonely you are. And you gotta get really mad if they don't wanna f you. Listen, before people start showing up, we should probably get you some practice. Like a driving range. Yeah, but without the flirting. All right, let's sit down. Anyone on my side will be a girl. Anyone on this side will be- We'll be horny, got it. Well, to show you a little about myself, here's a picture of me and my mom. Aw, which one's you? You got your dental records on you? Yeah. Impressive. Most dating is toothpaste these days. Just how it is. Well, people are really shallow. Consider it a background check. For example, do you have a death certificate? Mm, sorry, not yet. Good! I'm not f***ing a ghost again. Alright, I got seven words for you. I will f*** anything with a face. Me? Uh, I can't keep this up! I don't have sex! The world doesn't need it! I have to get laid. I think it'll bump on my credit score. If you get laid, who else is not gonna get laid? You! You hate sex! Hi, John Female, woman on the prowl. Rex Mose, school dance historian and chaperone. Wow, you chaperone school dances? That's so cool. I wish somebody could chaperone the whole city. Damn, you hate sex too? What a f Ah! You like sitting at tables too? It is table season. The moment I saw you, I was like, wow. What I would give to see her at a table. So all I am is a table user to you. With teeth! So, I hear you have a dead brother. Is it really that noticeable? Wow, you're so dreamy. You have those I have a dead brother lips. It is dead brother season. So, you single? My girlfriend drove you here. So that dead brother of yours? See, uh, related to you? Yep, death does run in the family. Nope, nah. I don't mingle with people who associate with the dead. Learn to be alive for once. Are you bleeding? Yes, let's discuss. I don't want any bleeders. Vegan? Okay, what am I gonna do with all my blood? Why is the blood yellow? Yeah, I'm colorblind. Hi, geriatrics. Here's my sexual history. Would any of your past partners be okay with me calling them about your performance? I don't see why not. I was always trustworthy, I never missed a day, and I came on time every morning. Wait a minute, this is your job resume. No, it's not! The last girl I was with was today Walgreens! Big deal! I gotta be honest with you, you don't look like your pictures. Sorry, I was shot on the way here. I think this is gearing me up for real life girls! You're learning from the best. We know what girls want.
air. Yeah, you're nearing passable levels of speed dating. Oh, what? I'm not good enough yet? Replace not with really not and you'll be closer. You did bleed all over me. Hey, is this the place? Not now! I'm now certified. <laughs> What are you doing? The funeral home's that way. We're not going to a funeral. I knew that was the only way to get you in the car. What the hell? I bought new shorts for that. You've been going down a bad path lately. How lately? About the past 23 years, give or take. I can't help what I did as a fetus. I'm sorry. You took me from my apartment just to drive me back to my apartment. Breaking and entering isn't as fun if you know what's happening. I'm not an alcoholic. Your file says otherwise. Listen, you're an alright guy. Damn near human. We just want to fix you. I would have to be mentally broken or not already castrated for you to do that. I'm good. Oh, alright. How about you just open your Christmas present from this year? Oh boy, I hope it's a snake. What the fuck? Somebody shut him up with some duct tape. On it. You're not an RPG guy! I thought that was my race. Nope, my bad. Got them mixed up. Hey, good news. We're not getting charged with kidnapping. I just got off the phone with the government, and we're on good terms. Oh, tell them I said hi. Uh, Scott's roommate of nine months. I think that makes sense. You're not my roommate. I thought you knew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what RPGs are. <laughs> but I think you're being a little bitch about them. Yeah, what are RPGs again? I don't know, a gun? Do I at least have a chance to explain myself? This is America, so no! This isn't America, this is Ohio! It all started 23 years ago, the doctor said. It's not an RPG fan! Contrary to popular belief, I didn't always play video games, which is why there are no records of me prior to 03. This was the year I truly started playing video games, so pretty much the year I was truly born, which you know what that means. I'm a minor! Around this time was when I discovered the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was hooked up at my grandma's house in the den area. I remember distinctly a goldfish cracker was lodged in the cartridge slot. Yeah, try it. It works. This was my cousin's old system, and he left it there alongside a shoebox full of games. These are human teeth. Hopefully, this gave you a good idea as to what I was raised on, what games and consoles made me who I am today. Notice how Lufia 2 wasn't mentioned? As your therapist, I think you should be open to more things, like RPGs and murder. But I've tried RPGs. And I've tried murder. It doesn't count till you like it. So what are RPGs again? Isn't it a political party in Guinea? Why are you so hell-bent on me being an RPG guy? You don't even know what RPGs are. Yeah, I do. Political party in Guinea. We've been over this. I always thought it was like a BLT, but for ranch peas and grapes. Well, why did you all give me Xenoblade? Well, that's an RPG. I didn't even know Xenoblade was pronounced like that. I thought we got you an enema. Yeah, I was wondering why you didn't shove this up your ass. No! That doesn't mean I'm opposed to other genres. I love puzzle games for a lot of the same reasons. Rhythm games can be incredibly satisfying and addictive. Adventure games are a dream to get completely submerged in. Shooters I'm awful at, but they can be a blast. Get to the f***ing Xeno sh 
I don't like RPGs. Now, what is an RPG? Why would you ask me? Role-playing games are games where the player controls the actions of a character and slash or several party members immersed in some well-defined world. Oh, so uh, what does that make me? An abuser. So what's the big deal? I love fantasy, put down three letters, I'm sold. Yeah, seems to me you don't have much of an argument here. Like Stalin? Stalin f***ing hated RPGs but love Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, so we're, I'm we're, into we're, it. We're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. I get it. Good I get it now. Good point. Better point. Yeah. Better point. Yeah. Better point. yeah. 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 Not Flint Smash Geist or Burnout Crash Not Mario Party 6 or Ultra Smash Neither Clubhouse Games or Wii Fit Plus Nor Family Feud on SNES All the games I play, whether good or bad Have tropes in common, my favorite two dads They may be rushed or plain or flawed But they ain't RPGs, oh thank god Are my tastes just bad? Am I the one to blame? Or is it RPGs that are dumb and lame? No! Why don't you play them? They just take so damn long to complain why don't you play the 60 hours just to rinse and repeat? But you could cry for years just to feed that myself. Why waste all this time on just one game? Why don't you play them? I just don't like them! I just wanna play stupid Nintendo games! That aren't this stupid! But why don't I like them? Okay. Turn-based battles in too much text I'd rather be out not having sex Menu clutter and useless stats And random encounters can kiss my ass No gameplay till hours in Combat ready? How did I mean? The same thing happens over again And that their fun part comes up when? I missed one thing and now I'm lost That one inch of text really meant a lot There's some shop with items I can't afford So grab for money, you won't be bored I'm tired, I'm scared, I'm not having fun There's no other way this can be spun What do I do? What do I check? It's an RPG, what did I expect? Listen guys, you can't have opinions. Why don't you play the not my style? Number two, wait your turn, fker! Well, I'm walking around enjoying myself, thinking, what's next? Homicide. Here's a list of things I can do. I can attack. I usually perform some special ability like existence. Well that didn't do a damn thing. Or just give up. Run. Bitch out, they don't care. So I select what I want to do, I watch the character do what I told them to do. Uh, then it's the enemy's turn, because it's only fair. They attack... Thanks. And now we're back to me. Uh, I'll probably attack again. Actually, it might be a good time to heal myself with some medicine. Uh, good, I brought Dayquil. Uh, Alright, and it's their turn again. They attack... And now we're back to me again, alright. Thought I'd uh, adjust my speech here. Scott, the lack of RPGs you play is horrifying. And I've seen bees. Oh, he means it. To show how much we care, I have a surprise witness. At an intervention? I present to you K Swiss of Bankruptcy Patrol. Oh my god, you got a white guy? We call this issue the Scottless Economy. With you actually playing RPGs, we call it an economy. You son of a bitch, I love the economy! I feel like you're really blocking yourself from experiences that will truly better your life and outlook on art as a whole. I wrote this when I thought we were still talking about guns. Okay, and what do you think about role playing games? Oh, just don't be a bitch. It is your place. <laughs> yeah, I got a RPG delivery. Jeb, why didn't you come earlier? I work today. I love the economy. <laughs> oh, yeah! yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Woo! Woo! Oh, I deliver RPGs to at risk youth. So they're going to be RPG guys. Here. This, this is Madden. Yeah. No! No! second room here. What are you all RPGs too? RPGs can be fucking anything. I was talking to someone and they fucking catfished me. Leap year this year? It's December. Oh, food's here. What is this? They're ribs. I thought we were getting a corn dog. These are nature's corn dogs. I can't eat ribs. I'm not hungry. And vegan. Oh, come on, somebody has to. I ordered the economy size. Yeah, is this uh, stale pretzels? I'd like to place an order. 
Yeah, the stale pretzels. Oh, oh, get some ribs. No, it's stale pretzels. All they have are stale pretzels. No, if you ask, they'll make it for you. Yeah, I'll do a side of pretzels. It's kind of a weird way to say ribs. My God, is this how we sounded to him? Depends on how he pronounces ribs. You know, we should we should do something nice for him. Like to place a fling smash order. What do I want? Ribs. Ribs. Yeah, I'll go with fling smash this time. Christ, it's been a busy day for us. Two deliveries? This economy's about to be the f***ing best. So I thought you just delivered RPGs. Well, RPG can mean a lot of different things. For example, like when you're really playing Gex. Hey, kid, you want a Gex? No, no, no. I have to pay for it. God, I want to f*** the economy. I think I've become an RPG guy! And I f***ing hate myself! What am I? What have I become? I don't even use one of these! Ah! Oh! Hello, my name is God. Oh my God, I meet Jesus and a Target employee in the same week? I just wanted to give you a formal warning on your recent performance as a human. You're really f***ing it. I don't want to f*** anything. What did I do wrong? First off, that time you drank that water and made a face, f*** you. I make water. Second off, you're trying to be an RPG guy. I thought that's what everybody wanted. See, I crafted humanity to have the instinctive trait to not like RPGs. So that's why cavemen never played them. Then all of a sudden, evolution was like, fuck you, here's Ogre Battle 64, person of lordly caliber, the famous game that everybody loves, and ever since we've had a bunch of mutants walking around playing RPGs. So it's normal to not like RPGs? It's normal to not like all kinds of things, whether it's RPGs or murder. You never would have known. Scott, Bubby, you know who you are and what you like and don't like. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not an RPG guy. You know this deep down, but that doesn't mean you should immediately denounce every RPG that you come across. Even though RPGs were never meant to be enjoyed, people liked them for some reason. You should respect and understand that as much as they should respect and understand you. But even if you generally don't like something, giving it a try from time to time can open your eyes to great experiences you would have never had otherwise. Can I add you on LinkedIn? I think I get it. I'm not an RPG guy! And sharks are just sexy fish at the end of the day. RPGs are my go-to genre, and that's okay, just like how everybody doesn't like platformers or sports games or first-person shooters or party games. My criticisms of RPGs were just opinions. They're the same reasons why people love RPGs, and that's okay! But that doesn't mean I can never like RPGs. I really like Dragon Quest and some Final Fantasy games I like, and I'm just really happy that Xenoblade's doing well, and Persona 5 is really cool. No, I'm going too far. This. 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 This, 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 this. Hey all, Scott here. I'm not an RPG guy and I'm proud of who I am. No RPG is ever gonna make me anything otherwise. Regardless, it was releasing in 1995, so get your face ready. It's the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Of course, I will maintain, I will admit the Game Boy and Game Boy Color aren't separate systems and the color was just a mere refresh of the Game Boy when I'm dead and buried. Still not buried. I just really needed to talk to somebody with a PhD. I don't have a PhD. They forgot the U. You have FUD? I have FUD. Hello. I come from a time in which the term Hey All Scott here is banned. Cloud gaming has taken over. Millions are better off because of it. Companies are less wasteful with their products. But I want a box with Mario on it, damn it! So we have to stop this! Modern gaming. Something stinks! Alright, I think it's time. You guys ready to go to this funeral? Let's f***ing do this!
<laughs> if you were making a game for the PlayStation 2, GameCube, or Xbox, you knew what dimension to make it. It added to the amount of simple fun you could have with the Nintendo DSi without even plugging in a game, mainly because the software library was cut in half. What do you call this? It was the only cake I had. The Game Boy Advance slot was removed to maintain portability. Sure. I want to lose weight. I cut off my arm. Hey y'all, Scott here. Everybody, please welcome my new assistant. I can see why everybody said this game was bad. The other physical release Nintendo had this month was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. What do you think I think? I'm a simple man. If I see a Pokemon, I'm going to squint. Hey all, Scott here. It's 40 odd 90, and kids these days have it so easy. They only have to walk 20 miles in the snow to go to school. Oh yeah, well I had to battle leprosy. My favorite food is no indoor plumbing. It's pretty tough living in this time period, so hopefully in the future they'll have bathrooms and flying cars and Mario Power Tennis with motion controls. One of my favorite pastimes as a kid was to go to the dollar store. I live in Ohio. Your hobby's either that or getting shot. I ordered it on Amazon and they sent me a European copy. Do I look French? No. F you, I'm Polish. Hey y'all, Scott here. Put on your 3D glasses right now because I'm about to be as realistic as ever. I'm never gonna be truly happy. The Super Nintendo has one of the greatest lineups of 2D platformers, but that won't stop me from considering Family Feud to be one of my favorite games on the system. What makes the soap moist? Name something kids use. Tonsils. Name something parents save from a first baby to use for a second. Boo! Name something that's often located in the basement of the house. The basement. Name something people start but never finish. Me. War? Books of Faith. Hey y'all, Scott here. I finally found a use for that 24 hours of spare time I just had. It's all been building up to this. I'm gonna be God! The first 24 year old one to be exact. I woke up yesterday and realized God can't die. And I've never died before. So my first order of business is to bring inanimate objects to life. I decided to buy anything labeled as a toy at Spencer's Gifts, not showing those. I'm gonna give them mortality because damn it, if you were God, you would too! The hell do I do now? The Nintendo DS had a lot of potential for add-ons. You can't look at this hole and not fill it. Look, oh my god, you can add anything here. Footrest. Okay, so we race and shoot at Greasy Steve. You know, Steve, you put yourself into these situations. Okay, why do you have to race? You have guns, you have knives. You can kill Jake Conway right there, but instead you decide it's more effective to kill a team member because they were about to tell Jake Conway why they were gonna kill him rather than just killing Jake Conway right there. So, no, I'm sorry. I can't get behind Greasy Steve. Hey y'all, Scott here. I just got bread for a dollar. That's one of my biggest fears was talking to somebody really liked him. Turned out they weren't a person. They were just an affordable price. I despise deals. Somebody offered me a TV for $20. I tucked them up to 40. So it's a good thing deals can't find me here. That's why I boarded the doors. It's their Achilles heel. I've known this for a while. That's why I keep nailed wood around my neck. With all those deals out there, I guess I just have to wait out the storm with games like Sportsman's Pack. Two great games. There's been a breach! Hey y'all, Scott here. <laughs> Let's rank our cousins. Well, Betty stinks. That's great, that man was born to be a cousin. Gary, not worth the hype. Jeremiah, the definitive cousin experience. See, I am completely unbiased when it comes to critiques. If I can hit my cousin Betty, surely you can take my opinion on the virtual boy to heart. Oh my god! Other than Spyro, these are all basically original creations, and some of these guys just look gross to me. Not in terms of being badly designed, and more so, I wouldn't want to be eating while looking at them. They all look like they belong on a pack of Mucinex. And I don't get some of these names. They're not even names! One of them's named Lightning Rod. His parents were dicks! Then you have Wham Shell, Trigger Happy, Stump Smash. What the hell kind of a name is Slam Bam? My fing name's Jeb Jab. It released on October 18th and featured something new, something revolutionary, something we all can't live without. Lock on technology. Come on, picture my life without this thing. Yes, it was the answer to my conception. I mean, I find these types of games to be a little too simple and slow paced for my liking, so you're gonna need a gimmick to make it work. And Toys for Bob found it, being Aww. wasteful. You know, I'll be honest, I have been slacking off with wasting money lately. I don't think I'm in my prime. I need mentors to teach me how to be wasteful and appreciate a game that wastes so much plastic and money. I was once a chaperone for school dances, but then I realized I was contributing to society. Hi, my name's Jeb Jeb, and this right here is a piece of shit. Don't you want to be like me, doing absolutely nothing in life, so there's more or less pressure to perform? Rex Moe's here and I do. We're the Waste Chasers. You're helping us by helping you be more wasteful. 
From this job, I bought 30 acres of farmland. What are you gonna do with it? We'll waste anything. Your time, energy, people. But according to our lawyers, we can't advertise murder on TV, so I'm obligated to say that we're kidding. Call us now to schedule your appointment. Confirm it by wasting money. Sonic the Hedgehog 4 was set to be this grand revival of classic Sonic. I mean, come on, it's in the title. Well, when you put it like that... But right at the end of March, a rumor that loads of Mario remasters and a new Paper Mario were coming. The rumor initially stated how pretty much Mario's entire back catalog of games were coming. His entire back catalog. In reality, this just meant most of the 3D games were getting remasters, and that got my mind racing. Could this mean that Mario 64 will get a fully orchestrated soundtrack, and Mario Odyssey level visuals, and Sunshine gets reworked, and they fix up all of its little issues, and Galaxy and Galaxy 2 get retooled to be perfectly playable with just button controls, but also feature motion as an option as well? And maybe Mario 3D Land gets prettied up, and has changes to accommodate the lack of 3D, and 64DS gets full analog control for the first time! It was a fun five months before none of that happened. A new Paper Mario, though, Apparently, it was going back to the series RPG roots. Yeah, and I'm not sitting. In what world does the amount of blood on a blade affect its stabbing ability? Try again! Donkey Kong Land. It's Donkey Kong Country on the go. You know, I just discovered I could take a shit on the go. All I have to do is shit my pants. And man, I played it so much, and I agree. It stunk. It was a horrible gaming experience and waste of my time that I'll never get back. And this entire time, I realized I wasn't even playing the game. I was just holding a beehive. Yeah. You know what? I can afford the star. I'm not gonna buy it. I don't need it. I have a mother who loves me. Damn it! Look at this! Donkey Kong's gonna steal a star! But that's a sin! Hey, at least we know he's going to hell. No! I know how you feel. I too was f***ed by an ape. If you play as a different character, you get different scenarios in the same environments we've already played in. But I'll give them that. Variety is the spice of life, and so are ass cracks. So this game has it all. For $100, you get an RC Mario Kart with your choice of Mario or Luigi. You connect it to your Switch, and now your living room is a Mario Kart track. But when will it learn to love? But one game decided to do something innovative. Be the biggest example of false advertising of all time. Yeah, I'm not really saying anything that hasn't already been said here. Smallpox. They fucking stink. If I had to guess, I assume Nintendo already figured this brand had somewhat negative effects on sales. I guess uh, this doesn't look very appealing and the name doesn't make me go, Here. A fighter from arms. Okay, we'll find out who it is in June. Oh, I'll be damned. You saved us all from immediate disappointment. Super Punch-Out's weird. Like, the NES game is the most famous. It's one of my favorites on that console, but who the hell talks about the Super Nintendo one? Nothing wrong with it, it's just the controls and sound effects don't feel as good as the original on NES. To anybody who disagrees, I'll see you in court. Crucifixion's a bit harsh. Donkey Kong Country 3, the one I just can't own. I've never legally owned this game. If you don't believe me, look through my tax records. I'm seeing no donkey. This slot, on top of giving us the ability to play Game Boy Advance games, completely revolutionized handheld peripherals. You couldn't do this kind of stuff on the PSP, like the memory expansion pack. Fuck you, Sony. But man, I just really want to play Four Swords Adventures, and I don't have a GameCube right now, so maybe just this once. <laughs> I also killed a man. You know what I really need to do is buy a $500 console alongside a two grand TV set, buy a $60 controller to play this free game for $60. Oh, fucking brilliant! Air. Take it, you son of a bitch. You rotten son of a bitch! That isn't an insult directed towards me, per se. Why don't we get to drown him via quick time events, too? Take your time. You get up to certain parts where you need a specific Skylander of a specific type. None other can unlock the gate. Oh, well, that's a smart business move and a little bit of a, well, I don't know, discrimination. First up, Dollar General. You may know them as one of the most popular low-end variety stores in the country. I know them as a place where they display condoms in a Ninja Turtles underwear box. So you have the first three games on PlayStation, then Crash 4 on PlayStation 2, The Wrath of Cortex. It wasn't numbered Crash 4 here, though it was in Japan. Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, disregards all games following the third on PlayStation. It's like the Halloween Halloween movies. You have the first one, then a sequel to it, then a third that has absolutely no connections, the fourth is a sequel to the second, then the seventh that regards everything after the second one with a sequel to it, then the ninth one is a reboot with its own sequel, followed up by the eleventh one, which is a sequel to the first movie, disregarding even the second one, which got its own sequels. 
And it's just like Crash Bandicoot. Have you ever heard that? A game that called itself the fourth entry to later on have another game consider itself to be the fourth entry? <sighs> Who the hell cares? Double Dragon 4! Crisis was revealed for the Switch. You know, this was the premier PC game back in 2007. If your computer could run this thing, you were tough shit. My Nintendo Switch can barely run a WWE game, but now Crisis is coming to it. Let's revolt. I don't need a lawyer! F Halloween! It's my favorite time of year! Wednesday? No, 8pm. Thanks for decorating with me, you never hear of a therapist that's willing to help their patient. As long as we're still on the clock. I don't mind. Wait, well, hey, since you're already here, guess who is your secret Santa? Oh, I hate riddles. Please guess I put money on your answer. Well, if I guess right, it wouldn't be a secret. Please, it was me. Well, I don't know any me's. I know a you. Well, he was your secret Santa. F*** it, I don't need my toes anyway. Oh, how did my secret Santa know? Well, when you asked for water when you came in, I knew it would be perfect. I love it. What else happened? Uh, oh, Nintendo Network IDs were compromised. Some hackers got a hold of them, but not all Nintendo Switch users have Nintendo Network IDs. If you created a Nintendo Network ID on Wii U and then used that to log into your Nintendo Switch, then you should be worried. Fuck. The unit's powered through the controller too, which is weird. You can't turn this thing on without the controller. Even the power button's on it. You can use an AC adapter or six AA batteries because Nintendo kept claiming the Virtual Boy was a portable device. So was a house. With six AA's, the Virtual Boy lasts roughly four hours, which is pretty bad by 1995 Nintendo standards. Many attribute the excellent battery life of the Game Boy to its success, but it could have been more successful if it caused seizures. Nintendo had to cover their ass with this thing, putting as many warnings as possible here. Basically, if you had troubles with nausea, motion sickness, epilepsy, I'm pretty sure your doctor already gave you a list of don't even think about it. Me personally, the Virtual Boy doesn't give me a seizure, it just makes me sad. So what is it like playing one of these? Well, line your eyes up with the two eyepieces and BAM! Sweetest day is a celebration of having a second date to rub into the face of virginity. Think of it as an Ohioan variation of Valentine's Day. But in October, if you already thought October was scary, try mating. Apparently it's only observed in the Great Lakes region. Well, here I am in Lake Erie. I count, bitch. The NES gave you long-lasting experiences, each on their own cartridges, some of which were high score based games straight out of the arcade, but many were taking gaming to the next level. Rich stories, new worlds you want to explore, definitive endings, just like a divorce. Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics is phenomenal. If you're not in the 30 hours plus club, get the f out of my face. Most flagship gaming franchises during this time felt the need to transition to 3D, and 2D was seen as old news. The only person that would care about them would be Lincoln and... He's dead! It's obvious Clubhouse was meant to satiate the desire for the Wii series to come back, but I don't think Nintendo really wanted to do that and would rather push a franchise that doesn't have a dead console's name in its title. They would rather not do that, doesn't mean they won't. Hey y'all, Scott here. I finally found my fourth calling in life. A match made in heaven. I finally opened up my own tattoo parlor. Welcome to the scab lab. You ever think to yourself, man, f skin. Well, this is the place for all you tattoo chow hounds, such as myself. And if you're lucky, you get your picture in the No Infections Club. We give out free samples, and if you don't like it, I am so sorry for what I just did. Of course, to prove how much I believe in our product, I will give myself a sleeve. I'm thinking blue today. The business and I weren't a good fit. You know what? I'm gonna do it. I did it. The Bayer Digit Blood Glucose Meter plugs into the GBA slot. Naturally, it is a glucose meter after all. Now I couldn't get diabetes in time to discuss how this actually works, but I don't really need to. It reads your blood sugar levels and is designed to give kids with diabetes more incentive to read them more often. So alongside this device, you get a diabetes turn-based RPG, knock them down's world fair. You get power-ups in the game for checking your blood sugar levels. The GBA slot deserves an award. There's so much it can do. Help with diabetes, put the DS on a fridge, f with Tony Hawk. The Kingdom Hearts series finally got announced for Switch via a rhythm game. I'm so annoyed I can't be confused on the go. The new Smash Brothers character from ARMS was revealed to be Min Min, a good choice. She seemed to be the best candidate as Spring Man was already an assist trophy. I don't care that people say, there are no rules that say assist trophies can't get in. I'm pretty set in my way saying assist trophies can't become characters in the same game. Just wait until Senate passes the bill. Family feud decades? Name one of baseball's great all time sluggers. Only baseball team I know, Harlem Globetrotters. Is your answer there? Name a song made famous by Elvis Presley. Uh, eek, it's Elvis. Name a game that all the kids in the neighborhood can play together. Polyamory? 
Unfortunately, the Nintendo DSi shop closed on March 31st, 2017. Oh. However, most of the DSiWare games released are available on the Nintendo 3DS eShop. Uh. Just looking up DSiWare, well, there they all are. Well, let's take a look at a good chunk of the releases, starting with a launch title for the DSi shop. WarioWare SNAPPED! He just f***ing LOST IT! Now this game is sort of the punching bag in Nintendo's early titles, generally considered one of their worst. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, I wouldn't willingly play it, but I'd so rather endure this than most of the NES black box sports titles. Everybody gets Pac-Man too, because, um, human rights. Oh, for the love of God, I was supposed to get robbed tomorrow! <gasps> Well, my evening opened up. What am I gonna do now? I can't go, hey all, Scott here. I don't own Lasagna World Tour. False alarm. I lost everything. Well, except what the robber decided to leave. I wonder why. Only two whole months after reveal, Paper Mario the Origami King released to reception. The general consensus on this one is that it was okay. Not perfect, but definitely a step in the right direction compared to the last two games. Interesting way to say it ruined my lunch. And one of my favorite things about these multi-packs is seeing what kind of menu system they put in place to select the games. Fuck me. I have never found a mate that can do this. You can't even play multiplayer. Not only is it not an option, there was never a Virtual Boy Link cable released. They went to all that trouble of making this port. They can't let it go to waste. I keep all my spices here. Weirdly enough, various marketing materials and commercials for Mario's Tennis claim it does have a multiplayer mode, but I refuse to look any further. I don't have anywhere else for my spices. There was this rumor going around that the Spanish dub of Breath of the Wild 2 was complete, which implied the game was close to releasing. Yeah, and I'm still not sitting. Nintendo loves re-releases. They would release Jesus Christ if they could. But see, you could have just re-released all of your GameCube games on the Wii because we could already play GameCube discs. If you were gonna re-release a game, you had to re-release it for a good reason. And out of lust doesn't count. Nintendo's solution? The new play control line. Nintendo, that's your solution to everything. That's fair. It's a smart business practice. Might not be the most ethical in the world, but hey, I fall for it every time and I know exactly what they're doing, which doesn't mean I fall for it. Just means I'm a bitch. Pretty much with all these, I see no point to them. I feel like they raise more questions than answers. Especially the mini Xbox One download code boxes. Little key ring sized plastic boxes containing nothing but a download code and will eventually be the main source of ocean pollution. They are the cutest possible way to kill a seal. Glover! Can you believe I have a room for a game I never played? What do you mean yes? Yoshi's Story is this bizarre take on a Yoshi's Island successor. It's still pretty good, but it's so similar yet so different from any other Yoshi game. You gotta eat fruit. You don't just get to the end of the level just do what my dietician said and eat 30 fruit. So we gotta just find 30 pieces of fruit and then we move on to the next level. It's kind of an interesting direction. Hopefully the next Yoshi game does something just as unique. The same thing, are good. Jesus, you know, this brand new system is getting delayed left and right. These other guys are making us look weak in comparison with their shiny new consoles. We gotta just throw something at the wall, see what sticks. Well, that doesn't. Now, these are just patronizing commercials that have no idea who the audience for Nintendo Directs and Treehouse streams are. Mies. I just don't get it. Like, why is it here? Why has this border always been a part of my life? Why can't I escape it? Why doesn't anybody else see it? Maybe you need to relax. How about a nice pillow to the face? That's killing me. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe a gun to your head will take your mind off things. They're the exact same games, but the Japanese version has far more cartoony character designs. I'm sure they wanted this to be a more mature, traditional baseball game here in the West, appealing to the everyman. I'm no p See, I want a realistic baseball game for my one video game console, the Virtual Boy. We're just gonna stand for that? Okay, we have a chance for revenge. It's a one versus three minigame. Oh my god, we're on his side! I don't wanna be in the history books! Alright, look away. We just have to look in the opposite direction of Luigi. My shower. Yeah, it turns out two thirds of this room are fucking morons. Yeah, so which one of us are part of the two? But you aren't doing anybody a service by leaking when a Nintendo Direct is coming. All you do is set expectations too high and then yell at people for having expectations so high. Well, then don't leak Nintendo Direct info. Oh, 
wow, you get all this fame from telling people what you heard other people tell you. That must feel so gratifying. Now, wait right here as I research the history of Wii U rumors and leaks. In the early days of the Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo announced a new line of titles, dubbed the 3D Classics series. Retro games remastered with 3D in mind, released exclusively on the Nintendo 3DS eShop throughout 2011 and 2012 for roughly five to seven bones of pop. This is such a cool idea. Imagine the possibilities. This line can truly go on forever. They can include some of the greatest games of all time. I f***ing love this company. We've all seen those fast food comparison shots. This is what's advertised and this is what I got. What the hell? Listen, I never even heard of this game prior to launch. I have no expectations going into this, which means I should play through it all. I am the prime specimen to do such a thing. Go ahead, test me. You can't win them all, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna do it. I still haven't been Ocarina of Time, so you know what that means. I'm gonna beat Right to Hell Retribution. Some developers are shown in a video talking about the GameCube, namely Silicon Knights, Rare, and Retro Studios, all showing off games that were barely real. Retro had Raven Blade! It, yeah, sure, honey, I'm on the phone. And honest to God, what's better to fiddle in your pocket with than Ice Climber? Nintendo always goes all out for Mario's anniversaries. Remember the 30th anniversary when they shoehorned in Mario Maker as the 30th anniversary celebration and admitted it wasn't really supposed to be, it just kind of all lined up? And the 25th anniversary when they sold us an SNES game on a Wii disc for $30? Nintendo hates Mario, and to a greater extent, us. It's like this label. What's there to question? What is this, moonshine or porn? Super Mario 3D All-Stars, one of the quickest reveals to release I've seen for a physical release. I assume Nintendo wanted to go wild with a 35th anniversary of something like E3, but, you know, athlete's foot. And the games they make can be masterclasses of design. They appeal to damn near everybody, and most will forever hold the test of time. They also made this f***ing thing. This is the Nintendo Virtual Boy, one of their biggest mistakes outside of not naming it Stinky Stinky Mr. F***. See, Nintendo has this lineage of iconic failures, the Nintendo 64 DD, the Game Boy Micro, the Wii U, but none can compare to the Virtual Boy. At least with the 64 DD, that was just an add-on exclusive to Japan. The Game Boy Micro was just a variant of the Game Boy Advance. The Wii U outsold Sweden. But the Virtual Boy was different. It was its own platform. It was its own entirely unique creature. It had its own games, its own style, and it couldn't even outsell Maine. You even know what I'm talking about? Ask your therapist, I'll give you the same answer I give all my patients. No. Okay, well, everything I see, there's this blue border around it all. That's the most absurd thing I've ever heard! And I've had patients that murder! Seeing a border is more absurd than murderers? They make great arguments! I just don't know what it is! I recently noticed it, and looking back, I feel like it's been obscuring my vision for as long as I can remember. What if there's something down there I can't see that it's blocking? Oh, it's just carpet. And it is looking pretty good today. I wish you could see it. See, you gotta help me! My sanity's at stake here! No, somebody's got a case of the Mondays. I mean, there hadn't been a full-blown Nintendo Direct since September of 2019, and we really didn't know what Nintendo's lineup looked like after Animal Crossing. Well, thank God that all changed on March 26th with a... Nintendo Direct Mini. Oh, it looks like we have a hearty dose of real-world issues affecting pretty much everybody's ability to work starting in March of 2020. So many people had to start working remotely from home that it definitely affected plans for the year. I just went outside and realized that. Oh my god. Because of such a thing, I think it's fair to lower expectations just a bit, as so many things prevented this year from being everything these game companies wanted it to be. Of course, a lot of issues reared their heads in 2020, so I will be referring to all of them each and since they get brought up. First up is Jaundice. Because of Jaundice, Nintendo had to settle for putting together a Nintendo Direct Mini in March, but I still find their silence on games after Animal Crossing puzzling. Let's test out on live. You know, maybe I'm giving Cloud Gaming a hard time. Maybe it can win me over with silence. OnLive was the first big cloud gaming platform. The technology was a thing before. The company G Cluster debuted a game streaming technology at E3 2000. What the hell did that look like? It's through the net. Plus, I don't think it's as comfortable as the 89 model. I don't like it when my hands on the back touch. Keep these things away from each other. Because liars are everywhere. They might even be staring you in the face. And this was when I lost credibility. Then Mario Galaxy, my favorite game of all time. It's a powerful feeling to play it portably. So this is what elected officials feel like. 
I mean, it's playing the Game Boy games and color and advance as well. However, this thing reeks of anti-personality. Compared to the Super Game Boy, I was worried that thing was gonna fuck my wife. But this is the definitive version of Pikmin in my opinion, and unlike other re-releases that change quite a bit, this is literally the exact same game as the GameCube one. Any tweaks are pretty minor and they are for the better. So we're off to a good start with New Play Control. This was completely warranted. So what happened the same day as New Play Control Pikmin? It wasn't the best day for multiple reasons. Jack Dropper Roll! This game holds a special place in my heart. My father died while playing it. No he fucking didn't! Hey, my dad didn't play a lot of Mario Party 2, but when he did, he died. Okay, let's prepare for anything Luigi has in store here. Stop! No, I don't think that was brave. Oh, well, this will be a piece of cake. One guy, bitch ape, the ending writes itself. Finish! Put a gun in my head, I choose the ape over you. I doubt it. Yeah. Get a gun out! Which is why, concerning the holiday, I'm about to give you five better games to replace the act of mating. First up, at number five, Bart Simpson Fun Pack. Number four, Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. <laughs> F*** you if you had sex instead of playing that game. Number three, going to Bass Pro Shop. Can you tell I'm single? Number two, Snoopy Silly Sports Spectacular, also known in Japan as Donald Duck. And finally, at number one, Rats for Game Boy Color. This game disappointed the hell out of me. It wasn't surprisingly good, it wasn't memorably bad, it wasn't even sexy enough. It just left me feeling empty on Sweetest Day, which, who could have expected that? Uh, now what? Wanna go to Bass Pro Shop? This is Bass Pro Shop, your one-stop shop to making up for not giving a shit about Onichambra. Is why they're still in business. You'd think it's all about fishing and hunting, but no, they sell all kinds of things here, like magazines. This one was weird considering it used the Wii Remote Nunchuck in the sensor bar. Well now you use the gyroscope for the pointer and it goes off center a lot. It works, but you have to recalibrate it to the center more than I'd like to admit, and man, that offers even more depth to Mario Galaxy's gameplay formula. Now you have to play the role of a level. Yes! Guys, I'm signing up for Verizon. They're gamers too! Verizon's E3 show on June 14th. What do you think they're gonna announce? It doesn't matter! They're gamers! Cooking Mama Cookstar released at the end of the month just to be taken off the eShop immediately for not having the rights to use the Cooking Mama brand. You need rights? Most multi-platform games came to Xbox One, which didn't make it immediately unappealing. Millions of these console sales are from people who literally just play FIFA and Call of Duty. And wouldn't you know, do I have a console for you? The Nintendo DS. Let's start with the Xbox Shampoo, coming to us from Lynx. After I try my Beats headphone soup. It's the Xbox Staple Green, which makes me happy there's no Nintendo Switch variant. Uh... Basically, it allows Xbox on your head like never before. This is Mario. He 100% deserves so much better, and it's not like I can just not buy it to tell Nintendo what I think. I'm a bitch! I can't help but admire the fact that these bundles help bring in new customers that may not have experienced these games otherwise. Wait. I mean, ha ha ha, f these things. And for the first month, it was completely free to download as a way to thank 3DS users for putting up with the fact the eShop wasn't available until four months after they got their damn systems. The 3DS was released in an incomplete and overpriced state, but they gave me Excite Bike for free, bitches. In actuality, I was one of the schmucks who waited until August 2011 to buy their 3DS when the price dropped from 250 to 170. That was quite the discount, but because of that, I missed out on the 3DS Ambassador program, which gave those who bought the system for $2.50 before August, 10 free downloadable NES games valued at $5 a piece, 10 free downloadable Game Boy Advance games valued at $7 a piece, and I missed out on free Excite Bike and had to buy it for $6. Did I save money or not? The Hannah Montana PSP bundle, obviously a ploy by Sony to get the Hannah Montana crowd to care about the PlayStation Portable, featuring such games as God of War, Got the Village, and Grand Theft Auto. Is that a penis? 100%, they were jonesing to get in on the more casual crowd the DS corner by marketing the PSP to young girls, which includes a copy of Hannah Montana Rock the Show because, you know, girls play too. But can they spell? Well, that wasn't it for Nintendo this month. Out of nowhere, they announced Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, a successor to Hyrule Warriors, but this time being an official prequel to Breath of the Wild. Do we need gas? No. Nah. Let's get some. You work for the Waste Chasers? I prefer the term, we work for the Waste Chasers. Yeah, how well can you guys waste? Sign this. Why? No reason. You're hired. Alright, yeah. 
Hey, see your problem? This wall's being utilized. I was actually wondering if you could teach me how to waste with this. Hey y'all, Scott here. I got four words, three syllables, and one mistake for you. Ghost for sale. Located at Fleeting Smiles Cemetery by Death Productions, you will need a membership to get in. Come on down and we'll set you up with a ghost. Try to find a store that's not Dollar Tree to do that. Act now and we'll give you a fresh ghost. Uh, Bravely Default 2 got a demo. I would like to introduce the future of gaming. Game streaming is an obvious step to take. I mean, pretty much all of the forms of entertainment are consumed via streaming, so naturally, Mario's next. I'm not opposed to the future. I'm just scared shitless about it. Gaming isn't like other mediums. It's honestly the most unique, so you can't really take what's happening with movies and music and apply it to video games. It may make sense on paper, but it's way more complicated than that. You can't ask a dog to fit into a cage too small for it, or ask a cat to be perfectly streamable online without any latency or lag. So, what is game streaming? You've come to the right place. Since it needs Wi-Fi to operate, you don't get a game card with the set. Instead, you have to download a free app off the eShop. Which means anybody can get in on the fun, even if you don't buy the physical set. Oh yeah, I got Mario Kart Live. Show us the card. Mm, didn't account for that question. Might I suggest a new hobby? I recommend a book to discover new things to get into. Stupid bullshit for dummies. I don't know what else I'm good at. What about you? Do you have any talents? I have a foot fetish. Really? Not yet. I'm trying to branch out of therapism. It'd be more interesting for my epitaph. So we'd be willing to do an experiment. As somebody with a foot fetish would say, yeah! I would have liked online play for the bingo battle mode, and maybe reassurance that Pikmin 4 is still coming. We can't have everything, but we can have Pikmin 3 Deluxe for $60. Many still value this older style of game, while some want these older games to be recreated for the modern age. What if we took this modern thing and tried to recreate it using this rock? This is a demake, remaking a game on worse and or older hardware, possibly generations older, or it's just made in the style of older titles. It's interesting to see how a modern game works when it's met with the limitations of living in 1994. It doesn't. But again, this is a digital only game. When it's gone, it's gone. They released a physical collector's edition, but it only came with a download code, which is stupid. What if I get the collector's edition and don't download the game before April? Mm, yeah, Fire Emblem downloaded. Show us the f well, let's take a look at what Metacritic deems as one of the worst games of all time. Second to Family Party, 30 Great Games, Obstacle Arcade. Which one do you want? Yeah. Well, here's the copy that I own since 2014. Ride to Hell Retribution. 1%. What is that, the Metacritic score? Immortals Phoenix Rising. What's that? For 2D games, the top-down perspective was usually the answer to prayers like that, but everything was still so flat and there were only so many things you could do and places you could go. At the time though, this was perfectly fine. But then gunshots were heard. Wow, Fortnite's included for free? They pulled it off! I will never understand the concept of bundling in a free game with your system. But hey, at least it's pre-installed, which saves me a step with downloading the game then deleting it. Now all I have to do is delete it. Free Fortnite V-Bucks and a special edition Switch dock and Joy-Con? How did Mario Tennis get stiffed? Why didn't this one come with 2,000 V-Bucks? Hey, this one is only a full game download, not preloaded. It does come with 1-2 Switch also as a full game download. Damn, this is work. It comes in a box, you get artwork, the console branding, the whole nine yards. Everything you'd expect from a physical release. Except the physical release. Instead of a disc or cartridge, you get a download code. Because I really needed 16 more characters in my life. Once you redeem the download code, why do I own this? This is pointless. It's like the companies that are releasing these things are going, oh, well, this is good enough. If people who want physical versions of our games, they're too fucking stupid to realize that we're taking the easy way out. And besides, all they want is the box anyways. Yeah, maybe a dumb bitch who overly values packaging. I get overjoyed when there's a random blank piece of paper included in the box. But you see, I may enjoy the box, but when there's nothing inside the box, what's there to enjoy about the box? Gah! The original name Gods and Monsters, I think was a much better title, but you just run into some copyright problems sometimes. At least they're talking to me. This is getting old. I may have finally stopped getting robbed two weeks ago, but I just started getting robbed three weeks ago. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I'm gonna make some calls and get to the bottom of this. A bank? The bank? A bank. It was such an exciting era, and going back to it, most of it holds up tremendously. But I can't fit the controller in my mouth. <laughs> Thankfully, Nintendo listened, and their next console, the Wii... Well, now they gotta re-release Pikmin. I don't really see much of a reason to buy this if you have the first, or buy the first if you have the second, though. 
you, Poyo Poyo Tetris 2. Please, just analyze my brain when I'm out of it. We gotta figure out what's going on here. With what? That cat scanner in the corner over there? Yes. Oh no, I'm not doing it. You never walked over there to get me a box. Hey, here's a flashlight to look in my ear. Go wild. Huh, well you're in good hands. I'm quite knowledgeable on head. Hey, what did you get on your SAT? Oh, a lot. It's expensive. I understand why not every game gets a physical release, but I just don't understand why some releases are treated like this, especially when the packaging is huge and they include all these other goodies or if the game is small enough to fit on a cartridge. And the strange thing is, this doesn't work for other mediums. I bought hot dog buns and they just came with a rain check for buns. Literally all the options are the same across the whole series, so it's all about the game now. The 3D effect is so good it made me deaf! Story mode is a treat and there's this new RPG type mode where you have party members and online is a blast and I get my ass kicked by anybody who picks the fucking fish from Poyo Poyo. You can make the argument you don't need this game if you have the first, it's pretty much more of the same with very little improvements. But that's because there wasn't anything to improve, f***er. If you include all the games included in Sonic Mega Collection Plus and the unlockable bonus games in Sonic Adventure DX, there are nearly 30 games in this set. At that point, did they really have to include Sonic Riders? Oh man, we can't just not include one more game. The people won't fall for that. They aren't stupid. They like Sonic! It's a really cool concept, but I find there to be no real middle ground I'm happy with here. It's either too slow and easy or too fast and confusing. The lower levels are chump change, it's just like, come on, give me some action! What the f*** was that? There was one Mario spin-off that was the Game Boy Zone though. Something fresh, something new, something definitively Mario. Mario's Picross. Because the Ted Dance and deal fell through. Super Smash Brothers. Look at that real cartridge. This ain't no holographic trick. If it was, could I do this? See, it's real. But if you collect enough shines, you awaken the Gigabell. I knew this sounded familiar. One of the most famous examples of this is Halo 2600, a demake of Halo for the Atari 2600. Now, to be fair, this is more completely different game in comparison to straight up playing Halo on Atari. I can't even begin to port these graphics over. Well, we can do the color green. 3D Tetris. Right away, this is probably the most enticing Virtual Boy game to me. Just the idea of Tetris in 3D is kind of intriguing and actually sort of takes advantage of the bane to my life expectancy. I'm pretty sure I'm infertile now. Hey all, Scott here. Let's do some math. 0.21% of gamers watch gaming presentations. That's just a fact. They like getting new game reviews thrown in their faces. Now, twice as many watch E3, the biggest time of year for gaming news. It's all about seeing all these games you've never even dreamed up before that's the point now we remove the point and we get E3 2021 whenever a game like this comes out I am happy because that means Nintendo will move on to talking about other things damn it I don't speak for everyone here but getting multiple items bundled into one product makes things a whole lot easier you killed two birds with one stone I could get toilet paper by itself or I could save a trip and buy it with ranch and hey video games take up a lot of space here's my Glover room but overall I just want to see more legacy Nintendo content come over faster than this and for an affordable price damn it hey y'all Scott here please for the love of God don't mind me I'm just doing some touch-ups to my high school yearbook photo you think they'd let me do retakes nine years later? There's gotta be a grace period. I've been having trouble going to sleep thinking about what people thought of me back then, so hopefully this will change their minds. Okay, and we're done! I actually toned it down, I didn't want to get too laid. Telling the truth. What are you, a bitch? This is the best sex I've ever had, and all I did was watch a Splatoon trailer. What is this design? It makes no sense! You know what'll get people to want Super Nintendo games? Geometry. Diablo 2 Resurrected, great remake with tons of value here. But where are the rats? A Plague Tale Requiem, holy sh**. I never thought about what next gen could do for rat tech. That's fine to me. Of course, the typical anime style has been crowding up a lot of the Smash Brothers DLC slots, so it's totally fair to be like, all right, I don't want pointy hair key, man. I want the Raisin Brand sun, damn it. Doom's ass red cartridge, you know, the color of ass. Right? Oh my god, this version's so bad! It's impressive they got it on the Super Nintendo in general, but it's just not powerful enough for a game like this. Wolfenstein 3D works better, but it's heavily censored, which is kind of bizarre. Like, would you really be that surprised playing a game called Wolfenstein 3D? Hitler! But Nintendo is still working harder than a lot of other game companies. They put out more games than both of their competitors, even at their worst. At their worst. It's very easy to pick up and play. Now why it's on this thing is beyond me. Who wants to cock their head into a coffin on stilts to play a falling block puzzle game like this that has no worthwhile 3D effect whatsoever? Oh, the background is obviously in the background. Holy sh! You guys, 
Something crazy happened on the way here. I walked over water. You mean the frozen pond? I'm not saying I'm Jesus. I'm saying I'm Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's just say if your name's Satan, you don't want to know. So then maybe this cartridge is a bit more worthwhile. Three in one Super Mario Brothers slash Tetris slash Nintendo World Cup. There were three horsemen of the apocalypse. The Nintendo Switch is officially negative one year away from turning three. Four whole years of a device that can play Flip Wars. Let's celebrate. It's tradition for me. Every year around this time, I bitch. I have officially talked about my experiences with the Nintendo Switch annually for well over three days. So let's discuss everything Nintendo Switch related that occurred from March 2020 to February 2021. And when I say everything, I don't mean it. Listen, I'm not one to encourage popularity contests, but let's be honest here. The Wii sold over 100 million units. The GameCube, you wouldn't be caught dead f***ing a GameCube. The device was originally set to be similar in design to modern day VR headsets. I mean, head tracking, potentially a color screen. But the original and or best vision was consistently whittled down until we got this. All because Nintendo wanted something cheap and something that wouldn't get them sued. And they still got none of that. Video games are a business. The sooner I realized that, the smaller my family tree got. Pikmin 1 and Donkey Kong Jungle Beat were the first two games announced and most people were, ah, ah f***ing befuddled. You could already play these games on your Wii. What's the point of this? If backwards compatibility wasn't an option, sure. I can see why they do this, but it was. Looking back on comments, people just didn't get it. Like stimulus checks. All right, here's the plan. Say no more. I booked us an appointment with somebody that owns a curtain. How do you find these people? I just thought people took things with curtains more seriously. L look at showers. Ugh, not this plan again. I'm not gonna f a shower. No, turns out the curtain owner hosts a talk show. Those demographics overlap? Barely, but if we go on this show, we'll reach all cable TV users. So nobody. Hey, that's more nobody than yesterday. What's this talk show about? I was hoping Blue Borders, but no, I had to lie to get us on. Hi, I'm Hector and Friends. That's not the name of the show, that's just my name, damn it. And welcome back to Throats for Thought, where we get to chat with throat users from all over the world and county. Our 15th guest today have throats. Let's get them out here. You don't know if you have a throat? I forget, I never took anatomy. Remember, if things aren't going our way and we need attention, when in doubt, vomit. No, just lie and say it's your birthday. That'll get us a sympathy vote. It is my birthday. I didn't think too many of these multi-packs existed until I realized one of the most famous products of all time is a multi-pack. Vic? Two in one Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Con. You know, much like opium, you couldn't buy this at the store. So instead of pathetic, let's try for f***ing bizarre, my new store. Hey y'all, Scott here. I've decided to start playing game systems with names that perfectly describe me, so I'm gonna start playing the microvision. Of course, these don't take up any less space if you don't start to comprehend the power of one millimeter of cardboard. These are the full-size game boxes in here. The outer sleeve is just kind of neat. Fresh bonus, use it for food. Everybody misses the good old days. Just ask Nixon. Man, remember when things were worse? I miss that. You just always look at things from your youth with more affection. Honestly, for anybody saying that this new game is worse than this old game from back in the day because it lacks the magic that one had, is that because you played that game as a kid and you always have better memories of it? So no matter what this newer one does, it'll never be better in your eyes or is it actually because that new thing is of lower quality in some cases yes but you get some double packs of games this way and a handful of gamecube and xbox releases were like this as well but i want to deal in more space for my feet hey all scott here it's been four years since i felt joy the nintendo switch has worn me out so much during each and every one of its birth months i can't look at a game called snipper clips the same ever again i'm ruined why is the Nintendo Switch not exciting me anymore? Why is the way I am the way I am? Why does this have a bitter aftertaste? Well, that explains two things. Even the story was expanded. It's still not massive, but in comparison to the GameCube version, which had a single sentence explaining things, it's definitely slightly different. Jungle Beat on the GameCube story was, I don't know who Donkey Kong is, but he's pissed. I bought Donkey Kong Jr. Math. How do we know that? They're gonna break my legs. It was an investment. A Fun investment. Yeah, how fun is that 10 grand surgery you just had? Let me spend 200 in peace. You've gotta hand it to Nintendo. All the Donkey Kong Jr. fans are off the street now. Why do coke when you can do math? Hey y'all, Scott here. You know, the world's a much better place without things. Equity is the worst. I don't want the responsibilities that come with owning a door, but I sure do miss the perks of it. So I bought just a doorknob to put on my shelf. May not do much, but it reminds me what it's like to have purpose. Hey Hector, it's great to be on this show with a throat. Ever since I've gotten one, this has been a short-term goal of mine. Oh, who's this? Oh, he's my aide. Swallow. Thanks. Well, when I heard your story, I knew you had to be on the show. So, 
You have a throat? Does he ever? I won best throat at the state fair. I won biggest. Ever since I was 18, I was told my throat was my best feature. Okay, okay. Been notarized? What? I mean, any official throat user's been notarized. Hey, hey, if anybody has a throat here, it's Scott. I can tell you how many times I've been around this man and had a big- Damn, man! Stop using your throat! Listen, Hector, heck, may I call you hell? May I call you f I may not have my throat documents on hand. Would you settle for dental? There's a big blue border that's gonna eat you. Get off my show. No, we have to stop the blue border. It actively annoys everyone it affects. It has to end! Oh my god. My aunt just died. On my birthday? The Shark Tail and Trek 2 combo cartridge, for when you just can't pick who to shoot. Our story starts. Well, my story starts. In the tallest tower of Jerusalem. I was locked up for losing a race to a tortoise. But that's irrelevant. Some called me a liar. I called myself Jesus Christ. But you can call me Rex. It's short for Rex Mose. My mother, bless her heart was a virgin and a bear. That's right, a virgin bear. The first of its kind. Bet you've never seen one of those before, huh? Might be asking how a virgin bear gave birth to me. I wonder that too. A camel was there. Motion controls with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. They really did change a man. I'm running for senator. But also, the fact Nintendo just announced this game randomly on Twitter, terrifying. I live in fear now. Nintendo also updated the NES and SNES online apps with YES! RIGOR! Panel Day Pun on Switch, featuring online multiplayer via the SNES app. This is all I ever wanted! Tetris Attack is one of my favorite Super Nintendo games, but this is the localized version of Panel Day Pun in Japan. Instead of Yoshi's, we get small fairies. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I do prefer the Yoshi's, but this is still Tetris Attack gameplay. It's one of the most satisfying and addictive puzzle games out there. They couldn't do standard Tetris Attack due to the Tetris license. I'll take the fairies, damn it. Giants on 3DS retains the wireless portal, so thankfully that lives on in the form of a Toys to Life game on a portable system. Please think about that. These were strange times. Play this on a bus. Hey, Grandma Mario Power Tennis is already on Wii. You just have to get a GameCube controller and memory card in the original game, which isn't in print anymore, and you can only find used copies of it in some GameStop stores and on eBay. Oh, f she said I'm in. But after this was all done, they announced the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. They're re-releasing the first six Final Fantasy games on platforms that already have most of them. Square Enix fans, does this ever happen to you? Though any sound that comes through this speaker makes me feel like I'm drowning, and vice versa. Holy sh I thought I was playing Mario. If it wasn't for the wireframes, this obviously would have been a pretty impressive game for the time. Plus, there's nothing really wrong with the gameplay, but as it stands, I don't know, man. I just feel like my time is worth more than this. That's right, I'm moving up the totem pole. That's it. There were more new play control games, but only these three titles carry the name in North America. Like, you don't name Jaundice if only three people get it. This is on another level. It's about as epic as something like Red Dead Redemption 2. And you know what they say, you can't spell Red Dead Redemption 2 without Ride to Hell Retribution Red Dead Redemption 2. Premiere Edition, what, this includes the only two things you can use. What's an edition of Google Stadia about this? What could they possibly add or remove from this package to make it a different edition? I need more. I want people to look through my window and see a bunch of garbage and say, that looks like a fun house to break into. So I was shifting between two options. I was thinking my first accessory to nab would be a, a window, but this one had deal or no deal. That, of course, involved game and console showcases, basically what Nintendo had planned for the near future, and the 1994 show was all about virtual boys. Well, I misread that. Nintendo's then president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, stood proudly and unveiled the future of his company. Oh, you don't even know what it is! I love this system, though. Why does the controller have to be this way? Why can't the buttons be slightly angled? You know how your thumb is? And when they redesigned the controller, they made the button placement worse! I woke up and my thumbs were like this one day. I was so f***ing happy I could use this controller. Finally, I can play Grand Theft Auto portably! I never said I was happy with my life. The Virtual Boy came packed in this here box. It looks more magic eye picture than video game. Oh, it's a piece of sh**. The Nintendo DS headset! That's right. Nintendo basically refused to make a wireless headset for any game console except the DS. You could use this with Pokemon and Brain Age. You do math like a bitch. What shape like a brick and gives you hours of fun? It's a close second. The Nintendo Game Boy. That's right, it's a minor. Well, here's hoping Google Stadia will save the day. The Google Stadia controller. See, there's almost never anything unique about controllers made by companies outside of the main ones. Setting up Stadia is pretty simple and we're into the action pretty soon. You did get a couple of big new releases, but it's never been enough to make Stadia your go-to platform. So here's the thing about Google Stadia. I'm out of fluids. Physical video games are hard to make. I mean, I couldn't do it. This is the best I could do. Sometimes two things just go together. Seven, if you're open-minded. I'm finally ready to not get laid for the fifth time. Let's start off with vanilla Sonic and Knuckles, regardless of how incomplete the cartridge looks. 
Let's play Sonic and Knuckles. They don't do anything new. There's never any real announcement here. It's just, Just Dance is coming this year. Yeah, I know. I got the alert too. It feels like something that should have seen more success, but Nintendo realized kids hate moles. F*** you. Advertisers know they could just show you what the actual game is going to be like, or they could visualize what it will feel like. Garbage. Yes, let us delve into the world of Virtual Boy with the help of my patented 12 point skill and liquor. Each Virtual Boy game will be rated on a scale from 1 to 12. If you're asking why it goes up to 12, why are you asking about the validity of Virtual Boy review scores? 5G data speeds are here and they're gonna help us do esports and develop games and watch games online. I just care so much about gaming and game rooms and video games. What's next on the chopping block for video games? Well, corporations hate physical media. They want us all to move to digital, trying to make physical as less appealing as possible. I think they've been spitting in my games. There's some truth to why old people call anything that beeps a Game Boy. They worry me. Screen protectors? Yep, you need those, especially for the bottom screen. Uh, but I never really was a big screen protector guy. I don't know, I consider any scratches to have stories behind them. Uh, this was when I was a jackass. This was just when I was a fucking idiot. Tetris on the Game Boy continues to be one of the best versions of Tetris. I know what you may be saying. Scott, fucking Tetris is fucking Tetris. No oh, man, grass was way better back then. Here. Are you about three large footsteps away from the grave? Need to go time before you go kathunk in a casket? Might I suggest learning to talk about video games? What else would I do at my funeral? If it wasn't for talking about video games, I'd be happy. It takes a lot of no shame to do, so tell me, are you gonna learn how to talk about video games? Or are you gonna have integrity? Oh. Look at this. This is your life now. First step to talking about video games is not playing video games, and I cannot stress that enough. Why be a video game player when you can make silly comments about them? It's the same sentiment I have towards the working class. So, put the controller down and repeat after me. This game is f***ing bullshit! Video games are art, and have been one of the leading ways for artists to express themselves in recent memory. Discussing them is completely warranted, but if you're worried about losing the listener's attention during, make sure to spice things up by making funny random noises. <laughs> while discussing said video game, don't be afraid to not talk about video games while talking about video games for roughly 5-10 to 10 minutes while you act out some kind of a skit. Make sure it isn't funny. Some people call this a waste of time. I call it a filibuster. You gotta have your arch nemesis game, one you just can't escape from. Sure, you could just not play it, but then what would I have to do tomorrow? Hey, <laughs> it's been a while since that random noise. <laughs> Still there? Stand in front of your game collection to announce your resignation from society. It's a good thing to yell a lot. People won't take you seriously if you aren't screaming. I call this the Thanksgiving dinner approach. Now, it's really important to act like you're better than the game you're talking about. Uh, this can be achieved with a few- Who made this? And what is this game? But if you don't know what to say, you can always just start acting awkward and give yourself a double chin. So on to the next one, which is the one after the- that last one the next one is the stuff it's it's it, 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 it's the one swearing yes swearing is a genetic staple of the video game player you truly play video games if you can say fuck about them and if you aren't willing to say fuck uncensored get, get, get the fuck out of here duly noted 
You have to have an opinion on every game. The right opinion. You have to play every game, too. And like every game. Except for the bad ones! If you mess up one of these, play it off as a joke. Maybe make a funny quip about it and shake some yellow text around you to prove you're serious about being funny. Funny moment! And you can't just talk about video games. You gotta be funny. Especially if you're not funny. That way you can deflect criticisms by stating you shouldn't be taken seriously. If you need to be seen playing video games, hold the controller as close to your chin as possible and frown. Can you tell the controller's not even plugged in? Are you better than the person listening? No, but you have more Wii U games than them, so always remind them of that. You act accordingly to anything happening on screen, i.e. Scream. <laughs> and when you start talking games with people, make sure to not see them there. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. You have to do your research and get everything right about Mega Man 4. If you don't... Oh boy, you look like an idiot. <laughs> if someone pays you to talk about a video game, don't act like you already had integrity. Maybe you could gather various like-minded people together and pose a threat. Like, watch yourself or I'll start a podcast. Feel free to really express some emotions here. You're talking about video games for God's sake. I'd cry too if I were talking about Mario Party. If you're having a hard time crafting your own things to say about these games, never count out plagiarism. It's the myth anyways. The alphabet's not copyrighted, f***o. Of course, everybody has their own opinion and that's the way it should be. There's never going to be a right or wrong one to have on a video game. And if someone disagrees with you, you can always call them a f***o over email. The server still focuses on PlayStation 3 games, but there are a few PS2 and PS4 games available. With these, you can actually download to your system and play without streaming. It's a really great way to play games you're ashamed to outright purchase. I mean, half of the problems with playing Sonic Forces is owning it. But all of these games are available to stream. The PS3 games are only available to stream, so let's give that a try. Okay, pretty good. So here's the thing, my internet connection is okay. I think I'm officially the only person to not say it's either really good or really bad. It's like when the 3DS XL came out, every single review had to brag about how big their hands were. This system is so much better because I have really big hands. F me. I guess because 3D World had a ton of competition on release day. Not only was Nintendo releasing it alongside The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds on 3DS, not only was it launching the same day as the Xbox One and its launch games, but it was releasing the same day as Mario Party Island Tour. And the Xbox One never recovered. The whole family can share a Wii, but each member needs a DS for every finger. I personally owned a white Nintendo DS Lite and went out of my way to ensure I got the DSi. So I can at the very least confirm, while the DS family sold 150 million plus, subtract one from the user count. And two D-pads, which is the most unique thing about this. That's a lie. This conference had the theme of the Nintendo difference. What are you, a brand of paper towels? Now, according to Nintendo, the Nintendo difference is this. An absolute fetish for quality. Hey guy, what's your fetish? Uh, well, quality, quantity, the pursuit of happiness, ass and chips. Well, that's a great first impression. Not only am I eyes being gouged out, but I'm bored too. Look at the films and TV series Ubisoft is working on. The show Mythic Quest and the film Werewolves Within, based on the game I've never heard heard of. Apparently it's a VR multiplayer game from 2015. So that gets a movie, but not Rayman Advance. Super Mario Land 3 isn't a Mario Land game, much like how Super Mario World 2 isn't a Mario World game. They both take characters from the previous entries and give them their own spin-off series. They just had to give them a Mario subtitle to really sell it to ya. Sure. Nestor's bowling. No, oh, Nestor's funky bowling. Oh, I am so f***ing ready. Nestor's funky f bowling. Leave it to Nestor to give bowling the funk. That's why I waste 40 gigabytes downloading Neo when you can stream it. Because streaming's for bitches, all right? If you own any console from the past decade, you're pretty used to the idea of deleting files to make room for new games at this point. It doesn't matter anymore. Is saving space? Yeah, that's a feature for most game consoles now. Well, at least we have NVIDIA GeForce now. Finally, a cloud gaming service with a name for the masses. My mom asked me how the latency was on this. This is an NVIDIA Shield TV. It's a tiny box you buy to watch Netflix. Now, why would you buy this tiny box compared to this tiny box? If you're one of those that refuse to buy anything with less than three gigs of RAM. No. And that was the Square Enix Presents at E3. I didn't like it. What was the point of this? Nintendo 64 is a solid rebound. If by solid, you mean painful. Good thing I only see in five frames a second. Target enjoys the concept that they sell you a game console, which you keep buying games for at Target. At least that's what I've gathered. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Oh, this collector's edition comes with stones. I swear to God, if they're just eggs. Now I can. Why would you release a pointless box copy that has less value than a standard release? Oh wait, it comes with a pin. And no matter how good their best games are, they never really reach the heights of other companies in my opinion, and I don't really see any massive Ubisoft-only fans out there. I only saw two tattoos. It's a joke book. 
that's really morbid. With the casual appeal of systems like the DS and Wii, it became more apparent than ever how many non-gamers understood 2D gaming far more than 3D. 3D, you have to worry about a camera system, and it's like, fuck you, I already have a mortgage to deal with. A game like the original Super Mario Brothers, most players could deal with. Hell, many found it fun. Super Mario 64, join the occult, dad. And the game cartridge itself is an infrared sensor. It actually concerned me when I saw it. I thought it was a bootleg since the cartridge is so much darker than usual. I never knew this is what the black market was like. Hey all, Scott here. <laughs> I need a bath. Ubisoft press conferences are like sponges. Why would you watch it? I'm a Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 nut. I know what I'm talking about here. This is an incredibly fast-paced game that needs split-second reactions, and when it gets towards the end of a run, I found it painfully difficult to make turns while streaming. Well, that's PlayStation now. It can't play Pac-Man. Nobody else with technology from 1840 can. I think my biggest issue with PlayStation now, though, is that it's still pretty clunky. Now it's described as games on demand. Give demand a second. It's not that bad, but PS4 games take a while to load. Playing a game boots you out of the PS Now app and it appears on your home screen like you bought it. In fact, for every single game I played, I get an email thanking me for my purchase. It thinks I purchased all of these games. They always say zero dollars. Sony, give it up, I'm not replying. So for $5.99, Eh, it's okay. When you're in the $6 territory, there's not a ton you can do to argue against its value. And what were you gonna spend those $6 on? Xevious? Oh, he's gotta budget things out. Come to think of it, the Nintendo 3DS could have had a Pokemon Snap, using Fatal Frame as another example. It's always my best excuse. So we gotta avoid those and... Whatever the f*** that was. Oh man, I ran into a car which fades us to black and sends me back a little bigger. I'm sorry! Stalker 2. Son of a bitch. Oh my god, look at all these things. These are some huge names. You know what? I'm gonna try No Man's Sky. But first, I have to join GeForce Now and create an account. All right, so I create an account off screen and log in here. Okay, I need a gamepad and NVIDIA is f***ing terrified at my internet connection and I also have to perform a system update. No worries, no worries. Let's do that and try connecting an Xbox controller to the Shield TV for 35 minutes. Boom, found it. Can control the entire Shield TV with an Xbox controller. This is the happiest I've been in 35 minutes. Hey, let's try something like Fortnite. That game being streamable is a match made in heaven. It's incredibly popular and having it streamed and playable on any device, that's a no-brainer. Let's try again. Let's try again harder. Okay, I might have been logged out after updating. Let me log back into my GeForce Now account. Back to the game selection. You know what? Rocket League. That's a fun game. I have my gamepad. I'm logged in. Let's do it. <sighs> Okay, so all these games aren't available on GeForce Now like PlayStation Now. GeForce is allowing me to play my Steam library or Epic Games library or whatever on my Shield TV or other devices using cloud technology. So these are basically games on Steam that support GeForce Now. So you log into GeForce Now, then into your Steam account, and you can then stream games that you own on Steam that support GeForce Now. Okay, well for Rocket League, it looks like I need an Epic Games account. Thankfully, I can sign up via the Shield TV using my Xbox controller to control the mouse. I sign up for the account and get a verification code in my inbox. I try to enter it. The screen is frozen, so I try to sign up for an Epic Games account on my laptop, add Rocket League to my library on my laptop, then sign into the account on the Shield TV to access it. I sign in, play Spot the Boat. And that's GeForce Now. Uh, keep in mind, I use Apple products, so I'm a fucking idiot. Sunshine was a bit more love it or hate it for some. Wow, you hate water? Then what, you hate 70% of your body? Yeah. yeah, okay, look up the most expensive and difficult to make movies of all time. Chances are, they're the same price to watch as the poltergeist of Borley Forest. I guess movies may be a weird comparison. I think a comparison people don't make enough are actual games. With 3D games, there's more that can go wrong. Well, I'm done with Sonic. You know, I put off years of colonoscopies just due to my business surrounding playing all these games, but now I'm free. So tell your family's proctologist to clear their schedule. 12 years from now. A ton of mobile games are detailed because the E3 audience loves it. Square, my fingers are too dirty to play mobile games. Well, I didn't ever lose the stylus. I definitely lost this little piece as it was completely unnecessary. It didn't do anything except make you feel better about yourself. Like what if people see me on the train? M Metroid 5? Oh my God, a new 2D Metroid. This looks so clean. What the f And if you try to play with the guitar grip on the DSi or DSi XL, reality sets in. Various eye havers are reporting a phenomena where a blue border is obstructing their view. Nobody knows why, but it seems that the entire state of Ohio is affected. 
whoa, 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 whoa. Other states would contact Ohio to help, but it seems that they would have to be convinced that Ohio is real first. Oh my god, you know what this means? It's not Michigan! Just like Excite Bike, this is in widescreen as well, though being a vertical shooter, there's not a ton you could do to make the game widescreen while also perfectly recreating it. Like, okay, if Zevius is in widescreen now, well, there's gonna be no enemies on the sides of the screen, and if you put enemies on the sides, this isn't my Xevious! Here it is, Super Mario 3D World. This title is horrible! It's bad enough the logo is an exact copy of 3D Lands, but with a cattail photoshopped on, but I've heard so many people get this name wrong, getting it confused with 3D Land in the original Mario World. It makes me so angry. There's Knuckles' hard mode, Sonic is normal, and Tails is easy. So why can't I find him? Easy to use, easier to lose. If yeah, Sonic and Knuckles on its own is just like Sonic 3. Wait one second just like Sonic 3. So how do you convey what 3D can do to enhance your gaming experience? You make good games that use it properly, or you re-release Excitebike. Wow, I wonder what Nintendo will do. Okay, so Jake knows that him and Mikey's dad has a past and this gang wants to kill any member of his family. So why does Mikey keep wearing the damn jacket? That made him the target of these people. It's a jacket that has insignia that can easily be identified as their father's, which makes it a danger to wear around these people. Guess who gets their neck slit? So Mikey's dead. Rats. And if you didn't realize that, here's an instant replay in slow motion. Jake gets really upset, but the gang doesn't kill him for some reason, even though Mikey said Toledo Conway was both of their fathers. Toledo, Ohio. Everybody's your dad here. Doesn't matter that much, though, because the game is piss easy. I wish I didn't have to use that adjective, but hey, it just shows they gotta make urination harder. That's just more incentive to buy more figures to have more and more chances to get through the stages. They're not forcing you to do it, but of course that's how an adult sees it. I'm sure kids thought they needed Ghost Roaster, their life depended on it. We all see the gameplay like this, the kids see it like this. Back then I even tried to get the cashier to card me while buying it. I am feeling pretty underage today. I moved the DS, I moved Tony Hawk in the game. It works okay, but at the end of the day, it just makes you want a real voodoo doll. Super Mario 3D World kicks things off with a Greek tragedy. The king's all here during fireworks and they notice a pipe! clear pipe. This isn't the Mario I know. They fix it and out pops a Sprixy princess, a fairy that is begging for help. Bowser captured the other ones. This is a direct reference to those 2D art pieces shown before each world in Super Mario 3D Land, but this is the only time it ever happens in this game, which is just kind of strange. It is I, a picky bitch. Speaking of Pokemon, here we have Learn With Pokemon. No! You got all this trouble to make up for the lack of a stick, which just makes me ask, why didn't you just add a stick? I refuse to take baths, I instead bathe in body spray. Hey y'all, Scott here. So, it's about that time. Let's have... The talk. Let's talk about birds, bees, hell, even sex. I've gone across the country teaching the proper education professionally, and I've learned it all from this here book. So let's start with chapter one, Luigi's Mansion. I gotta make some calls. It's finally that time of the year. Here we have a cleaning kit. This helps us get dust and grime out of both cartridge slots. Me personally, I'm okay. I have a tub. I remember bringing my Game Boy Advance to kindergarten, to which most 80 year olds would say, that makes me feel old. Even if they didn't have anything to show, Nintendo made it clear that a new 3D Mario done by the Galaxy and 3D Land team was in development for Wii U and would be shown and playable at E3 2013. My God, this game could be called anything. Super Mario Universe, Super Mario Universe again? The main idea I saw thrown around was a sequel to the Galaxy series, subtitled Universe, playing off the Wii U name because honestly, there weren't a ton of other options. Speculation ran wild up until E3 that June. Expectations were high and my virginity was nearing tornado siren levels. The E3 2013 Nintendo Direct started and shortly after Iwata told us to take a look. Yes! No! A dot matrix display, what does that mean? It means let's get the hell out of here. But it didn't matter because we got <laughs> Christ, Metroid Prime Federation Force, Mario Party the Top 100, Triforce Heroes, Mario Sports Superstars, Pokemon Rumble Blast, Yoshi's New Island, Paper Mario Sticker Star, Hey, Pikmin! There's the Nintendo Switch, guys. Oh my god, isn't Super Mario and R so quirky and unique? Nintendo, who is running your eShop now? Oh, great, a controller for rats. Bravely default to, is that a sentence? Demon X Machina, this is still medically the only game with the 60 or above on Metacritic to have given me pink eye. Paper Mario the Origami King. F it. 
Oh, but we skipped over an important console here. The Sega Master System. It's so charmingly pathetic. <gasps> what the f*** is this? Who asked for this? Why do I have to look between the TV and gamepad to change system settings? Nintendo TV? Ha <laughs> f*** you. Yeah, why not publish Devil's Third Nintendo? The Wii U microphone exists. There's a goddamn mic on the gamepad. Why are these two cases black? Why is this one cream color? Why does this one not have the blue ridge? Why remake Wii Sports? Why swap between controllers so much? Why in Super Mario 3D World's multiplayer does this big blue border appear? Everything Nintendo's done, I have something to bitch about! Why is this wet? Why does this repel virginity? And again, in Mario 3D World, why in multiplayer does this big blue border appear? I get that it's supposed to tell you that the players are too far apart, but it comes out of nowhere, it sometimes doesn't leave, and it's just always there, mocking me, just like every shape I've ever met. Where does this blue border get off? Wait. That feels like... Go away! I hate shapes! Is this how it's always been? Me. I know a lot of me. Overall, not a bad launch lineup. Two of the most iconic games on the entire platform, one of them packed in, a fun breakout game, and two sports titles if you want to get laid. I'm sick of living in the dark about this. I'm gonna go into the credits and find who to harass. I'll give a reek of this, they're hard to threaten. I'm open to an all-digital future. I mean, I prefer how things are now with physical games, but I'm not gonna resist it. I've accepted that this is how the future is looking. And cloud gaming has a ton of potential as a supplement to regular gaming, because I will be damned if my next game console is a skin tag. The original Game Boy model wasn't the hottest looker though. This thing looks like it would just taste awful. After a two minute long driving section that was time for some reason, we're now off our motorcycle and cornered by everybody. What led to this? Oh man, Jake does the sick move, watch. Don't you move now, Cherry Pie. Did you see it? Cause you sure didn't hear it. It makes the handheld playable at night. That's pretty much all it does. You know, I was hoping it was gonna give me advice. I'll meet up with the guys and we'll be right over. Listen, man, I know we're playing Mario Party, but take off the hat. We're going to a funeral. I did not know we were playing Mario Party. By the way, I thought it'd be good for us to loosen up a bit beforehand. The last funeral I went to, I fucking cried. Wow, what? Did somebody die or something? No. God, that funeral bombed. <laughs> well, we'll just have to make sure this is the best funeral ever. Yeah, we gotta make good impressions. Way ahead of ya. You sure about that? Maybe just a nice smile will do. Hey, I wasn't finished yet. Hey, guys. I don't know if I can do this. Do we really want to support the death industry? It's too big to stop. I say just embrace it. Forget about everything and enjoy yourself. Well, the last one we went to together didn't live up to the hype. Yeah, the corpse is okay. Everything else is just kind of mediocre. I, it's just, it, it's all too much, you know? I can't stand to see somebody lifeless again. I just can't emotionally handle it. Sounds like you need to learn apathy. Oh, come on, I wasn't expecting to mourn today. So here's my Bass Pro Shop haul. Uh, first up, I bought bear spray. Uh, helps get a bear away from ya. Or you could just shoot it. Fruit roll-up trays, uh, I love the candy. Ground meat freezer bags. Uh, bear bell, uh, attached to belt or pack when hiking, camping, or fishing in bear country. I guess it makes it easier for a bear to find you. Hey all, Scott here. I have to make a decision. My life depends on it. What do I take? 
Well, this one does have knuckles. The game does struggle with how big and chunky the sprites are. I mean, the original Mario Land, I was worried the sprites were my spittle on the screen. Most 3D games had a hearty dose of quotation marks involved. They definitely were more 3D than not, but too many 2D elements were involved to truly make them feel like there's no going back from this. Sonic 3D Blast. Uh... Yeah, okay. Well, let's take a breather in the form of E3 2001 memorabilia. These Activision 02 hats were given out. Activision 02 was a sub-brand they used for their sports games. Because sports require oxygen! But it's a great title in its own right and deserves more recognition. It was the debut of Wario. I can't say that about myself. Even if you preferred how 64 and Sunshine worked, Galaxy was so damn cool. Like, I'm wearing overalls in space. Go f yourself. Mole Mania debuted on the Game Boy, that's something you hear every day. We get it. So many parallels between this and Mario 3D Land. The box design, the game disc and card follow the same format. Even the manual takes design cues from 3D Land. Except the spine, that takes cues from Mario Galaxy 2. I wish my spine did. All of his games were simple, easy to pick up, and worked on the system well. Putting him in a pinball game, a breakout clone, a puzzle game, it all made sense. Kirby fits everywhere, put him in court, I don't care. A series that consistently were 2D only, it skipped main entries on consoles during this time. The classic Mega Man, Kirby, Yoshi, and when they wanted to do something like a new Mega Man X game, Ever try to play a 3D game with a Wii Remote on its side? Ever kill a ghost? They know how people act, and it just makes the whole experience that much more fun and hilarious that everybody's fighting over a crown that amounts to nothing. They should write a book about war. The first multiplayer 3D Mario adventure, because Galaxy 1 and 2 only gave birth to single and a half player. Oh wow, you're pregnant with twins? kind of. Next 3D Classics release came to Japan on July 13th and everywhere else on August 18th. That being 3D Classics, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Urban Champion is an old school black box NES game, meaning it saw Reagan. Of course, I don't think the casual audience really understood that. I think this and this both look the exact same to them. They don't really see the value in a multiplayer Mario in a 3D space compared to a 2D one, like this commercial sells it. But for plastic gropers like us, this is easily the best multiplayer Mario platformer. 3D, making old things new yeah. again. Get the f**k off me! Shut up, old man. No! Hey y'all, Scott here. You ever stare in front of the mirror and practice what you're about to say to somebody? Hey, you know what they say, go f yourself. Nintendo 3DS was released in early 2011 featuring a glasses-free 3D display. I can't see anything. All right, well, let me reload and try again. Well, we find Orson's place, steal his bike, he calls the cops, so now we have a driving segment. <laughs> Looks like I have to make this jump. We're nine hours in. What about taking a popular mobile game and putting it on a console? Whoever thought of that should get a Nobel Prize. In hell. $250? I can get surgery for that price. I never said it was quality. I know exactly how badasses operate. Watch, I can draw blood with a plastic knife. <laughs> okay, so I got cut with a plastic knife, though I drew blood with a plastic knife. Am I a badass or a pussy? Yeah, they pretty much recreated the entire game with 3D models. Why we not step foot on Mars? Because we wasted our time doing sh like this. I thought this was an entirely new cut the rope game made specifically for the 3DS. Triple Treat is like Angry Birds Trilogy. Three cut the rope mobile games converted to a video game system. In this case, the 3DS. The back screenshots have these 3D models of Omnom and I thought like, okay, that must be a new bonus side game or something. Well, they still use 3D graphics, but kept the playing field 2D. You can only go left, right, up, or down, which created the term 2.5D. What's half a Z? It's a 2D game with 3D graphics or a 3D game played from a 2D perspective, dead. Pay attention. So, okay, that makes sense why it would be chosen for the 3D treatment, but when you only have six games to do this with and you chose a game nobody's heard of that already had very similar gameplay to another game you already remade, with this being one of only two games in this lineup that Nintendo didn't develop, so they had to go out of their way to license out. I'll stop talking on Twin B. Morning. Welcome to the fun side of my brain, filled with an urge to collect video games and an obscene amount of Nintendo knowledge. I call it my wild side, doctors call it a tumor. I just like consistency, knowing these things will always be here, organized. 
alphabetically? This is my thing. Thank you. It used to be abstinence, but this works more. Everybody should get into this kind of stuff. We'd all have the same hobby. That way it'll be even more confusing why nobody would talk to me. Many consider this a waste of time, so that I say, well, so is living. Things could be worse. Sure, stupid Nintendo games may be my only true hobby, but at least I'm not politically aware. I mean, there is no true end in sight here. I did the math, and there are a lot of stupid Nintendo games. There's no excuse now. Everybody should have no life. Over 15,000 games to try to discuss in later shelf. The consistency alphabetically and player's choice can go to hell. The size and shape of discs and cards for an hour or so I'll talk. I'd swipe right on them till both my thumbs are stems Cause every day's Fat Tuesday in my eyes This world doesn't give my passion They all think we play motions of sin But it's their loss for they got no spare time to waste This is something I know we should all embrace I'm on a quest to address all the requests Please understand this kind of stuff is virgin genetic cachet We have been blessed, no time to rest I've got a lot to undress You don't need sex, this is better anyways It's stupid Nintendo games It may be hard to find a place to start, so might I suggest? Not that. Might I suggest a geist to start things out Then moving on to pack and roll Lost in Blue and Tetris 2 Or whatever's left at Kohl's Nigel Mansell plus Clubhouse Games Name a better pair to taste If you said Madden 09 and Skin Get the fuck out of my face Tell me that you understand As a vegan, this fits my diet plan they make for great target track. As long as I'm not having sex. You think one of these was fucking gex? I shouldn't dwell. I've got no sex to sell. Take them all and distribute them and you're spread and we play. It's a swell, these extra copies extra ban you from hell. I've got a fling smash to play every single day. Stupid Nintendo games. I might be slightly obsessed How oh, could I not be? Have you seen these? I've got no shame to blame If you're down and feeling blue When life crops in around you There's a solution for all that pollution to loom your brain Stupid Nintendo games Who wants to compare pens? You're gonna have mega fans say how if you're not playing the original, you're just not playing Kid Icarus. You truly haven't lived until you've been shot in the face. Now, with a cartridge port on top, you may be asking, Scott, what are you gonna do? Check it. Where am I? You can just keep kicking a guy until they eventually die. Other enemies around will practically never do anything to you, and if they will, it's always a telegraphed attack where you hit the Y button when that appears. Who knew the kick was mightier than the sword? Oh, 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 oh. It's something I'm surprised more games didn't do. Like, come on, you put all this work into a lock-on logo. At least license it out to something, like, like guns. The problem is, I only do what Space Invaders does. My diet is beyond limited. Lucky for the bath fan inside of me, I have no excuse. See, marketers have discovered there's no Venn diagram between bath fans and gamers. It's just a circle. I'll give the game this. The title screen is much better than Sonic 3's. Every time that one started out, I flinched. So we get to choose between two characters. I hope one of them's Jimmy Buffett. Best of two. No, I've given you more than enough chances. One. And you weren't willing to be my bitch. I wasn't gonna make an exception for you. You never paid your bills and as a bank, we have to treat everybody the same. It's our sworn duty to f everyone over. Come on, give me a break. Come on, I saved your wife from getting shot. She's a convicted serial killer. How can you expect me to get out of debt? I can't be employed. I'm unemployed! You act like it's a religion. More or less a kink. Listen, you pay us back by tomorrow, you can have your stuff back. How about you take this and we call it even? I don't want your bribe. I'll give you a five to want it. Speaking of the opening cutscene, I'm surprised I haven't asked the only question I ever tend to ask during Sonic games. What's happening?! Chase down Caesar, kill him by gouging his eyes out, tell him to stay cool. Stay cool. I'm done! I'm done! Big fucking hands. Next up is Flying Battery Zone, a stage on a blimp. Thank you. Okay, so I really like this design, but it just reminds me of the people who wear NES t-shirts. 
I'm awkward. Act two is a piece of garbage. It's like a sort of labyrinth where everything looks the same and you fuck up one jump and bam, I'm 20 miles down with no hopes of getting out. And on top of that, there's ghosts. Well, that just makes everything worse. Damn it. Stop the reading my mind. It's like they know what I want. Nintendo, what things do I want next? I was not expecting them to get that right. Got the rope launched on the Nintendo DSi shop channel in September of 2011. I should know, I bought it back then. I think you could all tell. Technically, you can use it on your body and face as well, so it is multi-purpose. I think a better term for it is Xbox skin jelly. I assume the audience for this is people who have never bathed before, but love Xbox. And according to my research, I just can't see them existing. Yeah, Retribution was the only Ride to Hell game that I actually released, which means it's on the same level as Applebee's and Chicken Fingers. It exists. You know, for its localization, they really changed things up and removed an E. We gotta bring this over to America. What do we change about this image? Too many letters! You could argue 4D gaming is something like virtual reality, but I will categorize 4D like movies and theme park rides do. If my chair moves, that's the fourth dimension. Maybe someday we'll get a true fourth dimension in gaming, but for now we gotta settle for Frogger 3D being the farthest we can go. Heading to the hotel, this girl's getting into a fight with this guy, so I kick the blood out of him and it cuts immediately to... See, with the speedruns of Ritel Retribution, even though skipping the sex cutscenes is 100% beneficial, nobody does it. Well, immediately afterwards, we're in Sky Sanctuary Zone, another one-act deal. This one, pretty good. All right, we pissed the bed with Sandopolis, shit in a car with Lava Reef, and fuck my dinner with Hidden Palace. This one is challenging, but really fun. Dozens of articles claim that the PSP was going to win the war against the Nintendo DS, because by God, why wouldn't it? You got Spider-Man 2 at the launch, and this ain't no phony baloney Game Boy Advance or Nintendo DS version. Nah, this is gonna be the PS2 X Xbox and GameCube Spider-Man 2 on the go. Do you have no shame? So bring in Amazon. They're just as bad as Google. They have a lot of money and nobody to love. I think overall, 2001 may have been the biggest year for video games of all time. God, Scott, stop sucking the year off. Nibbles just got done serving in Vietnam. I think there's only so much deducing I can do here. The year, the army base, the only thing missing is seeing straight up the professional spelling of Nam, comma, Viet. All right, guys, we're going to space. Remember your coats. I'll just pick one up on the way there. Terry Lessler, you'll be our treasurer. Geriatrics HR, Jeb Jeb Customer Support Representative, Rex Mose Moral Support Representative, Target Employee, Catering. Good thing I didn't pack clothes. Yeah, I'd like to file a complaint. Ready for liftoff, cramming good luck charm down pants, setting Tinder radius for 50 miles and beyond. Hello, please? Yeah. Yeah, that's space. God, that's a lot of f***ing space. After Smash, we get a look at what's called the next in the Mario series. Ladies and gentlemen, the next in the Mario series. You ever play any of these Atari compilations when they're in crystal clear HD and it just makes you realize how stupid you feel while playing these games? Guess what I'm playing with an Xbox controller. Why, yes, I'm fucking stupid. What is like Nintendo is to show us something we can't have. Both got pretty poor reviews, though surprisingly the Wii one did a bit better. I saw this on a few worst of 2009 lists for the Wii specifically, which made it hard for my mom to buy me the game. I don't know, GameSpot gave it a three. Uh, cancellation was all but confirmed, but four years later, there was life. We'll send you a care package to help you get back on your feet, but until then, sir, this is a Domino's. I thought you said this was a bank. Yeah. A night bank. Nintendo announced Pikmin as their next Pokemon in the sense that it may not make sense now, but just you wait. Give it some time. So we have to traverse this church while King Dick constantly throws dynamite and his men shoot at me. So you want to stay behind cover, but staying behind cover isn't going to work if dynamite is being thrown in your direction. My point is life f***ing stinks. It's fine. I can go without talking about video games. I can just play them and everybody's happy. Wario. But who gives a shit when the PS1 LCD screen is announced? I think it says right here. This was a big deal, and with its insane critical and commercial success, it showcased that Dead Series could have more life than initially thought. Rock Band 4. <gasps> Ow, my face! I used that at Cemetery! Oh my god, I'm sorry! Hey, watch it. I may be a Nintendo... We'll say fan. Yes, World Snooker Championship. Is that a slur? Pop on a huck hat? 
I think they forgot a Y. And finally show off my synthetic raccoon urine. Of course, you may say, Jesus, Scott, really? Synthetic raccoon piss? And to that I say, don't worry. The Fox one is real. You can consistently change and add filters and change how the game looks with emulation. Uh, some people like the pixels all smoothed out. Some things like the pixels all smoothed out. We have a heart to heart with Mikey wearing a Toledo jacket. Well, this game hits home for me already. Toledo, Ohio, stay a while. There's a Burger King down the road. I, for one, am sort of critical of Nintendo's over-reliance on nostalgia sometimes, but I'm their target demographic for this because no matter what they do, if it's 8-bit, I don't think, I just clap. And that wasn't all. Nintendo also released the Kappa's Trail, Crash Course Domo, Hard Hat Domo, Pro Putt Domo, Rock and Roll Domo, White Water Domo, Face Pilot, Flame Tail, Link and Launch, Looks Lina, Metal Torrent, Number Battle, Picture Book Games, Pinball Pulse, Snap Dots, Spado, Starship Patrol, Touch Solitaire, Trajectile, Escape. Who the f are these guys? Let's not be hasty with criticism though, like any of us spent a day in Spado shoes. Toledo, Ohio, don't get killed here. Sony entered a deal with Squaresoft to make the Final Fantasy series exclusive to PlayStation systems for a while there. Uh, did this benefit the consumers? That was a great way to measure crotches. I have a PlayStation 2. I can play Final Fantasy 10. Good for you. Keep it up. Motorcycle section, this time with combat. Hit the button. I'm a badass. I'm a badass. I'm a badass. Hey, y'all. Scott here. I've been working on my impression of Nintendo DSiWare. Watch. Why the f*** was I born? Buying the Nintendo DSi was my first instance of being an idiot. Oh, made it that far. I will give it to him. It's designed pretty similarly to the original, but this one is so much more flimsy. Like, if I crack it over my knee... Like, what the f***? So we get our info out of this guy on where Anvil is before brutally making his neck gush blood. It happens, ever drink a glass of nails? What, what was that? Something! Oh, we got a leak here. I f***ing hate circles! All right, listen, I'm your moral support rep, so this means a lot coming from me. We're f***ed. Listen, if we die, please tell me. Was it hey y'all or hey y'all? Hey guys, I made us Baconators. That's a Whopper! Ugh! Please f up more. Oh, who shot us? My money's on the working class. Uh, 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 uh. No. It can't be. My mortal enemy! Cover athlete of Madden 09! Brett! Oh, Scott. You'll pay for this. Farf! Why are you doing this? That's, the, first of all, it's none of your business. For whatever reason, you despise Madden 09, so it looks like I'll have to deal with you myself. You can't kill us, it's illegal! Hey, anything's fair game in space, and this round was planning to jaywalk. Let's get the hell out of here! We can't escape him! He just called Cutter Sport, he's pissed! Oh God, he's docking. The troops are boarding the ship. Holy sh! It's the Green Bay Packers. Thus, both FIFA and Mighty are going for less than ten dollars brand new these days. Though Angry Birds Star Wars, we got a seven cent discount. So out of these three, you're either getting fucked over, fucked over, or fucked over. What the hell are you looking? Don't f with the Sons of Anarchy fan. So they cobbled together a party game, which frankly has no right being on a portable. This is just miserable. This was just a way to get another game called Disney Infinity on the 3DS in a short period of time. Outside of that, this game has no business existing. Well, what more could you possibly ask for? A duck? That one hit the spot. Here. One year later, in 2014, Disney Infinity 2.0 released. F*** you! We're in the hideout, it's completely silent until I open this garage door. Oh, here it is, our first mass murder! Wario's in this? I'll take Peach, we're both roughly four inches from Wario. Yeah, well, I'll take Luigi. We are going to a funeral after all. Hey, uh, what's, what's going on in the corner over there? The fictional ape? Eh. Yeah. Alright, how many turns do we want to do? 20, 35, 50? Can we do 47? I've got work tomorrow. I can do 48, I got time, not that much. We'll do 20, we'll have time to think about what we just witnessed. 
You really think you can shoot a ghost? Ow! You fool. That was just a ghost wound. We get some background in the form of a credit scroll with a static image in the background, but it does quite a lot to make me realize these are real beings. Like, think about this. These people have social security numbers. I like these ports because they give me a glimpse as to what could have almost been. Game Boy games downloadable on the DSi? <laughs> Hell, throw Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket, Atari Lynx games in there. And don't tell me the DSi couldn't run them. We're talking Game Boy games, not... I don't know, prehistoric man or anything. Oh, you son of a bitch! I would've loved to see more classic content on the shop rather than cut down versions of pre-existing DS software. It's just, what would you rather want? Fantasy Star Zero Mini, a stripped version of an RPG? I don't even know how you do that. Or Dirty Larry. Gosh, that's tough. Many players have become well-versed in these methods to get more money, so it's up to these companies to figure out ways to mask their money-hungry tactics. Nah, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm just making eggs. Actually, can you do me a different kind of favor? Jerry, I'm Jesus Christ, not a charity. Come on, just tell me who you got for Secret Santa. Ooh, I would, but the 11th commandment just went into effect. It's a cheap blow to competition when these companies could be spending time actually developing amazing exclusive games, but no, let's pay Ubisoft to spit in our game. Well, that's at least 60 minutes of fun right there. Frogger Returns, all right, all right, all right. I've come across this game numerous times on the Wii Shop channel and the PlayStation 3, and then they made a DSi version? Why is it Frogger Returns? When did he leave? This motherfucker couldn't be born in a manger even if he tried. But I shouldn't say that, because my mother was never fucked. Me and this bully never got along, but I sure tried. I told him I was Jesus. What the f just happened? Hey, I agree the Cheetos, but that's not going to help your marketability. With the right demographics, it might. Well, if I can't market my business here, I'm gonna market you. I'm gonna make you the killer app of this funeral. Go up to those people, tell them something. It doesn't even have to be true. Just make them like you. Yeah, he was a great man. I can't believe he died. Yeah, I got some big projects to work myself. Oh, do tell. Yeah, I've been getting drunk as shit watching nothing but Porky Pig cartoons lately. And I gotta say, I get the hype. Did he say f**k y'all or f**k all? It resurrects something else and it might help us! I, I can't go again five minutes after a mission. Go to his cult practice tonight. Dinner's in 30 minutes. Learn his ways and then we'll have two people who don't know what the f they're doing. always happens at night. We wouldn't be at this mess if it wasn't for that damn moon! So it turns out, uh, we can't add all the moon. Like, did Nintendo actually make anything for this? Well, that's where Mario vs. Donkey Kong Minis March Again walks in. Get out. Let's just download it and oh my god! This is the image most see before death. Some may toss the term missed opportunity around. I prefer the term Pokemon Rumble U. This is Nintendo we're talking about, okay? If they have the opportunity to monetize Pokemon to take advantage of children, well, first they cheat you in the face and then they do that. I remember a specific game I bought at Dollar General when I was a kid. Nicktoons Winner's Cup Racing for the PC. Scott, you're so f***ing cool. Tell us more. So we meet up with Dr. Blotter. He talks, I didn't listen. Wow, he is a real doctor. It's the exact same as Mario Clock, but with an Animal Crossing skin. And the same can be said about Animal Crossing Calculator, but these both aren't nearly as compelling as the Mario variants. And that's saying something, they're f***ing clocks. Oh man, Jake's getting mad. There's one thing I hate more than the Green Bay Packers. It's sex. Honestly, deep down, I've always felt like I've been a Wendy's employee. Well, I've always been a vegan. I haven't. Is that a gun? No. It's Gex.
on, there's another sex scene, and it's the exact same as the first one! Sonic Adventure. Alright, kill that guy, and... Wait, this isn't real? Dollar stores give you the illusion of a deal when half the time the prices are more expensive there than other places. You just don't notice because you're distracted by the fact you're in a dollar store. Holy f look at the price in that milk. But one thing I always remember seeing at Dollar General was the At Games consoles for only $40. This is the Dollar General exclusive edition with baseball included. I know, right? And because they're in blind bags, you're gonna be stuck with extras, which is just irritating. This game is already ass expensive expensive as ass. You're already clogging everybody's living room with these figures, so now you're gonna do blind bags of objects that have no reason to be sold separately? My daughter choked to death on power discs, and to make it worse, they were doubles. Right when Meat Hook was about to tell Jake why they're out to kill his family, Greasy Steve stabs him and runs away. Greasy Steve, what's next? Dr. Bowel? So allow me to offer you Skylanders figures to purchase separately for only $7.89 per character. And to have access to all that Skylanders has to offer, you can have it all for the price of $225. Okay, well, maybe there's something to this game. Maybe each character unlocks loads of content if this is worth $225. Skylanders is a game where you move forward and beat up enemies. I'll let you sharpen my pencils for 50 bucks less. Save stage. You can save and resume wherever you want in the game. You don't have to wait for a moment in the title itself. It's a system-wide feature. To save in the emulator holds your place and you can pick up exactly where you left off. And some consider this cheating. I consider it an open relationship. I think the rush alone was more than worth the asking price. That's why people love Adderall! Bundling Kung Fu Panda and Lego Indiana Jones together with an Xbox 360. I feel like Microsoft had to dig hard to find a game without blood and gore to market the Xbox 360 to kids, and when they found it, there better not be a damn gun inside that panda. Everybody had one because there wasn't much bad press around it. Outside of Scrabble using the word fucker. Damn, our guerrilla marketing tactics aren't working. The price was affordable to many, so why did the PlayStation 1 outsell it? I think that fact alone makes Nintendo hate the alphabet. I think this was a standout release. You would definitely get your money's worth out of this game. Until two years later when Nintendo re-released it on Wii's Virtual Console for $5. The miners don't like me, so I have to beat them up. Then I run into the mines with my hard hat on. Damn, it's good to be a biker. So I get through that and get to this miner. And of age miner. This series is to Call of Duty what asphalt is to Need for Speed. Who the hell likes this series? They're to put your damn hands down. Bathtub could be more comfortable. Could use some hay. As a kid, the true success of some products normally doesn't dawn upon you. NASDAQ was only my 47th word. Yeah, various hardcore gaming products for the aspiring gamer. Who the hell wants to be a gamer? D just do it. That's like saying, oh, I want to be unemployed. Avoid contact with eyes. What's your stance on lips? The Super Nintendo Entertainment System sold just over 49 million units. What a little bitch. But as nice as I'm willing to be about this game, let's be fair. This game, as its standalone Game Boy Advance release, f that. <laughs> The PSP, they use the spinning disk drive, which, good luck playing that on a horse. Bro, I've been getting so goddamn religious lately. Oh, what religion? The real one. Target. I've been getting really invested in the culture of my religion lately, but I, I, the word culture kind of rhymes with vulture, so I don't really like it. I've just been calling it a cult. The Xbox 360 is well known as the winner of the battle between it and the PlayStation 3. Who did it pay off? F it. Tired of you Madden 08 fans. I'm more of a Madden 9 guy, I swear! Far, all we're doing is looking for the blue border. Just let us go and everybody will be fine. And you think I have nothing to do with that. But you know what? I'm coming over to deal with you myself. What was that? Who saved us? Yes. Hey, Scott, no problem. Good luck out there. Thanks. I'd like to not file a complaint. Utilizing motion controls to swing tennis rackets, it made tennis possible for many of us. Yeah, I'm 24, though. I always round up, so to be more precise, I'm two. Dollar Tree, they sold a Fortnite sticker album. No stickers included. Uh, what else did they sell me? Authentic casino played cards. Uh, pills. 
and Donald Duck Lemonade. If it were the other way around and this came out before Zero Mission, then sure. But no, instead, they're forcing me to bitch about it 17 years later. The horse? Bastards. But then you have green new 3DS XL with Super Mario World included. Like, I won't complain, I'll just question. They included Super Mario Kart with the special edition Super Nintendo design, which does make some sense. And I know, you include Mario World with the green 3DS because Yoshi's blue and I'm colorblind. Well, that worked. I'm gonna need more stuff to talk about for the coming weeks, though. Yeah, it's no. Warning, this game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore. But just the right amount of pun! Oh, you could always find video games at Rite Aid. And I found some local. So first up, we have Dance Sensation on Wii for 1999. Puss in Boots on Wii for 1999. Build-A-Bear Workshop Friendship Valley for 1999. Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings on Nintendo DS for 1999. And Bakugan Battle Brawlers on Wii for $14.99. Good discount. All together with tax, this cost me roughly over $100 at Rite Aid, and I found all these video games brand new sealed on eBay for $46. I'll stick to FIFA. You think this 120p video is enough to turn me on? Well, lucky you, I have a slow metabolism. Let's f***ing do this! So to wrap up the explanation, how about an analogy? Emulation is like telling a teenager that grape juice is wine. They might get drunk, it just depends on how stupid they are. However, this is very similar to Nintendo's various other stances they took with new endeavors. Oh, we'll never charge money for downloadable content. I just shot a kid in the face. Plus, who the hell actually went to jail over downloading a ROM? At the end of the day, just do what you want. Gotcha. So after all that, sketched out a marketing plan. I'm a resident corpse R&D. And I have seniority. All right, so after hiring three employees and making no sales, our profit is... I need to hire an accountant. DSiWare titles range from free to costing 12 bucks or so, and you'd find what you want on the shop by tapping through pages, two games at a time. My wife is going into labor, but... Where's WarioWare? Even the subtitles are different. Man, I'm having a really double dragon two and four kind of day, which is to say... <coughs> oh, that's f***ing blood! Yes, what better way to make up for stripping the compatibility of 1500 Game Boy Advance games than to give me the ability to play WarioWare Snapped? I can think of a couple. So, what if you had toys that you could scan into a video game and instantly be able to play as that toy? Great. Ready to die. I would wander around the front yard trying to mooch off of the neighbor's internet signal. Eh, convincing my parents to get Wi-Fi was like convincing them I needed a lung transplant. I should know because Wi-Fi won out. Most of the time, I'm sure developers would love to bring their games over, but it's not as easy as you think. It's not like the only reason they don't is because the development kits smell bad. Jesus. Why are you wearing micro games that focus on using the DSi's camera is an awesome time. I'm also f***ing dumb. There's still competition in the air and it's called exclusive content. If you play Avengers on PlayStation, you get Spider-Man. What is this called? Oh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. The Face Pilot, which was pretty much a Pilot Wings game on DS that you control with your face. I made an accessory. Hey all, Scott here. What do you do when you want to play games but you're on a budget? Find a new hobby. Hey boss, can we have some Skylanders? Yes, please. What is your boss, 15? 14, you ass! Aren't there child labor laws? Legally speaking, it's better the child employs me than me employ the child. You're willing to make room for a damn carrying case in your bundles, but not room for an actual game case? Ooh, look at me, I'm Nintendo. I'm saving the environment by only using digital codes. This bundle also includes free ethanol. I'll buy silly string there, that was so fucking funny. Every holiday, they'd offer a couple variants, this one including Halo Reach and Fable 3, with Halo Reach being a download code. What, did they choose via Russian roulette? I mean, in my neck of the woods, we have Dollar General, Family Dollar, and Dollar Tree. Only one of these sticks to the everything's a dollar or less ideology. Son of a bitch! What was that? Words! No. I think the border just got bigger. That's impossible! Never require you to not be brain dead and your pulse stopped 30 seconds ago. Well, resuscitate me! I didn't hear a please. Oh my god, I want to get out of here! I just want to talk about stupid Nintendo games! All these threes? Guys? <laughs> Maybe a cold washcloth will revitalize you. Nope, it's not wet enough.
It starts off the same for every week and ends with a game on PS3. Pick something right out of the drawer and hold it up against the floor. Spew some junk about no sex and a vegan comes just to say gex. At the desk look like a hoarder surrounded by some big blue border. I just want to break the mold to not follow a path. For every week my life involves mentioning All burned in. It's closing. I in. always have that stupid grin. It's closing. And in. just like my virginity, I'm worried this 1080p outlines you for infinity. I'm on the board. Does my foot like need a giant watermark? I'm starting to really never notice something so stark. There are some deep questions and who's getting too philosophical for me. To lay it on the line, it's closing in on me. I gotta remember this for next time. It's not like you're trying to clear inventory of all the unsold Ratchet and Clank all for one codes. Like, oh man, she can't hold that many letters. How about Horrorland? I do love some terror. Maybe Westerland, what is that, Nevada? Terror, terror, terror. Well, there's Bowserland. So Nevada. Some may even call me a terrorist. All right, well, let's bring it to a vote. Who doesn't want Pirate Land? Space Land it is. Really? Space Land? You know, it's not my favorite board, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. But of course, the Nintendo versions of this game featured exclusive guest characters Turbocharged Donkey Kong and Hammer Slam Bowser. This is f***ing nasty! Yes, Nintendo characters in the Skylanders art style. You might be saying, wow, I thought I'd hear you puke after that. No, you see, that's just what puke sounds like now. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a collector. Here's my pride and joy. It's a cute way to contextualize the Toys to Life mechanic, I'll give him that, but at the end of the day, uh, Skylander Spire's adventure is a simple beat-em-up for children. Take that back, all the children say. See, this is what I like about Mario Party. It may be structured like a board game, but it's a board game that only really works as a video game. Okay, everybody's done rolling their dice. I'll give you 20 bucks to shoot that bird. You ever even turn on an Xbox? Oh, if it isn't the Demon King himself. What are we looking for exactly? Probably a square. Well, funny place is gonna give us answers. It's here. Oh, sweet. Printer ink. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this one, eh? Wait, wait, guys. Nobody would leave their printer ink out there just like that. It's a trap! Oh, no! You dare acknowledge my existence? Threaten to remove me from your life? It kept me busy. I'm done only affecting you and your precious state. I'm ready to irritate the entire world. So, how does this work? Well, first you spend $70, then wait for that return on investment. Well, here's all of our boards, and them being all front and center makes it easier to ask, what board do you want to play? Oh, rules land. No, I want rules land. I want rules land. I want rules land. I want rules land. I want rules My land! Skylanders was a critical and commercial success. It still were carrots. You don't see Dole bragging. Wow, someone looks satisfied. Oh, and Scott's back too. You guys, this is the best Christmas ever. But who even cares? There's no need to rank them, because as long as we're together, every year is the best Christmas ever. What the f right. Merry Christmas. A little birdie told me you'd like this. Wow, how did you know? I told you, birds! The rules land just a complete cock tease? Can I have a refill? They even light up when they're on the portal, which is a nice touch. The characters themselves? <laughs> This thing! No! How do you do it? How? Oh. Bunyip? You know, I gotta hand it to him. 
He died. It was bound to happen eventually. Yeah, well, regardless, I thought I should give you my review of the funeral before I post it. Well, shoot, I'm always up to improve things for next time. All right, well, firstly, this isn't even the first time he's died, so the hype's just not there. Well, how can I make it up for you? Discount for your next visit? No, I have a membership card. I'm fine. Next, this place is so unsanitary. There's a dead body right there. It just makes the concept work that much more. Now, the game itself? Do you give a sh No! I am eternal life! The opposite of eternal life... ...is virginity! It's weakening it. I've been holding this one in for years. Ah! It looks like I need one more dose. I've been saving this one. Mad and away in Espanol for PlayStation 2 and Xbox 360! I hate when this happens. For a series that was born from a gimmick that really carried the first game in reviews, to see Giants not do something just as magical feeling, it just doesn't satisfy me. You are a bitch to pleasure. Holy sh! Donkey Kong has over like 102 coins. Yeah, at least he's under 104. What do you say this time? Nothing, he just licked my ear. This time, it was developed by Vicarious Visions just to get these games out on a yearly basis. Who better to trust with Skylanders than video game developers? He was a good man, and a better corpse. I've been to plenty of funerals where they've used stunt corpses before, but Wendy's employee does his own. He truly is the definitive carcass. Yeah. See, now you're more personable. You keep that up, you'll be in the casket in no time. I think Nintendo just did this to test the waters. If they truly wanted to go all in, they would have incorporated Toys to Life figures with an actual Pokemon game, not where dreams come to die. I should become a lawyer. Oh, oh God! 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 No! no! You that is garbage! What? Garbage! No! Another refill, please! What kid is gonna wanna play with this? They get more enjoyment out of spray painting a Dixie Cup yellow. Hey guys, it's Pikachu! Remember guys, we gotta make good impressions, big smiles. Hey, didn't know you guys would make it. We had to make it, your brother didn't. It's just the characters from the original movies in that movie's playset. Oh my God, finally, Woody and Buzz at the same time? Somebody call Ripley's Believe It or Not and tell them I don't. I beat him, I beat the ape! Ah, you really stuck it to the man and the man is the bitch and the bitch is the ape. Well, maybe we can think of all the types of things Scott might've got, shake all the presents and figure out which one sounds like it's the most for him. No, what if somebody's gift us a rat? Oh, I won't be caught dead shaking a rat. So we agree this is a stupid idea, which leaves us with plan B. I have somewhat similar yet less critical feelings about the traps to the powered discs from infinity like the toys to life concept can be sort of cool until you start having to buy things that just like what do you expect me to do with this outside of the game the figures you can display those play with them but like what do you expect me to do with this in the real world Closed, it's roughly the same size as an old iPod Touch, so at least you have a reason to go all digital. Because the original PSP, man, putting that in your jeans, it would easily give you what I refer to as PSP leg. What's wrong with him? He's playing Daxter. No kid is going, Dad, I wanna be that when I grow up. Oh my God, I can't afford the star? You know what, I gotta hand it to you. That's funny. Oh, and another battle minigame? That's a fucking shame. No, that's ape. Shame. Yep, one more Tours to Life series. You got the toys? Oh, I've got leprosy. Go for the sympathy vote. I miss him so much. He's gone, and I will never get to see him alive ever again. My back hurts! Uh, I forgot to write a speech, so I'm just going to repurpose what I wrote for his wedding. Congratulations, you son of a bitch. Your life is over. The other toys you could very easily just toss in your bag and bring them over to a friend's house. Lego Dimensions, after one stomp, it's toast. Me and my seven best friends were so close, even if we couldn't see eye to eye most of the time. The schoolyard bully had a friend group named the Disciples, so I named mine the Disciples. You may be saying, well, Scott, this is supposed to be a miniature version of the console's box because everybody remembers the Xbox One Xbox. Iconic moments in gaming.
But that, I can tolerate. What I can't is the fact the game forces you to clumsily move the figures around on the portal to complete certain puzzles. Anybody that knows me will tell you, never tell Scott to move Legos around on a glowing portal. Now, I've been on a pretty good streak this year of not having any major injuries. But I still have a balance up to my hospital gift card, so just a little shovel to the head. Oh man, I can buy a skeleton key. Should I? Well, you are a fucking idiot. I'm gonna buy a snippet trap. You're a bitch! There. I, I wasted. Ah, there's still more that can be done. Hey, uh, hand me that disposable cup of water. This is glass. Yup. I did this sick trick where I walked over water because somebody dared me to, and then afterwards I kissed a frog. That frog turned into our beloved mascot, a wolf. A wolf in my grandmother's clothing. Yeah, come on, you're five foot ten of pure virginity. Hey, shut up, I'm five foot nine. Viagra? All of it! The entire county's wiped out. The supply chain's botched for the next quarter. You, you stopped sex for me? Bowser's big blast. We gotta pick the right one. Hope it doesn't blow up. You gotta do this in real life. What, like Russian roulette? I'm really bad at Russian roulette. Yeah, to be fair, I've never won. I will not stand for big corporations taking advantage of the dead. Give the startups a chance for once. Try telling somebody you're the son of God while you're horny. It just do it, it doesn't work. So I ventured into this garden, red ass apples, red as ass everywhere. I was really hungry from going through Jesus puberty, but get this, the snake told me you can't have any. And I went, well, why not? And before he had a chance to respond, I took a bite. Abandoned ship? Why are the, the controls? <laughs> Son of a bitch! Nearly every form of entertainment can be enjoyed via the internet. There's no need for DVD collections or a CD binder in the car because that's just dangerous. I've been told I'm hard to shop for. How? My hobby couldn't be more blatant. I just don't know what to get him! Jeans. This is bullsh**. Alright, 70 coin ape is out here flapping his checkbook around while Wari is out here living paycheck to paycheck, probably living with some fatal disease. Like gonorrhea. What's the over under on Warrior from gonorrhea? I'm just gonna say yes. You know what? I'll just say it. I'm happy for him. I mustn't dare tell my family I like video games. I don't want them to look at me like some kind of nerd. Hey y'all, Scott here. Dumb. This is garbage. I'm buying a plunder chest. You watch your back. Oh, I can't watch my back. I'm Wario. I'm huge. And he is getting so much attention. The corpse? Yeah, I'm supposed to be the life of the party. What does he have that I don't? No pulse? Kill me. You dirty coward. You smell so bad. At least I own a shower, you bastard. I would kiss you right in the mouth if you didn't smell like shit. I accidentally declined the star. You are a bitch, you know that? That's why physical video games will remain relevant for the foreseeable future. Like, come on, this is great. It gives you the opportunity to turn any of these pages into posters. Pop this on your wall, blast some metal, and tell mom to fuck off. Oh, come on, that's not fair. Donkey Kong was targeting me that whole game. He always knows where I am. I compiled a slideshow of photographs of Lenny's employee. I hope you all enjoy. I slipped that in. Not all of them can be winners though. The Wii U gamepad gift card tin. I might as well just give your son this. I can't take any more death getting shot in my face. I'm exhausted of death. Frankly, I'm dead tired. Okay, well I think we should head back to the party. But we don't want anybody to know what we're doing back here. We gotta come up with a good excuse. Well, what happened to you? Oh, he beat the shit out of me. I second that. Oh my god, Donkey Kong has won away! Excuse me, I am too, and you show no concern. Is it finally time to get this over with? Oh, cut the attitude. This guy's been waiting his whole life for his funeral, and all I've been doing is bitch about it. If it just stays here, it might get bigger if we don't do something about it. Maybe it needs a host. What are you saying here? I, I think it needs to live with somebody, or else it's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger again. I'll do it. That goes against everything we've just done! Guys, I've had to deal with this thing longer than anybody else. I know how to handle it at this point. It's never gonna leave, but I know how it works. I know how to just talk about stupid Nintendo games and not let it bother me. I would not wish this upon anybody else. I just hope people understand what I see all the time. Deal. Nice setup. Is he really dead? I'd be insulted if he wasn't. I was watching gameplay of New Super Mario Bros. Wii online, and when my dad came in, I immediately hid the window and looked up porn. Jeb, death isn't for everybody, 
but you don't have to suck the fun out of it for others. I guess after my uncle died the fourth time, I started to resent death a little bit. Yeah, but that third time was pretty great, right? <laughs> Here, take a gun. Watch out behind you, there's a happy couple playing Wario's Woods! Scott, I understand that criticism can lead to better products at the end of the day, but you're bringing down the funeral with all this negativity. It's okay to let people like things from time to time and do what they want to do. Even Xenoblade? No. Terry, the image of death has been tainted. You're only here for the business opportunity. Tostito? Death is special. You know what happens when things get mass produced. How do you not know your dead shoe size? Well, these books are here to help. Bingo. I gotta hand it to you. His funeral really perked up. Turns out all people need is an attitude adjustment. This is f***ing awesome! I buy gifts with my heart, not my fingers. You can't tell me those hands were buying gifts earlier. I mean, look at them! I've been unemployed all day. Cut me some slack. I was like, all right, I'm ready. Let's bring it on. Then these people started beating the shit out of me, all right? They're kicking my ass! They even stole my shoe! Then they said, walk up this mountain with the cross! And I went, no, I'm not doing that shit. That's f***ing weird! Looking back at old family photos, enhance! That's f***ing Simpsons Road Rage. Bill and Ted, time-traveling righteous dudes on a wacky... adverb? Ah, grooming kits for kids. It's not what you think! Yeah, they were doing play shaving kits with Batman and Ninja Turtles licensing, which makes things better. This came from Batman. <laughs> Look, we did it! Everything's back to normal. Yeah, this blue board is not gonna leave anytime soon for me, but as long as I know how to handle it and not let it affect what I love, that's okay. Plus, who knows, it might shrink over time. I think it even did that a while back. I think that deserves a letter of recommendation. Pop that on your resume. You're the only patient of mine that has saved the world from shapes. If it wasn't for this whole thing, I would have never considered myself to be a fast food employee. None of us did. At least I can go back to having no means of crotch access. That's good, I heard Jesus hates hand jobs. Terry, I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I don't think I could be a vegan anymore. I like Gex. Well, you can't change who you are, but we could always use a volunteer vegan on the weekends. Oh boy, now people know what I'm not! You guys, thanks for helping me out. It means a lot. I think everyone will understand this whole blue border thing you're dealing with. Well, even if they don't, as long as I have what I truly care about, I don't give a piss. We saved the world from a blue border quirl. I just have to live with it for the whole rest of my days It's a lot but you've been taught this thing is worse than you thought But there's one small thing that makes it all okay Stupid Nintendo games my ways These stupid Nintendo Scott here. I wanted to see what having a personality was like, so I look spelunking now. It's either this or misanthropy. But these caves hide a secret, and I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. Why everybody who plays Donkey Kong Barrel Blast absolutely f***s. In the beginning, everybody was a virgin. Oh. Losers. For 2007 years, humanity was content with anything but genitals, but then everything changed. Scholars consider June 28th to be the turning point, where large portions of society stopped using their thumbs for abstinence and used them for something else instead. They lost their virginity. Oh, losers. Discarding their abstinence, these unvirgins formed a new group of humanity, what we now call people, whose numbers have been growing at a sexual pace. It's not because they like it. There's so much disease, overpopulation, and marriage caused by sexual activity. So why do they do it? It's the curse. These poor souls became too distracted playing Donkey Kong Barrel Blast to fulfill their destiny and fell towards the darkness. But legend has it that one chosen virgin can break the curse of Barrel Blast, beat the game to defeat the monster from within, all while abstaining from sex and restoring virginity to our world. Society may have lost its virginity, but I'm here to find it. I have two duties today, beat Barrel Blast and not have sex. It. Let's add world peace to the list. Donkey Kong Jr. 
he f***ed. So take this, make a multi-billion dollar franchise out of it, and take this, and just take it. While Mario spun off into his own franchise, the Donkey Kong series introduced Stanley the Bugman. A warning sign if I've ever seen one. It didn't evolve the arcade gameplay, rather it took the character of Donkey Kong, made him the protagonist, and built new worlds, characters, and a standardized style of gameplay to make this more of an actual series, rather than flavor the month, spray this monkey's ass with bug spray. I'll take chocolate. And it was still developed by Rare. They made all the Donkey Kong related stuff back then, and going into the GameCube generation, they were poised to make more. Oh, come on! I mean, Rare made like half the Nintendo 64 library, and you bought. Welcome back to Nintendo Makes Good Choices. Oh, man. While Microsoft forbade Rare from making GameCube games, they could still produce Game Boy Advance titles simply because Microsoft wasn't in the handheld market. So bring on It's Mr. Pants. And nine months later, you were born. Donkey Kong Racing for GameCube. This seemed to be the logical evolution of Diddy Kong Racing, incorporating far more Donkey Kong Country elements, riding animal buddies from those games, taking place in these jungle settings. But of course, this was canceled after Rare's acquisition. They attempted to rework it into a few different projects without the DK license for Xbox and Xbox 360. That never worked. Guys, it's not Donkey Kong Racing. It's Earl! While all these projects were retooled or canceled, Nintendo and Rare would collaborate again via the Donkey Kong Country re-releases for GBA. Yeah, sure, we can still be friends. You'll just hear me and my new boyfriend f all the time. The 2000s! Listen, I'm just throwing it out there. Bad era for Donkey Kong economic recession. Without its key developer of the past decade, I think Nintendo didn't really know what to do with this thing. To be honest, if you had the keys to this kingdom, you wouldn't either. So f it, let's get weird. All according to plan. But where Donkey Kong differs is its use of, well that, and the DK Bongo's accessory. Sure, you can play Donkey Kong with a regular controller. You can also brush your teeth with mice. So Nintendo was pumping out DK spinoffs like mad this year. Why not another? Hey, so we have one series of DK spinoffs made by Payon, another focused on racing, even if Donkey Kong Racing never saw the light of day, and another that'll get you evicted. So for the third Donkey Kong spinoff in 2007, let us combine all three to get- Oh, what the f the Donkey Kong series has been through so much, imagine what its therapy sessions are like. This era of the franchise can definitely be attributed to Rare's acquisition by Microsoft, so all Nintendo knew how to do was to contract companies to make spin-offs for them, until they eventually found a new home for the mainline series with Retro Studios in 2010 with Donkey Kong Country Returns. But before that, we got one last whimper from this era of spin-offs in 2007. Why don't you ever hear anybody talk about this game? Because everybody who's played it is too busy and their wife. Is this reception fair or did a bunch of game reviewers trip and fall? You know, I have heard some people say this game is unfairly hated. I've also heard voices in my head. So who knows, maybe this was just a misunderstanding. She may have killed my brother, but maybe he was lying. This was set to be the fifth game compatible with the DK Bongos. Six if they had courage. But hey, this looked like another interesting and creative use of the accessory. The one problem, I demand phallic jokes. E3 2006 was definitely a passing of the torch between the GameCube and Wii. Nintendo was preparing for its next console after the last one sort of flopped, though not without a few last releases for that struggling GameCube. Nintendo wasn't gonna end their system without a bang. 2006 gave us Chibi Robo, Odama, Baten Kaido's Origins, and the death of Gerald Ford. DK Bongo Blast quickly moved over to Wii as well. I mean, the change was announced roughly three months after it debuted as a GameCube exclusive, because the Wii lineup without it just made no damn sense. By spring of 2007, it was confirmed to only be releasing on Wii, renamed to Donkey Kong Jet Race in Europe, and over here, Donkey Kong Barrel Blast. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Europe. Barrel Blast. And 2007 was a monumental year, one of the biggest years ever for gaming and DVDs. Something had to give. You couldn't experience everything. So when Barrel Blast launched, many players had to choose between maintaining abstinence and playing Barrel Blast. Those poor bastards never looked back. Now, I've only played this game for a bit. That's basically just grazing a crotch. With great power comes great virginity. I will restore chastity to this world. I can beat Barrel Blast without having sex. Impractical. The door wasn't locked. My f sirens are going off. Goes off whenever somebody's trying to f You sure that wasn't an air monitor? As sure as I am cordial. Anybody trying to lose their virginity? I've loosened my virginity. <laughs> Do you know what that thing's capable of? It's a ticking time bomb of testosterone! Hey, I'm taking precautions. As somebody who's not a fan of sex, let alone your c 
I have an obligation to society to prevent you from mating, okay? This thing ruined my family, and it gave us more of them. And I appreciate that, but the only way we can live in a sex-free community is by beating this game to break the curse. And I could use your help. Normally I'd cry shit and bitch about the thought of doing anything in relation to that game, but I'm a pretty open-minded kind of guy, okay? And I'd do anything to unban the act of no sex in society. I'm in. So the only way to stop f***ing is to start f***ing? Yep. And we're about to film our first sex tape. On the right hand side, we can check out Cranky's Flight School, Records, Options, and Candy's Challenges. This is gonna pose a problem. Every Kong has to have a rival, and because of that, half of these Kremlings were created just for Barrel Blast. Yeah, there's only like a handful of Kremlings that are legitimate characters, so Pan had to go out of their way to craft Kludge. Yep, that is not organic. Come on, you had loads of Kremlings to choose from. We live in a world where club exists, and you're just not gonna take advantage of that? I mean, it's kind of a cute idea to build your character roster out of the concept of heroes versus villains, but I think they finalized that idea before going Fuck. So in comes the Kremlings. We got Critter with Kip and Cass as newcomers. Who are Kip and Cass? Well, Diddy and Dixie Kong's rivals, of course. Thank you, Dad. I'll pick Donkey Kong because I need a character flaw. Rookie Difficulty, Topaz Cup, and DK Bongos because this game supports them and I'm not narcoleptic. but running into other players, enemies, or barrels laid across the track while one is still in effect continues the wild move for longer, so if you string together enough combos, I mean, do I have to spell it out for you? What, the blue shell? It targets the player in first place and explodes on impact. Quacks? He flies to first place and takes 10 bananas from the player while pecking at him. Watch out, motherfuckers, I have quacks! Whoa! You scared me there! <coughs> Stop sucking this game's c- I wouldn't have had one. Well, this is a racing game, so it all comes down to the course design. 16 tracks included across six cups. A great deal, I say as I'm paying for college. Hey, let me watch my apes in peace. You're a sick wench. Oh, come on. You're just being a fucking loser. Oh, I haven't lost anything. Guys, it's really hard to stay abstinent with all this shouting. Here, mark him with this so I can always tell which one of us is a fucking creep. What does the A stand for? You're a fucking Creep. You get the mainstays, Lanky Kong, Funky Kong, Tiny Kong, Clutch, Copter, were you expecting a crocodile with an afro? Good. The rest of the characters you unlock via Candy's challenges, an excuse to ogle a monkey, just go to the zoo! There are so many other characters from Donkey Kong that could have and should have made it in before Kludge. I believe in what I believe. So damn many of these are on the exact same course and the challenges themselves? Collect 200 bananas. Collect 700 bananas like 200 bananas. All run by a monkey that I don't know what Nintendo wants me to think of. Like, Jesus, Candy, just wear a name tag. But hidden behind the final challenge is one last unlockable character. On DK Jungle, goddammit. I thought you were a virgin. Yeah, you're getting f like a pro. I mean, why bother? There's nothing else to do. What, does Cranky's flight school count? Say it does. I dare you. The visuals? I mean, sure, they are groundbreaking, but it runs fine and looks better than most Wii games that were on the market. Acting like it looks worse than a GameCube game? Like, have you seen worse than a GameCube game? That's just a dog's ass! It didn't have online multiplayer. Sure, that's ridiculous in the context of the value of the package in comparison to other racing games at the time, but is that really a problem when you don't like the game to begin with? This game has horrible controls, bland track design, and worst of all, I can play it for hours on end with my buds. You. You did it. All in a day's work. You know, I thought Barrel Blast was gonna be horrible. No, nah, it was just bad. <laughs> I remember my first time. Wasn't this your first time? <laughs> yeah, I remember it. I beat the game, but the curse hasn't lifted. People are still f***ing. If people weren't still f***ing, Rex would be senator. Oh, looks like he still have one challenge left. Wait, what? It doesn't matter. Barrel Blast is always going to exist no matter what, and as long as it's not forced upon anybody, who cares? We shouldn't judge people who play it or not. Playing it doesn't make you disgusting, or not playing it doesn't make you a loser. We're all adults here and on different paths of life. Maybe you've already played Barrel Blast, or maybe you haven't, but it doesn't make you a better or worse person because of it.
You know what? My uncle was a big fan of Barrel Blast. I kept hearing all these stories about people telling me, oh, he's so cool just because of it. Like, he, he was getting hyped up so much, he could finish the game in 14 seconds flat. My grandpa could do it in 10. But my aunt, she... She only played Barrel Blast the one time. My cousin could play it twice. Well, everybody thought less of her because of it. And I've distanced myself from that entire side of the family. I shouldn't have. I let my own personal way of life cloud my judgment of others. I get that I may be against everything this game stands for, but that doesn't mean other people should be chastised for doing what they love. Jeb, you're not a f***ing creep. You're a f***ing friend. You know what? It was wrong of me to think so lowly of you because you didn't enjoy the game. I mean, I personally love Barrel Blast, but that doesn't mean you have to. Even if I beat Barrel Blast, curse or no curse, it's not going to make people stop doing what they want to do. As long as they're not hurting others or themselves, what gives me the right to want them to conform to what I am? All that matters is that I'm comfortable with myself. And no matter how much changes, I'm always going to be that virgin at heart, regardless of if I beat Barrel Blast or not. And I'm gonna. Oh, I'm beating this Donkey Kong game without having sex. Because I'm a virgin, damn it! Yeah! Get up! Just don't get up! I did it. Hey y'all, Scott here. The Nintendo Switch is five years old. Big whoop, I can turn to hard drugs in two. I, for one, am not impressed by its long-standing success. If I can leave bread out for five years, who says Nintendo can't pull for six? The Nintendo Switch is still not old enough to date. Five whole years, and not a single not stretchers. I think we're pretty used to this by now. Every time the Nintendo Switch reaches its anniversary, you. So I bet hard that if the Switch would get anything, it would be more classic styled Monster Hunter games like Generations, while the big bad consoles got the mainline entries from there on out. Yeah, well, it hasn't been a good year for me. Monster Hunter Rise is, without a doubt, one of the most impressive looking Switch games. It looks like a less vibrant and detailed PS4 game, which sounds like an insult. It's not. You're just a bit worse than Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're welcome! No, I've never been a huge Monster Hunter fan. You ever tried to play the older titles? The f*** do I do? It's a good game, but definitely not for everybody. You have to be in the right mood to enjoy this game. At least I do. Because when the gameplay doesn't hit, I have serious questions about my goals. However, when you just want a calming, simple experience, new Pokemon Snap definitely delivers. It also helps to inherently enjoy the concept of Pokemon. Oh, see, that's my problem! Tell me more about that urge to kill yours you've been talking about. The house in Feta Morgana, Dreams of the Revenants Edition. One of the highest rated games of all time on Metacritic. Oh, the highest rated game of 2021 in general. 96, one point away from Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey and NFL 2K1. Well, bye f let's see what it is. Holy sh a video game? Yeah, from what I could gather, this game is so well received because it has 10 reviews by people who very much are invested in this type of game. It's a visual novel, and when I say that, please take me seriously. But playing this now, it is the best way to play that classic game. Though it is very surreal playing a Game Boy game on such a big screen like this. Like, man, if a Game Boy game can get this big, why can't I? I see this as more of a GameCube purple as well does everybody else, which, you know what that means. You're f too! That game, the me is all talked via a text-to-speech program, and it made all the ridiculous things they said so much more impactful. It elevated how bizarre and surreal the game could be at times. Metopia doesn't have this. All dialogue is just conveyed through text, which is unbelievably lame in comparison. Yeah, I can just take a picture of myself and write something I would never say in a speech bubble. Why do I need this game? An amiibo to be released alongside Skyward Sword HD was announced, Zelda and the Loftwing, with its in-game functionality, 
being the ability to go up to the skies to fly whenever you want. What would you spend $25 on? A personality trait. So for one of the only major additions of the game, being locked behind a figure for $24.99, while the game itself was already $59.99, $10 more expensive than what the game cost when it launched back in 2011, which is only $10 less than a bundle containing a special edition controller, whereas in 2021, there were special edition Skyward Sword HD controllers, though they were being sold separately for $79.99. Some friend you turned out to be. Listen, I was nursed on WarioWare DIY which is why my teeth are crooked. Rumors spread about the Super Mario Odyssey team working on a new Donkey Kong game and how the Nintendo Switch Pro would feature a better kickstand, an ethernet port on the dock, and be announced any day now. And if there's anything I trust more than gaming journalists, it's the quality of Mario Golf Super Rush. I'm fucking tired. Another June of 2021, another Mario Golf Super Rush fails to impress me. And I thought this year was gonna be different. I wouldn't call it bad in the same way a game like Ride to Hell Retribution is bad. It's bad like the knife game. Because wow, I just myself over buying into this. Not only Super Rush comes with an adventure mode baked into the experience, but my god, this is the most lifeless and boring story mode I've ever played. It's basically just an overly drawn out tutorial in disguise as a story mode, which hey, that works. Tutorials have a lot of dialogue, so make that the story. These adventure mode missions just go on and on and on. On. They make you play like nine holes in a row, which can last quite a while, maybe like half an hour, and I could be doing really well the entire game, and then the last hole I botch. Guess who has to play all nine holes again? This is a tough one. Now why Nintendo revealed this in a Nintendo Direct, while well, with projects like Labo and Ring Fit Adventure, they refused to considering them to be for different audiences. I'm sure we'll finally find out why they did that once I'm dead and buried. Quick, shoot me! And even then, finding games to play is cumbersome. You upload your game and receive a code to share for others to play it. I don't understand understand this. If anything, it's more dangerous for kids this way. What, you're not gonna offer them a safe platform to browse Builder Garage games and instead force them to look on Craigslist? Yeah, this guy told me he'd share his level code on Kick. That is one phallic looking level code. Tekken's Kazuya was announced as the next Smash Brothers DLC character. Give it to me straight, Doc. Well, it seems that you don't give a sh I think this marked a point where developers and publishers start to really turn to cloud versions like what we saw with Guardians of the Galaxy, because that technically brings your game to Switch for a fraction of the cost, and everybody loves them. John everybody specifically, and everybody hates him. All right, uh, what's next on the docket for this month? I hate months. Be free to download Pokemon Unite, the multiplayer online battle arena or MOBA game. You lost me at free. Here's my issue with Pokemon Unite. I don't like it. So this is coming from somebody who doesn't care for Pokemon and MOBAs, so you know my opinion matters. And the Grand Theft Auto trilogy from the PlayStation 2 will be remastered on Nintendo Switch. My god, do you leakers not have better things to do with your time? Take me for example. I'm spending it waiting for WarioWare. Sonic Colors Ultimate, what? Can this company do right? Come on, man, I asked for water. They found a way to not only make the game worse, but lie as well. This title couldn't be farther from the truth. There are no colors! That'd be a me problem, though. Sonic Colors Ultimate is still Sonic Colors from the Wii, which was okay. This was my first time beating Sonic Colors. I know it only takes like 30 minutes to do so, but I was busy. I was waiting for WarioWare. But what we didn't already have on Switch, which was a welcome addition, was the Castlevania Advance Collection. Finally releasing after being rumored and leaked about for months. All three Castlevania titles from the Game Boy Advance and Castlevania Dracula X from the Super Nintendo. Hey, I got a new car and they threw in some beans for free. Gotta keep the good times rolling. Stay positive, not cynical. Nintendo issues an update to the Nintendo Switch Online for Bluetooth headphone support. That's so cool. Not unfair, just really, really hard. And if you're not into that, then this one may not be for you. Unlike me, who loves a challenge. That's called a criminal offense in some states. I'd say give it a try. At worst, it won't be for you. At best, it'll be your favorite game of all time. Is that worth $60 to you? Yeah. Now, on the same day as Metroid Dread, Nintendo launched the Nintendo Switch OLED model for $350. $410 were lost that day, and I also spent another 410 on these. Sometimes I wish I would have just lost the whole 820. If Nintendo isn't funding the Mario Party developers with a big enough budget to make more than five game boards per entry, for God's sakes, Nintendo, at least let them eat in the car. I know you're probably expecting me to say, oh, my are about to give. But sadly, I never gave much of a fuck. Rumors popped up this month of Microsoft and Nintendo collaborating on a re-release of GoldenEye 007, which coincided with the launch of Nintendo 64 on Nintendo Switch Online. All right, what'll make you least uncomfortable to talk about first? And right after the Animal Crossing Direct, Nintendo detailed more about the servant. <laughs>
Nobody can shut the f up about Popeye, so Sabic Limited followed the trend and released a Popeye game on the eShop this month. It's 800 megabytes. It's definitely cool to finally have these games on the platform as they've been a very consistent request from players. So now I don't have any excuses not to play them. Hey y'all, Scott here. 3D is the future yesterday. And I'm not referring to 2D, 3D. I'm referring to 3D, 3D. Pretty realistic, huh? I'll take that as a yes. Look out, it's right in front of you. Oh God. 3D, a gimmick I have to check the meter to comment on. Uh, who gives a sh it does actually feel like you're controlling the artillery of a submarine this way, and as a bonus, you see some depth with the stereoscopic 3D. However, this was only possible in the arcades. Subrock 3D did get a ColecoVision release in the homes, but only a Subrock without any 3D effect. And this allowed me to reflect on some personal choices of mine. I f***ed up. Oh my god, this is such a sleek, futuristic accessory. What did we get over here in North America? a really bad shopping list. So we never got a full-blown official 3D gaming accessory for the NES over here. Any game that had a 3D mode, you would just use the typical paper glasses for. These were the reason why I never understood 3D branded technology being so much more expensive back then. Why are they expecting me to pay thousands more for a feature Spy Kids gave out for free? Well, have you tried playing Rad Racer in 3D? He did. Take for example, this game, Falcyon. Everybody knows Falcyon. Okay, well, not the morgue. The 3D effect, while there, wasn't good enough to warrant setting up the headset to play every time and investing in a whole ass accessory like this. Yep, I'm putting my foot down with the whole Famicom 3D system debate. Damn, Scott's just gonna say that in the open just like that? Nope. But plus, the Sega 3D glasses released outside of Japan, which says a lot. That's correct, we had the right to play Zaxxon in 3D. Damn, it's good to live in Ohio. So, what did we learn from the Virtual Boy? Nothing. So, while the Virtual Boy did find far more creative uses for 3D in gaming than ever before, you couldn't turn the 3D off. Well, without surgery. For Mario Clash? It was completely impractical. This was a system made for a cheap five minute thrill or look, the baseball's coming right towards me. I can do that for free. So how about some games that just support those cheap paper 3D glasses? What's the worst that can happen? Ugh. And these games are bad. But most of these games work fine enough in 3D. They just aren't at all necessary. It's cool to see how the gun looks in Killzone 3, extending a bit outside the TV, and now fighting in Mortal Kombat has so many layers in the background. But then you have a Sonic Generations to ruin your breakfast. I don't buy it. This is some of the most unrealistic 3D I've ever experienced. And that's not even accounting for the fact well, I don't think this is possible. While the Nintendo 3DS's main gimmick leaned a bit hard into Virtual Boy territory, so do I. So 3D gaming? It never really mattered. Uh, to Satan? Ah, oh, hey y'all, Scott here, and don't mind me, I'm just making some adjustments to the calendar, or legally speaking, tampering with evidence. Ever since I missed out on buying Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes on launch day, I've made it a goal to make sure every day is launch day. Because we can't just let the day one buyers have all the fun, look at them out there. So from here on out, whenever you decide to buy the game, you'll get the satisfaction of knowing you bought it on day one. <laughs> it stinks for me because I'm never gonna buy it. There's a certain level of pride that comes with being a gamer. I never said it was a high one. And many attribute their gaming accomplishments towards the real life penis. You're not a true fan. You didn't beat Horizon Forbidden West on very hard and easy the week before the game released. So much of gaming discussion is based around, oh yeah, well this is why I'm a bigger fan. See, I'm better than you because I don't have anything else going on. So why not monetize and encourage that kind of behavior? I can get behind that. Let's go even further. If your aunt died last night, you get a green case. Couple that with such minimal additions like three lines of text on a controller and a digital achievement that says, you fucked up. I sure did. It's like pitting Satan against some worms. Like, yeah, I don't like either, but when it comes down to it, one is truly Fucking despicable, and the other is just the Prince of Darkness. This whole thing is just a mind game. Well, if we're being emotionally manipulated, might as well see what's in it for us. I love you. You look less fat today. Putting this on my shelf with the rest of my Switch games with the outer sleeve looks dumb. Taking the outer sleeve off and putting that somewhere else 
looks dumb. You know what? Life looks fucking dumb. Persona 5 Royal had the regular edition, then the launch edition, which included a steelbook and a theme for your PS4. I don't need a launch edition for that. Publishers have milked the edition game dry, and when day one editions were introduced, that was just the beginning. How can we go further? What day is it? So, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna let some video game company push you around and tell you when to buy your games? Because where I'm from, every day is Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes launch day. And I don't sleep because of it. Hey all, Scott here. I will transform this into a better game. Yeah, Mario Sports Superstars, what you call what? I call how. How could Nintendo think they could get away with selling such a poor quality product? Next question. Why do I keep buying games from a company that treats me like dog sh**? <laughs> how would I know they treat me like dog sh** if I don't keep buying games from them? This is one of those bad Nintendo games your mom always warned you about. F*** you, mom. I should have listened. But games like Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, Mario Baseball, and Mario Strikers all had their place. They had a purpose, a reason to exist. So did Lincoln. And you know what they did to him? I did not remember this in class. This game was developed by Square Enix. Yeah, right. And I'm a mass murderer. Damn it. I usually like to pinpoint the exact moment when a Nintendo fan is lying. I love this company. There it is. Mario and Sonic at Rio 2016 and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash being prime examples. Barebone sports games decorated with Mario characters, barely any unique environments, power-ups, wacky mechanics. Like at this point, you might as well play a regular tennis game, which is to say die. Mario Tennis Open was okay and Mario Golf World Tour was quite good, but that didn't take away from the feeling that games like this were going downhill hard. But even after so many misfires, I'm always first in line to pick a new one up. Masochism. And you know what year a Mario sports game sounded real good? Yeah, we could have used one then. And 2016. Tennis and golf looked like they were ripped straight from Mario Tennis Open and Mario Golf World Tour on the 3DS, which, hey, maybe that meant those sports would be pretty in-depth since they were full-fledged games before, but I don't know, man. Then there's horse racing. You're damn right there is. Seeing 5 and 1 on a product means you're getting something where none of the 5 is well thought out. But this one is different. This one has Bowser Jr. and I like Bowser Jr. Why is everybody so pissed off in the official art? Like, Jesus, Yoshi, it's just a damn golf ball. Hey, at least we get a free amiibo card included where we no doubt can see even more of these angry character shots. I wanna see Luigi cussing out a horse. Well, I'm just gonna pray before this he said f You know, this looks so familiar, but hey, I might be thinking of another Luigi horse-related experience. Including a free amiibo card with a game is a f that got me. <laughs> These are all great, but something seems a little off. Huh. This one's wet. Well, that solves the mystery. Wait! This is the... No. Oh my god! This wasn't Wario art crafted out of love. This was crafted out of Photoshop! Many of these cards are just reused assets from previous Mario games. Soccer Luigi's from Mario 3D World, Golf Middle Mario's from Mario Kart 7, nearly all of the horse racing card art is from other games because prior to Mario Sports Superstars, the only horse racing art of these characters available online I can't show. Only an absolute degenerate with nothing but spare time and a lack of drive to do something beneficial for society would buy this binder and fill it out with every single Mario Sports Superstar card imaginable. So thank god I'm missing Birdo. If anything, this is taking Mario Tennis Open and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash from the Wii U, and, well, it's not always a good thing when family gets that close. Now, it's an even simpler tennis game than before. That's impressive. I didn't think you could get more bare bones than Ultra Smash, but I also didn't think dogs could get jaundice. The only people who I can imagine having fun with this are the fans with social media presences who get free review copies of games from Nintendo and are too petrified to say anything bad about their games in fear of never receiving free review copies ever again. Hey Nintendo fans, this is another Nintendo fan here. You can tell I love Nintendo by my ability to buy merchandise. I've never played Metroid. Today we're reviewing Mario Sports Superstars on the Nintendo 3DS. How fun! This game has graphics and tennis. Yoshi is so cute. 
and Luigi makes me gassy. That's where online comes in. This way, we can never feel alone while being alone. I'd rather just hire a PI for myself. You know, I feel like a lot of modern Nintendo multiplayer games replace actual content with online multiplayer, as if online is the only form of replay value you need. Like, oh, there's only four levels, but you can play them with strangers constantly over and over and over again online. But it's like, you need to give me a reason to want to play online outside of just being able to play online. And I can't even do that! Well, Mario Sports Superstars knows what tennis is. I gotta hand it to Nintendo, because I don't want it. Let's move on to the other Camelot developed sport in the package, golf. Because what else would we do? Stop playing? Yeah, yeah, Mario Golf World Tour is a great Mario Golf game, but I want to play golf with the option of playing four other sports, but picking golf anyways to show how much I care. Mario Sports Superstars offers that, in addition to nothing. World Tour has some great courses, and loads of them at that. Mario Sports Superstars, we have four golf courses to play on. Emerald Woods, Gold Links, Crystal Beach, and Wild Valley. Damn, I was hoping for gray roads. Putting an adjective before your setting doesn't make it unique, especially if the adjective already describes what you'd assume the setting would look like like. Damn, you got woods? Green woods? I'll drink to that. These courses are some of the most basic, no frills, no personality golf courses I've ever seen in a video game, which is ridiculous considering I'm playing as this on them. You're telling me they not only have a giant f***ing lizard playable, but his dad too? And this is the course you play as them on? All right, so those two portions of the game were developed by Camelot. The other three were developed by one Bandai Namco Games. I'll drink to that. All right, well, to be fair, Bandai Namco was the developer of the Mario Baseball game, so if anybody can nail baseball, in this collection, they'd be a close 22nd. Wow, what stadium do you want to play in, guys? Country field or big field? Baseball in Superstars is one of the most lifeless experiences I've ever had in a video game. I know that for a fact because while I was playing, I was shot. I mean, you have these goofy-ass wedding toppers of characters playing baseball, and what do you do with this opportunity? Drink to that. I mean, baseball is way more boring, but soccer is much better, and when you compare soccer and Mario Sports Superstars to the actual Mario soccer games... I mean, what do you prefer? A nice juicy steak or a dead f***ing dog? But we do have two unlockables. Oh man, well maybe they do care. Congratulations! For aggravated assault! That's all this is. You just use three balls from the three sports of the cards you choose and play a minigame until you reach a boss fight. Afterwards, that character is upgraded. I sold my dog for this. Hi. Mario Sports Superstars playing Scott is dead. He's no longer interested in supporting a company releasing a product just to release a product for consumers to buy for no other reason than the color red being on the cover. Or, at least that's what he read in this recent entry of Anti-Consumer Quarterly. You get four of those a year? A week. But he's a changed man. A dead man. And to prove his commitment to death, he wrote here a few choice final words. Mario Sports Superstars is a sick joke of a video game. One that fails as both a sports game and a Mario sports game. As a sports game, it is a slow, tedious, and boring representation of each activity. As a Mario sports game, it features Mario characters and stops there. Tennis and golf are simply stripped down demos of both Mario Tennis Open and Golf World Tour. Soccer and baseball are laughably overly simplistic and slow compared to the standard Mario Strikers and baseball games. And horse racing is just utterly pointless in the package. Couple that with amiibo support that is completely unnecessary in addition to a separate but equally as useless card collecting mechanic in-game that isn't the same but uses some of the same card art as the amiibo cards, it just adds up to the confusing mess of a filler title Mario Sports Superstars is. Don't get me wrong, you could do worse than this. Everything works and if you want five generic sports in one video game, I fear for your taste. But Mario Sports Superstars delivers in those regards. You do get five sports, though in the most lifeless form imaginable. This isn't a game to me. This was an experiment by Nintendo to see how little effort they could put into a package they claim to be far more than it truly is. A game like Mario Tennis Ultra Smash may have been worse, but Mario Sports Superstars had more weight behind it. An entire amiibo card line, multiple developers, pushed by Nintendo as something greater than it truly was, which was a hacked together, lifeless, loveless project created out of a need for a new 3DS game and nothing more. Or at least that's what I got from this. Hey y'all, Scott here. I cherish the Nintendo GameCube. It's all I'll ever need. 
Okay, I'm not upset, but my insulin was there too. The Nintendo GameCube. I would love to have seen that meeting. Name it after a shape. Uh -huh. Name it after a oh, yeah. shape. Oh yeah. The first game officially shown for the GameCube was Meowth's Party. Bizarre first words. Nintendo is a stubborn child who doesn't actually understand why they fail in the first place sometimes. Dude, the bullet wounds help me run faster. When Tiger Woods PGA Tour and GameCube had to release on two of them, that's when I, as a GameCube fan, noticed something was up. Boy, these 1.5 gigabyte discs sure are limiting. Games that were initially revealed as tech demos were shown as full-fledged games with the Space World demo of Luigi running around with ghosts turning out to be Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, no defining Mario platformer launch title like with previous systems. Here's a smelly f***ing brother instead. With that being said, the launch of the GameCube was only three days after the original Xbox, 389 days after the PlayStation 2, and a little over 10,000 days after Watergate. What did Nintendo have to show for it? Oh, it's purple. The GameCube launched in two colors, jet black and indigo. Uh, for some reason, this was Nintendo's go-to color in North America, especially during this generation with the Game Boy Advance sporting it as well. This felt like Nintendo trying to appeal to both hardcore children and hardcore man children. Like, look, the black one fits right next to any printer. The purple one is too much fun. Like, I wanna do stocks, damn it. It was so much smaller than other game consoles at the time. I mean, you could fit it in a car, help two of them. But the biggest Nintendo-esque innovation was being able to hold the damn thing. Video game consoles have always had this issue, and Nintendo fixed it by installing a handle for maximum looking like a lunchbox. They wanted people to lug their GameCube around and bring it to friends' houses, sometimes even going as far as considering the GameCube to be pseudo-portable. I mean, yeah, this was one of the most comfortable home consoles to travel with, but keep in mind, you also need a controller, an AC adapter, and AV cables, and games, so the portability of the GameCube with the handle kind of becomes a moot point when you have to wear cargo shorts to carry the rest. I think this was more of a design choice to give the GameCube more character rather than being about functional functionality. Without the handle, it's literally just a game dash cube. With it, it's a game cube. I mean, I think it's important to have an instantly recognizable design for your system. If you just try to identify systems via their silhouettes, even if you think the PlayStation 5 looks disgusting, it's a better reaction than trying to figure out which one of these rectangles is the Xbox One. Let's die it right. The GameCube controller. One of my go-to quotes. That's where the accessories come into play. As you can get the WaveBird wireless controller separately. Cut the cord. The premise couldn't be simpler. Monkey, ball, you. Just roll the ball to the goal. You control the environment, not the monkey. Don't explain this while sweaty. And that might be because there was a launch title more people cared about. Reluctantly. Luigi's Mansion, the game you can't help but have this reaction towards. Oh, how sad. Regardless of Luigi's Mansion's quality, I'll get to that in due time. Let's be honest, this looked lame as hell. You're trusting a console launch with this f***ing dork? Nintendo systems were known for launching with revolutionary Mario games. This one felt like they were playing a joke on us. Luigi's Mansion, starring Mario's brother in a haunted mansion. Three weeks after Halloween. Would it have killed you to retheme it to the next closest holiday? Anybody do the secret? button combos to make funny sounds happen on the startup screen? That's a stupid question. You're alive, aren't you? What about the game boxes? These are cool. Finally, Nintendo had plastic cases for their games. No more cardboard. Of course, in Japan, they got funky as hell with these things. Tiny with cardboard sleeves, just like me. This system is so all right. I've got to see what the rest of the world thinks. Damn. I could not buy a GameCube all f***ing day. Right alongside Super Smash Bros. Melee, Nintendo released Pikmin for GameCube. Well, I wonder what happened. You know, for a game called this, Pikmin sold fairly well for a new IP on a console with such a low install base, and for good reason. It was Shigeru Miyamoto's baby on the GameCube. I mean, the creator of Mario and Zelda's new game, many expected instant success. You ever tried to explain how to play Pikmin to somebody? You look like an idiot. Pikmin is a game you have to play to get. Uh, every time I tell people, oh, it's quite simple, really, you play as Captain Olimar crash landing on an alien planet and you discover Pikmin creatures that grow on the ground and you pluck them up and throw them at enemies and tell them to build things and each color has different strengths and weaknesses and you have to round up all your Pikmin before nighttime. They look at me like I'm deranged and I'm just saying, ignore the bloodstains, I'm telling the truth. And so many other titles that could have run on it, the GameCube was more than capable, but it just had discs that were too small and an audience that skewed too young and too unique. Sonic's fans are mostly on GameCube. Then there was Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> and hey, the developer Sonic team kept busy with a brand new IP exclusively for the GameCube, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. 
I wish. I guess because that system was doing so well, Nintendo thought maybe pushing it alongside the GameCube would help things. The olives aren't selling well. Push it with milk. Talk about bang for your buck. I'm gonna talk about this now because the lady at Great Clips wasn't listening. Pac-Man World 2 is great. It's critically nothing special, but I think it did a bang up job evolving Pac-Man into a 3D platformer. The music and visuals just make me so damn happy. Uh, Pac-Man World 3 creeps me the hell out, okay? Pac-Man talks, which implies he has organs, which implies he can bleed. Nintendo brought over one PlayStation franchise. How could one more hurt? Mario Sunshine may have been the only mainline Mario, but we got literally every type of spin-off imaginable. First up, Mario Kart Double Dash. Why, yes, I'm turned on. Such a damn good Mario Kart. The gimmick of two characters per kart is so fun and adds way more strategy to which character to pick. It used to be, I like Yoshi because damn. You can watch Pokemon TV shows with Pikachu, play little mini games here and there. I am so glad I went with this and not the transfusion. There was also Pokemon Box, only available online and through the Pokemon Center store. It was just a game that would let you connect your Pokemon GBA games and organize your Pokemon. Again, glad I went with this instead. Animal Crossing launched on the Nintendo 64 in Japan only, but that exact version with some updates came on over to the GameCube worldwide. It was all about just being alive. <laughs> Not interested. And for GBA games that supported it, you had to plug the e-reader into a separate Game Boy Advance, then connect that Game Boy Advance to your Game Boy Advance. Nintendo in 2005. Nobody gets me! But then we have Chibi Robo, my darling, my checklist of sins. I love this system. It will always be my favorite of all time. But if somebody told me they weren't huge into it, I'd understand much like any other stupid fucking opinion they'd have, but still, I'd get it. I think the GameCube had some of the most consistent yet creative output from Nintendo. While others may see it as too experimental or oddly enough, too safe. Games were either just more of the same from the Nintendo 64 or some games strayed too far, not being what fans wanted from that franchise. I mean, Star Fox got both of that here. Looking back at this whole generation, I think it's clear as day. GameCube owners were very satisfied with their console. But for those who didn't own one, there just wasn't that major hook. There were tons of games to play and enjoy here. But you could say that about every console ad at the time. That wasn't special. So it makes sense why the PlayStation 2 dominated and the GameCube sold as little as it did. But I feel that the more limited library and lacking the ability to do anything but play games create some more passionate connection to the console. You didn't buy this because it made the most practical sense. You bought this to play Mario Party 5, damn it. I feel that everybody who owned a GameCube can agree on and bond over how cool and fun the games were and still are. How much it stood apart from the competition in terms of its library and design. It was pretty much a standard game console but with a Nintendo twist, which is what a lot of people wanted from the Wii generation when the company leaned too heavily into the casual market. Why can't Nintendo just make a standard game console to compete with the Xbox and PlayStation. Well, they did, and you didn't buy it. But I did, and I'd do it again. Four more times, and when it comes to choosing between DVD playback and, uh... It had to be done. Hey y'all, Scott here. Ever seen one of these? <laughs> Nostalgia. You may be interested to know how that alongside the other 84 letters of the alphabet came to be. Well, <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but let's just say I couldn't ethically f the inventor of the alphabet. That's right, my great uncle Ed. That's where the letter E came from. He invented letters. Why did he do it? Well, uh, he was getting frustrated and not being able to name things. Mr. Bald, it's Mr. Bald! Why? What? When? How? We can't escape it, we all have to refer to a video game by its title at some point. You can only get so far without it. Give them rats. So far is pretty damn far. But that just shows how important a good title is, because without it, I would have no goddamn idea what this game was about. Titles are oftentimes conglomerates of words that sound nice together, but ultimately make no sense when you analyze them. Elden Ring? Nah, old circle. But we're so used to how games are titled now that we don't think twice about a game called Concrete Genie. Huh. 
naturally. So let's start by analyzing these things and how the most popular game series of all time's name makes no damn sense. Super Mario Brothers. What just came out of my mouth? Dad? So it's no wonder they dropped the Brothers moniker a bit in. Retroactively, Nintendo did confirm that Mario and Luigi's last name is Mario. God, f their parents. But I don't think they thought that far ahead when titling this game back in the 80s. Honest to God, this reads like a translation flub. After Super Mario Bros. 3, Nintendo started naming Mario titles Super Mario Blank, Super Mario Land, World, even spin-offs like Super Mario Kart. It's definitely an evolutionary step for a franchise. When enough people understand your series, you no longer have to worry about your title being anything elegant. It just has to get the job done. Oh, what's this? Mario Golf. Castlevania Bloodlines? I think about good names for vampire-based action games featuring distant relatives of characters from previous Castlevania games a lot. And this one's a close second. So it shocks me to see the series stoop to the low of this. Witness tampering. Castlevania. Just... Castlevania. Is there anything special about this one? Like, is it a fresh start for the franchise? A reboot? A remake? No. No, it's just the first 3D Castlevania. Good for it. I got out of bed this morning, so I accomplished something too. Let's forget my dad was ever a thing. This is a scenario where the overused 64 subtitle for Nintendo 64 games would have been completely welcome. And in this case, most fans just end up calling the game Castlevania 64 because what else are you gonna call it? Well, yeah, but what system is it for? The use of 64 in these titles could oftentimes be confusing. It doesn't imply this is the series' big leap into 3D. Super Mario 64 sort of set the precedent, so with a game like Mega Man 64, I'm sure many fans thought, oh, this is Mega Man's next big step. My next big step is going to Denny's for the second night in a row. It's a port of Mega Man Legends from the PlayStation. Well, just call it Mega Man Legends, or if your fetish is that crippling, Mega Man Legends 64. But these specific cases, I can live with. Well, not for an extended period of time. They don't irritate me, they just perplex me. Now, sequel titles that do irritate me, well, less so irritate, more so enable. Removing words from the franchise's name and following entries, I just don't like this. It feels cheap and tacky and lame. Like the game producers are trying to get hip with the lingo. Oh, people just call our series Gears. Well, we do too. You know, Gears of War 5 takes the same amount of effort to say as Gears of War 2 does, and we were doing just fine back then. This makes Gears 5 feel more like a spin-off than the fifth main entry in the series. It oversimplifies the franchise down to one word. Like this is the word for us. Gear? I think it would have stuck out more simplifying it down to of. At least with Zelda 2, the Adventure of Link. I mean, that's more acceptable due to Zelda being a far more iconic word, a word unanimously used to refer to the Legend of Zelda franchise as a whole. But man, it still just doesn't feel right. This works better as an abbreviation for fans to use. Quick slang for your game title, not its legal name. At least it's still easy to follow, you know, Gears 5 is the fifth main entry, Zelda 2 is the second main entry, the third, uh, well, me then. Titlers love breaking from tradition to nab some attention. Now, sometimes the series changes for the better. Just Dance went from numbering the entries to just flat out labeling them by the year. Which, when your yearly music game series is basically just changing the song list with each entry, that's a good change to make. Dance Dance Revolution always felt the need to give each title something unique, but it just overcomplicates everything. Like, most of these subtitles are synonyms. For some series, just putting the year at the end, it makes sense. Like with Madden. Nothing but consistency. Sure, they went from naming it John Madden Football to Madden NFL, going from abbreviations of years to full years, back to abbreviations again, and skipping John Madden Football 91. Okay, it's nothing but not consistency. However, ever since Madden NFL 06, things have been smooth sailing. Can't wait to look at the title for Madden 14! Well, now I have to change my legal documents. The 25th anniversary of Madden. Sure. Oh, well, technically, this is the 25th entry in the series, but come on! I consider this to be a real dumb titling quirk done to just stand out while making your entire franchise more confusing to keep up with. Oh yeah, Madden 25! That actually didn't release in 2024. Battlefield 1! The first Battlefield was Battlefield 1942, which was followed by Battlefield Vietnam, and then Battlefield 2, then Battlefield 2142, then Battlefield 3, 4, then 1, then 5, now with a Roman numeral. Then Battlefield 2042. Battlefield 1943 may seem like a sequel to Battlefield 1942, too, but it's just a spin-off, so what does that make Battlefield 1 a spin-off as well since Battlefield 5 isn't called Battlefield 6? No, it's mainline, unlike Battlefield Online opposed to the other Battlefield games that play online. All of them. Now where does this fit in the picture? I mean, come on, do you remember ever seeing the Game Boy Color version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 in the advertising? No, they just show screenshots of the PlayStation version, but lists Game Boy Color as one of the platforms. Oh, well, surely. 
If this isn't the real Tony Hawk 2, then what is? But then, Nintendo decided to finally officially release the game on the Wii U's eShop in 2015. What did they call it? Ah! This is one of my least favorite titles ever. It sounds so dumb. I'm sure they would have loved to actually call it Earthbound Zero, but had to settle for beginnings because we don't want people to know fans exist. Sure, don't use the word zero, but why beginnings? Why not origins, inception? Hell, Genesis is a synonym for beginning, and that would have been a wicked subtitle. Yeah, it may have already been used for the Sega console, but there are other books of the Old Testament. Deuteronomy. You look up any reaction to a new game getting announced online, and every single person posting a video has to say the title out loud when it appears on screen. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate? Oh, Jumanji the video game. Oh, now Europe, I have a question. Why? Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Good title, game's about dreams and Mario and Luigi teaming up. Brilliant. Now why do they have to call it Mario and Luigi Dream Team Brothers in Europe? To show they did the math? New Super Mario Brothers, new Pokemon Snap, new Super Lucky's Tale, new Carnival Games, which they went from Carnival Games to new Carnival Games, Back to carnival games again. And they say taxes are complicated. Isn't it the worst when the working title for a game is better than the final title? Like I prefer the working titles for Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy because they gave me hope for a future that never happened. God my uncle for putting me through so much misery. If it wasn't for letters, I wouldn't have to know why this pisses me off. You know, just despite him, I'm not gonna use letters anymore but I can damn well use words. And I'm gonna spread them, telling everybody how we're done using letters, and by proxy, titles. Can't be pissed if I can't read. Or I'm dead. So, say goodbye, Mr. Bones, and please welcome, what? Oh man, I wanna play tennis. What have I done? Hey y'all, it's Scott here. I've been doing a lot of thinking about myself, figuring out who I am, what I was meant to do. The one thing I can do that nobody else can, it's blowing up garbage. It's already been done. If there's one thing I want playing Game Boy, it's restraint. I can do that myself. Handheld gaming has always been one of the most popular forms of gaming, but it just can't accomplish what a home console can. More powerful hardware, better feeling control. While handhelds have their place, some games just work better on console. Thus, many portable exclusives got repackaged for a home release. Case in point, Secret Agent Clank. I'm not playing that out there. Series like Grand Theft Auto, however, already had pre-existing examples of handheld entries. There's no multiplayer and no custom soundtracks. You can't play your own music like you can on the PSP. There's also no snow on the PS2 version of one specific mission. But having to stop and hold the left shoulder button to move the camera can be brutally annoying. The PS2 version is far more comfortable to play in this regard, but it's not nearly as enjoyable. I'm gonna be honest, most AAA PSP exclusives like this, their charm comes from the fact they're on the PSP. They're good games at their core, but when you put them on something like a PS2, a lot of that magic is lost for me. They may play and look better, but Liberty City Stories was always meant to be a portable, traditional GTA game. So when you take away the portability, it's still good, but you just get this feeling when you're playing it on PS2. I should have finished high school. Which is what's so insulting about this one. The fact that it's on PS2 right next to the rest of them. If it was a PSP exclusive, I don't think it would be nearly as offensive. Like, oh, it's just a little handheld spinoff. No, you can play this below a ceiling. It's fucking scary. Imagine and Clank size matters on on PSP. I get the title. It's just supposed to be a reference to being on a smaller screen. Cute. On PS2, the reference doesn't land. If it's not on a handheld, what does this mean? I have no earthly clue, which is why I prefer the version released in other regions. Ratchet and Clank, your c is small. This was developed by the same team who did The Lost Frontier, so yes, this was one of their talents. Do you think they can sing? It all comes down to Secret Agent Clank. It always does. I'm sure you lack the touchscreen support now, and that portion of the game is obviously worse, but this is the same game now with much better visuals, free DLC, extra content, and modes. But that just makes me respect these handheld entries even more. They're more complex than they seem. Just because something's smaller doesn't mean they don't have a lot going on. Like, you imagine if I was smaller, like an ant. Can you imagine if I was an ant? I 
I wish I couldn't. Hey y'all, Scott here. Divorce rates are rising, so thought I'd help with that. I need to rethink my pricing. The console exclusive. A reason to purchase said console or something to make pre-existing console owners realize. It's true, my c is big. Many don't care for exclusives as they believe that's suppressing innovation. If Nintendo just released their games on the PC, I'm sure two of your problems would be solved. See, we didn't have to deal with the graphical caps on consoles like the Nintendo Switch and everything just released on high-end PCs that everybody owned, well, your copy of Loco Roco would look a whole lot better. Plus, it's good for the consumer. The more options, less reason to buy a console that has nearly all the same features, same specs, same games as the one you already own just for one title you want. Let them go all over the place. Oh, hey, my wife is fucking everybody in the neighborhood good for the consumer and later on when mojang updated the game you could sign into your xbox account on the nintendo switch version of minecraft and get xbox notifications on that platform uh, ah! this is something they've always done i mean microsoft office released on the mac point one for sky but there are still millions upon millions of people who only play on consoles the game also releasing on pc will not change their minds because have you ever tried using a pc I know I haven't. First example, the wonderful 101 on PlayStation 4. Ah, God, I deserve that. Devil's Third. Where? Rayman Legends, only for Wii U. Possible by the integral use of the gamepad. And I was only possible by the integral use of abstinence. Of course, in comparison to the Switch release, this is heavily mobilized. The user interface, controls, it's not really Mario and Sonic 2020 on your phone. It's a mobile phone take on Mario and Sonic. No, I mean, it kinda counts, it kinda doesn't. The game released in the arcades as well, so, I mean, either way, this is an X exclusive. I win. Nintendo games on mobile. That's a conversation you never wanna have with your son. But Nintendo's gone further than that. Not just mobile specific versions of their series. There was a time where they made some of their most beloved and prolific Wii games available for her. The NVIDIA SHIELD ANDROID MICRO CONSOLE Mario teaches typing on the PC. You know, it tastes better over time. Nintendo just told Philips, Hey, uh, here, uh, you can use our characters for a couple of CDI games for working with us. Thanks. Listen, man, I get atheism now. Well, anything's possible. If they technically put Super Mario Brothers on PC, Octopath Traveler can break free from the shackles of being a Nintendo Switch exclusive published by Nintendo and appear on, I don't know, Xbox. TOO FAR! There needs to be limits to these types of things, and I'm sick of it! You can't just take that away from us Nintendo fans, and because you did, I'm gonna do something about it! <laughs> Profit. Therapy delivery! Oh, thank god, it came! Better than your uncle's ambulance! Well, it came cold. I think there's something wrong with me. I'm seeing double! Nah, you're not seeing double. You're just f***ed in the head. Oh, thank God. How do we increase our profits? Uh, it's called theft. Or you could just do what you're already doing. Again! This is not helping my case. So some things you can only get in Pokemon Red, well, if a Pokemon Blue player links up with a Pokemon Red player, you can trade to get those red exclusives in your blue. Thus, you create a sensation where players are incredibly defensive towards the version they picked, which encourages more discussion on the games, a deeper connection towards the series, and excuses. Well, I picked Pokemon Blue because because red is too much for me to handle right now. Here in North America, we ended up just getting red and blue, which those colors are sworn enemies, making those the dual release over here encourage more debate amongst players of what color to get. Especially considering Pokemon was brand new here, the fact that certain elements were exclusive to each version didn't matter nearly as much. Yeah, Mankey's only in Pokemon Red. Thank God I picked blue. So the entire point of Pokemon is to try and catch them all, get all the Pokemon. That tagline alone f some kids up for life. It's on the box for each version, yet you can't catch them all in either one of these games. The only way is to have a friend with an alternate color, or the easier solution, buy another game. Don't forget a second Game Boy Link cable. Believe me, this is what many actually do with every new Pokemon release. It really makes you think. I should re-download Tinder. Also, it just fit the Pokemon series, getting to pick your starter Pokemon at the beginning, just after getting to pick your favorite color, stone, letter and pokemon red and blue plus green in japan really did a lot for these letters well not in that order do you ever see when something is popular others copy it but they copy the wrong thing like oh pokemon just hit it big and why is that two games colors oh and negligence it showed that if nintendo was going to do more dual releases they weren't just gonna do something like different pokemon in each game they were gonna do it with 
dogs. Nintendo dogs on the Nintendo DS released in three variants at launch, each with different dog breeds to pick from. Which dog did you choose? Squirtle. Turns out Nintendo wanted this to feel like you were picking a dog from the pound, so initially the idea was to have 15 separate versions of Nintendo dogs for each breed on shelves at once. Thankfully, they narrowed it down to three, with each variant just having different types of dogs at the start, with all the others from the separate versions unlockable later on, so there's really no need to buy all editions. And yet, here we are! Where? Hell! Nintendo Dog's best friends would launch later on, that featured the most popular breeds available at the start, with, just like the others, the rest of them unlockable later, like the Pugs! So, it's fundamentally a Nintendo Dog's greatest hits that just gets worse as it goes on. I don't like the pugs. Why are these two separate games? It is pretty interesting how they're on separate handhelds, but that also makes it harder for them to interact with each other. Connecting two Game Boy Advances couldn't be simpler. Same with two Nintendo DSs. I don't even know how to f somebody, let alone make this work. While Yo-Kai Watch was just one game, Yo-Kai Watch 2 released similarly to any other Pokemon game. Two titles. I can just imagine all the kids on the playground debating, what do you prefer? Bony spirits or fleshy souls? Neither! But a Pokemon X and Y released? Surely there'll be a third version titled Pokemon Z? I mean, no, they made a follow-up to the anime based on Pokemon X and Y titled Pokemon XYZ. Surely this is gonna happen! Don't give your hopes up. Austin Powers, O Behavior. Austin Powers, welcome to my underground lair. Oh man, should I breathe or hydrate? These games are fundamentally simulations of each Austin Powers powers characters' computers with a few minigames available within. For the time, some of this can be a bit novel, like how there are video clips from the movies and how a very limited parody of Windows is in your pocket at all times. After you make room. Looking on the back of the box is four of them? They were playing four of these games? Who else would they have based them on? This f***ing guy? We got games created just to have appealing box art for toddlers. Oh mom, I picked Spyro Orange. Why? Because I... Why did you pick Dad? Man, I'd love to talk about the differences between each of the battle networks here, but after researching it, as somebody who's never experienced this series past the first entry, this is all gibberish to me so far. You know, the whole near situation reminds me of something. That I'm going to die one day. These Zelda CDI games, Link the Faces of Evil and Zelda Wand of Gamelon, are dual releases. Some of the earliest to be exact, back in 1993, these launched on the same day and share gameplay mechanics, presentation, the works. Which one would you pick? That one. But hey, we're starting to stray further and further from the traditional Pokemon format because there are so many more forms these games can take. Uh, can you say Hey All Scott here? My therapist never recommended me to do any of this. Why would I waste a Hey All Scott here on that? Because I'm scared what's going to happen. Man, it's just Sonic Boom. And Genghis Khan was just a f***ing guy. You just overcomplicate this stuff. In some ways, this is more complicated than the traditional Pokemon-like dual release. Or with that, it's not as much about having to buy two games to get the full experience. It's just about making the choice yourself. Either way, I'm in hell. Hey all, Scott here. I have molecules. I can admit that. Those molecules form a man with skin who uses it to play bug. Evil isn't born, but that was. My brain was only ever designed to be this, which means if I want to tolerate using a PC for 30 minutes to discuss PC games on consoles, I must go forth with brain surgery, replacing it with an exact copy. Though now, with the PC game tolerance toggle, switch to iffy. The results? Maybe. Not much can go wrong here. When using a video game console, the only thing you truly use is your ass. This is the simpleton's method of playing video games. No necessary knowledge on fixing anything, no fear as to if your game won't run. The only thing you have to worry about is if Applebee's will be open after this. And because of that, I feel that many console users, myself included, forget an entire world exists beyond this. Ever hear of personal computers? Yeah. Video games on PCs. Yeah, I don't believe in God either. Some people prefer playing video games this way. Some people also punch cats. But hey, there's reason some people prefer gaming on PC. Much like how many say there's some reason people f bugs. So I guess we just have to live with the fact that some games, they're meant to be on PC with a keyboard and mouse. And if we want to play them, well, we're just gonna have to log off WikiHow. And I'm too busy using my keyboard and mouse not paying off my loans to play video games with them. I would love to get into PC gaming, believe me. 
Was that believable? And I've accepted the fact that PCs and I get along about as well as not me and not PCs. It just, it, it wouldn't work out. I would love to play The Sims 2 Pets, but I just don't have time to use a keyboard and mouse. Did I say keyboard and mouse? I meant states of matter. PC games on consoles. Dogs in funny suits. Get them out of there. Many console games eventually get a PC release, which is oftentimes met with roaring applause. Like you finally unshackled the prisoner. It's about damn time. So of course you'd expect the same reception when a PC game spreads its wings to consoles. The president's been shot. After SimCity, the sky's the limit. The ants are winning. Sim Ant, one of the many follow-ups to Sim City. I mean, they covered all bases. Sim Earth, Sim Life, Sim Farm. It was only a matter of time. Death, taxes, ants. That works though. Decent version of the game on console. No, you can actually use the Super Nintendo mouse in this one, which is a more than welcome feature. Lacking support for the Super Scope though, not realistic. From the Sim series, only for Wii and Nintendo DS, we got Sim Animals. Now, why was this not on PC? Peta. Whenever I'd see the Sims on consoles, I'd get excited. But after 30 minutes of trying to make do, I would give up and just try to get into nicotine again. But sure, pointing and clicking where to go is way more true to how the Sims was always meant to be played. But there's being true to yourself and not changing who you are to conform to society. And then there's just not taking a shower. For God's sakes, take a fucking bath. Might as well check out the Wii version then. I mean, the Wii Remote's pointer can easily replicate a mouse. So of course, in this version, you have direct control of your Sim. So, the version with a mouse replacement has you controlling your sims like in The Sims 2 on consoles, and the version with a standard controller has you pointing and clicking. We're just doing things that make sense today! At least with The Sims busting out on GBA, like, damn, this game has Dusty Hog! That is one seldom used pig. Nah, this one is just Half-Life 2, running somewhat poorly. Me figuring that out is almost as impressive as me being colorblind. It's more than playable, but obviously, there are much better methods of playing the game on console now, plus any of Valve's other games. The Purple Box. This game got a sequel, Instinct's Evolution. Yeah, but it's only a sequel to this version, not the original Far Cry 1. Then the sequel got a remake on Wii titled Far Cry Vengeance. Then Far Cry Instinct's Predator was an Xbox 360 version of both Instincts and Evolution. And then Far Cry 2 released. Oh, f I'm sorry. I wasn't explaining Far Cry. I was explaining quantum physics. Now this is a PC game. I think. Those console players don't want to think unlike the PC guys. Let's finally bring Fallout to consoles and just make it Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. What, was this created out of a threat? Pretty embarrassing when the SNES versions of PC games are more faithful. The Super Nintendo was apparently the primo spot for people who didn't have PCs to play PC games. What did they do their taxes on? They didn't. I mean, it was amongst the most powerful systems of its generation and the most popular to boot, so those only made all the sense in the world. Maybe if they named it something else, even more PC games would come to it. Hey, the fact these work as well as they do is a bit of a miracle and set the standard for future ports. Oh, there's the standard? I don't know, man. This just isn't fun for me. Maybe playing during the fire had something to do with it, but I doubt it. But hey, I assume this would be best on Wii due to the pointer controls. What I got was a game that freaks out when a new color is introduced on screen. It always does that when purple happens. Oh man, I can't wait to learn about the struggling pioneer life by strategizing what to buy, when to hunt, and where to go. This isn't the struggling pioneer life. This just stinks. I think I really just need to look at that PC over there and give the biggest nod of my life saying, yes. I will relapse. <laughs> it ain't Easter. Oh, that's what the word October 31st meant. Wow, some bitch you turned out to be. Really? Yeah, the house down the street was only giving out lectures. But you, you're different, giving out king-size candy bars and all? Oh, you're just trick-or-treating? I thought this was a robbery on Halloween. Nah, if this was a robbery, you'd be pointing a gun at me. Hey y'all, Scott here. It isn't Easter, it's actually not Christmas. Halloween is here, and for trick or treat, I'm giving away 3DSs filled with Nintendo eShop games downloaded onto them because the store was out of Skittles. Hey, I'm just doing society a favor. First off, 
Low calorie. Like, compare the nutritional facts of Snickers to Senra and Kagura and tell me what you'd rather give to our youth. But I'm mainly doing this to spread awareness of the eShop killer. An unknown entity responsible for the slow death of two Nintendo Wii shops. They're still out there. All I can do is show as many people as I can what's being lost while spreading the word. I've been tracking their patterns, analyzing their calling cards, but I still can't find the culprit. The only thing I haven't done yet is is waste my time. While I wait for more trick-or-treaters, let's take a look back at the entire life of the Nintendo eShop on both the Wii U and 3DS and analyze them to find out as much about the eShop killer as possible. But with it being Halloween, hopefully nothing scary happens. In February of 2022, Nintendo announced the death of the Nintendo eShop on both systems, making it impossible to purchase digital games for them ever again. Oh, I pissed myself this morning, I'm good. Then finally, BAM! The Nintendo eShop launched. But gotta say, pretty pathetic how the system launched without a digital storefront. The Wii did, the Nintendo DSi did. This is like showing up to the party without potato salad. Sure hope nobody notices. Put some f***ing pants on! I was so damn pumped to get 3D Classics Excite Bike for free that I finally bought a 3DS for myself in August of 2011 when the offer expired and I had to buy it for $6. And that's when I discovered coping. Honestly, during this time, the classic Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles were keeping me busy. Super Mario Land, Donkey Donkey Kong, Link's Awakening DX, these games were seldom re-released, especially in comparison to the junk on NES. Hey, do you want to play Donkey Kong 3 again? Ugh, for the millionth time. Yes. Like when Mario Tennis Open was just called Mario Tennis. Got simpler times. Now the police report's longer. We're no longer using fake currency, which is definite growth. Sir, I'll give you seven wee cladoodles for that. Nah, now we use real world money and get taxed real world dollars because we're real world citizens now. This was the moment Nintendo fans were finally tried as adults. But that was pretty much it for the eShop at launch and frankly, almost the entirety of 2011. The only things that ever seemed to pop up here were Game Boy Virtual Console titles. Now, I'm not really one to complain. I think I react in the exact way Nintendo wants their fans to with these games. They definitely varied in quality and the games they picked to convert to 3D. I mean, damn, I was hoping they would do stick on a screen. Could have improved it a bit. Cause that's a damn branch. Outside of playing old games, however, the 3DS could do all kinds of other things. Happy Halloween. Applications. In July of 2011, we got Netflix and Nintendo Video. You know, it was kind of assumed Netflix on the 3DS would feature 3D movies. Much like how you'd assume I'm not f***ing pissed. But then there was Swap Note, released for free in December of 2011. This was created as a follow-up to PictoChat from the Nintendo DS. That was focused on sending messages to others in the same room as you. Swapnote took things a step further by allowing you to send messages to others around the world. The amount of customization you can add to your notes makes this a huge step up from PictoChat, along with how much character is infused with the host Nikki guiding us through things. This was a really cute application. For crime? Yeah, because of the online functionality, many Swapnote users would find other swap note users to message via online forums. And that's how many users ended up getting horrible messages. So Nintendo's response was to just kill the app entirely. Though randomly they updated it in December of 2020 calling it the Swap Note Remastered Update, which didn't do a damn thing. It was basically done just to patch things up behind the scenes to avoid hacking exploits. Why call it Swap No Remastered? I ask as if I'm brave enough to know. This is one of those games I never played back in the day, but I'll see a small group of people reminisce like, Damn, that was the year of freaky forms. And it's easy to see why. If you really want to just dick around and make some abominations that you can then control, a freaky forms will appeal to you and manipulative parents. The problem is that's all freaky forms really is. It doesn't go further than, look, Ma, I made this. Oh, wow, that's great, sweetie. Please get a job. Cute little toy, but if you didn't play it during the early years of the 3DS as a youngin, it's pretty difficult to get invested in this today. Though Nintendo did release an expanded retail version later on, meaning Freaky Forms is forever physically preserved. Yeah, 
Like these grapes. There was always something about Dylan's Rolling Western that just felt lame as hell. Like, oh, you have parents that love you? Well, I have Dylan's Rolling Western. A tower defense game starring an armadillo. <laughs> It is Halloween. But this was a fine little eShop title. A fun, one and done. They got three damn entries. He even appears in Smash Brothers as an assist trophy. Like, what did you do to earn this? I am so sorry. Now, that wasn't it for Nintendo's eShop releases in 2012. Did we really forget Sparkle Snapshots 3D? Not yet. But see, that's the beauty of early titles in a system's life. They stand out more, and being an early adopter can inspire you to try some games you may not otherwise. Be honest. Would you? Colors 3D was another one I owned, which I got a fair amount of mileage out of. It was basically just a simple paint program, though you could use different layers to create 3D art. Get those sensors ready. It's the word f**k, I swear! Hey everybody, Geriatrics here, therapist at the Think Barrel. Mental health's been on an upswing lately, and therapy profits are in the gutter. So I thought I'd do my part and get a second job telling the news again. So if this report traumatizes you, thanks bud, means a lot. If you start seeing things, you know who to call. We return to this hour's update on Throat Watch. Reports of dangerous substances such as lithium ion batteries being hidden in Halloween candy have been lowered to a concerning one. Resident Resident Rex Mose can be seen here eating shit. Wow, what I would give to be not him. And unlike somebody who doesn't have the exclusive interview with the brave cameraman who captured the whole thing, I do. Yeah, it was crazy. First thing I did, contact the news station, show them the tape. Rex Mose is now in critical condition. Detectives found this half-eaten battery on the scene leading them to the culprit. Battery acid poisoning. Lock your doors at night. You really stop labeling my stuff like that. Please! <gasps> 911! Somebody just broke in! Can we have prison outside today? Sorry, friend, no can do. Maybe this will cheer you up. Can't have a criminal without a gun. Wait, do I know you? Well, there's a good chance you gutted someone. I was right there behind you with handcuffs. No, that hasn't happened yet. Do you have a brother? Nah! Even better! Cousins! Got one that works at Target, one that's dead. I work at the police station. I'm police employee. Pleasure doing business with you. Well, I'm a convicted felon now. Might as well act like one. I feel like Nintendo wanted to have these systems speak to each other far more than they did. I mean, I can view 3DS software available on the Wii U eShop, and why can I do that? But eventually, Nintendo finally combined the two eShop's wallets. <laughs> We got Animal Crossing Plaza, a companion app to a damn 3DS game. It was integrated with the Miiverse social media platform of the Wii U and allowed you to make posts about specific animals in the game. If any post began with, Listen, I'm just gonna say it. Run. At least this was a free app, but they took it down a year and a half later, and the entire purpose of it was nothing but questionable. So, this is for Animal Crossing New Leaf players to interact with each other on a console that can't play Animal Crossing New Leaf. Nintendo, just become a serial killer. You have the thought process of one. Like, Jesus Christ, did Nintendo release an actual video game on the Wii U eShop in 2013? No. Pokemon Rumble U, $18. Why not 19? Unfortunately, some of these challenges would just be tutorials. Kick the turtles. Oh no, my ass! I've worked it off! Yeah, they wasted no time creating a follow-up to the original, this one being revealed just two months after the first was announced and released. Though NES Remix 2 was first shown in February and then launched in April. I feel like that kind of deflated the excitement for me. I mean, NES Remix is not the type of game you can hype up for months on end. Like, damn, did you see the leak? But this one was definitely quite a bit more interesting considering the game lineup. Oh wow, actual video games! Where's Schoon? But developer Yaku Club Games did the unthinkable. They didn't make Meme Run. 2014 may have been the year Nintendo fully embraced indies. There's a dark side to that. See, at the beginning of this generation, Nintendo was still a bit picky on what would be allowed on their platform, stopping games like Binding of Isaac from coming to the 3DS due to the offensive religious imagery. 
but they allowed this and it has the same damn thing. The entire point of this game is how silly it is to see on a Nintendo platform. Outside of that context, I'm not really sure if it works. Hey, did you see my joke last night? That wasn't a joke, you just didn't flush the toilet. They were constantly pushing Nintendo to do this sort of thing. Join the mobile game space, put your games on, dear God, anything without two screens. So Nintendo said, fine, we'll make a free to play game <gasps> on the 3DS <gasps> based on Steel Diver. But here comes Chibi Robo Photo Finder to save the day. And Nintendo resurrected Chibi Robo! Ah! Releasing on both Wii U and 3DS at the same time, this was Nintendo's answer to Sony's cross-buy initiative. Finally, I can get a game on Wii U and I'll get it for 3DS as well, free of charge. Oh man, they were so nice. When I took the moldy bread, they gave me the puddle of vomit for free. Listen, the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games are all completely edible. They work, they'll fill you up, but Man, like, I don't want lasagna again. Tipping Stars is the exact same damn game as Mario vs. Donkey Kong 2, March of the Minis, Mario vs. Donkey Kong Minis March Again, Mario vs. Donkey Kong Mini Land Mayhem, except now, it's the game we're talking about. So Amiibo Tap was developed by Nintendo as a means to bring more value to Amiibo figures. Could just start shipping them with fives. So we scan an Amiibo and unlock a scene from a classic NES or SNES game. Oh, so the full game? No. Uh, well, maybe a remix bit of an old title, like an NES remix? Nah. -uh. Okay, so th at least I can scan Mario and unlock a Mario game. You. Nah, just give Amiibo owners a demo for Mach Rider, cause we need to make room in our warehouse. Did you know Art Academy Home Studio launched on Wii U this year? Lucky you, silence was the right answer. All this game is is an alibi. I drew this the day of, your honor, it, it couldn't have been me. Yeah, Nintendo, do a digital only release for a 14 gigabyte game on your system that only has eight gigabyte and 32 gigabyte variations. You're a fucking genius. Can you make me happy next? Being a series about taking pictures of ghosts, <laughs> I mean, damn, I think that was the Wii U's MO. Appeal to people who will download anything because it's free. Your Honor, in my defense, it was free. We got so many amazing titles. And yeah, I'll say it, Black is one of them. Oh, thank God. It's a really good fast-paced racing game that, even if it's not exactly the same, does scratch a bit of the itch for a new F-Zero, and I should really stop scratching. Nintendo said the initial delay was due to them wanting to better prepare the online service for the worldwide launch, and then Flipnote 3D's online sharing tool was roped in with Swapnote's big controversy. Jesus Christ, what were they sending on Flipnote? The Nintendo Badge Arcade, a free application, well, not anymore. See, back in 2014, Nintendo updated the 3DS to support custom themes. You could download a variety of themes from the theme shop and really express yourself through the 3DS menu system. It's a Legend of Dark Witch Blad kind of day. To go alongside these themes, you could further customize your system with badges to place around the user interface where the game icons would go. And the only way to get these badges is through the Badge Arcade, hosted by a rabbit. Say what you want, that's impressive. It's pretty simple, but oddly satisfying to try and get all the badges in a machine machine, even if I wouldn't be caught dead with them on my home screen. This is a supremely fun little app that ruined the lives of millions. One dollar for five attempts to get some PNGs? That adds up. When you see a 3DS with the entire Pokemon lineup on its home screen, that indicates a ruined marriage. There's just nothing to this game. It's so generic and bland. Just a second-rate pet project Nintendo used to make it seem like the Wii U was getting legitimate third-party support. The Wii U has lost Reavers, unlike the other guys. Minecraft Story mode. <laughs> okay, so this was all in the era of the Telltale games, all those point and click interactive drama games like The Walking Dead, Batman, Tales from the Borderlands. We didn't get any of those, but we did get Minecraft Story Mode and some more milk to help us sleep at night. My Nintendo Picross The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess was another loyalty program exclusive eShop game. This one you'd get from using the Club Nintendo replacement, My Nintendo, like Hepatitis. My Nintendo is a piece of junk, like, just look at all these digital rewards. My Nintendo theme to Donkey Kong? The only reason I'd get that is if I had something to hide. It's a fine, albeit obviously budget version of Picross with Twilight Princess art in it. Now, if that's not what you're interested in, Box Box Boy has nearly none of those elements. That is roughly the entire life of the 3DS and Wii U eShops. I mean, I have loads of amazing memories with both of these, but by the end of it, it was obvious nobody was using these damn things. Guys, we gotta go! I, I know who the killer is! I'll drive. He didn't lie. This will give us a good look at the criminal. This isn't a criminal. 
This is grass. Just listen to me. Who would have a motive to kill the Nintendo eShop? You know, on second thought, this grass has nothing to lose. Some may think Nintendo was the one to kill the eShop, but why does the store live in the first place? What purpose does it have staying open? I don't think this was death by homicide. I think this was death by neglect. Nintendo wasn't the eShop killer. It was us. God, the ghosts of all the dead eShop releases are tormenting the citizens! What the f***? What the f***? Why are there ghosts every f***ing where? What did you do? Dude! Everywhere f***ing ghosts? That's not okay! It's not okay! Yeah, Jesus Christ. Now an angry mob is forming? Those guys killed the East Shop. Let's get them! Ah! Hey y'all, Scott here. One man's trash is another man's... ...fucking garbage. What makes a video game a good deal? Well, it's subjective. I don't know why you wrote Big Fangs, but I can't say you're wrong. But it's good to know your limits, what the bare minimum kind of product you'd buy at a certain price is. If I'm gonna buy a game for $70, well, it's gotta have this, or I'm not budging. But many don't seem to understand how, just because they won't buy anything with the letter B in it, that doesn't mean I abide by their logic. Either way, I'm safe. It's entirely up to each individual how they spend their money. If you wanna buy The Last of Us Part 1 on PlayStation 5, yeah, I mean, there's worse ways to spend $70. Here, take my money. Well, to truly understand, we need examples, and if we don't get examples, we'll make examples. We saw that price increase by $10. Oh no, my Gordita crunch money. Hey, listen, I ain't opposed to $70 video games, or how much time you get out of these things. That's still a fine value. It cost me $15 to see Dumbo, and I still haven't made back that investment. But the games they chose to be some of the first with that standardized price, it's the same goat I've seen every day for a nickel. I'll give him 9,000 today. Demon Souls, a remake of a PlayStation 3 game from 2009 that launched at $60, a part of the same lineup of games from the same developer as Elden Ring, which retailed at $60. Oh, I'm sorry, the chef is out. He made all the sense around here. Why is this so expensive? Because the toxins released spending $70 are far healthier than burning it. The original 2013 release was well worth it in every sense of the word. If you say it really fast. Eight years later. Uh, this game better look like Satan's worst nightmare. It looks like you just had a bad dream. Going from the original PS3 game to part one on PS5 is a huge step up. But from remastered on PS4, like there should have been a bonus feature in part one, a fucking bird that tells you when something's different. What you spend your money on is your own damn business until the government gets involved. But that just begs the question, what do I consider a good deal in gaming? I stole this. It came to Nintendo Switch out of nowhere a year later and includes new content. Well, they ain't kidding. <laughs> Nintendo wouldn't do this to me. We are really close. We talk all the time. Hi, this is Nintendo customer support. Hi, my DS won't turn on. Which means you would love Gears of War Ultimate Edition on Xbox One, a $40 remaster of Gears of War on Xbox 360. I only have $5, but I just found out taking out a loan is free. Ooh, well, Wii U gamepad functionality. Yeah, because doing this playing Mass Effect 3 feels badass. <laughs> the button hurt my finger. Uh, Nintendo was handing out some pretty solid deals during this generation, but then it happened. In the era of the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo wasn't too interested in cutting consumers a deal. Case in point, the Switch version of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. $50 on Wii U when it released as a brand new video game, discounted to 20 in 2016, Nintendo Switch version releases in 2018 for 60. What did they add to this version? The goddamn Pope? Okay, so what's the problem again? For $60 a year, most people were okay with that for online multiplayer alone. Adding a handful of free games on top of that? That's just icing on the cake. 
The cake is nails. Hey y'all, Scott here. Spoiler alert! I always feared being spoiled on what's inside the PlayStation Vita box, but now I'm finally willing to show it off to everyone while keeping my experiences pure. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> don't meet your heroes. All right, looks like we have... Oh my god, little deviants. Name a more exhilarating pleasure. You open up your brand new Nintendo 64, rip it out of the box, plug it into the TV, pop in the gate. My crotch hurts. I mean, sure, these days our consoles can connect to the internet and do all kinds of things out the box, but that doesn't mean we should be deprived of a surprise. Oh wow, big man, too good to call this a pack-in. Well, f a guy with an opinion, I guess. And while I think many non-gamers can get a kick out of some of the minigames at play here, the barrier for entry is far too large. You think I can convince grandma to play a minigame based on Pikmin? Well, I can't, she's dead. Packed in with the Super Nintendo, we got Super Mario World, one of the greatest games of all time. How's Scott gonna bitch about this one? I found a way. It's like an abacus. This counts. If Astro's playroom wasn't on the PS5 and didn't use a controller capable of such things, I think we would live. Think. PlayStation consoles historically haven't had pack-ins all too often, so I think it's impossible to complain about this. Think! When the Nintendo Switch launched, one game had such high levels of pack-in energy that Everybody was befuddled when it was sold separately instead. Where the f is it? One Day Switch feels more like some developers had a unique idea and wanted to create an experimental multiplayer game, which I can get behind. With a gun! Retailing for $50 by itself? adds a dick move. Being your first Nintendo Switch experience coming bundled in with the system? Is that much better? Would you rather be shot for free or for $50? What do these buttons do? How do most games work? What you can expect? from this console. And if you were lucky, you got Duck Hunt 2, and thank God, because I needed a healthier coping mechanism. The Nintendo 3DS had no pack-in games, says the outcast. I never experienced much of Street Pass, mainly because I was ashamed to be a Nintendo fan when the 3DS was new. I was 14 years old and wanted to put up a facade. I don't like Nintendo, I like having a big stinky crotch. What better game to get with your Sega Genesis than Adjusted Varmint? Sure, the NES could play older arcade games like Pac-Man, all right, but when it got more contemporary arcade hits, at the time, like Strider, Narc, and Ninja Turtles. How is this surprising to anybody? Man, this pumpkin can't play football. I mean, it was badass. I don't want to play Nintendo. I'm grown up now. I want to play... I hope that's his leg. Sonic the Hedgehog was the ideal pack-in. A game you can easily compare to competing games on competing hardware and immediately point out the differences in what made the game special. Gun to your head, do that with Altered Beast. <laughs> If you want to kill me, just do it. Because let's be honest, if this was a pack-in for the Xbox 360, well, I'd feel better about my physicality. I'd do anything in Wii Sports, I'm pulling a muscle. When the Wii Mini launched, cutting straight to the punchline on that one, there's an art to the pack-in game, and hopefully you were able to see that through all the examples given. It has to be a great game in its own right, while also being a console showcase. And I gotta be honest, guys, I don't think Little Deviance is great at either. Hey, all Scott here. This is Sonic 3D Blast, this is a hernia. Spot the difference. Ugh. Do I even have to explain myself here? Who's ever looked at this and said, delicious? Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic the Hedgehog's jump to 3D. Oh, world's quickest sin. Yeah, I've never seen anybody actively hate it. Not like it, sure, but hate? Like, that, that's like picking on a dog with no legs. I know this game isn't great but I still kind of like it. It's like dating a bad boy. You never marry it, but... Maybe just this once. But the idea of a 3D Sonic on the Sega Genesis just wouldn't go away. That's called an intrusive thought. No, it's Sonic 3D Blast. Yup. The Sega Saturn had officially released, which is why this was the perfect time to make a 3D Sonic on the Genesis. No, wait. Now it is. So why a 3D Sonic on this system? Why wake up in the morning? I don't know! Who are these guys? Well, they developed Pugsy. Why did those have to be my last words? So I assume my destiny is to finish Sonic 3D Blast and figure out its worth. Then, and only then, will I finally go to hell. Or, next best option, I'll be resurrected. So, let's do it. Let's fulfill one of my two lifelong goals. Like I have a choice. Are you ready to meet the Flickies? 
Yeah. Mysterious birds who live in another dimension and can travel anywhere through large rings. Large rings? Wow, f**k realism, I guess. Dr. Robotnik learns about the Flickies. I will change the Flickies into robots and have them search for the Chaos Emeralds for me. Using the infinite power of the Emeralds, I can conquer the world because of birds. Sonic visits Flicky Island to see his friends, but the only thing he finds are robots. There's a tree right behind him. Robotnik made my friends like this. I must save them. Robotnik must be stopped. Sonic starts to defeat the enemies in order to rescue the Flickies who are trapped inside. Story of my fucking life. Go Sonic, you can warp through the big rings. With the help of the Flickies, I don't buy it. Chase after Robotnik and defeat his plans. Yeah, kick his plans ass. And here it is, Sonic 3D Blast. He looks miserable. This is 3D? I can get the same feeling looking at my hand. Whoa. I guess skinning around is supposed to convey sonic speed because without it, like this is the fastest thing alive? Yeah, maybe in a post-apocalyptic world ran by slugs. Well, let's just remove speed from our minds for a bit here. Done. Let's just critique this as a functional video game. Oh, you, you gotta be kidding me. Sonic 3D Blast just gives me a headache. Conspiracy theory number one, Tylenol funded this. It's kind of charming. This game is sort of garbage and obsolete, yet very competent and playable with a lot of character, which makes it so oddly lovable to me. Dude, your brother just fucking shot me. Oh my god, when is he gonna learn? Conspiracy theory number two, this game isn't too bad. Yeah, the ability famously introduced in Sonic Adventure allowing you to home in on enemies after jumping due to how difficult it was to line up jumps in 3D. I fucking wonder where they fucking got that fucking idea. Conspiracy theory number three, Fuck this game. The fact our reward for getting all the Chaos Emeralds is this, is I can tell what you're trying to do. I'm not giving you the sympathy vote for this. <laughs> Just let me tell you, this game feels like it's trying to pull that at every second. Like, oh man, this is the enemy that stole your bird, beat you senseless, your wife may not be perfect, but Sonic 3D Blast is far more important than you may think. Oh my god. I just discovered the trick to staying alive! Lie! Hey y'all, Scott here. Gosh, I want to play this video game, but it's just too complicated. I don't know. Bingo! Thus, let's do some math here. We have a pet simulator, which looking at the craze surrounding Tamagotchis, we know those are big. Using a touchscreen and microphone in 2005 to do things like pet a virtual animal and also do some light voice recognition, which I'm pretty sure around this time, we were all struck at light up shoes. Couple that with the pet we were raising being dogs, puppies, not some weird ass creature made up for the game. Now you show this to dad and he goes, that's a dog. Pretty easy to see how Nintendogs appeal to everybody with its simple and intuitive controls, easy to grasp concept with a theme most general consumers wouldn't be embarrassed to admit they're playing a game about. Ew, you're playing that? And not the sequel? So yeah, these games are far more important than I think people give them credit for. Remove this from the timeline and like, I might be missing a limb. And that's just the price you have to pay to pay $20 for 100 public domain books. Come on, man, I can print off PDFs of all these books for free. Okay, so do it. The point is fuck Nintendo. It's no wonder the United States cracked down on games claiming to train your brain. Thank God. It has some of the most basic, boring sounding content at its core, math, but turns it into something where you want to get better at solving problems and faster at solving problems. Oh my God. That's five gallons of water! We even have a Sudoku mode. Well, I have some books, so we'll decline. But just a few months after the first Brain Age's release, Nintendo launched Big Brain Academy. What does this game do differently? Uh, deserve at least a teen rating. Electroplankton. Don't fucking try that. Another game that, oh, I already fucked up. I think it's a bit much to call this a game. It's pretty much a musical, visual, interactive fish moment. Oh, it's one of those, huh? It's easy to see where they cut corners though. I mean, one of the games is Soda Shake. Nintendo, I don't need you for this. But at the end of the day, Dots and Boxes is still Dots and Boxes. Though again, Nintendo, I don't need you for this. 
Tetris is one of the most widely played and accessible games out there. So what's the version on one of the most widely played and accessible handhelds of all time like? Oh my god, it's f***ing Frog Mario! It's Tetris for me! It's like they marketed this as a brain booster, something to play once a day. If you wanted to make Tetris Attack educational, just keep the damn Yoshis and have them spout history facts. You wanna talk about games that ain't games, this is a magic kit. You dare make this for a general audience and feature this character? Mom, mom, it's Barbara the Bat. That's not a bat, those are boobs. Outside of a few Super Smash Brothers appearances and Super Mario Maker, Master of Illusion is her only game in this country. I always knew this slogan was full of shit. Though the essence of the brand and the types of games released under it helped propel gaming to be as big as it is today. So, thank you, Nintendogs. Hey all, Scott here. I'm from the best generation, the worst one. And what we have is special, Monopoly without indoor plumbing. We don't need no electricity for fun. Here, look at me. I'd like to see a Game Boy do that. Well, joke's on them, I still don't have indoor plumbing. The medium of video games has given us some of the most creative and mind-blowing interpretations of entertainment ever conceived. A painting may show you a vast world filled with nothing but possibilities, but a video game can bring you there, allowing for infinite options on how you consume what the artist has laid in front of you, truly being one of the most lucrative methods of telling a story, creating a universe, developing beloved characters, and especially giving people an experience they couldn't have anywhere else. In Jenga. This is Monopoly for the Sega Master System. Mono Poly. That's an oxymoron. You got Best Buy Monopoly, UPS Monopoly, Bass Fishing, Sunmade, Heinz. Well, you know how to get me interested in something. Monopoly video games are surprisingly frequent for how piss boring they can be. I feel like they shower you in too much information on screen at once and it ends up feeling like I'm playing Monopoly as a cyborg. And they either have too much background music, sound effects, voice acting, animation, or the alternative. I have cancer. Yeah, the alternative is worse. Every time I roll the dice and watch my piece go around the board, the pace and movement just feels so exaggerated. Like if this was real life, oh, one, two, three, Four. This version also features the ability to shake your controllers to roll your dice with the rumble replicating the feel of them in your hand. Say anything you want about this game, but you can't deny it declutters our lifestyle. All right, can we play something else? I promised myself I wanna play a bad version of Monopoly. We can play Monopoly. No, I promised. Please, I could go bankrupt without this game. Here's $40,000. Ah! Well, let's see how the video game adaptation of it holds up. It uses a lot of the same assets from Monopoly on Super Nintendo, but this time it's a horror game. Let me show you the scariest thing in the title. No, oh, I left a sink on. Oh, well, it's more of a mystery game. You pick from a selection of characters like Colonel Mustard. What war did he even serve in? Oh, don't worry, just the good ones. So much of the game depends on the original form factor. Wanna look at your cards? Well, pray the other players won't peek at your screen. You fool! I don't believe in God! Wanna keep track of the suspects? Well, if you're playing single player, sure, use the on-screen notepad, but in multiplayer, I mean, why keep asking the other players to look away when things pop up on screen? Just get out a pen and paper like the actual board game, which unlike the board game, we don't get a pad of paper with this game, so just add our suspects to the shopping list. I got confused. All right. Any guesses? I wrote down the murderer is... Guilty. Yeah, I got Colonel Mustard with the milk in the Walmart. I got Baltic Avenue. <laughs> that dirty son of a bitch! I'm gonna really eat mustard like this again! <sighs> yeah, I like my board game games so I like my coffee. Good. Which is why the Wii got a whole slew of board game video games. Most notably, the Hasbro Family Game Night series. See, this is how you do it. Multiple board games in one package. Of course, they picked some of the lesser ones, uh, ones I'm sure they doubted themselves being able to sell standalone. Man, Hasbro owns so many game brands, this series could have been endless. But, but, but man, Family Game Night includes Boggle? Oh, this will be great for us. We call ourselves the Boggle Brothers. I didn't know you two were related. Oh, we aren't. 
It's just a name we use. Oh, so you just really love Boggle? What's Boggle? What's the point of this? Oh, that is. Battleship, a game all about keeping your ship formation secret. Oh, oh, a mole, a mole! How does nobody notice this? He's watching every move I make! Really makes you think, looking back through history, but oh my god. I never really played this game. Come on, man. He didn't know Boggle first. And there's a reason it has thousands of variants and Yahtzee doesn't. They can make a Goatopoly. They couldn't make a Goat Z. Ready? You ever played Jenga on the plane? Sure, but... A home console game, though, like, why? Because you don't want to clean up after playing? Oh, damn it! How does Jenga World Tour have a 26 on Metacritic? What, is it bad or something? No. That's not even good wood! Oh my god, what the f is that?! No online, which for a game titled Jingle World Tour, like, this is pretty damn Ohio. I wanna play against people from around the world! Michigan, Indiana, give me a world tour! But instead, they went for something honestly far more impressive. The worst goddamn thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, really? Oh, okay, well that is worse. T minus 10 seconds. Oh, uh, a stork. Way to go, blue team. All right. Next word. Stork? No. Big bird. The genre is I'm sick. Uh, dude, he's getting fucking shy. Way to go, blue team. That's pretty sick. It's also pretty sick. What? Did you just stop? Way to go, blue team. Yes. All right, so I can pick between Junior Pictionary and Adult Pictionary. Oh, no, don't do adult. I don't want to draw a mortgage. Okay, Junior. I can draw dirty laundry. Do you really want to draw a corpse? Weekend trips, fishing. Isn't that spelled with a PH? This one isn't working out. But I promise you guys, we will get a legitimate board game experience. How about Battleship? I am going to hit you with a blunt object. I do understand Boggle now. Hey y'all, Scott here. Guess how many Wii plays have resold in my lifetime? Enough. Not for resale? Well, I'm stuck with these things. Might as well get comfortable. I think we've all come across a game in our collection with this on it. Not for resale. I bought this used. Who f***ed up? Yeah, whenever I saw one of these labels as a kid, I thought it held the same value as one of those mattress tags you're legally not allowed to rip off. Or those silica gel packets that say, don't throw away, eat. Oh, shit. And listen, I have a whole treasure trove of them I bought off eBay. Police! Oh, God damn it! One of the first not for resale games that comes to mind is the original Sonic the Hedgehog. It won't come off! That makes these really cool collectibles. It's just the thought they were within the Microsoft company walls. But to be fair, I mean, how far does that mentality take you? It's not like Bill Gates himself sold this game, so collecting these would be opening up a whole new can of worms. This is my copy of Elbits. This is my copy of Elbits from Kentucky. It's like the metallic NFL stickers on games. Do you ever successfully peel one of these off? No, because you're depressed. So imagine two of these on one case. That's fucked up. However, these don't say not for resale. They specify they're not to be sold. You know, it's concerning that it has that label, but I don't. Take, for example, this Nintendo DS Pokemon cartridge for Celebi distribution. Didn't we have an assembly about this? If I need my Celebi fix, I own the cartridge, I'm good. I'm f***ing up, it f***ing up, it f***ing up, it f***ing up. It's really great that these events were handled in this way because all these years later, you can still get these Pokemon after selling your dad. It's not actually usable in the demo, but the icon is here and that alongside the beta logo is enough to warrant my new fugitive status. Many of these cards contain specific information regarding the store they were sent to because they were meant to be sent back to Nintendo once they were done being used. Somebody must have been shot for me to own this. I pay $250 to break the law. You know, murdering someone's cheaper. So why spend $150 on this? Oh, because of the historic value. That? 
I'm gonna keep this cancerous mole. I'm a historian. Sometimes you get a little bit more to these, like how Donkey Kong 64 has a not for resale version in a standard gray cartridge instead of the yellow one the retail release shipped in. And even though I'm colorblind and can't appreciate the differences, I'm happy to say I own this incredibly rare version. Welcome to Cheap or Steep. Yes, finally an effective use for two minutes. This is Cheap or Steep, the game show hell bent on lacking purpose. Now onto our next order of business, contestants. That's how it's pronounced, do not contest ants. Terry Lessler. Hey, great to be here, big fan of answers. Glad to support the cause. Geriatrics! I eat question marks till just the period's left! And Jeb Jab! It's pronounced me. Well, I hope you all prepared for the afterlife being all you can look forward to after this. Our buzzer budget ran out, so we bought everybody guns instead. The answer's true! Our first game is Fable 3, not for resale. Is it cheap or steep? I think I'm gonna go with steep on this one. Oh, I am sorry. It is five dollars. It is cheap. Anybody else think they got the answer? Is the answer cheap? No, it's perfectly fair. Next up is The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past not for resale on Game Boy Advance. Is it cheap or steep? <laughs> cheap? The answer is around twenty-two dollars, which I don't know about your thoughts on the economy. I love it. But to some people, that's pretty steep. I mean, it is just a demo after all. Any other takers? Steep? <laughs> that's your opinion. And now we're on to the final game. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask Gray Not For Resale Game Cartridge. Is it cheap or steep? Steep! Incorrect. The answer is fucking steep. These are so confusing! They're either something everybody has or nobody does. And now for resale is such a meaningless thing plastered on so many video games that confuses consumers more than anything. Uh, so many people ask, oh, what, so I can't resell this? No, of course you can. This is a warning for the stores. But it's not obvious, which begs the question, is it time for a new phrase? It's been time. Hey all, Scott here. I need to lose weight. Done. I have a lot of money and I'm willing to give it to that mouse. What happened? So you wonder why these companies refuse to make the exact game you want. Because they're so worried about becoming this that they end up becoming like this anyways because they didn't make the exact game you want. I mean, E.T. cleaned house at the box office, but is that really reason to expect the video game to do well? I mean, have you seen the box office results? Hey now, there's gotta be some people interested in that. At least 40,352, damn it. This game is notorious for its pompous ass ad campaign, claiming to be the next Jesus Christ just because John Romero was involved. Yeah, you know what else he was involved in? Atheism. How could it be the next Jesus Christ then? So I tried the PC version here and I got to this portion where by just stepping over an imaginary line, the game asks you to stop and load the rest of the level. There's frogs and bees right here though and I just wasted my ammo throughout the first part of the area so I'm getting pushed around by them, constantly triggering the loading screen to come back, making it piss hard to kill them, especially without ammo. So by the time I finally do so, right around the corner is a turret that auto locks me and bam, I can tell why this game didn't sell. Fans are outraged at Dai Katana after after the reported frog and bee usage in the game. But hey, it passed the bar. See, this was a time in which various companies started putting their once Wii exclusive series on 360 and PS3 to mixed results. You thought Touch the Ferret was gonna work on PS3? They thought this was some powerful brand. It's like they hadn't seen something sell a copy before. So they bet hard on introducing Udraw for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, much like how I'm betting hard on introducing Windex to these ants. Should've learned from Udraw. Why did you assume this was going to be successful when you didn't even make any damn games for it. And the games you did make for it? I mean, how stupid could you be for assuming a Wii drawing tablet would be a hit on the consoles people told me they f***ed my dad on? Why is there voice chat? Plus, with a 3DS remake, that meant you could play the entire series on one system. That does simplify things. So you know when a few months later Nintendo announced another Mario & Luigi remake on the 3DS, that hit well. 
Yeah, that was well. I mean, around that time, Square Enix also released Sleeping Dogs. Yeah, snoring mutts. If Call of Duty made a billion dollars in 10 days, surely exhausted canines can. Get the hell out of here. But why focus on just these games when we can look at the bigger picture? How can we live with ourselves when all these games are failing? All these commercial failures were miserable. And just look at these porters and games that failed. Cry. Cry! These companies need our help. We should make sure to support every game that comes out so then fans I don't know of a series I don't care about can be kind of happy one day. Who needs bail money? Who needs to repair the roof? I'm gonna spend all my cash on ensuring that we never see another commercial failure in gaming ever again. And I need the world to do the same. We gotta spread the word. All right, everybody. Just like we practiced. I'm ready to think I'm making a difference. You could always go back to vegan. But this is so much more effective. It's like not a gunshot to goodwill. Exactly. I think most of society's problems stem from failure. Murder? Failure to live? Bad movies? Failure to launch. Failure? Failure. What we're doing here is something somebody's never done before. Something important. Some games come and some. Not your shelf, though. These are large corporations that need our aid to save their graves. We all got some cash, why bother even lie? Our new jeans worth more than mighty number nine. I think I got it all wrong. We can't buy every game. If we're not interested in one, why should we spend our money on it? If a game fails, that stinks, but failure's a part of life. Without failure, we wouldn't have success. We shouldn't feel the need to buy a piece of entertainment we're not interested in. We should focus on what makes us happy and what we want to experience. And now what people we don't know tell us what we should like, we won't embarrass ourselves how we want to, damn it!
y'all, Scott here. Go greet a season. It's the busiest Christmas Eve of the year for us over here at the left pole. Uh, Santa's got the north covered, we got the left. I formed this company when I noticed that Santa Claus was the only supplier of holiday cheer. If I wanted it from anybody else, I'd have to convert religions. It's a monopoly, and if you disagree, well, I don't. Competition helps everybody, especially self-esteem. Santa's been cruising on elf labor and white hair for the past 2,000 years, and it's all because nobody stood up to him to tell him to do better. So, we have four hours to finish and deliver gifts to every person on Earth. Ever? I don't think Santa does the dead one, so that's a good market to reach. We can't travel the world by ourselves. That's a nine deer job. Put me in a room with nine deer and tell us to do a job. I'll finish top five. We've only finished two presents so far, and one's an IOU. Okay, well, if it comes down to it, the pack of cigarettes, we can separate amongst 20 people. I just don't see how we compete with Santa. We don't have anything to combat him. We don't have silver bullets. We don't have garbage. Well, we're just gonna have to learn everything Christmas. We're gonna have to do everything he does. I'm going as fast as I can! Jerry, how's our biblical research going? I just got to the part about cannibals. Oh, my bad. Inbreeding. Uh, Target employee, have you opened the door yet for us to walk outside? Ah, uh, yeah, my hands are pooped. Well. Does anybody have any spare ups to give? I gave those up long ago. Who am I kidding? We're never gonna be able to compete with Santa. We'll never be not real like he is. Now, now, I think we're gonna have a shot. We just gotta stop making these presents by hand. There's gotta be something lying around here that can suffice as a gift. What about this? No, I need that. It helps remind me there's a dead rat on the floor I need to clean up. Why do you have all these games here? I was gonna return them. Why are they in a shopping cart? I was gonna return that too. The games such as Tobruk the Clash of Armor, DNA Warrior, and Anals of Rome. <laughs> Data Design Interactive. Does that name ring a bell? Well, or maybe these images will refresh your memory. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. All because they won people over with cheap prices and enticing box art. <laughs> I can't say I wouldn't. Well, regardless of the quality, they are pretty multi-purpose. Like, I could use this as a rectangle. So it's settled! We'll use these as Christmas presents! Well, you know what they say. Sure. No, they don't. They say yes! If we're gonna distribute these, we gotta do product testing. We can't do that! We don't have time! Do we really wanna risk the lives and safety of children everywhere? Do we not wanna meet our deadline? Well, let's test out the worst game developer of all time's entire catalog of games and see if we actually gain anything from that. Oh my god, is that a lump? We already have. Tobruk the Clash of Armor was a bit of a revelation for everybody. Evil is born! You're telling me this was the first thing they made? What was their MO? Was Smirnoff funding them? Tobruk is a turn-based strategy game from the 80s. You know what that means. I mean, this is a World War II strategy game from 1987. As much as I would love to tell them do better, the wall isn't responding. But that brings us to Data Design's home console efforts. Here on the second Master System, they ported Xenon 2 Mega Blast. How do we know that? Oh, that's how. Jesus Christ, could this run any slower? Yes. I mean, how good you hate the developers of Game Boy Jeopardy. Oh. Well, regardless, this may be Data Design's best effort yet, which isn't saying much. It's pretty hard to mess up Jeopardy, especially when this version is heavily based on the NES game developed by Rare, so they had two sources to base this project off of. It'd be more impressive if they f***ed it up. But no, it's just Jeopardy on the go. Same types of questions you normally get during a game. A tree dweller whose name implies one of the seven deadly sins. Keebler. Alphabetically, it's number one. Hey! It lay in the house that Jack built. Jack. The more accurate name for the American Buffalo. North American Buffalo. The Herring Lake fish often requested off a pizza. Bad fish. Aesop character that won by a hair. Rapunzel. Admirals, this father of the nuclear sub managed to serve 18 years beyond compulsory retirement age. Admiral? Captain Crunch! No, not that, not that cereal mascot. Right, Chocula. Now, who's James Pond? Eh, right, well, that question's answered. My apologies if I sound a bit like a Scrooge, but I don't like that f***ing fish. Oh, come on, where's your Christmas spirit? All right, my bad. Let's see what the fish can do! Merry Christmas, Jerry.
Listen, you gotta understand, I, I can't do both of these at the same time. Rise of the Robots, an infamous fighting game. One of the most notorious examples of, oh God. Visually, this ain't half bad. It's honestly pretty impressive for the time. The gameplay on the other hand, oh Jesus. But it's like that everywhere. So how much of this is Data Design's fault? Looking at the reviews of the Game Gear version, all of it. Of course, after that, they had to hop back to what they were best at, Jeopardy on Game Boy with Platinum Edition. Several opera scores by this Italian rival of Mozart. Wozart? It's located between EST and MST. The letter X. This is endless, restless, and useless, and it killed the cat. A gun. Appending these four letters to an odor means to execute it at once. Once. This round flat bread is the flat basis of tacos, enchiladas, and burritos. Bread after I sit on it. I misspelled after. A note that's neither sharp nor flat is said to be this. Silent, but deadly. Jessica Tandy won a Tony for this role in a streetcar named Desire. Donald the Duck. Nanette is a composition for this many musical instruments or voices. No, I don't speak Italian. I told you! Damn, this may be their first big original release not based on any prior work that launched outside of the UK. Let's give them a round of applause! <laughs> Damn it, go back! Go back! No, it sounds the same! But, as we can see, that doesn't really matter in the video game industry. Data Design achieved the license to one of the most beloved properties of all time. Not the Raiders! Because shortly after LEGO, Data Design took a stab at Tonka with Tonka Space Station on PC and PlayStation. Fucking arrest them. Why have so many companies entrusted these guys with their brands? Kids brands, no less. Have you seen what they do in their spare time? Dude. Which unfortunately leads this game to be pretty easily forgotten. Which is really bad when you're trying to find something to play. <laughs> this looks fun. So, if these are bad, unmemorable games, something has to change. Oh, I was just gonna try a different shirt. Yeah, well, this spits in the face of my belief system. They can't drive. <laughs> I guess all I can do is gawk at gameplay online. Uh, Scott's opinion is, do three dots count? It's a crossover between all your favorite Nickelodeon characters like Cat from Cat Dog and D Dog from Cat Dog. There's five mini games to play here. Five, one, two, three, four, five. It is very useful. I only have to use one hand to describe this game. Cause the other one is busy. It's a pretty rock solid plan. I mean, I don't want shit, so don't give it to me. And thus, Data Design stopped giving a shit. Five games in 2004, all original IPs on the PlayStation 2. And the first one is Myth Makers Orbs of Doom. Are you sure it's not lie pumpers? Circles are bad? Yeah, orbs just don't really do it for me. No <laughs> spheres, though? Why do I have to respond to that? Yeah, just so lie pumper circles are bad, you may be looking at like, oh, this is D tier monkey ball. I'd say it's more like A tier Denny's. I know you may be asking, what's Habitrail, Scott? Well, I can answer the first question. Habitrail is a line of hamster accessories. Yeah, Data Design secured the rights to a hamster ball brand. I didn't know there were rights to secure. The game even has special menus showing tips on proper hamster care, the do's and don'ts of owning a hamster, what to feed them, hamster food good, poison bad. This game's just trying to sell me on damn hamster bleach. Well, Habitrail hamster ball is... Let's move on to another game. All right, next up. Hamster heroes. Oh, great. Now I have to thank them for their service? I already do. So what do these little critters do that I can't do with a 12 gauge? Nothing. As long as you have that gun, these hamsters are worthless. Hamster heroes is... Let's move on to another game. Three damn rodent in a ball games? Hell, four if you want to count how Hamster Heroes was reprinted with a different cover. These look like damn mice. Let the war rage on. Now, all these games are pretty damn similar, but they do have differences, you know? Orbs, balls, mice, and the hamsters have got to be bleeding. Well, I'd trade a bleeding hamster for a bloody rat any day. Let's try Myth Maker Supercart GP, another 2004 European PS2 release that came over here on the Wii in 2007. Finally, the Myth Makers can bitch about gas prices with my dad. Yeah, I thought Living World was a children's cartoon series or something, like the busy world of Richard Scarry. 
Dude, they make rat food. But we can pick from some of our favorite living world animals. Mr. Mouse, Mr. Hamster, Mr. Rat, Mr. Guinea Pig, Mr. Chinchilla, Mr. Dwarf Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit, and Mr. Ferret. Now, what can we infer by this character roster? The absolute sausage fest. But also how Living World has a vast array of iconic characters. I mean, they are all here on the loading screen. That's Mr. Mouse. So surely, because this is a racing game featuring these characters and they're prominently featured with names, I can look up Mr. Mouse from Living World and see all the other wacky adventures Mr. Mouse has gotten himself into. Well, I got news for ya. There is no Mr. Mouse, Mr. Hamster, Mr. Rat, Chinchilla, Guinea Pig, Dwarf, Rabbit, Rabbit, Ferret. The, the only example of these characters being as they are is Living World Racing, a racing game starring your favorite characters from Living World Racing. I thought for as long as I had this game, oh, this must be some kid show in Europe. Not only, no, they make rat betting, but these characters aren't even characters, which for a character named Mr. Rat? I'm fucking shocked! So the only person this game would appeal to, oh, to be a mouse for a day, is that. This one isn't good either. Judging from Data Design's new strategy, let's check out their platformers to see if this stage originated somewhere. Actually, it, I just found where it came from. This is Ninja Breadman. It, it's a cookie. Wait, I've, I've seen that before. Uh, that's Milk's best friend. <laughs> you know, maybe we shouldn't be paying cookies and milk when we deliver these presents. The bank doesn't take him, I've tried. Yeah, well, the, the Tooth Fairy gets paid in teeth. We can get paid in, like, I don't know, fingernails? Could be the Finger Fairies? We can't do that, we need a drink, too. How about tomato soup? No, we'll stay in the snow. Why don't we get $200 a piece? So this is our current project proposal. Now it is! So is Ninja Bread Man just a gingerbread cookie ninja, or is this just a whole ass subgenre? Well, let's see how Data Design does platformers. They don't. What the f? Okay, I'm I'm dead, and I'm I'm dead again. Oh my God, why bees? What they couldn't get the rights to flies? This game feels like chafing. Candyland is under attack. You're just asking to be sued. Pick a more original name, will ya? Oh no, Scrabble is under attack. Throw ninja stars to stun enemies and follow up with the mighty samurai sword, reducing enemies into a quivering pool of raspberry jam. Even the bees? It's just a completely generic 3D platformer, one that gives me just by controlling it because Ninja Bread Man is so damn fast and using your weapon is so damn slow that every moment in this game just feels like <laughs> Next in line of Data Design's Wii era platformers is this. Anubis 2? They made a second new Bis? Oh, I love the first one. It had graphics, 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 graphics. The only graph I'm saying ick to is this one. Graphics. There's no Anubis 1? There's no Anubis 1 graphics. on any screen I'm aware of. And graphics. that includes a screen on my back door. And I ain't talking about my ass. Why are you whispering that to me? Anubis 2 is actually supposed to be pronounced Anubis the Second, as if this is the offspring of the original Egyptian god Anubis. Okay, that's fine, but just call the game Anubis Jr. There will never be another incarnation of the Egyptian god Anubis. Wait! Monster Trucks Arenas. Have any of you ever played this game? God, no. This game involves my three biggest fears. Monsters, trucks, and the Monster Trucks Arena video game. My three biggest fears are men, bread, and losing my brother in a homicide. I know how you feel. I got a gluten allergy. Earache Extreme Metal Racing, based on the record label Earache. That's just great. Yeah, next up, Crash Easter Egg Hunt. You know, in Europe on the PS2, this was called City Soccer Challenge. Soccer. In Europe. You're in Europe. Why are you calling it the American term? You don't call crumpets cheese nips over there. It's kids sports crazy mini golf featuring new you technology, allowing anybody to put themselves in the game. D wait, wait, what? Wait, wait, Rex, what are you doing? Oh, I just decided to tinker. Tinker? Yeah, it's tink brought to the next level. A chicken man. There, all data design games tested. If we're quick, we can catch up to Santa. It's only 2 a.m. on... April 16th. Oh man, I had work a month ago. I can't believe we missed the deadline for Christmas Eve! We wasted four months playing these games! Well, I wouldn't say wasted. Probably just say misused. Yeah! I enjoyed not talking about my ass for four months. Yeah, I enjoyed not hearing about it. Yeah, it says right here. I'm pretty cool. And by proxy, so are all you. I mean... Yeah, actually, like, looking back at it all, it doesn't really feel like a waste of my time because I spent it with all of you. That's it! 
we do have the competitive edge. Uh, Santa may be able to give all these physical gifts, but we don't need that. We have our time and company and friendship. Uh, we have the experience of going through all these horrible games together that'll last us through our entire lives. That's way more valuable than something you can unwrap. These games as gifts are absolute garbage, but the memories we made spending time with each other going through them, that's priceless. And that can be what sets us apart. We won't give away presents, we'll give away our time and energy. Come on guys, it's a beautiful snowy April night in Ohio. Let's go caroling! Uh... Well, that's how I spent my 114 days of Christmas and... I don't regret it. Data Design Interactive is the worst game developer of all time. There's no getting around that. But that doesn't mean they never tried. Going through their history, it's honestly really sad to see a studio just trying to get by doing what they could. Uh, picking up porting jobs, making all different types of games, just trying to see what sticks. And in the end, what ended up working for them was oversaturating the market with constant garbage budget releases that were all clones of each other. It felt like they were saying, we give up, we know we're bad, but let's not even try anymore. But while that may have worked for a couple years, it obviously wasn't sustainable. It just goes to show that you can try to game the system, put as little effort into your work as possible, and it may work initially, but it's gonna catch up to you at some point. However, while what they did wasn't noble, they still created some of the most memorable gaming experiences for me of all time, even if they were all horrible. Uh, just going from Ninja Breadman to Anubis 2, from Action Girls Racing to Myth Maker's Supercart GP, and just seeing the same damn game, that sticks with you. It's good that they're gone, but man, they gave me one of my best Christmas memories of all time. And I just wish I could give them as merry of a Christmas as they gave to me. I wish they were back making games again today, just for a little bit. Near the end of their life, they were actually trying a bunch of new things. I want to see how much their projects would have evolved these days. I just wish I could tell them... Merry Christmas Day to design. Junior League Sports on Nintendo Switch? Crazy Mini Golf on Nintendo Switch? Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind.